Are we the villain? Yeah, maybe. I'm I'm movies villain, maybe. I guess you find out near the end. You don't really know right at the beginning. Don't know if they'll turn out to be a good guy, you know? Yeah. That's what film needs, is twists. Twists, turns, mystery, suspense. What makes them so strong? Come on, I already see people in chat. Wonderful! It is indeed EFAP time, and I'm on time. We didn't manage to go too long over the, the limit, if there was such a thing. Yeah, Beautiful. one minute. One minute late, that's not bad. Me, 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 me. I anticipate a lot of feuding with chat this week. Oh, is this going to be a controversial topic? Have you already seen different opinions flying around? You did a forge yesterday, did you not, Mr. Opinions? I did. How did that go? It was fun. It was a good conversation. I do expect some some controversy My all around God. on this one. I think there might be. I think there might be some, some divisive opinions. Maybe divisive film. opinions, but divisive ones? Divisive, that's that's You will not word. device us. Yeah, not with movie divisive opinions. Divisive is the better word. Um, right, well, uh, uh, welcome, 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 everybody, to EFAP 3... I forget what it is every single time. Every EFAP time. 236, three. not 3... So, Jesus, EFAP 3. Long. Damn. EFAP 3. <laughs> EFAP 3. We're filling in old numbers we that we missed. finally made it. We finally three. made it. I didn't think we'd three, get this far, yeah. but um, we're here. We're here to talk about a little movie that you may have heard has come out recently. And our guest, we got a new guest this time. New blood. Look at him, he's sitting Ooh. right there. He's got blue hair. Whoa. Everyone loves those kinds of people. <laughs> it's destiny. <laughs> um, welcome. Is it, you go, I'm assuming you're going to go by Movie Cynic, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, I met you on good old Open Bar. And I, I thought, did. Maybe I'd drag you on here to talk about movies someday. And so here we are. Um, welcome, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for the invite. Uh, yeah, I've been a huge fan of you guys for a long time, so it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you. Oh, well, we might take care of that cool. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry. I was actually going to say, uh, well, you know, I'll get another way. You all know Capital Opinions. Again, Capital Opinions, he's right there, okay? You Hello, don't howdy, intro. <laughs> nah intro lame um fresh meat for the grinder yeah hell yeah um we got a lot to talk about we have a lot to discuss and so i think what we should do first which we do sometimes do sometimes not do but we probably will do it this time is a blurb a good old-fashioned oh summarization of your thoughts and feelings on the film whatever you wish to talk about and forever how long you talk about you know complete freedom on this one however i would be curious to have our guest go first uh, see, see what his um, opinions on this this action adventure sci-fi fantasy MCU movie film is. So why don't you why don't you go ahead? Uh, it's I I saw it twice and it's a mixed bag is the best way to describe it uh, for me. It's um it's old hat to kind of say like well it's better than anything that's come out since you know Endgame it. I still think Spider-Man No Way Home is the best that's come out since Endgame. Um, but it it's such a difficult way to discuss this movie. It's like I didn't enjoy anything that they did with the first or second act. I felt like the third act kind of uh, felt more like a Guardians movie. And the best way I can describe the first or second act would be it felt like the space casino scene in um, uh, The Last Jedi. And like... Hmm like a two hour extended cut of that, um, <laughs> which isn't a compliment whatsoever. Good old Canto um, bite. I, I felt it was weird that the, they decided that James Gunn decided to go with like a, a rocket backstory. It's kind of the emotional crutch of the movie. Um, I hate when they bring in animals to kind of get that emotional reson resonance out of people. I feel like it's cheating almost. It was like the That's same kind I'm of critique. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the same kind of critique I gave to Avatar 2 where they used like that space whale as the emotional crutch of the movie and I was like it's such a cheap way of uh, getting people to be like you know well the movie made me feel something so it was good um, and I, I thought it was weird that like you have all of these characters that we've come to know and love this is their sixth appearance for a lot of them 
And what you do to get uh, any emotion out of the audience is to do a backstory of Rocket. Like, it's um, not necessarily that I didn't want to know Rocket's backstory or anything, but it just felt weird that, like, you're doing this in the final movie. Uh, it made me keep questioning, like, this is what you decided to do or the final adventure with these guys. Um, like, a Last Jedi uh, space casino sequence and flashbacks. Mm. Uh, but... And I also felt it was weird that, like, it felt like Chris Pratt was kind of phoning in his performance. Um, there was a really great sequence near the end, like when Rocket's, uh, when he thinks Rocket's dying. That was, I, I thought, was really well acted. It's probably also why they put it in the trailer, too. Um, but overall, like, despite the criticisms, there were still some highs for me. And so the best I can say is, like, I didn't think it was mid. I thought it was just okay at like one step above mid um and it at, at this point i'll kind of take what i can get when it comes to the mcu um so it'll it, since i started my channel it'll be the first review where it's not just a complete like uh, ripping shitting on a movie yeah <laughs> fair enough yeah. Um, i will say as well for this format as strange as it sounds and don't worry it's kind of a fast and loose rule try and remain spoiler free for as far as we're into summarizing the film it's a strange thing, but it kind of makes for the format to be a little bit more fun. Uh, but however, if you really want to skip ahead to something, then you can go ahead. It's a it, warning to anyone listening to this. We're going, we're going hard into spoilers. We're going to spoil everything eventually. But we're also going to try and deliver it piece by piece once we're done with everyone's uh, general perspective. And thank you very much for yours. Why don't we have Cap next? What is your general thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy? I really liked it warts and all. I would say that I disagree with almost everything the movie cynic just said, so I'm excited <laughs> to talk about it. Uh, I It's a flawed movie. It has problems, for sure, most of them in the plot, and I suppose the world building to a lesser extent, but the plot is not especially good. But in my opinion, it's kind of on par with a lot of James Gunn's other superhero films where the character writing... The dialogue and the jokes are what's strongest, and the plot is pretty weak. Uh, we'll discuss, I'm sure, how this relates to his other films, but I really enjoyed it. I like all these characters. I thought it was an interesting send-off for them, and I love everything to do with Rocket's origin story. So I'm excited to talk about it with you all today. All right. Uh, Fringy, what did you think? Um... I was really disappointed. Uh, I really like the first two Guardians films. I think that they're among the stronger entries in the uh, in the MCU. And I was I was like looking forward to this one as like a film compared to the like everything else that we've gotten basically uh, like for the last few years. Um, I certainly don't think that this film is like nearly as cynical as uh, a lot of the films that have come out and TV shows over the last few years. I think it's got aspects of it that are like really strong. Um, but I think the way that I would summarize this film is that it is a lot messier than Guardians 1 and 2. It's not as focused. Um, and uh, the plot, <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I, think that, I think that as we, we delve into it in detail, it's going to fall apart. And my concern is, and I haven't quite figured it out yet, is I'm not sure where I'm at when it comes to figuring out how compromised I think character is because of it. There are certain aspects of the film that I think, like, after going through it, are going to hold up very well. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. All right. Rags, what do you think? Hmm. What a, what a fucking shit show. Um... Wow, there's so much. I felt like generally when I walk out of a movie and I feel very confused and conflicted, that doesn't mean that it was so good it confused me. Typically, it means that there's a lot of stuff in there that upon a first viewing um, didn't sit right with me. And then the more that you delve into the issues, the worse that they'll get. Um, when it comes to Guardians 3... I'm kind of holding on to the things that I like about it in the same way that someone might cling to a life raft in a stormy sea. 
Um, I think the plot is is in shambles. I think there's very little that probably is going to be working when it comes to the plot. I think we have some some really bad character uh, stuff that's happening. Uh, I think that tonally and in terms of its pacing, uh, it's kind of, it, particularly in terms of tone, it's a mess. I think there, there are certainly a few things that still really bother me about this movie. Um, and it's not to say that there's things that I really, you know, there, there are things that I really like about this movie. I mean, emotionally, it worked for me in a lot of ways. But I think that uh, those particular things will, unfortunately, maybe be swallowed up by a bunch of other stuff. Um, there are things of value here. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a, a long, complex uh, journey through a very strange, what feels like six or seven films that have been kind of mixed up and stirred into a single one. Uh, so yeah, buckle up. We're going to have a lot of stuff to talk about. That's true. Which leaves me, I suppose. Uh, what I will say is this is easily the greatest film in phase five. It's not even a competition, I would say. I'm gonna go I out agree. there and take that hot take. I don't. I, I hope. Agree. Hope I'm not gonna have to fight on that one. But yes, <laughs> I think it dominates Phase Five currently. So you know, take that as a big plus. Um, I have uh, gone through it significantly, hardcore, again and again. Uh, I am very unhappy with this film. I and and I was one of its bigger sort of. I was trying to get everyone a little hyped, a little excited. I think this was a hopeful one. There's a lot of reason to think it was going to be pretty damn good. But oh boy, did it disappoint the hell out of me. Oh um, boy. I'm not even sure what I would summarize as a uh, compliment. There's no point in me running through all of what I think is bad when it comes to writing, because I think it's got major flaws in every category, um, including but not limited to a garbled tone, a character inconsistencies and assassination, uh, plot, complete plot fuck-ups, and ignorant will building to the point of matching stuff like it's in phase four um the positives though it's like i don't know man there's a few scenes i like yeah so <laughs> um i guess uh the, the, you know the, the, my position as of updated since the open bar if anyone saw that it's it's not exact i've gotten a little less favorable of the film since then um but today I'm sure we'd all like to explain to uh, anyone who's listening and each other why we may hold the perspectives we do. And uh, to do that, we're going to be going through chronologically and talking pretty much just about everything. Are you folks ready for that? Ready as I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Yay. I'm ready again. Yeah. Well, all right then. Uh, first thing that happens... And I'd be curious to just hear everybody's opinions on this. Is a quite somber Marvel logo intro that has all imagery from Guardians alone. I think it starts with the comics mm -hmm. and then it goes into just the films. What uh, what is everyone thinking about it? Anything? Um, um, it it got me thinking about what tone we were gonna get. Uh, what kind of uh, are we gonna do something like Infinity War here with this kind of opening? I was I was I was already starting. I feel to get primed for potential disaster slash hitting the ground running with something. Um, so I got I the mean, impression... I liked it. I liked it too, but uh, in retrospect, I think it's a little bit unsuitable. It, uh, I agree. So um, <laughs> I got a similar impression to it as I do from the Infinity War intro, where it, uh, it's, setting the scene, it's setting the tone for like... This one, this one ain't gonna end well. This is gonna be a tough, rough ride. Um, and I suppose you could argue it's in reference to a particular history that happens in the film, but uh, uh, seeing it after knowing what happens in the film, I was just like, this doesn't feel right. And it's strange because I feel like it gets overwritten by the first use of a song um, almost straight away. Um, and so now I don't what is, really... What does that mean, it's overwritten? The, the tone set by that initial song or well, like the, the initial uh use of the music and the visuals that of these are the guardians and it's time to say goodbye 
but not in a positive way. I distinctly got the impression of like, oof, this is going to be a, this is going to be a rough one. And then um, uh, there was a, a different song that plays. I'm trying to remember what song it was. First song is uh, an acoustic cover of "Creep" by Radiohead. Yeah, which uh, was a distinctly different impression, like a is different it? feeling. Uh, I got, I certainly uh, got a different. You don't think that's it, yeah. a somber, melancholy song? Uh, I think in a different way, it's like someone yeah. who wants to fit in, who doesn't belong, and they want to be, you know, a part of a group, or they want to. Not know, quite the same as expecting like, like a destructive, potentially dour farewell. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I, it feels a little bit off in retrospect to me, but first time around, I thought it was going to be super suitable because I was expecting um something to follow along in terms of particular events, in terms of drastic events. Um, but you know, it's not it's not too big of a deal. It's just something I was thinking about. I was curious if anyone else felt similar or not. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have any problem with it whatsoever. Definitely too, I think it's too sort of similar in a way, but yeah, especially thinking back. Um, um, yeah, uh, it just doesn't seem appropriate. I certainly don't think so by the time you understand how this film ends. Um, yeah, looking back, definitely. Which, I mean, you can still remain relatively spoiler-free. It's, it's very positive, the ending of this film. So, but we, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. What are you gonna say? I think the movie kind of starts on more of a melancholy tone and then ends positive. I don't exactly see what the problem is there. I think that um, the general sense I get for those intro credits is more so that it's going to be setting the tone for the movie's whole experience as opposed to maybe the opening scene. Hence the the job of like a a song starting up on the opening scene. It would be weird to have like a song and then a song as, as opposed to that's, that's the impression I get. But this is the thing. It's it's definitely down to the individual on that one, I suppose. Anyone is welcome to say anything, but if, that's, <laughs> well, if I, 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 I've said what I've uh, what I think very about well, it, so I'm ready to carry on. Um, I think it's fun to have Rocket singing along to a lot of the songs in, in Guardians now. Um, They've they've like yeah. developed that relatively strong throughout the three of them. That mm -hmm. um, something I like at the beginning of Guardians Two is that he tries to argue that he's setting up the music because Quill wants it when it's obvious that he wants it. Yeah, um, and I think they've carried it along pretty well now. It's a subtle little thing, but I actually quite like that the song that he was going to put on in the beginning of Two was Mister Blue Sky. I think there's oh yeah something you can draw between that and the connection to what happens in this film. Could be interesting. Uh, one of the first things we find out is that Peter is like just staying drunk almost all the time, drinking himself into a stupor. He's pretty miserable, and it's to do with obviously what's happened with Gamora, which I think is a good choice. I'm trying to remember the scenes they had in Love and Thunder, but as you can imagine, I've kind of <laughs> erased that. They're basically that. irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. think they're irrelevant at all. Uh, it's, it's as if that didn't really happen, which is. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we don't um, need to we don't need to talk about Thor: Love and Thunder. Yeah, obviously he meant a shit ton to her, uh, to him, and he's gone. But I suppose we don't really know the like what the state of affairs are yet. Um, but it doesn't look good if that's his his current standing. Mm -hmm. Uh, you even have like Nebula picking him up and Drax being like, "Oh shit, again." And so it's it seems like the not in the. Like they're in a steady state, the Guardians, but the uh, Peter's clearly not doing well. Um, which I think is a reasonable place to start, considering everything that's happened. I'm yeah, glad I mean, that, that there's consequence, that seems, you know. That seems, yeah, like a good place to begin, at least with some level of uh, discontent within the group. And uh, also make sure that uh, the Guardians holiday special wasn't some throwaway useless thing. Like it's that was uh, actually pretty key to understand like why they're on nowhere, why they own it, everything like that. Appreciated that consistency. Yeah, and you can get away with I think not seeing it, right? Probably. You well, could just I, assume, I haven't you know? seen it. I never. Saw <laughs> I haven't it, either. So I just yeah, the movie started, well, there you go. I just assume this is <laughs> what they're doing. This is where they are. I guess I'm exactly. Sense. I just assume yeah, that's perfect. 
Oh, they're uh, here now. That's okay. Cool. Make sure that they, you know, that at, at the very least, like it's it's not just it's supplemental, but not just completely throw away. Like they purchase yeah. uh, nowhere from. Uh, oh shit! I forget his name. Uh, important character there. But uh, yeah, anyway, it was uh, actually relevant and important. That's mm. cool. So you got uh, Rocket and Nebula talking about who's gonna do what about Quill because something's got to be done about him. And uh, during the conversation, she's like, why are you on the ceiling? And he said, I want to see if these new gravity boots worked on a slope. And I don't know about yeah. everyone else, but I was just like, just, wonder what oh, payoff we're going to have with those. Yeah, <laughs> like, mm. yeah that's, that's how it works. <laughs> when uh, something that's very oddly out of place gets called, <laughs> like, uh, attention to. Yeah, and this, that's not the only one in this movie. They do a couple uh, standard writing setups, but that's fine. Mm. Uh, I thought it was strange, right? So uh, we're sort of panning around, and uh, Kraglin is trying to get use of his arrow to the point of uh, nailing like a sequence. He's got to hit like a series of targets in a row to, as like I guess, rudimentary system of trying to get a good score. And uh, he accidentally fires the arrow into Nebula's, I mean, heart. It looks like obviously she's yeah, right in their chest. Yeah, she's like mostly cybernetic, I think, so it doesn't do the damage it would do to a normal person, but I was still just like, damn, dude. It could have been a normal person. <laughs> no, like, this is very no. irresponsible. Time, but timeline-wise, I'm pretty sure Guardians 2 takes place in 2014, which means that it's been like 10 years and he still can't... Oh, shit. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. Maybe he got, like, snapped, but even then, still like five years and he hasn't... Yeah, Maybe it is really hard to use, but just, just something <laughs> worth noting, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's been that long since Guardians 2, but I guess it actually has. The timeline is all very... I mean, we probably know it better than the people writing the movies at this point. Uh, I think Guardians takes, Guardians 2 takes place, like, the same year as the first one, I think. Or cl close to that. Um... Yeah, you uh, you have uh, Cosmo has essentially been properly introduced now. Or was Cosmo in the Christmas special? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, she was in the Christmas special. I've seen it and I don't remember it. That's my <laughs> bad. Um, but uh, I don't know. I I think Cosmo's neat. It's a yeah dog yeah. with well, like spacesuit that can do telekinesis and has a Russian voice. Um, or the dog has tell is the the suit I thought let her talk audibly through the suit. Oh yeah, but she could yeah. do the telekinesis, right? Or, yeah, I, I have no clue why that's the case, but you know, uh, she mentions what it is. Russians sent her into space with no intention of her coming back, and then I guess she was picked up by someone somewhere, and something happened. She flew through a telekinesis cloud or something. A, a telekinesis <laughs> dilation field. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and so they're discussing what to do with Quill, and it's mentioned the possibility of uh, Mantis making him feel better, and she says like she wouldn't manipulate people's feelings like that. Uh, yeah, I wish she was consistent about that. Yeah, we'll get to that in about five <laughs> hours. <laughs> um, that, that is one of the bigger problems I have. That we'll we'll get there in time. He says, uh, I think uh, Drax says, you made me fall in love with my sock, and she says, but that was funny. Um, and you have uh, Groot getting confused as to whether or not they're talking about making him happy with touching him in another way. Um, so, you know, shooting off a few jokes already, and I guess we'll get a broader view on it as we go, but I kind of want to try and flag up whether or not uh, you guys were finding this stuff funny or not as we go, and if there's any discussion to be had uh, about it. Somewhat amusing. Uh, definitely kind of hit and miss, but I think a decent amount of the humor worked for me. I'd say it was on par with the others in terms of most of the jokes worked, but some didn't. I don't know how this happened, but I'm pretty sure, for me, it's either Ragnarok or Infinity War were the funniest movies in the MCU. Uh, Ragnarok is the funniest for me. It's so, it's so weird that Infinity War, the movie that's like famously the, the, the one where they lose and is quite dramatic, is like mm -hmm. one of the ones with some of the best jokes, I thought. Um, I mean, that film is really funny. <laughs> And Strange. Uh, they do a they do a much better job so. of balancing tones than uh, most films in the MCU do. Uh, so that cuts then to we see the arrival of 
Adam Warlock. He's heading to nowhere. Last time we saw him was the end credits from Guardians 2, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, so all we know at this point would be that maybe the Sovereign have sent him to just get revenge at this point, right? But I don't think any other thing has been mentioned up to this point about any other reason he might be there. Um, Not that I can think of. Now I can buy. That comes to mind. I can buy that he knows they're in nowhere. I'm confused. Does he have a, like a zeroing in thing on Rocket? I, I not that I'm know. aware of. Because he smashes <laughs> right into Rocket personally, and I mean, With, yeah. um, just a that's... small skip ahead. He is actually trying to kidnap Rocket. We find yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was like. I mean, I, like he he's he's a little critter, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I thought yeah, that was like, really I strange. Just... Yeah, um, that should have. Not only is that an incredibly um, dumb way to try and kidnap someone, you think <laughs> you just grab them and and leave the way you came or something, uh, but you would, um, yeah, you 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 should be pulverized into a thousand tiny little pieces because he went through a bunch of walls and stuff. That's another timeline thing too, right? Like Adam Warlock was activated at the end of Guardians Two, and he hasn't decided uh, to bank on that. A decade seems unusual. But if we go with mm. the snapping, then it's about five years, we would say. Uh, I think, yeah. I think they're in 2024, and 2025 now. I want it said, I have sympathy for any writer that's having to deal with all this, because it's insane, mm. it's difficult. Yes. But I still, like, we have to, you know, call a spade a spade with this. It's like, you have this, this is what's happening, and you don't... I don't think there's any lines to account for why Adam's taken so long. Um, so... Uh, um, there's also just when he smashes Rocket through several walls and windows I was like that's strange considering <laughs> his goal yeah yeah, um, um, yeah. I mean that one's strange but it'll get stranger soon <laughs> like, we'll, uh, it's just I just don't get it uh, Adam Warlock is one of the most um, controversial parts of the film I think in terms of people being critical so um, yeah think that way. what can I say for now other than uh, yeah, he smashes in, and I'm not sure if it's meant to be a bit of a comedic beat, like Rocket is sort of chill, and he looks in the, out the window, sees him coming, he just goes, whoa, and just like smashes. But, um, and this is something I'm going to flag a lot. You see him smash him through those things, and you're like, is Rocket fine? It's like, yes, Rocket is fine. He's absolutely fine. He's barely even, like, like no scratching. Like, okay, sure. Ah, uh, well, uh, all, all right. That's weird. I would ex have expected I would expect something. More. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's okay. Um, all right, yeah, all right. So Nebula then grabs um, like a jetpack thing and uh, basically operates as like the police of the area. And she flies up to him and she says, um, like, drop your weapons sort of thing. Uh, somehow mm -hmm. Adam loses his grip on Rocket. He has him in two hands. And then he looks over at Star-Lord and somehow Rocket manages to wrestle himself out. Now, should be known... Adam Warlock is incredibly powerful in this film. I'm not even talking about the he's like, source. Yeah, he's, like he's talking super... about um, like what would we put in him on par with like a uh, like a Superman? Captain Marvel, yeah, Superman kind of. Yeah, seems to be about that kind of um, that kind of power level. Um, and so like all I can really say to explain any of these things is that he's an idiot, and that is canon. It is, yeah. He's kind of an incompetent buffoon. Yeah, he's That's... like a child. He got taken out of his birth pod too early, as we learned, so he's kind of not, not quite all there yet. Which um, was not, I think, what a lot of people wanted to see, but uh, obviously I'm okay with the idea and concept. A childlike person in the body of something like a Superman, and yeah. how does it go? But that is the best I can do to explain why that would happen. Um. So yeah, uh, Nebula. I'll explain some of his decisions, but definitely, definitely not all of them. Yeah. Well, like, I, ramming, flying in and tackling yeah. him through the wall—that's just really stupid. You think no even around it? A lot of child brain people would understand that one. And he does—he doesn't talk like a child. He talks like a pretty normal person. Like you could buy that he was his age from just the way that he, he talks, talks. Like Thor, kind of. Yeah. Um. The impression you get more so is just that he's un he's not used to social cues or something. Not that he's like a child, but um, they definitely say that that's what his like his issue is. In fact, it's said that he's got more than that as an issue, but we don't get more specifics. Um, 
Well, so, something just came to mind too. To not spoil anything, though, there is a scene later in the movie that could kind of um, explain his his actions when it came to Rocket and like, his initial like tackling him through the wall because he overcompensates later in the movie too. I don't um, know if you guys, <laughs> without spoiling, I, it, I, know I don't what know you're talking, you about, talking about, but I I don't agree. I would argue that instead of that supporting this, that that is another example of. Uh, like an inconsistency. What he does in that scene is super retarded. Um, Not disagreeing with that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Nebula shoots him, and he just pretty much, like, she shoots him into a wall, and then he gets back up. He tackles her. Um, and then there's this shot. He um, he goes to punch her in the chest, and they, they show a shot of her, like, chest caving in, and then he punches her face, and, like, her jaw dislocates. And uh, there's sort of music to match. And especially when I think about it more as time goes on, it's just, like... I never know how much I should care about that. Like, when Nebula gets parts of her disconnected or broken, take for example, because I think this is spoiler-free, there's a part in this film where she is hit in the head and it dislocates her whole neck. Her head, like, falls over. And then it yeah. reconnects back up, and it's kind of like a badass moment. But in that moment, right, we're supposed to be like, yeah, Nebula. But in this moment, we're supposed to be like, oh, no, Nebula. Like, like, like oh, God, like, her, her chest is caved in. She's getting... He's getting fucked up, and it, it feels strange to me. Uh, I never quite know how I'm supposed to react. There's, there's a specific example I'm going to be talking about when we get to the, um, the orgo scope mm -hmm. of Nebula's injuries, and I feel like uh, I have to distinctly rely on the music, and even then I get betrayed regularly as to what the state of affairs are. Yeah. It gets very, 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 very confusing uh, as to just what Nebula's health bar is, if there is such a thing. This movie was kind of stressing me out in that regard. Um, like, it was really, it was really uneasy. I was really uneasy a lot of the time, not really knowing what, like, was going to happen or what we were doing here, where we were going. Um, so, hmm, yeah. Hmm. Uh, it struck me as the, what what's happening when you know she gets momentarily disabled and like parts of her get disconnected that she's vulnerable until she can kind of reassemble. It's like she's weak for that moment, not that like oh my god, is this gonna kill her? That's just how it occurred for me watching these scenes. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what I was trying to say is that this is treated like a very serious moment. What Adam does to it, but it's um, we've seen that happen to her so many times that I was like, she's fine, right? And then she is fine. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, she's fine. Yeah, we all do. All right. uh, yeah, all right. Back to, all right. Um, yeah, because they do choir. Whenever people bring in choir, and when someone's getting hurt, I assume that we're in serious mode, you know? Um, which Someone's happens you, a couple yeah, of times. Take yeah, take seriously. Then Adam tears off Groot's head. <laughs> Um, I say that because <laughs> there's not a huge because I'll be skipping around the movie. I'm not going to do every single thing that happens, but yes, that that is a moment that happens. And uh... yeah, Groot jumps on him and like wraps himself around Adam, and then they tussle, and eventually he pulls Groot's head off. And Groot's like a little, he's like the little guy from the thing. Uh, he just mm -hmm. kind of walks away on his little vines. But uh, yeah, uh, if you had asked me, would tearing off Groot's head mean? The head would regrow the body. I'd be like, I think so. I assume so. I've got mm. not much to work on, but yeah, I guess we've got that confirmed now. <laughs> we know that it's the head that's the most important part, I assume. Like, you can't rip off the head and you have two Groots. You would have just yeah, the Yeah, I don't think the body over. would grow a head and the head yeah. would grow a body. Yeah. yeah. That um, makes some kind of intuitive sense. So, so now we've got like three hits in a row of I'm wondering if this is all a nightmare and all the guardians are dead now. Um, like it, it, uh, it was a sense of like, you know, wow, the shock of, you know, everything's pretty chill. But this guy has just come in and fucked up, you know, a whole bunch of them. It's like, oh, shit, um, which is kind of going to uh, I'll have to see what you guys think, because I'm trying to there's always a line with this sort of stuff. Tone is super hard. So I know that plenty of people found this joke funny. So I'll just ask you guys. Raglan fires his arrow directly at um, Adam, and it just bounces off and hits the floor. What did you think? Um, I didn't think it was funny. I thought like he was going to have a moment to actually maybe uh, kind of do something. to. Dis I guess he did end up distracting him. But, I mean, that seems like it's a really powerful weapon, that arrow. Uh, it does. Extremely powerful, in fact. Like, it, can it go through spaceships? Uh, in the second one, well, isn't that what Yondu uses it for? I... In two, he uses it to blow up the ship, and, and he... it withstands the explosion. Yeah. 
He, he does yeah. destroy a Necrocraft in the first one as well. Um, so this so is the does, thing. Do we know that he hit him like with the pointy part of the arrow to just kind of like? Well, it, yeah, it might be that he him. screwed it up. Yeah, I thought that's what happened. Oh, I think that it was. Kind of... I think it was just Adam was so tough or resilient, or the arrow wasn't strong enough. I thought I, I thought that the what they were trying to tell us was that Adam is super duper duper strong. It's just that you do have Nebula's sword uh, can go through him, so you'd think the arrow would be able to, uh, considering how powerful it is. But as long well, as I they don't contradict just, that, it's if right. you throw an arrow, it, it, like you know, he doesn't shoot it like he's a master archer. He just kind of it's like he threw it at him essentially. Yeah, you know, and I think you could maybe that. argue that he's not at full speed, maybe, uh, or something. Oh, definitely not. Um, but I was going to say, they don't really contradict that anywhere anyway, so it's, it's mostly chill. Uh, it's definitely supposed to be funny, um, because then you have the girl next to him who's like, oh god, he's just like, shut up, because they don't want to get found, and then Adam is like, who threw that? Baby. Which, uh, for me, hit really weird. I think this works for a whole bunch of people. The reason it doesn't quite for me is because I was like, oh shit, I hope Nebula's okay. Holy fuck, he ripped off Groot's head. And then it's like... <laughs> yeah, but we're having fun. It's like, oh, no, we're not. I wasn't not having, having fun at that point. Right I was worried we're about them. We're not having them. fun. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very anxious. And I think it's so strange that immediately after that, he bursts into the room, Rocket aims his gun at him, and then he shoots Rocket. And it does something to Rocket that, may as well just say to this point, uh, brings him to near death, and the rest of the plot is going to be about trying to save Rocket's life from this shot. Which I don't have a huge problem with, except for that he just got tackled through several walls earlier. <laughs> well, and the fact that he just shot him. Why is he shooting him? I this guess we learn later on. <laughs> it's not a hypothetical. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, uh, like, why are you seeming to be so intent on killing Rocket when your point here is to abduct him and bring him back alive? Oh That's a good point, yeah. Uh, I thought that I was absolutely insane, considering his, his primary and very specific goal. He, uh, and the thing is, if he was successful here, you'd get brain death, and by the time he gets that thing back to where it needs to be, I don't know how useful that brain's going to be. Um, certainly not the the what 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 the person wants. Let's put it that way. So very very mm -hmm. very very strange uh, choice, but also yeah. um becomes very very serious, and that's kind of what I'm getting at. It's like we do this the the funny bit, and it's sandwiched between uh, our characters getting grievously injured, which I just don't know if it works for me. Um, it, I'm... It, yeah, it doesn't work for me. It was the beginning of a long uh a long journey through tonal. Um, I felt like I was. A pinball and a machine getting battered around a lot of the time watching this. Um, and, and this was kind of the, the, the beginning of that, I feel. I, it totally worked for me. I didn't have any, sort, any problem going back and forth between things that are frightening and anxious and jokes. Especially when the jokes aren't like coming at the expense of the thing you were meant to be anxious about. You know, they're unrelated. You know, like in this, like there's an there's an example later where I think a couple or maybe more than one example where the joke's like, ah, that seems to actually kind of step on the dramatic moment you're trying to have. Do you think there's any but, conflict in presenting Adam as someone who's, like I said, grievously wounded three of the heroes to then also be like, haha, who threw that at me? No, not at all. Not at all. It did for me. I don't, very, I don't very, understand. Yeah. So what's what's the problem with that exactly? So Adam is right. kind of scary at first, and then they do that joke, and I was like, "Oh, what are we doing here?" Well, how, why can't he be physically intimidating, but also kind of an aloof person? Um, it's, he, it's less to do or with maybe or aloof is not the right word, but you know what I'm saying. It was less to do with whether or not that's a possibility. Anyone could tell a joke or be kind of funny. It's just the whether or not you you'd say that because the tone tonal arguments are very very difficult uh, to be I think definitive about. It's definitely going to come down to the person, um, but I don't know exactly how I'm supposed to. Uh, so it, would you say that the, the movie is trying to get me to understand that this guy is kind of a kind of an idiot, but also be be afraid? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both, right? Because when you show me him taking out three of the guardians like that in a way that I'm wondering if they're dead. And this is a nightmare that one of our characters is having. It is uh you you've already really you have you have planted, watered, watered, grown, and are now harvesting this emotion of unease and tension that you're building up. And then to have that just with him and uh 
uh, him and the arrow. It, it's really, really weird. It makes me very confused as to what you're trying to tell me. Well, he's not exactly cracking a joke. He's just he's reacting to someone like some sort of petty onlooker throwing like a like a stick at him. Basically, it's very very clearly a comedic moment, ju not just because of the way that Adam reacts to it, but because well, I know of it's a comedic moment, but I don't I don't understand what the problem is with the comedic moment. Um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I laid it out pretty clear. Well, I mean, you've you also said that like that this the film has planted the seed somehow that maybe you're meant to think they this have is a worked nightmare, very, one of them. No, I didn't. My analogy didn't end there, which is important. But I think that there's uh, there's definitely a very very clear kind of vibe, and um and and, and what a kind of um what's the word like a like i guess tone not to keep overusing it but there's a very clear tone of like peril danger potential death uh like infinity war kind of opening um and to have this just kind of stuck in there uh when this moment for what it accomplishes whether it's being to make adam seem i mean what it, what it's trying to accomplish is a joke and i think it's very very misplaced Okay, so other moments in other guardians movies where there's peril and danger but then there's a joke or a quip happening right very close to it or amidst it those are are those also bad or is there something unique about this one it depends on what specific one you're talking about yeah make a reference okay okay yeah. so the part in guardians 2 he just found out that uh kurt russell ego sorry he killed his mom and then there's you know he gets stabbed and then they come in with the ship and they knock him out and then immediately um Oh God, what's the, ex I don't remember the exact line, but Gamora comes to rescue him and he says a little quip, a little joke there. I can't remember exactly. What I think she says out. something that relates to like, you warned him that this was a potential that happened. And he says, really? I told you so now. What was it? Hold on. Because I can't remember that one. Um, so Mahler will probably have to. Oh, okay. So I, just what I need to hear right now, like, well, I came back, didn't I? And he's like, oh, because there's an unspoken thing. And they kind of are referencing that definitely supposed to be sort of a comedic little callback yeah um who's that like so if similar to what you said right that the um the joke for adam would be as far as i'm concerned in direct conflict with his intimidation uh in the same way that if someone who was supposed to be dead threw a stone at thanos after he killed loki and then he was like who threw that baby and then carried on i would be like wow that was misplaced why I, I don't quite understand that it's um i mean look he's not the same character so he wouldn't call them a baby this is as much as character. that's uh true we have no other information on adam warlock yet other than he's like annihilated like i said done serious damage that we're supposed to take seriously but then there's a joke yeah and it's establishing this is this is part of us learning about who he is um, I don't understand why. It, it, when when would you say is a good example of a tonal mismatch? Um, okay, so it's not ex I, okay. So I don't want to spoil too much, but it has to do with a one on one conversation that Quill has with Gamora outside of the the meat flesh base. Uh huh. And I think it's because they they have a, a dramatic moment that perhaps we would want to explore, and it's interrupted by a joke that doesn't especially make sense. That's a big part of it. Uh, so your reasoning for that mismatch would be the joke doesn't make sense, part, and that it interrupts it interrupts a, a dramatic moment that like we don't let it breathe, we don't let them actually finish their conversation or have that moment because it's interrupted, and mm. especially because it's interrupted in a way that doesn't make sense. Well, could one not argue that that moment is continued later? Not in that scene. I mean, yeah, it's it's continued in the arc over the entire movie, for sure. Yeah, because uh, um, I guess I, I was looking for more so an example where you would... Uh, cons well, uh, basically the criticism that myself and I assume Rags has is, uh, is there any other moment in the film that you would say does have that problem? And then I just want to figure out where you would draw the line. Um, I, th well, I don't think that this film is a tonal mess the way you guys do. I think there, there are a couple moments where I think the jokes get in the way of a dramatic moment. 
Uh, but especially if my big problem with the one I referenced is it's especially bad because the joke doesn't make sense. I actually don't know if I can think of any examples in this movie that I that the ping ponging back and forth between humorous things and scary things doesn't work because for the most part, I I don't think that the movie is making light of or making fun of the dramatic beats by undermining them or pulling the rug out from under them, which that, is something um, that you see a lot more in other Phase 4. Oh, well, they, uh, use an example from, like, in Phase 4, then. Uh, I don't have one fresh on the mind, but I, you uh, know, there are... I'm trying to think of, like, a Doctor Strange 2 one. It's got to be... Uh... Bu -bu 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 -bu. You know that Thanos one I gave? Would you have said that would be bad if that had happened? Well, if he, if Thanos himself was like, "Ugh, baby," that just doesn't seem in character for him. But I don't, I don't mind the idea of a kind of humorous moment amidst Thanos being scary. I don't, hmm. because I think aren't there a couple of those? I don't remember off the top of my head, but I, I don't, I do feel like that there are moments with Thanos that are mildly amusing. If um... Nothing else. If we're going, like, uh, I think Infinity War, he'll, like, toy with his opponents a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think of... You do have... I think Loki fucks with them a little bit. Um, I'm trying to remember the dialogue, but yeah. Okay, um... here's an example where I think the, the joke they want to have undermines the potential dramas with MODOK in uh, Quantumania when he dies. You know, they have this dramatic moment, and then the joke is kind of like, ha this stupid idiot. You know, it's undermining the dramatic beat that they had briefly for a moment. It's not so much, it doesn't bother me that we switch back and forth between frightening, tense, scary moments and funny moments, because we've done that in all the Guardians movies so far. This one just has the most frightening and horrific moments. Of I wouldn't want to argue that we can do it because it's been done before. I'd rather argue that we can do it because it's like good craft writing right because there are um only like ping pongy things that i do think work but then there are ones that i obviously don't think work um one of the ones that i'm unclear like... as to why you think like how you would decide which ones don't work especially um, in this movie i feel when he says like who threw that baby that i'm relaxed now i can calm back down because we're actually having a little bit of fun but then he steps through the door and shoots rocket and he's like coughing up blood, and I was like, oh, fucking hell, we're right back up to the tense part again, because like, we, we were before. If you just chopped that out, it would have ran completely, like, through line as, as completely normal, but to drop in, like, his bit with Kraglin that is supposed to be interpreted as funny, as opposed to, you could even have played that dramatic. He fires it, it bounces Absolutely. off, and he's just fucking terrified and cowers. Yeah, and he's trying to hide from Adam, and he's running, uh, you know, retreating now, uh, kind of frantically as he dodges, like, a laser beam, or the building almost falls on top of them or something. Well, it still is terrifying for them, the ones in hiding. I think uh, it, it no, doesn't... When they say it's a joke, it isn't because I they're, they're making a joke of it. When who says it's a joke? When the film says that they're doing a joke by having yeah, but the there. But the characters are still in danger and they're still tense. Only for the purposes of delivering a joke. No, because the scene is still tense for them. Yeah, but it's all couched underneath the construction of that scene being this is a moment of levity and joke and we're having fun. Well, it's a joke for the audience, but it's not a joke for the characters. So if yeah, you well, are... I'm the I'm the audience, and I'm, we're well, talking right, about hold on. Like, if you, you, you can have in, instances where uh, you can have instances where a joke, like a situation, is not humorous for the characters, but like the audience member can and, and will still find it funny, and they were meant to find it funny. Yeah, like when exactly. bad things yeah, happen. Yeah, like, this whole time I've been uh, talking yeah. about how I think it's a bad, uh, it's a bad swapping of tones. Here oh, sure, but like in terms of addressing the point of yes, obviously I know that yes, and a, a film can be funny to an audience, but it can be scary for the people in the universe. Well, and yeah, I was just I talking about, about how the past, characters yeah. in the scene are still frightening. It's like no one in the scene is not still frightened by what's happening. I don't understand quite why this makes you, oh, I can calm down and relax now. Like everyone, all the characters are still scared. It didn't, it didn't I mean, have that effect on A lot of people literally were as they were laughing at the scene. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't it think that's It doesn't mean hard. there's not tension anymore. Well, so, but I mean, if, what's, what's the limit on that? Like, I mean, um, it, 
Could if, Adam if like the joke, if the joke actually tension. undermines the tension in the story? Well, so it okay, just genuine tense, question. But... Could Adam pull out a unicycle, start juggling balls and going do 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 as long as everyone's afraid of him, is that still solid? No, because it doesn't make sense with his character. What if it did? So, if it did, then that could work. It'd be a bizarre choice. But I, I see I'm having a hard time imagining how that would make sense with this I'm character. I'm imagining it. It's, it's, I can be lost. That's what I mean. Like, it's... it's um, I, I think it's very much unsuitable because of the fact that it, like, can imply a sense of chill and that this guy is actually kind of possibly fun and funny. But it's like, well, no, 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 we're not done yet. The scene actually has the most harrowing thing to come. It's like, ah. I think it's Did you think it was keeping... tonal whiplash at the beginning of Infinity War, though? Like when uh, Thor cracked the joke about Loki being a bad brother because he had the uh, Tesseract? Um, and yeah, right. I think that actually comes close. It's You've got to be so careful in that scene because it's like super duper dark. Yeah, because Loki died almost think... like two minutes after that joke is said. So. Um, I would actually even argue it's close to screwing with Thor's character. Like, I don't think he'd be concerned with making fucking jokes in a situation where everyone's been killed. Well, then that's the criticism for me. I don't have a problem with the fact that we do humor and then we do scary things soon after it. Because well. this is... Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think that it just... Uh... Yeah, I, I think it's a really poor choice of... People are saying, um, like, fucking basically. straw man cap. I gave a hypothetical. That's not a straw man. It's a different I'm thing. not actually... I'm not... I thought they were talking that I was straw manning, so I'm really not sure <laughs> who's being accused of straw manning, but I don't think anyone is th so far. I think we and uh, Cap... I'm, I'm not sure about movie cynic, but we're happy to entertain the most extreme of hypotheticals. I find them very fun. So be prepared yeah, for I'm that. I'm totally game. I don't. I don't have a problem entertaining the like the unicycle hypothetical. It's, yeah. I, I just have a hard time picturing a scenario in which that would be in character for him. No. I, yeah. No. Were... I get it. It's, I think what I'm trying to say is like even if he were a literal like space clown and that's him powering up his powers, I would be like, <laughs> we need to change this. Like I understand you can justify it in the script, but we need to change this. Like it. You know I'm not sure I mean? about that. I, well, I mean, I I can understand. It, the potential for that, but I could also understand the potential of like this is <laughs> if you imagine he's a goofy space clown character, like if if he really was like toying with his victims, so to speak, if that was perfectly in character for him and he was doing silly goofy shit, I think there's value to be derived from that in the in the juggling of the fact that this is juggling, haha, because clown. Um, in the juggling of tension and horror as well as goofy silliness. Um, someone asked, uh, how would I have handled the scene then? If he hits him with the arrow, what do, I, what do I have him say? What do I have him do? And I think you can actually edit it so that it would be the scene that I would probably want, which is he looks over where Kraglin kind of is. Kraglin just fucking cowers, and then he carries on because he's got a job to do. He doesn't, like, stop to find out who fired that thing or what it was. He just keeps moving. Yeah, um, we see his face um, where, where it was once confident. Now it turns into, you know, his, his sort of expression drops and... You know, we have Adam look over, and then you know Craglin's already taken cover behind some, uh, you know, behind something. I also didn't even laugh during that, so it, even its intent of being a joke it didn't even work for me. And like, it's consistent with his character throughout the rest of the movie. I feel, but all the same, like when um, when he's stabbed, not much longer after this, like his reaction to that is enough to inform me of what his character is going to be like the rest of the movie. So like it, I could have just eliminated this altogether. What do you mean? Didn't oh, do you mean like you wouldn't have had him in it or? I'm sorry. Uh, you broke up. I couldn't hear you. Uh, when you say you could have eliminated it altogether, do you mean you wouldn't have had it all in the movie yourself or? No, like uh, that, the joke itself, like the arrow is, uh, the arrow hitting him is fine. And I would have just had him brush it off and keep walking. Oh, you're saying as a way to set character, joke. it's taken care of with the stab anyway. Yeah. So, and that the yeah. joke wasn't funny enough to save anyway. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Cause when, yeah. Cause when he gets uh, stabbed by Nebula, his reaction, it like, that was a great introduction of what his character, what his personality is going to be like, like his shock. Uh, was fantastic there. I really liked that part. So this was I like that part too, yeah. but I wonder is it establishing the same thing that this little moment is also establishing? No, but I think it's a good uh, setup into what you're going to get later on. Like the um, when he's stabbed by Nebula 
and he's his pure shock by it and his actual delivery like the dialogue that they write for him is a, I feel like that's a good introduction to his character and then we can get into the goofiness as it goes like it it's uh it, it it's a good setup into the goofiness later on I didn't need the first thing that comes out of his mouth to be a goofy line like this See, I, I have no problem with the joke. Mean, first of all, I found the joke funny. So if you didn't find it funny, obviously it's not going to yeah. work for you and it would be better yeah. if it was cut. No problem there. I don't mind the ping ponging back and forth with tones. One of the reasons I wanted to focus so much on this now is because this is, I assume, going to be a criticism throughout. And yes. I and I think I, I wanted to focus on it now because I don't, I really don't see any problem with going back and forth between these things so long as they're not, undermining each other in a like in a literal sense like but we're not making a joke of quill's feelings in certain scenes yada yada things of that nature or you know we're not making him we're not making this character because he's still threatening right obviously mm. but the we're not making him less threatening with this joke and for better or for worse i have a lot of problems with his character as we'll get into but the sort of goofy aloofness is part of what's being established and i think it's important to a degree. Um, I think I'm inclined to agree that the joke wasn't funny enough to keep as well, like as an additional thing, but that's going to get real hard to, <laughs> like we're not going to get very far on that other than just saying I found it funny. I didn't yeah. find it funny. It's like, that's probably as yeah. far as it goes. Um, someone was asking as well, how come the Thor one doesn't cross the line but cuts close? I'd have to rewatch it and I'd have to remember if Thor is like, this is after he's been beaten up already, so I don't know if he's, there's an argument to be made that he's a little bit I don't, I don't want to use the word delirious, but not um, not straightforward thinking. I would need to like check it out to see if there's any arguments to be made for that. But like I said, it would be something that uh, I would half consider to be something that I would kind of think is inappropriate, considering everything that he's going through at that moment. He's not like, um, I mean that that kind of that kind of gets changed as time goes on, right? Because or they they kind of turn him into a clown, but I think that's before that. So the argument would be made that he would have taken it more seriously. Even with Ragnarok, I don't think he's the kind of person that just um, uh, fucks around with everything no matter what. But when you get post Love and Thunder, I'd say it, it's it's to be expected at that point. How, how do how do you feel about the uh, no? Nah, those foundations are gone. Joke. How do we I've, feel? Um, I found it funny, it? but I think I completely agree with everyone's criticism on it. I can't really defend it. It's um, Asgard being destroyed should be treated with a hell of a lot more dignity than that. I agree, yeah. Uh, like I said, it, whether or not I find it funny, I wonder sometimes should be irrelevant or not. I'm not sure. It's uh... yeah, that's why I'm I'm more focusing on the the tonal whiplash question to see if we can come to sort of any meaningful, um, mm -hmm. any yeah, no, I get you. meaningful standard that isn't all preference. This is it's it's a tough conversation. Uh, whether or not something tonally matches, I think if you know sometimes the best information you could even do is like run a poll because we just can't get much further than that. But uh, James Gunn, Taika Waititi, even Joss Whedon, and uh, even Quentin Tarantino, like the, a lot of them play very hardcore with switching tones quickly. Um, I think it's a high risk, high reward sort of thing. And yeah, yeah. So, um, it works. It works. Yeah, he shoots Rocket, then uh, Star-Lord starts shooting him, and uh, Drax grabs him and says, I think, pick on someone your own size. And I will say it was nice to see Drax, like, fuck him, fuck him up a little bit before yeah, obviously starts losing. Yeah, it was very nice. Him. Yeah. I like to see Drax um, having use beyond what I think is yeah. unfortunately his fate wow, as a result of other is, films. Uh, I like he seeing has him gradually be become flanderized. Yeah, uh, he's, he's the, goofy, the goofy guy who's kind of um, who's he's so literal that he can, you know, like he he's. I, I'm not even. I, I feel like I can. I'm struggling now to even like really pin down who I think he is anymore, as I was trying to explain <laughs> that. So that's definitely one of the things I don't like about this movie. But I like did that. Did that process begin earlier for you guys? In terms, I of actually would go as far as saying him? Genesis. This might be Guardians Two. They really crank up how funny he is. Yeah, and uh, he is really funny. But yeah, there's a lot of jokes that the, are pretty good. The thing is, is that in the first film, he is really funny as well. But he's also taken really seriously because we've got like a core drama there that's propelling him forward which is the ronin you know killing his family yeah. and that's like a mm -hmm. big motivation for him and the more that we moved away from guardians one the less 
that that has been addressed. It's it, it doesn't feel like we're moving past it. It feels like we've we're forgetting it. You know, as time goes on, we're sort of forgetting that. Um, obviously, there's you know stuff relating to that here that we can talk about later. But mm-hmm. by this point, it's like yeah, it was nice to actually see him kind of taken seriously to some extent. When it feels like, especially by the time that we're getting to like Infinity War and Endgame, this film, you know, uh, his introduction is almost terrifying in terms of like how people will see him he's like he's a big buff knife wielding psychopath and he shouts and you're like okay but then he says some stuff that's kind of like that's actually hilarious by the end of the movie and i think it's best illustrated when he kills um uh the the guy when he pulls when, when he says finger to the throat means death after killing him um yeah. remember peter's reaction is like okay like it feels like man you're a fucking threat but luckily you're on our side yeah. um and that was kind of Drax. And then by the time you've completed the second movie, he's actually kind of super lovable and fun. And then Infinity War, he's cracking loads of jokes. And it, that's just become Drax's thing. He's the funny one. And I mean, you know, of course, like Infinity War, it's, you know, worth noting. That's a film that obviously has to balance a lot of characters um, that need time with Thanos. But remember, like, at the end of Guardians 1... Um, Drax basically concludes that uh, his iron needs to be directed at Thanos, that like Thanos is ultimately responsible for his family's death. Uh, and we just, we never really got anything for that. Um, nope. He, I was hoping he this was, movie he would. Was as, pull that out. Yeah, well, I'll I mean, it. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, all right then. So, yeah, uh, Rocket is like. He's bloodied where he's been shot. He's, uh, like, gasping for air. Mantis is, you know, screaming for help for him. And I'd say the, the shots give you a distinct sense, like, oh, shit, this this matters. This is not, like, a, an energy it's blast cold. where they get back up. Yep. Which, um, mm-hmm. I think that it's not even just Guardians. It's just, like, the MCU. Like, when someone gets hit with energy blast, I just never know how it's going to turn out until I see <laughs> them after it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like getting shot in the chest in general or someplace. Or, like, like what does this gun do? Is it... I got to figure out. I don't know what yeah. this means yet. It's not well, it's good. It's whatever, <laughs> whatever the rider really needs it to be at any given moment of this. Yeah. Point. Are we stunned or shocked? Or is it... What's, what's going Which, on? But yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear at this point that he's in trouble, which uh, is, I guess, different from like a level of inconsistency in terms of how much damage people can take uh, as the film goes on. Oh, yeah. But as was mentioned, uh, Adam does eventually sort of beat Drax, and as he's punching him in the face over and over, Nebula gets the uh, stab in his back that I thought went through his heart. Um, I don't know if... I'm- if you to kill Adam Warlock, you need to stab him in his brain or brain and heart. I don't know. He's pretty strong. It doesn't kill him. It just stuns him. And there is a sense for me that, like, with someone who's just done this to all of them, that they should really make sure he's dead. Um, but they don't. Yeah, no, they don't do that don't. later in the movie as well. Nope. Uh, there, there seems to be an aversion to like it, it's it's that trope that like for whatever reason just won't die. Where like faceless henchmen oh we should definitely kill those but the main big bad threat nah it would be we would be bad if we killed them yeah it's like, we'll be <laughs> blowing apart disintegrating bisecting uh yeah. d- d- throwing apart enemies later in the movie yeah the nameless ones that we can chop up but yeah, yeah. but the one who actually poses the greatest threat nah. the one who nearly killed rocket yeah <laughs> yeah but it's this is a trope that i am so sick of really wish it would go away especially for the guardians you know because they've always been the most or perhaps you know among the most morally gray of the mcu protagonists no so, hesitation with killing people yeah exactly uh so i didn't like that um then they give us like a tutorial on a new mechanic that's introduced and then they show a development of it right so um adam broke uh Mantis's, Mantis's arm. arm, and so she wraps this device around it and presses like go, and it fixes it right back up. This this med kit device, basically, that just it'll repair your body to whatever it, I guess, standard should be. And um, I, I think it's very purposeful. They show us that so that when they unwrap one and put one on Rocket, we can understand like, oh, so they're going to heal him. But I think I don't know if anyone's going to agree with this or not, but um, I think this is catastrophic to introduce something that good 
after the events of stuff like Infinity War and Endgame. I agree. Yep. It's an instant, like, it's an instant save. Like, yep. It's incredible. There has uh, to be, yeah. It's we... amazing technology, and they need to take it to Earth or, like, any planets where people don't have this kind of technology. They need to share it. Yeah, because we see it instantly fix the broken arm, like, instantly. 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 We see yeah. it. I guess it's implied that it will save Rocket from taking this laser beam shot. Uh, you sh yeah, you should always have these things handy. They're pretty. Uh, they're mentioned, pretty good um, to have around. You do actually see Adam uses one for his uh, his wound as well. Which um, I'm guessing these must be a very new innovation in the Marvel world. I just they're the kind um, of innovation you don't make. <laughs> you don't want to do well, that. Well, it's just going to make the world building insanely like complicated from now on. Yeah, it's, it's like introducing a helicopter like into Return of the King. And then, of course, <laughs> there was just, you know, like, man, you gotta share that around. You gotta make sure that, like, you know, Earth gets it. It's not even... Yeah, because as much as you could be like, well... Earth specifically, but it should be every planet, of course. Yeah, you, you might be like, well, you know, who knows what the logistics and distribution are. Like, yeah, but you've got to address it. You oh, have God. to. You. Well, I mean... To even have same... Star-Lord, which this, they wouldn't even do this, but if Star-Lord was like... Um, these things work. Uh, they're already sorting them out for Earth or whatever. You know, like like the, there's already blah, 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 just some throwaway <laughs> line that this is a new uh, technology and they're cycling it around the galaxy right now. It's a, it's uh, amazing the stuff. Problem but is, you know that it's not going to be something that will be remembered or accounted for in, in uh, later films. Yeah, and it's, it's no not way. even like you can't do that to other writers. It's so unfair. Like uh, well, we're already. Yeah. We're You're gonna big. get there with another thing that pops up too. That's even more important. Yeah, because yeah, this they're obviously gonna be doing mean stuff. They're gonna be doing stuff with it in this film. Like you know, James gets to introduce it and play with it as he wishes, but everyone else will suffer miserably from this introduction. Everybody <laughs> else inherits it, and it's a really, really hard thing to account for, and it makes stakes like oof. Makes yes. it tough when you have these. Well, and I'm assuming it's supposed to be the reason why a lot of things can happen in this film that you'd think have m more dire consequences, but turns out they don't. Which, um, uh, yeah, not not a fan of that, typically. Well, like, could they pass one to Rhodey to fix his spine? <laughs> well, just give it to well, I mean, he's already fine at this point. Yeah, well, wear the robot legs. Yeah, he wouldn't he have does. to. I think he does still have to wear the. Does he still have to wear the robot? Last legs time we saw him, point? I think it was Falcon and Soldier. And you, so? uh, it was a compliment we pants, paid. Right? To it. Yeah, you could see them through his trousers. Oh so. right, right. And a little light. Wow, but as you pointed out, like, yeah, just give it to him, plop it on his. Imagine, back. Imagine though, for like up. decades, and then he finds out, and he's like, "You never told me about this." And they're like, "Well, it's yeah, just, well, yeah." You know, <laughs> I mean, it's it's the same problem that Wakanda has uh, as a society yeah. is that they've got like this incredible <laughs> tech. That could like <sighs> save lives and that doesn't get shared. Yeah, because the reality of course, awful. it's They'll not that forever. the characters are supposed to be written as selfish. All the civilizations, it's supposed to be that. Well, it is that the writers are just not dealing with this yeah, beyond the scope be, that they want to deal with. It's just the thing about. that we want to use right now, like to help us with plotting without realizing mm -hmm. the massive implications. It's just Star yeah. Trek dodged <laughs> a lot of bullets with a prime directive. Um, yeah, it uh. It, it, it's handy. It's really <laughs> handy to have that around. Doesn't doesn't Star Lord like rip a bunch open out of a drawer and there's yeah. just a bunch of them too? Yeah, so they, they look common them, as so they, hell. They seem, yeah, there's no scarcity. They're, they're really cheap, I guess. <laughs> oh, and you don't even want to answer the questions of wait, does this cure cancer? Can this cure like anything? And then like, how does it cure it? And then can we? Come on, <laughs> why would you introduce it? Why'd you do this? Even if it is, you know, it purely fixes, like, broken arms or broken ribs, that's still, like, incredible. Yeah. No, it is, absolutely, yeah. Uh, so, um, they pop one on Rocket, activate it, and he starts getting frazzled. And they're like, oh shit, what's going on? And uh, Nebula sees it, and um, she says, get it off him now. And so my question at that point was just, is she doing that in general, or does she know what's happening and, like, does she recognize what's happening? I, I don't think she has any information that they don't at that point. I think she's I just. Think so. I think she's just saying to I get mean, it off in general. One way or another, right? He's getting electrocuted. It's probably worthwhile to take it off. Um, then we get uh the. I mean, the first flashback is when he gets selected right at the beginning. This would be the second flashback where he's been experimented on, and it's his initial throwing into his cage, and he meets up with uh, three other characters. This one's yeah. pretty quick. Um, 
It's, uh, the, the, the main thing you learn in this flashback is just that they're a bunch of other experimented on animals, and they're all very friendly. Yep. Uh, they're going to look after him. Back to the present, they discover... Wait, that's all, that's all we're going to say about that? Uh, For now, yeah, probably. Okay. I'm you almost tempted else? to delve into all of that, like, all in one go. The big, like, flashbacks. That's almost what I'm tempted to... Or when we get to our... There's there's certain flashbacks in particular that are, I'd want to... Well, if there's anything on. uh Cap wants to say about it that's not stuff that we get later, I'm fine with that. I really like the way this scene is handled. I really like... It's very effective emotionally. I really like it. I like his, his first words. I like them helping him out. There's There's some... I really like the way all the flashback stuff is shot because there's a sort of visual language that's different from the rest of the movie. We get a lot more close, like really tight close-up detail shots of like Rocket's eyes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, like the the way the film kind of visually grounds us in his perspective in the way that it never really did before. In terms of, like, I get what you mean in terms level. of um, they uh, there's a lot of shots that uh, emphasize perspective, particularly that he's a, a small little critter in this uh, mm -hmm. big crazy world. And yeah. I guess like the thing that would be worth highlighting in terms of the contrast there would like character. Well, not it, that it's it's um this horrible situation where these other critters are able to still like bring some kind of um uh joy and some friendship. level of safety yeah. yeah and and friendship to uh to rocket so that's that's good i mean i i like all of those scenes so but yeah there's uh there's particular moments that are really worth highlighting that come later yeah and uh, uh it's just uh, in case it wasn't sort of probably understood by anybody who hasn't seen this film it's like this i, I think he's like a baby raccoon at that point right he's pretty damn young pretty young yeah though. and uh obviously been given the I don't I don't know how exactly it works in terms of being given like sapience or sentience or whatever, but um obviously he can talk now and he's just had all of his parts like taken out, moved around, replaced, and he's just been tossed into a cage. So in terms of experiences, that's gonna be one of the worst you could possibly imagine, you know. He's, he's uh yeah. and he's absolutely terrified. The the area on his head where he just had, I guess, the new brain inserted, you know, it looks pretty raw still and you can see the stitching. We get some like close up kind of body horror adjacent shots yeah. that are yeah. very they striking and in this. powerful. Cuz good uh, stuff. Uh, I really like it. I think it's um in terms in terms of like getting backstory for Rocket, what we've had in all of the the prior films is like we've gotten little glimpses and hints as to his backstory and how it informs his character, but this is like this is when we're really sort of I would say that there's like a lot of setup in the earlier films of like laying the groundwork for the backstory because I mm -hmm. remember that there was like the scene in the prison when um yeah. uh, as they're getting put in the prison and uh, Peter looks at Rocket and sees that he's got like a bunch of these like metallic uh like it's like pads like um uh like inserted into his back um yeah. it, it doesn't look like it's very uh looks like it kind of hurts um. And it's just, you know, what what is to be inferred from that. And of course, like, the, the fact that he knows what a raccoon is and uh, Rocket is, like, very vehement. Well, by the time he gets to two, he's, like, very vehement that he's not a raccoon. Um, it's just, yeah. Th there's, like, a lot of the groundwork has been laid in the prior films for uh, to, to finally get, like, a full exploration of his past. Which, yeah, um, um... I mean, I'm all for, because Rocket, I really like Rocket. Um, Same. Always have. He's like he's like one of the few characters that I think escapes like Infinity War and Endgame in a pretty good place, barring yeah. you know like the barring broad, the general criticisms, yeah. broad plans that they concoct in that film. Like he gets a lot of good stuff like throughout. Uh, and yeah, feel free to you know throw in extra pros and cons and just comments because obviously mine are exhaustive, but not not entirely exhaustive. <laughs> I guess I should just say they're <laughs> long; they're not exhaustive. I um, wonder if if you breeze past it because you didn't have any problems with it or whether you don't like it. That's what I'm curious about. No, I think it's good, though I'd want to shelve a conversation for later as to manipulation through cute animals. I'm not going to reveal uh, what my position on that is, but we can get there later. <laughs> okay, I hope it's All the right. correct one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we come back to the present and Nebula's like plugged into... Uh, rocket and she's uh, figuring out what's happening. She says it's a kill switch, a device that's set to destruct if anyone goes poking around inside him or even if we use the med packs. So, question one. Um, why is he alive? Okay. 
Uh, oh, like, why does the kill switch have, like, this delayed timer? Or why is the kill switch not kill switching? It, uh, like... I, ge and I guess... Um, actually, I, I was about to try and... Because the best argument that I could imagine in favor of that is, well, what if there's, like, some mistake or something, and, like, the person who put it in there doesn't, you know, like, they want, like, an opportunity to fix it. But the problem is it almost defeats the purpose of, like, having a kill switch in the first place if the goal is to prevent people from doing it. Because, like, in the time that it takes between, you know, them needing to, like, how much time they have, um, that's, a, that's enough time, right? Like, if somebody, if somebody wanted to figure out how Rocket works, that's, like, enough time for them to So, uh, this is the thing. I think that if we had no additional information, I might be able to make a defense of this, but with everything we know, I can't. Um, first of all, calling also, it a kill switch is really bad for this, because that more means... More like a, yeah. a slow-acting poison that's been released... I don't think that's somewhere. what it is. Okay. Uh, I don't think I don't that's think what it's well, I, I say, no, I know it's not what's that. It's that that's how it acts. Mechanically. That's how no, not bad. even that. I think that what oh? they're trying to tell us has happened is they nearly activated the kill switch, and now he's just dealing with the regular wound he had, which is exactly. a shot to the chest, okay. and he's bleeding, and they need to save him. Hence why at one point in the film, liquid goes into his lungs, because it's not getting the attention he needs. Um, oh, okay. So okay. What I'm trying to highlight is okay. why is it called a kill switch and why, considering the purpose of this device within him, has it not killed him? It should kill him. They're lucky as hell so, that it didn't. They are lucky as hell that it didn't. I don't know if it makes sense to call it a kill switch. What I sort of interpreted it as is something that's like, hey, stop trying to dig around in there. You know what I mean? Because like, that's what it essentially does. It starts electrocuting them and then they take it off and it stops. The thing it doesn't, the problem is... Like, she specifically describes it as it's set to destruct if anyone was to go poking around inside him or use a med kit. Yeah. Is it like, uh, like it, it's, it's almost like it has two modes, like a code yellow, and then, then it activates afterwards? That's or, the thing I wish. Something? I wish they described it that way. <laughs> yeah, because the way she describes it makes no sense, because how it actually seems to act is like a warning, like, hey, it'll, it'll like, because I don't know if it really makes a whole lot of sense to like kill him to prevent people from poking around in there. Because if he's dead, still poke around. then they, then they yeah, can still poke around. Awesome. Well, the irony of that yeah. is that he believes that if you were to kill Rocket, that he becomes useless. And it's like, so what exactly. the fuck's Adam Warlock doing? Yeah, yeah well, uh, yes. definitely Adam Warlock is being an idiot about this and not in a way that feels super justified. He shouldn't be trying to kill him. But I, I think there's some justification for the fact that he needs him alive. Um, in terms of studying his brain, I, am, I definitely functions. understand. Oh that. yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, cool. There's utility to him staying alive, but ju it's just that's the problem. Like you know, so the kill switch job. doesn't make any sense if yeah, you need him you're alive. You're not doing a good job with all of these things that you've got in place. So then, you know? uh, what I found interesting thinking about this was, is he? A, would it do this with any medication, or is it a particular level of medication? He takes an. It's one of my things that was strange. <laughs> You'd think that this magic life-saving med pack would be something that specifically does not trigger the kill switch. Oh, well, I well, would actually argue that it doesn't make sense. Like this, this med kit is new tech. We've not seen this shit ever before. Yet Rocket's kill um, switch was installed. Oh. Like a bazillion years, years ago, or whatever. Years ago. Yeah, so it probably should be in. Or, or would that be the argument? The incompatibility is what's causing a problem. I don't think I can understand what's going on here entirely. I think that I'm trying to be as reasonable as possible, but let's say, you know, painkiller. It's like, you can you can have a painkiller. It's like, okay, injection. Uh, I think you could have an injection. It's like, right, could you have an x-ray? It's like, well, I think he can have scan. He's had scans, so I'm assuming he can have scans. It's like, it okay, seems so... to be like trying to repair the cyber the cybernetic parts of his internal organs themselves, is what because that's what seems to be affected by the blast most prominently, and so trying to fix that, trying to dig around into that, is what causes the problem. Yeah, like it looks like well, from what we see that there's an a, an attachment to his heart that's damaged, and I'm guessing that. It could have, they could have just written it so the med kit isn't sufficient because of his cybernetics. Like it, it can heal. I, I, it's such an easy fix to just like it's it can't fix the problem because you need an engineer, not a doctor, Who, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, like we need to find out. That's we a get a manufacturer yeah. from the company, or we need to have someone who has what internal it, what knowledge. Does it mean? What does it mean to run repairs on the product of a genetic, like a, a crazy experiment, not like a. Because he, like, you know, he's a raccoon, but he's also not a raccoon. He's got a bunch of other mechanical yeah, augmentations in there. 
how does it account for those augmentations? Like, because uh, of course, like a universal health pack that's going to work for everybody all the time, like that already is like a bit of a stretch, but then trying yeah. to apply it to like, you know, partially, well, no, a, a cybernetic organism um, to some extent. Mm. Yeah. That that seems like an easy fix. Yeah, that's that seems like a. I don't know why. Yeah, that seems like a good option. They should have thought and, about. Uh, Rocket would not know about this, right? Because he would have had to have told them otherwise. Uh, well, I think that they they uh they signal a similar thing later about him not mentioning any of this, and I could imagine that that extends to maybe he knew about this, uh, and didn't mention anything about it. I don't I think that would be in character this. for him to not mention he has a kill switch, right. so don't use med packs yeah, on yeah. me if I'm in danger. Yeah, because he would have said, yeah, if any of you dummies, you <laughs> know, of course, Rocky, use a med pack on me, it'll hurt. And you would have invested in, uh, in staying alive. Um, yeah, I would so... say that overthrow, because if they said, oh, how did that happen? He's like, I ain't telling you shit, just don't use a med kit on me. You know, just yeah, that sounds that. like a... He just lot, yeah, it, just, it messes up with my cybernetics. My cybernetics. So, um, yeah, not a fan of pretty much anything to do with this, and I think that they could have done it in a way better way, like, for example, what we just suggested, just destroys his cybernetics inside to a degree that they need his blueprints and, uh, you know, information on how to repair a creature yeah. like him. Especially if you, you know, because we'll establish later that there's something very unique about, um, let's say, his maker's technology. You know, it's it's not all, like, there's a mechanical aspect of it, too, but there's there's a a weird marriage of like bio like like actual like organic growth and cybernetics combined yeah, he's a cyborg there's it's not it wouldn't be hard for me to believe that they need this the specific information yeah. from his creator yeah and that prompts yeah, the, i think um... that would be the way to go because they still have to do the things that they need to mm -hmm. do to get it it's still a comp they still ha if you want to send them on this path essentially that's the way to do it they still have to do all these things uh, there's a quote from Nebula that I found curious. She says, apparently someone considers him pri uh, propriety techno bleh, proprietary, proprietary technology and uh, they sent that golden lunatic to get him. Is that something she read from his biometrics or something she's just assumed? I think she's just assumed it. Do you I think don't... that's a little that strange a... considering Adam I, shot it's him? It's a leap. Uh, that's got to be a, a stretch, yeah. That's it's a, a leap, stretch. yeah. I don't, yeah, I feel like that's... Um, <laughs> That's the right of not realizing how much Nebula would know at this point. If he was actually more consistent about trying to kidnap Rocket and get away, and they still managed yeah, to stop him, yeah. I could see her assuming that. But that make more so sense. much flows downstream from Adam just seemingly wanting to kill him. <laughs> Nebula read the yeah, script. Yeah, can't just assume that cybernetics are people's property. It's kind of racist. <laughs> so, um, they need a pass key. To install before they can use the med kit on him, and the only person that they assume will have it will be in Orgo as part of Orgo Corp, which is the, I guess, the company that's behind making creatures like Rocket. At this point, that's all we know. Um, they say they'll have records, and we may, uh, we'll have a way to override the switch at that point. You have, um, you know, they're not going to give us that information, and it says that's why we're going to break in. I thought it was strange that we assumed that they are just going to not give you that information. Um, hmm. I, does, does the company have a reputation? I mean, shouldn't that be in the conversation if it does? It, it should have that's a lot, right? Especially well, learning about, about our villain. Right? Yeah. Um, but I, I, re I remember, I feel like there was a line later that references that. That, uh, once they figure out, you know, big bad of the film. I vaguely re recall that. Yeah, they said that Orgo Corp was, uh, owned by, um, our primary antagonist i believe as like a, a shell company yeah yeah, yeah. I, I recall yeah uh, like shell company that's yeah that that sounds familiar i don't think it's totally unreasonable to assume that they wouldn't just hand it over um i wonder if it's just a possibility that should be considered considering the alternative and possibly leveraging the profile of the guardians as well as you know multiple the heroes it was something that our rocket said in two, like two time galaxy savers. You know, we can be pumping <laughs> up our prices. That's fair. Um, and then I would have prefer, I would definitely would have preferred that to some of what they do in terms of this uh, heist. We'll call it. Oh, we're almost well, there. Just, you know, <laughs> oh, it, it, like you can get around it by just having a line acknowledge that. Like, you know, should we even try asking for it? And then yeah, you literally just have a character say, "You know, Orgo Corp." 
Like, you, yeah, you, you exactly. know how they work. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so they say, we're going to break in and kill anyone who gets in our way. And he says, we're not killling anyone. He says, kill a few people. No people. Kill one guy, <laughs> one stupid guy no one loves. He says, now you're making it sad. I saw I like that, that joke. joke in the trailer, and I liked it, yeah. I like yeah. that joke, yeah. It doesn't feel like flanderized Drax. Feels yeah, a bit it more feels like something like Drax would say. I feel it, it wrote you know? right in from a serious scene of, like, we're going to do anything we can to save Rocket, and then there's a reminder of, like, we're, we're not going to just, we're not going to kill everybody. And he's like, okay, fine, but we're going to kill sub, you know, that it, it, I think that yeah. moves from serious into comedic very smoothly. Yes. Yep. Uh, I agree. Yeah, and then <laughs> I thought it was, uh, it's like, I have the coordinates for Orgo Corp, I have a contact near there, hopefully they can get us in. He's like, all right. Maybe I should wait until we talk more about that. Um, um, the reveal. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so then we get our first villain scene, introducing the High Evolutionary, who um, the Sovereign is not only working for, but has been created by, which I don't think there was any reference to that prior to now, right? Not that no, I, I don't can think of. I don't think so. I can't remember if there was no, maybe a throwaway no. line about how they were created by somebody, but... Um, I that's would certainly the case now. My assumption is that was not the idea when they were making Guardians 2, but that, you know, you can fit it in, you just gotta, you know, <laughs> sand out the edges a little bit, which I don't think they do quite so well here. Uh, there's one question that should come to mind immediately if the Sovereign are an ev high evolutionary creation that work for him. Anyone think of what it might be? Um, why didn't they just grab him in Guardians 2 when they, he was there? Or alert him. Yeah. Um, Do they know that he's looking for Rocket? He is explicit. I don't know why James Gunn wrote it this way. He's explicit that he's like annoyed at them for not having alerted him about this for years. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But I, I then I thought that doesn't even make sense because fucking Rocket Raccoon and the Guardians are famous. Has a high profile. Yeah. And it, I Galaxy it, Saver. It, it would be, it would be, I mean, it has to be, right? Knowledge that they're on nowhere and that presumably they've been there for a while at this point. So I wasn't too happy with that. I was like, uh, this is, I guess this gets into world building a little bit of character. It's just, um, it's just not elegant at all. It's very stapled in and you could have tried a little bit harder. Um, I, I would even submit that the, it's, it's better if you just said, I had no fucking clue the odds of you crossing paths with uh, you know, P1, I forget the full name. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't call him Rocket or Raccoon or anything. Um, just, yeah, yeah. just to, to, to imply, like, it's insane that you guys cross paths with him for whatever you needed, and, like, if only I had fucking known, I, I, we could have captured him then. I would have preferred that than him being like, you didn't tell me? And she doesn't yeah, address uh, that. She's just like, hmm. <laughs> it's like well, it's okay. just, I mean, it's it's a hard one to address because it's just it's just it's just not good. <laughs> it's just not not a good uh not not great. Um. So yeah. Uh. He's complaining that they're kind of shit. He says like they're aesthetically they're an ex aesthetic ex experiment. They're beautiful numbskulls with egos that have run wild. And that um. Wait, sorry. I'm, just, I'm still thinking about because remember they tried to kill like Rocket after he stole their batteries. So, imagine so well, so that's that. funny you say that for you. I thought that that's why Adam Warlock was heading to them at the beginning. I thought it was going to be like I'm still yeah. fucking with you for the batteries thing, but it had nothing to do with that's that. I, I thought that that was what was being set up in that post credit scene for two yeah. was that they want to get revenge and but but like that they, were gonna, more sense. they were going to kill the Guardians. So could you like that would have been the end of the Sovereign if they had succeeded. If, if you know if, if this film's events play out, it'd be like, wait, you killed Rocket, and that and that's like hugely <laughs> disruptive for the High Evolutionary. Oh yeah, like, he he would have wiped him out anyway, probably. So, well, it's just that destroys everything for him. But yeah. It's like a big thing that he's so damn. Ha, <laughs> jeez. All right. So he says, um, you know, and the, he's he's commenting on how they're incompetent, and he's like, and this one was meant to be the warlock, the apogee of your people. And she says, you removed him too early, he's still a child. And he says, oh, there's something wrong with him even outside all of that. Don't know exactly what he's referring to, um, but, you know, it's it's really up to you in terms of, like, personality traits. Uh, Adam Warlock is a strange person in this film. He is um, very strange. Yeah, I don't know what that's meant to mean. Is he just calling him? A, is he just calling him a retard without saying it? <laughs> Maybe. <so. laughs> 
Um, and yeah, he says, so, find find Rocket and return him, or I will destroy your civilization, as is my right as your maker. Um, and then he says, toodaloo. Um, I guess meant to give you an impression that High Evolutionary is a little, little kooky. Bit of a, yeah, little power nuts. Yeah, yes. a little. <laughs> bit eccentric, <laughs> you could say. Tad. Um, what got a goofball. It. So, yeah, you, you, uh, that's the... We now have that faction, and then you have him, um, uh, the High Evolutionary is like, how do you survive all these years? And the, he's like, subordinates, and one of them says, um, he's very clever, always very clever, and he says, I want his brain. And this is a moment where he says, is that the only reason you want him? And he's like, sad, and they look at each other, like, scared, and I was just like, I assume at this point they've grasped that, uh, their boss is not a fucking nice person. I'm surprised that that's surprising to them. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it lines up perfectly when you consider the flashbacks. Like, you only want him for his brain? It's like, yeah, just like he did yeah. ten years ago. Yes, exactly. Is the implication that there's a sort of personal grudge or vendetta there? Because he did, like, uh, I mean, yeah, do I something to that. him. Oh, his, no, if, uh, oh are you saying that they're surprised he doesn't want to get, like, revenge? Like, like, fuck him up? Further. I'm not exactly sure what what they're saying in this scene. I I had forgotten that, that could line. work. Um, I think yeah, I think that can that could work. It's definitely it can't be that they're surprised that he only wants Rocket for his brain, yeah. in a sense of study because that's what you want. Well, and it, it feeds into like it easily fed into a core character motivation that like this guy like that he that you know the thing that happened like that enabled you know Rocket to be on his own, like, that that, uh, that that could make him really pissed off, specifically. Mm. Like, angry, more so yeah. than just, you know, frustrated. He seems a bit angry as a yes. character. <laughs> I like the, uh, I like the performance. Oh, he's great. I really oh, like yeah, the I performance think, as well. I think well. he's great, yeah. Big fan. And I, I, there is something to be... Kang. <sighs> what was that? If only he could have been Kang. Maybe. Um, I'm I don't, happy I don't mind Jonathan Majors said. as Kang, I just think his writing is terrible. Yeah. Like, the whole I do... professional okay. clown thing was stupid to say, but I think Majors is capable of giving us a good Kang. It's just not the script. Oh, he was really good in Creed 3. It's a shame he might be a terrible person. Allegedly. 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 Might be. Might it's be. All might be, might be, might be. Anyway, what were you saying? Oh, I was saying that there was something kind of nice about the fact that I didn't recognize this actor. Yeah. He was really good. He really kind of disappeared into the role. I think he was, uh, inclined to agree. He was in Peacemaker. Oh, who was he in Peacemaker? Yeah. He was, uh, he was like the guy in charge of their like military operation thing. Cool. I can't remember his name. Um, I'm sure I've seen him in, in something else before, but I can't, I can't think of what that would have been. But yeah, I thought he was great. Um, yeah. So he does say, uh, they they say, why send the sovereign? And he says, merely a backup. I believe I know where they're going. Um, the thing about it is, if I was an advisor, I'd be like, you just told them that if they don't bring you Rocket, their civilization's gonna be destroyed. So that, that could cause problems in terms of them getting in your people's way. Possible. Because you've just made the stakes that they must collect Rocket. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the reason, obviously, I'm you saying that this whole civilization is... might be going after That's another person. Another interesting well, factoid is they, they have... have... That giant, uh fleet that they, yeah, they have the capacity control. clearly the money and the technology to move away you know and that's not even entertained like there's no the sovereign are not treated like anything of value in this it's it's just adam even warlock and his mum. they seem like yeah. a really powerful society at least yes. what we saw in guardians 2 they're not and like <laughs> remote controlled like ships that you know is crazy powerful well well, actually, there's, there's a whole film back. there where they are made aware of this and they evacuate the planet. Mm. But, well, that um, that's that... even a conversation that they could have, you know, like why yeah. why aren't we just running away from high evolutionary and then you can like further emphasize why are we not how making the ship explode with our guns. Uh, it, one of the first things I would do if I were rewriting this is I'd probably just cut them from the movie. Honestly, uh, well. agreed. <laughs> Yeah. I, I was going to say, by the way, not... I think it tracks that uh, the High Evolutionary would figure they'd go to the Orgoscope knowing that Rocket's yeah. been injured. I think that'll, that's solid. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's going to lead to but, problems. Yeah. yeah. That's right. 
he he does have the right idea, but he doesn't follow up on that right idea for some reason. <laughs> yeah, and so for the record, I think that the film is okay right now. We're not doing fantastic, but all the characters are like mostly intact. A couple of weird yeah. decisions going on, but it's mainly the will building and the plot is starting to crack. Um, but it's okay. But now, from now on, is where we start getting into uh, shotgun problems. There's just stuff everywhere that's going wrong. So this is going to be fun. Uh, they arrive fun. at the Orgoscope. And the first thought I had when watching it was like, oh, we're just turning up outside of it. We're just okay. showing up. Here that's a we bit, are. Like, you know, you, you, you're apparently going for a subversion here, but like, you're just floating outside there. Okay. Sure. Mm. Oh, well, yeah. luckily, here we luck are. Luckily for our heroes, the Orgo Corp, the Orgo Corp security is Orgo just Cope. pissed. It, it, well, their security is just fucking it's, pissed. It's world yeah. class. It's world class. What do you mean? It's great. I was about <laughs> to say, like, there's when they describe it, it's said like in a way that's like, Jesus Christ, you know, don't fuck with these guys. But it's like, dude, they don't even fucking look out the window. Like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to. So anyway, um. They say, like, it's not going to be easy to break into this place. And he's like, doesn't have to yes, be easy. Will. I was a professional yes, thief, remember? I'll just jam the signals. That's, yeah. that's some weak writing, James. That's, it's, set yeah. up, like, it's set up to where, like, obviously that won't work. You know, the way he says it so flippantly. <laughs> I'll just jam the signals. And like, then they try oh, and jam the signals. Yeah. And then something terrible happens. It's, you know like how there's a door with a lock and then someone starts lockpicking it and it's like, oh, well, yeah, we know that character for seasons that has been the lockpicker character. Of course, that's totally fine. This felt like a kind of overcompensation. I was a professional thief, remember? Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, I have watched... Ravager guy? You know. That's your deal, yep. <laughs> sure, sure thing, man. I've watched the films. <laughs> Um, then we have a bit of, uh, a bit of drama a brewing, um, mm -hmm. and I mean it in a good way, um, as he's sort of sorting these things out, he starts saying, uh, if I hadn't been drinking, uh, maybe Rocket, uh, you know, like, like having thoughts like that, which I think is super reasonable, yeah. and, yes. um, good, good stuff. Yeah, and then Mantis says, it's okay, he's your best friend, I think as a way to sort of say, like, that's why you're having these thoughts, um, and then, uh, Drax says, second best friend. Um, how do we feel about that one? That's a joke. Uh, it's yeah, all, I'm, all right. I'm mixed I think on it was that. all right. I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the buffer of Mantis makes that one land better. Um, it's like yeah, I'm, I'd I'm say so. more yeah, because yeah, she's doing all the more serious talking, uh, and he's you know there. He's never yeah. been the most sympathetic. In yeah, general. He, he's very consistently. Um, almost like a bruiser when it comes to actually discussing things with people. He just never has any tact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and he says, everyone around me dies. My mum, Yondu, Gamora. And then she says, Gamora is not dead. And Drax says a line that I was like, damn. He says, she is to us. Which is like, true. But like, still yeah. like, damn. You know? It's quite There's harsh. him being really blunt again. Yeah, it's a perfectly suitable line. And it makes sense. She, as she existed, is no longer... As she existed. Yeah, so Drax, his character being what it is, doesn't have that emotional attachment. Um, in, so there you go. So Different they person. um, they move through... She there's three shields around the Orgoscope, and they uh -huh. start moving through the first one, and it... it, it uh, I don't know how I would describe it. It's like pushing in on a big bubble until you slip past it. And the... Yeah, it looks like it more like it breaks uh, and changes colors, and it becomes visible. And it seems like the kind of thing that would be very noticed. Well, you only have to look outside. Alert someone you literally maybe. just have to look it's outside. Thing. That's it. I look think outside. I was not uh, even. Yeah. It would. You wouldn't even need to look outside. It should alert them. It should. Yeah. <laughs> Their shield is. Yeah. Big. It, even just basic, yeah. Uh, I, so, <laughs> well, it, I think in my head, I was wondering if they were going to do some kind of a joke of them talking about, don't worry, the way we punctured the shields, it keeps the electro singularity signal from looping on itself so that it's an unbroken, that's done it, no scanners. Uh, that, that can detect it. There's no way that any other machines or I'm systems surprised. will notice it. And it just cuts to like people looking out the window and watching it. <laughs> uh, did this, I think, in Mando season one, funnily enough. So I don't know why they wouldn't have done it here. Just say, 
uh, you know, like, Peter, they can see us. And you'd be like, no, they can't. And you'd be like, what do you mean? And then it, like, has a view from outside where it's uh, got camo or something. And then he's like, this is a class blah, 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 blah. This cost a fortune. Do you know what this ship can do? And he's like, uh, I don't think there's many. The only problem with that even, I would just be like, are these supposed to be, like, hyper sophisticated, the Orgoscope people, or not? I don't yeah. really... I don't have weird. radar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great thing they should be incredibly sophisticated like that i legitimately thought that it was too easy because it was a trap uh i think that's a reasonable conclusion to i come wish to it was a trap incredibly easy Me it's too. just so easy mm -hmm. and especially it's because he, it's... he just said i think i know where they're going yeah so exactly. i was like primed to think okay he's lying in wait for them i mean nope yeah but, they well. got there before he was able to send the message. He's very far away. He's like the Pony <laughs> Express. And he, they're, they're beating the news. Suddenly know, we care like about how fat, how long it takes for exactly. information to travel in the galaxy. Those jump points and everything, like that, they you, you could get around real fast with those. Mm -hmm. So Shield One breached, and then they uh, continue talking. And Mattis talks about how um, you know Quill does have a grandpa that uh, he could see, especially since he lost his daughter and you. And then he says, he screamed in my face and kicked me out of the room, which honestly, I kind of appreciated. I was like, oh yeah, shit, yeah, that's probably how too. he remembers I'm, it. I'm yep. so glad that they were actually like calling back to that as a uh, as an element. Um, yeah, and, like, and she says he's know, probably trying to protect you, that. and then uh, that he could still be alive. And he's like, he'd be like 90. Then uh, he's like, people on Earth die when they're like 50. And she says, what's the point in living? Are you about to die? He's like, I'm not 50. Um, yeah, what it, it's always confused me about how, like, yeah. how years are tracked because like, it seems like In everyone goes by space. birth years regardless yeah. of yeah. where you live. <laughs> It's a tough one. That's a tough one to account for, like, in, it's in, like, science fiction stuff, right? Because planets have very different days and years. Yeah, yeah. they'll have very different calendars, different. ways of measuring like, time, and we're not even going to get into the gravities. Venus's yeah. day is... Oh, but we are going to get into the gravity. Yeah. Oh, I guess we are, yeah, aren't we? Mm, that's right. Uh, but... um, I was going to bring this as well. not a very good joke. It's just kind it's, of... It, I like it. It, it struck like me as a little one. odd because um, Mantis considers 50... Uh, sorry, 90 not worth... No, 50 not worth living to. 50. Which is like, if she understands time like I do, it's like, 50 is not short. That's, what do you that's mean? That's half no. a century. I guess they're trying to do something that she's been alive for like so long that to her but, that's so small. I even I, I've never quite bought the argument of like let's just put it this way if I um if I lived to a thousand, um I did live to fifty. I know how much time had passed at that point, how many experiences yeah, 50 I had. Fifty years um, is still fifty years. I, I'm sure that we've had this conversation before, but like the relativity of how long time feels like depending on how long you're alive for, like that feels like it could be. A we have had this conversation factor. before because we talked about it with yeah. elves, and I don't buy for it a fucking might, second it... that they experience time in such a way that they like forget. Everything or whatever oh, oh, happened sure. with um, I mean, I'm not, yeah, like that was stupid, but with I the guess the notion stuff, yeah. of like the, the sense of the passage of time, like I feel like it could be complicated only like, maybe have... in retrospect and memory could be the only way that I think I could really buy that because they're still acting in real time with everybody else. And I don't think um, Mantis um, is the character to think this either. No, I don't, I don't think so. Um, but but I guess the 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 point being that like I uh. You know, like I could imagine, I could imagine a civilization or a species that lives for a lot longer having like trouble almost relating to a, a human time scale. Like I could see that causing problems, not to like a significant degree, but you know, to some extent. I think that um, all I would need to close it off and actually make it a joke I think I'd be totally cool with is he could say, I'm not 50, and then it could be a gap, and then. Like, how long do you think 50 years is? Because, like, it could be that she just has no idea what he's referring to specifically, and she could be mistaken, and it just leaves it open then. Because um, it also solves the problem of everybody, as was just mentioned, being on Earth time, which is really, really weird. Um, which, by the way, is something that... Uh, do you remember in the first Guardians, that was, like, the first proper time we've understood that everybody speaks English everywhere? And um, it was sort of made... A counter was made that it's like, no, they are all speaking alien languages, but they translate it for us. You know, quote unquote. But then, mm. you remember there was um a detail in when Peter was scanned that he has like translator microbes or whatever injected. That's something you can see on his description when he's uh, taken in. 
And so it's like, oh, so everybody in space has translation stuff injected, question mark? And it's, it's, the it's thing like, is, that's it's it's just, that's kind of like a tough one to account yeah. for, right? That's like the yeah. best that you can do because language... It, it's a problem because, as well, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a pet peeve I have with science fiction. Like you know, like th there is no like sh there's a lot of languages on Earth, um, but often the, when it comes to aliens, it's like oh they just have like one sort of mono language. When well, it's even a lot worse of when it's on Earth. several different planets all have the one language. <laughs> it's yeah, like, what? Like, <laughs> they didn't even drink the goo. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well, it's just, it's just more speak. You know, like in Halo, right? What are what are the elites speak? Well, you know, they speak, they speak elite. British. <laughs> no, they speak elite. We're saying Healy, but then also, I'm pretty sure all the yeah. It's they didn't like, Halo oh, One. That's just that's yeah. No, I know, but you know, they, they sort of changed their minds on that one and went back and yeah, forth on whether or not it's... they want them to. To speak in that alien language or, you know... In, Definitely in one of those kinds of, like, no, you can understand what everyone's saying, don't think about it, kinds of uh, things. I think, yeah, it, it is one of those, it is one of those cases of don't think of about it, it's like, rules yep, of fiction. don't think about it, that's, that's okay, we, we don't have to think about that one, it's just really, yeah. it's really hard to account for. Uh, so Mantis sort of sums up this conversation by saying, you're upset because so many people have left you, but you left people. Um, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, I th I'm not, not sure if I it? believe it's something she would say, but I don't like if it's um, an attempt at a point from the from the film because it's uh, he's talking about people who've died in his life and how much he like he made a point about how people die around him, and then she's like, "Yeah, but you ditched your grandpa." Do you think? Um, do you think that they, that that was meant to have anything to do with the big revelation of the Guardian special, like in terms of her uh, being his sister and like something to do with? A desire to retain and, and keep family connections. I assume this is, is all just sister? to set up the end. Uh, well, I mean, that's what it's for, but I guess I'm saying, like, if you were to, you know, do you think that there's an argument to be made that that's what's motivating it? Uh, you have to... <laughs> I don't know why. I've kind of wiped it from my memory, the Christmas special. Um... Well, um, she knows that she's Peter's sister, and right. that's something that she wants to come forward with, and presumably she's held onto it for a long time, and she feels that it's been beneficial to, like, actually oh. sort of embrace that familial connection. Maybe that's what's motivating it. I, 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 Wait, there's not brother and sister? You know? They are brother and sister. Yeah, yeah, Mantis is, uh, is Peter's brother. Because of ego. I'm sister. <laughs> okay, I was about to say, I, I, I didn't know about this, but I guess I was ego lost. would sort of make that, you know, happen. Okay. Um... In that case, it, I think maybe I could be argued into believing it's something she's said that's a bit clunky, and that's a better justification, oh. but I, I don't like it if it's supposed to actually be a valid point. Uh, okay. Isn't it... I, I sort of felt like it was just, like... I mean, it's clunky the way it's written, for sure, but that she's inviting him to consider that, like, you know, you still have family there, and that, like... Not that he's, like, a bad person for leaving him but like you know you like you've lost a lot but you there's your grandfather and you could go be with him if you wanted to you know it, what i mean i think so the way maybe that i this, misunderstood because this... my impression with combining if i hadn't been drinking maybe rocket i'm so sorry with everyone around me dies i thought that what's happening right now is he's feeling intense guilt for not being able to better protect people i don't think there's anything like i didn't get the impression that he's talking about how he wants more family members to be with yeah, and it alternatively might lead someone to take from that that he isn't justified in feeling the way he does because supposedly he left people behind somewhere. Yeah, which feels mm. completely clunky. Were those, yeah, were those which right, is... like immediately back to back? I thought there was some space between those moments. You got but maybe I'm. Well, you've got him saying that about Rocket. Then she says it's okay. He's your best friend, second best friend, and then he says everyone around me dies. My mother, but so arguably it's literally a continuation of what he last said. Okay. I guess I, I I had it in my head that it was like a kind of a related but separate conversation like a minute or two later. But... When I was watching it, I felt like if I were in the scene, I'd have been like, Mantis, calm down. Like, it's not appropriate. The fucking guy is talking about how people die around him and he's really upset. You don't like, And he's blaming himself. You don't need to talk about how he needs to talk to his grandpa because he ditched him. It's like, calm the fuck down. Another That's time. That's fair. Yeah. Um... It's weird that I didn't, I didn't, because I, I get that criticism, but I don't remember feeling that way about it in the moment. That's weird. Anyway. 
Well, would another counter argument be made that she would be appealing to the fact that as far as he's concerned, uh, Peter is like dead or, you know, missing for decades at this point, that that's like a situation where he can make somebody feel better about the fact that they might feel that they failed. Like, she probably right should have now, said that. You know? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd agree with that, but like, that's an argument that you can make in favor of it, right? Hmm. Uh, like a, you, to me, it's you, a super you, clunky and fast way of just being like, "Remember the grandpa?" Yeah, yeah. yeah I, know, I, I mean, that's sure. obviously that's obviously what the point of that scene is: is to remind. But the way she that. says it does kind of seem uh, rude, if nothing else. Yeah, it's 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 just very very she cool way of communicating that point, considering yeah. that Peter is obviously struggling right now. It's like, yeah, now is the time, you know, to do that. Maybe I'm not really remembering correctly. But the vibe that I kind of get from Mantis, or at least the idea of her that I had in my head, was almost like a therapist, emotional counselor, Deanna Troy sort of character who's able to get in touch with people's emotions and, like, help them emotionally and everything. And I feel like if, if that's the case, it's, it's very inconsistently portrayed in this movie. Um, I wouldn't... I. Because in Guardians 2, she, you know, she obviously has empath empathic abilities, but she doesn't have a lot of social tact. Okay. You know what I mean? She, she's yeah. not especially good at navigating conversations, especially not at the beginning of Guardians 2. Right. Um, is maybe, there, oh, go ahead. Is there something to be said about how that's how she should be after all this time? I think that's, well, that would probably years. be a better argument. Ten what years. was the last thing we saw her in besides the holiday special? That End was game. the last thing, and then oh, uh, she game. was in uh, where she Thor jumps Thunder. around and stuff. Yeah, yeah, she was at the battle. Didn't you notice her? That was before they gave her and... powers to fight people. They they gave that a that was introduced in like holiday special, right? Uh, jumping around anyway. and attacking people. Yeah. yeah, I remember us being like, would... what? I, I can't really remember quite good at that after this time period. You know, I can't also... remember what she was like in terms of social tact in the in like Infinity War and Endgame. She always. Oh, well, I wouldn't uh, use them as examples. She got dusted, right? Um, so she was out for a significant portion of all of it. But um, the thing about her that I would have guessed is that she has a unique insight to how people are feeling and what they're sensitive to, but at the same time tries to avoid, um, you know, like going too far in certain places but makes mistakes. I'm totally fine with that. I just think this one was like, it's like she's got a bone to pick. Um which is unusual for her, but she's a lot more aggressive in this film than the others. Yeah. Which yeah. I think is, you know, you can say it's reasonable relatively, because she's been with the Guardians for some time now. Yeah, I'd still want, like, a reason for that. Um, instead of being able to under... Especially if you can understand why people feel the way that they do, um, I, I feel like you would be far more understanding and you'd, you'd be because less my aggressive. My impression was that she had a conversation she wanted to have with him, and she just, like, butted it into something that was absolutely not what he was talking about. He needs a yeah, little bit, so like, he's bit. tumbling a little bit here, he needs a little bit of help. He's, he needs to be told it's not his fault and that he's, yeah. he's a good friend. Not to be told that you abandoned your family on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Though I will, though I will say, in, in Guardians 2, it's like, she doesn't have a lot of... She's not... She can feel people's feelings and, like, she feels them along with them, but she doesn't seem to under... Like, okay, so when she's first demonstrating her powers and she just kind of makes public Quill's feelings... No, yeah, Gamora. that's what I'm saying. She does, especially at the beginning, she's she's not very good at um, using the information well, she has, but... I mean, a lot of social interaction, that's the thing. Yeah, so Look, there seems to be a distinction between planet. being able to feel the love or the romantic and sexual love that she, he has for Gamora and understanding that he probably wouldn't want that shared publicly in this moment. Yeah. And so I, I think you could... I think the the best argument would be against this would be that by now she should have a better understanting of that. But it's another bit that... of that the amount of time that's passed, isn't it? It's just like yeah. Sometimes you, you think like be... it was it was ten Prime... days since Guardians two, and it's like no, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah, you should be getting some pretty serious advantage rolls and all your social interactions and <laughs> just the natural element of you being with these people for an amount of time. I just feel I'd be better at her job than she would be, and I'm just sort of watching as a out of universe observer. I'm not, you know, actually living with them day to day. I think there's so, some consideration for her. Um, she's not quite as like autistically coded as Drax was in the beginning, but there's a little bit of that with her as well. I think that can go some way of explaining 
her some clunky and blunt things she says. Yeah, to I'm willing to but... um, uh, accept that. I think that she says some weird shit sometimes. I just um, it didn't hit me right that moment. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so they burst through the three things, but then they stopped and they're like, "What's what's going on?" And then Nebula's like, "Uh oh!" And they look out the window and it's Rocky, Rambo. Uh, what else does he do? Expendables. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, Sylvester uh, Stallone's uh, outside, being like, yeah, "Hey," is you could, yeah, is bit, which is kind of weird. <laughs> um, this this will be on the lowest part of the list of issues. But why has he gone outside in a spacesuit just to go hey in front of the window? Uh, I, like, yeah. I just like to feel it of being floating <laughs> around in space. Makes me feel free, light, light like a butterfly. So it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, yeah, but anyway, oh god, this one's gonna be, this is gonna be a thing. So, of course you're all thinking, the Ravages are here. This is seriously difficult to figure out how we should talk about all of this, in what order and how, there's so many things. Um, uh, should I maybe go further or start now? I don't even know. Um, the fact that go they've even... Further. Okay, so, you got loads of Ravager ships, and they're gonna board the Guardian ship. Now... They start to attach themselves to the ship. I thought it was so strange. It's like, wait, are they porting on to like actual ports? And then, and then they just come in through the uh, the, the magic portals from the Doctor Strange um, type magic. One of them, uh, one of the members there has a, a sling ring, and so they can all come in that way. So I was just like, why are you why are you attaching yourselves to the main ship if you just have portals? What's what are you doing? So Good question. Ri- Here's what's weird is that my my first thought, I guess this is just how my brain works in terms of world building, is I see the 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 cool it looks like I don't know, he looks like a Naga. Um and he is like a he's like a serpent kind of guy, orange one, and he kind of cool looking. And he mm-hmm. comes in and he makes the portals and everyone comes in. And I'm like, oh yeah, of course, that makes sense. Because, you know, just because magic there are people of magic on Earth, that wouldn't mean that across the galaxy there wouldn't be all these people who wouldn't know about magic and they'd, you know, figure things out in their own way. And then I'm like, you're right, Rags. We should start oh. with the positives. Yeah, because that's legitimately <laughs> the first thing that came. No, because I mind. agree. Um, I thought it was really cool to see Doctor Strange type magic, but as part of a different alien and culture. The idea that this stuff isn't just for Earth. This is everywhere, and it can be discovered and understood and used. Like that's cool. Yeah, man. Especially if so it neat. was used effectively. Well, uh, yeah, because this would yeah. be like a way to use it effectively in this moment. We're boarding you instantly using portals, bypassing your defenses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right now we're I'm fine. Like, yeah, yeah, that, make, yeah, that makes well, sense. Actually, no, we're, um, we're not actually well, fine already. because well, We're not quite fine. <laughs> yeah, like, wow, that's really cool. That's some real Naga shit. Yeah, so, there we go. Avoided that landmine. Now, um, unfortunately, that's like all the positives I have about that. Uh, because... If we rewind just a little bit, right? The, the reveal here... Is that they've that's this is the contact from Nebula. She has contacted um I may as well just say it's 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 Gamora, who is a part of the Ravagers, to meet outside the Orgoscope in order to construct a plan to get what they want out of the place. So the first question you'd have if you've been listening close is wait, why did they meet past the third shield? Yeah, exactly. They, they <laughs> what through. in the fucking world? <laughs> that means that the Ravagers, I mean... all the Ravagers ships got past the three shields. Yeah. And nobody noticed. What nope. the fuck? Why even do it like that? It makes no Why sense at be, all. Be you see, that's just how good inside. the Ravagers are, too. That's just Why? how good they are. They're <laughs> I think, so like, talented. This is what they... Mahler, this is what they do for a living. They're really good at it. Orgo Corp is like that house that puts the security <laughs> sign in their lawn but doesn't actually buy it. Beware yeah, of dog, yeah, they, they don't have they a dog. They get an ADT sign and yeah, they stick exactly. it in front of their thing. Or maybe they put a, yeah, a, Ka- a Kawe Kanem and they put it on the, the fence there and they don't actually have a dog. And, <laughs> and no, you know. Firstly, it should they, be the, the of course, all meet. security cameras that aren't on a, on actually hooked up. They should not only meet outside <laughs> the shields. Why all of them? Why is there so many ships and so many men when the whole thing they're giving them is going to be information and some suits? It's dramatic this way. It's more dramatic. Correct. Um, it gets worse than that, you actually. Know, you know how maybe sometimes someone says, hey, I'm going to uh, gonna go get some groceries, and uh, I won't be long. I'll be right back. And you say, you know, I'll go with you. And they're like, yeah, sure, let's go. And there's no reason for you to go with them. But, you know, you want to hang out. You want to be social. Hang out near the organ scope. You just enjoy being around with them. 
Yeah. You, so you want to be social, and you know these are your buddies and everything. So you just want to, you know, be included and let them know that you're still there, and you can you can chat there and on the way back you don't just have to awkwardly listen to you know the radio and you could yeah. be like oh what's that and like, it's a dragon fruit it's five bucks you want to try one like, yeah sure it looks like it's a really amazing tasting piece of food and you're like well actually they're quite quite mild it's like a very slightly sweet kiwi and you're like really and he's like yeah yeah we'll go ahead and we'll get one so that you know you know what they taste like but they're not nearly as exciting as the outside might lead you to uh, believe Metaphor. Analogy. <laughs> so, we, uh, we, covering the why are there so many of them, covering the why would they meet there, you don't even have to, like, do the whole why didn't they meet outside the shields, it's why didn't they just portal? Who needs them? You don't even need to move your ship. And yeah, before anyone portal, says, like, well, yeah. they'd have to be able to, like, see it, right? It's like, no. Uh, no. No, they're totally not. Work. No. No. Nope. It's, yeah, uh, it's they are the most overpowered, like individual mechanic, yeah. I think, in the MCU. It's insane. I sure wish we're that's not, how they worked. <laughs> we aren't operating under the this rules of teleportation like yeah. Jumper was. Well, even Nightcrawler uh, in the X Men yeah. movies. Fall back. Um. So yeah, already it's causing issues significantly because they always do. If I was forced to have someone with portal tech in my movie, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> like, especially with how the best use one works. Yeah. We need some rules. So, um they they all pile in because I think I think that kind of does it. That's all the many different ways that's incredibly wow. stupid and all the ravages seem like absolute fucking idiots. I don't know what the hell's going on there. They all board, they all come in. Drax is about to like start fighting with them and and they like calm down like don't do it and then um uh, Nebula says, "We have an appointment." They say, "With who?" The the ravages say this, "With who?" Uh, Gamora is not great at distributing info. There was a Neither is Nebula. in the line of <laughs> there, look. There's a big breakdown in the lines of communication just for everybody. This communication's really important. But this is more dramatic, though. But it's so, so funny is... to think that fucking Gamora said, "We're all going to outside the Orgo scope. We're going three shields in." We're going to wait until we spot the Guardians and move our ships according to where they're coming in, and then we're going to board them. It's like, oh, okay. Why? Yeah, Shut instead up. of meeting, like, Because there's an audience else. watching at home. I, I don't even... So there's no reason in the plot for them to have no. not just met up earlier before this. Dude, there's no reason for any of this to happen would, this way. What it would mean is that you would have Gamora present on the ship as they went through the barriers and for the conversation of, you know, this stuff. She could be present if you wanted to have her there now. But instead, it's it's this. This is the this is the, the events that transpire. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to Nebula not telling the team. We're just talking about Gamora not telling her ravages, which makes zero <laughs> sense whatsoever. Especially because the whole point of getting them here is to fucking tempt them with money. That's the whole idea. Yeah. How'd you get them here otherwise? Don't know. Yeah, really strange. But then she's like, with this Gamora, is, and it's like, <gasps> before you, <laughs> before you move on, uh, this is one of many things in the movie where I, I don't. It, it's a problem that you could just not have if you didn't make it this way. You know, if, yes, that's that's a weird way of saying it, but it's something that they made a deliberate choice to have like this when it would have been so much easier if you said nothing. <laughs> like, there's so many rather easy fixes in this script. Not all of them. But some of them, it's just like, oh, just don't include the person saying that, and the problem goes away. Yeah, or just don't even have this moment of, yeah, like half, like like fake out drama, like, oh no, we're yeah. being boarded by ravagers. Uh, well, what, what could possibly go wrong next today? Uh, uh, and then, yeah, just have them, just have them meet up, and the drama is them meeting up with New Gamora. Yeah. And that's it's, own a, it's already good. It's our, I yeah. mean, well, you know, it has its problems. So we'll, well if we can, get into, but would mind no. broaching the subject now with her introduction before we get to the nebula side of these things? Um, Gamora is a ravager. Does that make any sense? I don't see what her, I, I don't, I, did she have that strong of a connection to the ravagers before this to where that would be where she devotes her time and Sorry. attention now? Thing to make clear, remember in Endgame, this is 2014 Gamora at the same time, like maybe a day before Guardians of the Galaxy takes place. A film so in that's which the Gamora that we're he allies with, with the, the Nova Corps to save the universe from untold yes. horrors from Ronan and the film Thanos. in which she is the central driving force for the Guardians to 
do the right thing, essentially. Yeah, the Guardians want to universe. sell that stone for money. Yep, and, you know, Rocket wants to just, you know, and leave. Not and she's like, no, Gamora Thanos one. can't get it. Yep, that's the Gamora that we're dealing with. So, uh, yeah, she doesn't feel like, uh, she doesn't feel like she's going to be doing much well, ravaging. Well, it's just, yeah, jumping from her there to Ravager, I really... I could maybe buy it if we were talking a way earlier, Gamora, but the fact that it's the one that's pretty much the Guardians of the Galaxy one makes me think, like, oh, shit, did you forget? She's kind of, like, the most moral one out of all of them. Well, I mean, remember how opposed she was to giving Yondu the Power Stone, yeah. how, like, that was untenable. Yondu well, so is a Ravager. He's not the Ravagers, but he's a Ravager, you know? Well, so here's here's my question. Is there an argument to be made that she it's that it would be within her character in 2014 Gamora to align herself with these sort of like mercenary piratey types, but the fact that it's the power stone and that all of this particular civilization that Thanos could get it. Um that I mean, those she... stakes mate that change. I'm not sure because she she seems to have a lot of in the first meeting with uh with um Peter she seems to have like a good amount of contempt for him um like yeah she just, considers him know. like a, a renegade coward like rogue type that yeah, just exactly. does whatever he wants at the cost of other people which is precisely what the ravages are the the only code um, the ravages have is no children the idea that she no would children, seek them yeah. out and join them doesn't in re any remote way sit well with me. I think that's a misread of her character. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. It just doesn't... I, it, 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 Loki had... So, let's just <laughs> briefly to get on the subject of Loki. The problem with Loki Any is... Anytime for you. The problem <laughs> with Loki is that they have taken from the timeline, they plucked Loki out when he was at his, like, most evil, and then they wanted to fast-track him to where they wanted him to be, which was not that Loki. Um, it, it, it's as if he might as well, you know, didn't... It, it's it's as though he didn't even die. This is not quite the same problem. Uh, if anything, it might be the opposite problem, in that she is very different from who she probably ought to be at that time. Kind of in the opposite direction. Yeah, and if there was a story that happened between then and now, I need to be made aware which, of know, what happened. It, which it's can been happen. a couple of years. It's been a couple of years, I think, at this point. Uh, oh yeah, not an impossible been... place to end up. Um, but we got nothing for the context on that at all. Uh, yeah, we this is a throwaway line from. This uh, is Luke on an island, and we're like, what, was, what the fuck is happening? What was it a throwaway yeah. throwaway line? I think Peter said something just along the lines of like, why would you join the Ravengers? Or like, you're not a Ravager. Oh yeah, he says that you were searching for a family. Um, ah, but right. I don't think that even comes close to... No, like, why would all. she <laughs> seek that out with the fucking well, Ravagers? All right, I, have a, well. I, have a, I have a question, because a big part of who she is in the first one is trying to prevent Ronan and Thanos from getting the Power Stone. That's obviously a big motivation for her. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, before this particular that particular plot thread comes into existence for her like who is she exactly because obviously she's something of a warrior right she's she's a little rough around the edges in some ways um i'm trying to understand who who she was outside of what we well, find it's out very important that that thanos and ronan don't get the power what we find out with the context of guardians 2 and 1 is that she's pretty much always been a good person she's just trying to survive under thanos's heel and she even says like to nebula that uh, the only reason that she ended up beating her every time and her resulting in those uh, cybernetic changes is cuz she just wanted to win and survive she had no idea that like it was creating horrors for nebula which um, mm -hmm. I guess she never saw any of what happens or how it happens because it wasn't exactly fucking easy. Uh, in any case, what I'm trying to say yeah. is that she felt guilty finding out that her winning against Nebula was causing her pain. And my assumption yeah. is, from what we gather, is that she's pretty ruthless, but she was always looking for an opportunity to subvert where needed. And that was all we saw in Guardians 2014 was that her opportunity had finally come to make a significant difference, but that everything that motivates her to complete that task is all a part of her character. Okay, so at the very end of Guardians 1, she decides to join them, and she doesn't seem to, like, the very, I think it's one of the last lines in, in the first movie, is the question of, like, oh, so what are they going to do next? She's obviously willing to follow Quill wherever 
he leads them and there's some discussion of whether they're going to go do noble hero things or go be kind of like outlaw renegade pirate types and he says a little of both right so obviously she's okay with some level of um well i think the the implication is that they do good things but if they can get paid for it that's cool too okay i don't think she'd be okay with robbing people blind or anything I mean, she even, uh, like, you see that several times, like, in subsequent stories. Remember when they were going to the distress signal in Infinity War? She was the one who was trying to keep them on task while they were thinking about money. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's like, yeah. yeah that's fair. Kind of, uh, the... and, and then there's also the question of, like, she should probably... What what happened between, you know, like, when she, in Endgame, when she, like, you know, what what happened? Where'd she go? Um, and why didn't she want to, you know, <laughs> Good question. Like, what was the deal with, uh, Nebula? Like, that feels like a connection that she would be... Yeah. Does she have no, you know what I mean? Especially given that she's a different Nebula to her as well. It's like they both have the opposite problem, right? It's like the Nebula that she knows is not, like, you know, the main Nebula. Well, I, so um, I would argue this is a result of an overcorrection. Uh, the... Reality was, I can't just put those two back together now. That's a different Gamora. And everyone all across the world is like, you know what, James? That's that's fair. And I don't expect yeah. you to do that. And uh, if you don't do it, I have mad respect for it. Because, yeah, she's not the same person. This is not the same character. And so he went, yep, she isn't the same character. So she's this. And you're like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, they they managed to avoid the, the thing that I didn't, you know, that I didn't want to see. Like, that didn't happen. Good. Because that happens a lot in media, I feel, and in a lot of discussions. Yeah. If I clone myself and have sex with him, am I master bit? You know, it's like level one, you know, kind of approach to this kind of subject. But um, like, like just because you clone someone or go or get someone from another time, like you're both the exact same person, and they treat it like that, and that's just not. That's not how it works. So I was, I was worried that they might try and get you know Peter and her together, or that she would just be like a repeat and we'd be seeing the same thing again which seems like kind of like it would be kind of kind of mean to the original gamora in a sense if they just did that um mm. but it, remind it's, it's kind of complicated okay. i didn't uh, sorry i didn't sorry to interrupt but i was wondering remind me is, is this a gamora uh, <laughs> is this a Ghidorah. gamora <laughs> king Ghidorah? is this a gamora I mean, from another timeline or a the same from... time same timeline, uh -huh. but further back. Uh -huh. yeah, which yeah, which, would, which would count as a different back. timeline at that point, but it's a distinction yeah, without yes. a difference in, in terms of her character. Okay, yeah, so yeah. It, it wouldn't go any way of explaining that she's a different person. Yeah, no. it would have been uh, earlier it's a in the MCU. temporal Got technicality. It. it doesn't. Yeah, gotcha. It's just she's she's an old version of Gamora, essentially. Like we are all old versions of ourselves uh, back then. Just, you take Gamora from Guardians 1 just take her and skip everything that happened between, you know, Guardians 1 to now. That's who this Gamora is. Mm -hmm. one, one of the things that, that makes this a little confusing for me, because I, I think I agree with your criticisms for the most part, but part of what's strange is that the Ravagers that we see, um, especially the ones that lead a mutiny in Volume 2, seem to be markedly different from the ones that Sylvester Stallone is the yes. leader of the, the, in terms the, of ethics, not just in terms of... Only the kids thing. That's the big difference. Yondu dealt still in yeah, the kids but, for money. Yes. Yeah, so they're, they're, thief. they're thieves. Yeah, they're pirates right? in well, space, they're, basically. They're space pirates, yeah. Yeah, I think the movie sort of treats them like they're more noble, but we don't really see any difference other than what you said. Well, the reality said, is they're that... not. Um, Yondu, as soon as he found out the children were being hurt, he stopped. He had no idea that was happening. Um, he just thought he was delivering children for whatever purpose, like just there cargo. does There does seem to be a difference in kind of the people that uh, Zandu was leading and the people that Sylvester Stallone is leading. I don't think we see enough of Stallone's people to really say. That's kind of what I'm getting at, is that um, based on how they're treating them in this movie I, I they the movie seems to treat them that they're actually much more noble than the other faction we saw but i'm not sure they really are like i said the ravages they just attack steal and they'll even kill as long as it's not kids that's just the only thing they don't do which uh, i think the whole reason for that is to allow us to at least like them somewhat because if they have some some, some have form of yeah. going for yeah. them gotta have yeah like i could 
I could like, you know, Long John Silver. You know, there's something about him that's kind of, hey, it's kind of neat. You know, he's, he's an asshole, but you know, there's something there. So we we got to have that thing to latch on to. Mm -hmm. So, question becomes, why didn't Nebula tell Someone them? Someone said, wait, Stallone is in this? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone is in this movie. Yes. Yeah, he's in there. Uh, why didn't Nebula tell them uh, this was happening so that they could either discuss it or prepare for it? And the answer that's given is, she said, because you would freak out. And then Star Wars Oh, well, says, they're really freaking out now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what do you well, call first this? I was going to ask what you thought of the joke. The uh, freak out how? Like he does a... It's like a high... Uh, um, I... I think I'm okay with it. I, I right. feel like him... Are we, I, I feel like him kind of... That revelation was going to happen either way. And he's, it's almost like he's been suppressing or not looking forwards to meeting her because of some element of the weird timey wimey stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it works, unless I'm just missing something. But no, I, I, I mean, thought it was, it was I don't amusing. think it's out of character, but um, I was too taken aback by the fact that she said, because uh, you know, you're going to freak out. And it's what you've already highlighted. It's like, as opposed to them being dropped on him through a fucking portal, this is better yeah. somehow. Yeah. If you wanted to avoid, yeah, it's um. If you're worried he's going to flip out, like, this would be more of a flip out potential. Because Nebula would say, like, like she would tell him because she would know you'd have to meet them anyway. I'll tell you now. Like, there's no avoiding it. There's no. It's not like you're calculating a risk of well, we might yeah. not run into her, so I'm not going to tell you anything and gamble that we're not going to bump into her. Um. But that was you're gonna the, the plan was to meet her so exactly yeah, that's yeah there's you're not, he was not gambling here freak the, out, he was either gonna freak out then or freak out now and now has more potential to go wrong. Well, Drax nearly fights them exactly because he's like, Drax. That's, well, and that's well, kind well, of my well, point is if you had told Drax, oh, we're gonna get the Ravagers meeting us soon. They're gonna portal like, on board. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so the Ravagers would be like, hey, everyone, we're here. It's good to see you. <laughs> We're no, gonna portal on board. More dramatic, more dramatic than that. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and use our our portals, a portal guy. We're gonna Tim. stand out. He is gonna. Yeah, he's suit. he's gonna. We're gonna then, walk on board. Boy, this is so fucking useful. Tim is. He's <laughs> he is earning that paycheck. Tim is. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. He's he's, sure he's a, expendable. <laughs> he's a good guy. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Tim wasn't in the Expendables fringy. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, he is an expendable. Exactly. You got it, Rags. You figured it out. That's pretty clever. Yeah, I like it. Exactly. I like it. That's right. Oh. Yeah. You're not the Tim's only pretty person cool. Tim's quiet. Buttons. Tim's a good listener. Keeps to like, himself. Yeah, it doesn't cause a ruckus. No, Tim is to keep to himself. He's really social and he's happy to be around people and he makes emojis with his magic. But, you know, sometimes when he gets. Oh, he does back, make emojis. I forgot. But it's a human oh, emoji. Yeah, it's not an does. alien emoji because everything's from fucking Earth. Yep. Oh, oh God. That's. I. Oh shit! Yeah, yep, that's a good yep, point. Yep, yep. <laughs> all the good music out. is from Earth. Yep. All it, mm, mm. that's okay. I oh, think about you, cool. Fringy, whenever I hear aliens, yeah. because <laughs> this happens in uh, this happens in Star Trek a lot. They reference like Shakespeare and things like that a lot, and I'm like, guys, it's been like I I get the reference every once in a while, but like it's. Yeah, what's the what's the year in TNG? Is it like twenty five hundred something like that? Or yeah, they should be like the famous Halo. quote from Glish Manek, and then they say it, and it sounds kind of insightful. And they're like from the year twenty twenty. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, they wouldn't even have to say the year. They just you. It's it's like you yeah, know, yeah. the the what they they reference it so matter of factly, like everyone knows, and that's kind of like a little bit of world building, and and we get a moment to catch up, and like oh yeah, I guess they would say that yeah. But, hey, but here's the thing. What's the difference between that and that's the flim flam calling the slim whatever it was slimy? We can make fun of that and we can turn I, it into money, Fringy. I was about so, to say, there isn't necessarily anything wrong with this. Poor fucking Christopher Lloyd just, can't speak words right now, so it's mean to make him say a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Fringy was doing that voice to be Christopher Lloyd or to be the blue guy. Oh, yeah, that's fair. I, oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and he's uh and he's dead like and gone that that guy he'll be back again? boba K we kane con we didn't Cowboy see him get uh, blim blab no wait that was uh that was elephant what was uh, damn it what was someone in chat's gonna know kane cad, cad bane cad bane that's cad bane. it yeah, cad bane that's mm. right until he got stabbed. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd. 
Lol. One thing that I was about to say, because we were joking about Cad Bane coming back, and I said, well, it's not like we saw him get disintegrated, and then I realized, well, that, that, that's not that enough anymore. That increases his odds that, of returning, that right? That might even, statistically, <laughs> you might return yeah. more. Hasn't stopped, you know, didn't stop the Emperor. Of course not. Of course well, to be fair, that, that was a double Moff negative, because he got vaporized twice, which undid both of them. And it's not going to stop Moff Gideon either. Nope. He'll be bad. Little burn on his face like an Austin Powers. I uh, well, or he was a clone. Yeah, that's more likely. Um, yeah. so you have a line from Peter saying, "Never pictured you as the Ravager type." And then she looks at him and just says, "Who are you again?" Oh man, another uh, joke that I thought works because it's just realistic dialogue, but it's actually kind of funny. Like she really doesn't mm -hmm. know who he is and doesn't know why she should care. I don't even know who you are. That one doesn't work, I don't think. Not because it's not re like that's a really interesting comparison because it's it's dialogue that's accurate. But what the fuck are you doing putting that in the movie? You know what I mean? Because um, this well, one makes sense, uh, right? Like this is we're going to be addressing yeah. their relationship quite a bit, and this is the current state. But to have Scarlet Witch to be so furious with him, and he's like, I don't even know who you well, are. It's it's kind of it's kind of interesting because I think obviously the the original intention was yeah, like he he really should know who Scarlet Witch is because she's going to fuck him up. But but it's just really funny. It's just a funny thing it is. to say. It just draws somebody's... attention to the fact that this isn't the character that they have a connection to. Which was such well, a mistake. Just, you know, it, yeah, yeah, she's really mad at him, and it's like, who are you? You know? <laughs> it's, it's, I don't understand why you're so mad, yeah. but okay. It's, it's like the same joke in, uh, in Civil War with Ant-Man, where, like, you know, Tony's like, yeah. who are you? And it's like, oh, man. Like, it's just, yeah, <laughs> who are you? What's who? Who am I thinking of? Where someone, um, someone like goes to a villain, and the villain's like, "Oh, did I kill someone that you liked, or something like that?" That was who, uh, I... Ronan said that to Drax. He didn't remember who Drax is. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, that was but good. Then he, but then that he recalled great. later. Yeah, it's just you know that this is this thing that Drax. What is if Ronan about? was being a real prick and he didn't remember? He was just I making am... it up. He's like, "Oh yeah, I remember them." Well, he does. Yeah, they were. Uh, play he does that say that later. later. Yeah. Yeah. But at first he says, like, I have no idea what you're talking about, which obviously makes Drax furious. I don't want to be honest with you. Well, I mean um, that he was that he was lying, that he remembers him, and he just pretends to remember and pretends to recount their pain just to be a dick to Drax. That is more. also possible. He might actually... Apparently because, everybody's... Because he, everybody's, Ronan's uh, a real prick. Everybody's talking about M. Bison uh, saying something yeah, like that in the Street Fighter movie. I wonder who they're going to... That's live-action Street Fighter film. <laughs> Coming, coming soon. Apparently, Carl Urban's gonna is potentially gonna be playing Johnny Cage. By the way, in the Mortal Ooh, Kombat, that, be cool. that could be neat. Carl Urban is a good actor. I so. like him in everything mm -hmm. he does. I uh, like him in everything. Do you like him in Dread? Yeah, uh, yeah he's fucking great like in Dread. Dread. Do you like him in The Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers? No, I hated him in that. He ruined the entire fucking film. Yeah, learn how to secure a sword properly. Yeah, what an idiot Amateur. Loser. So anyway, uh, on the topic of what were we just talking about extensively? Wow, brain. Oh yes, yeah, someone useless. mentioned. Uh, someone mentioned. Did you like him in Doom? And they're like, Oh Hell yeah. yeah, that was the thing he was in. Hell yeah. Um, what, what we were talking about was the you know the the conversation between uh, Peter and Gamora, and that she didn't know who he was. We were talking about Carl. Right. Oh yeah, I was going to mention because we, we talked about, about the um, on on the topic of Ronan. Um, upon rewatching Guardians recently, I'm going softer on hating him or being critical of him. The criticism of Ronan was just that he was thin, but I'm starting yeah. to think like I don't know. It's fine. It, Sometimes he, that's better. Honestly. It's totally fine. I quite kind oh, of. I'll take a thin, like him. Uh, oh, the years of that that we've got of having thin, serviceable villains. Like oh. Oh, they, well, um, I'd say that the years that we've had recently of just shit villains. That's but, what I'm yeah. saying. Like, yeah. man, yeah. isn't it nice yeah. to have a thin, serviceable, mostly functional well, villain? Yeah, he's, he's a functional uh, villain. He's a he functional. is. I think Lee, yeah. Lee Pace does a good job playing him too. I do like. Yeah, Lee I Pace. think so. Lee Pace. So, um, we have uh, Stallone basically gives the uh, the plans out. He says Orgo Corp is defended by the deadly Orgo sentries. Ah. That's a good I know, joke. right? That's a great joke. Uh, you what do you guys think of that joke? <laughs> he says you don't have documentation <laughs> to dock, so all you've right, got to get Scott, to... Wait, 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 wait. What's right. the joke? No, the the joke is that they're not deadly at all, as we'll see later on. The deadly orgo sentries? Oh, I thought I thought that you were referring to it like 
the name Orgo Sentries was like a joke no, that I wasn't I'm, putting together. I'm making fun of the film. He's poking a because they're floating bone, around right? in their their outfits and yeah, mm -hmm. it's um. They, Don't worry, they we'll have, get to it. They have an odd <laughs> aesthetic. Everything <laughs> has an odd. Gonna aesthetic. get to it all. Else to get to first. He says you it's don't have documentation to dock, so you got to get in on your own. And it already makes me think like, can we get documentation to dock? Yeah, that might be easier. <laughs> uh, sounds like a really straightforward way of doing it compared. And he says once in, Gamora will get you to the records room to get pass uh, to get the pass key to override the kill switch. But if you get into trouble, we're not going to be able to bail you out. So. Uh... <laughs> So, <laughs> where do we even uh, begin with that uh, statement? I think that's the easiest one first, right? Like, yeah, we can't bail you first. out. Like, yes, easy you one can. first, portals. Um, we've had the portal discussion before. Mahler's talked about the portals in the Doctor Strange movies. We on EFAP have talked about the portals. The portals are an issue. <laughs> portals are a big issue. They're a huge issue. And um, they don't need to be here. It's they insane. They don't need to be here. That you um, establish the portals, and then you have the confidence to say, "There's nothing we can do to help you in that regard." <laughs> it's like you wow. are. Wow. When you're when you're putting these in the movie, you're rolling the dice on. It'll be cool for people to see that. I hope they don't think about it. Yeah. But by the time, because like for me, I would. I. It's just so much stuff is happening so quickly. We've just moved on real quick, and all those old thoughts are just gone now because I have to pay attention on the the, the scene but now. When you you know rewatch but, it, or go back yeah. through it again, you start to think, "Damn, man, what do you mean? If you run into trouble, you can't help. You got portals. Just portal them out." Yeah, you could. You could. Oh, you just wait, saw you on. using them to get on hmm. spaceships. Wait, you portal portal out. I mean, I guess that's another question as well. Portal in. Well, yeah. You know, Fringy, hmm. what would be the use of Portal in if they didn't know what room to go to? Oh, they do oh, know what room to go to. Know. Oh they my know exactly god. Where they're going. And they know uh -oh. what they're grabbing, too. Um, um uh oh. I feel like we've this just. Is such, uh, this is such an easy fix. You just don't. Sh don't have, have the fucking Portal team. guy. No, no, <laughs> don't put him there. But Get rid of him. You did put the Portal guy in there, and you kind of fucked up. Like. <laughs> Dramatically, God, it's such an easy fix. It's so frustrating. I hope it doesn't keep coming up as a possible thing to help solve problems. That would be awkward, wouldn't it? Like for like the whole rest of the movie, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if we were even to get rid of portals, just thinking out loud, it just feels like I don't know the 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 plan they come up with, which I guess we should have to go through before we can criticize, is a terrible one compared to what they could do. Um, it's nice that you call it a plan. Yeah, because it is technically it's it's technically a plan, you know, in in the sense Nobody that we panic will... when things go according to plan. <laughs> no. <laughs> no plan, it's horrifying. What's the plan <laughs> to defeat the enemy in battle? I'm like, all right, good plan. I like it. We'll surround them and destroy them. Like, that, that that is a plan. I'm glad uh, Muller pointed out that like, can't we just maybe get documentation? Because this isn't, as we'll find out later, this is not the bad guy's lair where uh, more secretive things are happening. This is basically just like a giant office building. It's a research facility, it seems yeah. like, of some kind. It looks like this is just, this is where you, but this also is where you prisoners, go to work. Right? Like, also just, like, prisoners? Are there prisoners? Like, just, I thought it was just a I'm research facility. I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. They have records on the, like, the prisoners, essentially. They have the records there, but they don't have... This isn't where all the dirty work gets done. They have a lot of security, though. Um, yeah, this is where... This, <laughs> this is, right. like... Yeah, yeah. Security, security, quote, unquote. Yeah. Yeah, they... Yeah. People, people get paid, you know? But you, before... you clock in, you clock out, they let you in. There's the speakers that say, Hi, we're such and such. Like, if you're a visitor, you know what's happening, and, you know, it... I mean, it's, it's for us, it's for you and me, You could but, probably you know, get a tour. You probably could legitimately get a tour if you're an investor. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. No, they could have posed oh God, as investors. If I could, yeah. That's what happens in Austin Powers. <laughs> <That's> so, <laughs> well, take take notes. Plan. Take notes from Austin Powers. Do it. Uh, so uh, we we break from there for a little bit to have another flashback. And it's um, it's basically Rocket proving to the high evolutionary and others that he's very intelligent. He's solving formulas and... Uh, just showing he understands a lot of complicated things, and he looks outside. He's like, "It's blue sky, a rocket." Just like, oh, because 
Because he's just um, a little animal that is fascinated by the the big blue marble that is... They're actually... I think he even references this. Is, did he say it's Counter-Earth at that point? I think that's the first reference to it, because that's where they are. I think so. Yeah, he... Yeah. I, I think we get the text says Counter-Earth, but it's not... No, I, I think I the forget. text for Counter-Earth is lighter. That's later. Actually, okay. Yeah, that's that's. We do learn that it's, you know, like a, you know, a place. It's, it's a place. Um, and, you and, know, uh, one of my favorite bits from the High Evolutionary in this film is Rocket saying, uh, what's the sound? And he says, music. And then he says, we like it? And he says, yes, we do. As just like a... Good. Even like seems to smile, like he's happy to announce that, of course, we like music. Music's awesome. Oh. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's essentially, in, in a way, he's talking about his work um, mm -hmm. and what he's trying to accomplish. And the music is a part of that. Um and it's probably very good to have this creature that you're creating recognize the music and be able to you know, respond to it. Um, mm -hmm. Probably it's definitely a good, a good sign. Yeah. Um, there is such a level of unease about the high evolutionary and what he's up to. And it's this... And, and of course, you feel... These scenes just... They have a vibe that works really well. Yes. Um, I I really really like all of these a lot. Um, I I think everyone did. Well, I suppose. Well, I don't know if there. everyone in this. I, I don't, maybe everyone in well, the comments, all, but I've definitely seen some criticisms of this aspect of the film. We're on like flashback yeah. three, so I don't know if you want to wait a bit more. Um, let's, let's wait. We've already started waiting. Uh, so yeah, he says. As a quote, be not as you are, but as you should be. Then he follows on with, it's our sacred missions to take the cacophony of sounds around us and turn it into song. To take an imperfect clump of biological matter such as you and transform it into something perfect. And we're halfway there, aren't we? It's, uh, I, I quite like it in terms of just yeah, that's great. understanding his motive, but also just feeling that uh, sort of sinister element coming in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It it's like he, he doesn't even he doesn't recognize like how sinister it is. Yeah, because uh, you start we'll with the quote. You know, thing like you. The quote in isolation is actually quite like you know, be not as you are, but as you should be. It almost sounds inspirational. Um, yeah. And you can unless only... you're a crazy fucking scientist who's trying to genetically <laughs> modify you. To... So that's what I mean. It's <laughs> it's kind of how it goes with um, understanding political pundits and then getting further and deeper into the rabbit hole of what they actually believe because it can start out broad and you're like oh yeah that sounds good and then it's like it's our sacred missions to take the cacophony of sounds and turn it into a song you're like that sounds yeah okay cool 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 and then it's like it's time to perfect these biological clubs because they're not perfect are they and you're like wait a minute mm. <laughs> like what's what are we what's happening now um, yeah, and then it gets much worse because he takes Rocket into another room, but we do see Rocket pick up a couple of pieces of uh, bits and bobs before he goes. That will yeah, be relevant take some later. Stuff. I thought it was it, it was a good little setup because I had a feeling I was like, "Ooh, he'll be able to make something with that." Yeah, he says uh, he shows him like this room with um, sort of devices and what looks to be like a you know like a container, and he says. Uh, I've created a device that can force any creature through millions of years of programmed evolutionary changes in a moment. Um, my curiosity with it was just, why do they all become, like, humanoid? Mm. Because uh, he's because very much you inspired can, by you, Earth as well. Yeah, is it, you can, is it you that can make he's, them do that. Yeah, he's taking them to the place he wants them rather than they... they yes. Yeah, I okay. would well, yeah, that's, that's, that's what programmed evolution is meant to imply, that he's choosing... Oh, paths. right, okay. I thought maybe it yeah, was if... a way of him trying to say, like, it assumes what evolutionary things would happen from its, like, genetic no. pathway or something. I think that's, that's like, an infinite possibilities, too. and there's, yeah, that's there's the no way of doing that. Okay. Well, yeah, potentially. What, um, what is but the it... end point of that, you know? That, like, could you even say that there's, like, an end point? Yeah, that's evolution kind of doesn't have a yeah, and an which point. is kind just, of you know that's place. something that's something to gleam right that the high evolutionary it's like well I mean he has an objective a specific goal in mind of what he wants, mm -hmm. which is you know like there's something to be said about that. Yeah, so he's he's guiding the evolution. He's programming in certain evolutionary, which is why so many of them turn out similar. Yeah. Okay. Um, the thing is, is this one's raging like a turtle. I think. 
blah, 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 and bash in against the windows. Kind of uh, terrifying. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And he's like, we can't, this, this, sh he says, here's the rub. We can't fix this shit. Like, they just have this rage. It's, t and they name like a sciencey thing for what's going on. Yeah, it's like a brain amino acid or protein or something that it produces. And it's, yeah, something, it's a science thing. Rocket notices something that if they were to tweak and fix, that it should solve their problem. And he's like, holy fuck. I really like Rocket's young voice. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like he's trying to figure out how to express the thoughts that are coming into his head. Um, and he's and he's doing the best he can with that. But his language isn't quite there yet. But the thoughts are in the brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah even moment... later on, adult Rocket is never like super articulate in terms of language, but he's incredibly smart, especially when it comes to technology. Yeah, he just has a pretty normal, fairly vulgar manner of speech that a lot of people would have. There's even a moment where he says can't, no, can't, and then the High Evolutionary is like, can't. So it's, uh, I don't know if there was an attempt from the High Evolutionary at some point to make them all have a, like, a unified accent or whatever, but he's clearly failed with Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, though I assume Rocket's still learning how to, you know, speak and, you know, do all that. I think it's just, I presume that that's just, like, lack of tolerance for it sounding different from the way that he talks, you know? Because like, his well, is the perfect one. Yeah, mm -hmm. mine's the right one. Yours is yeah. wrong. You can fix it. Um, so, yeah, we cut to them beginning to approach the organs, orgoscope. Uh, and this is the part that you would have seen either clips or trailer stuff from, if anyone has seen it, where they're in their multicolored suits. And um, Oh, something really quick before we continue. Uh, mm -hmm. Point of praise, I think. Uh... There's something very interesting about the fact that they turn into rage monsters when they get rushed through, you know, millennia of evolution in a single second. There's something really kind of spooky and terrifying about like what it must be like to be that creature suddenly suddenly finding yourself, you know, <laughs> millions of years worth of evolution ahead and like just it cannot process what's actually happened to it. And so it just kind of loses its mind and goes insane something really kind of horrifying about that that I There's really like. There's a lot of really creepy imagery in this There's, as well as understanding how things work. Yeah, this, is, this has got some weird, crazy shit. I Shame love it. Marvel let uh, James Gunn go for that. Well, so this is one that I would genuinely be like, yes, check it out before you show your kids, uh, especially depending on how uh, young kids Yeah. <laughs> there was a couple mm -hmm. times in this movie I was like, are there like little kids here who think this is another fun, mindless MCU romp and they're seeing like these fucked up cyborgs hey, and evil? Those yeah. same kids had to fucking see Modok, okay? So I assume that they can survive <laughs> Modok this. Modok was great. Modok, what do you mean? Modok was great. Was Modok so was great. family friendly. Yeah. I will say there's been little hints at this in the Guardians trilogy. Like, so in two, the big pile of bones and corpses is something similar but we're leaning more heavily into it for sure in this movie so multicolored suits heading to the orgoscope they're going to land just on the facility and their plan is to laser through it um this is one of those situations where you just have to tell me that that's how they can they can just do that and that'll work and i'm like okay i thought that there would be some kind of plan that this that that this bio mass that's uh, that is their facility would feel pain you'd think and that would so be an element of just, it wouldn't you yeah you wouldn't just mm -hmm. cut through it but it's almost like it's a defensive thing like oh it's experiencing yeah. pain something is damaging the outer structure it's kind of like you know like like the reason we have pain to let you know something's going wrong and needs addressing um so i would assume that if i was going to be approaching a creature I just call it a creature for simplicity like this. Mm -hmm. It would experience that and there'd be something you'd have to avoid. They'd have to find some orifice to slip into. Yeah. Eh. Um, <laughs> there, there's something, you know, like yeah. not just cutting a hole in it and sliding through. And yeah, yeah, there's something to be said, like what you're just getting at, that there's a there's an advantage to designing the building this way. It's not just, ooh, wouldn't it be crazy if it was like this, that, that it can feel things that would hypothetically make it more secure in some ways but uh you think there'd be a trade-off of some kind yes 
That's... Yeah, there's there's a reason why we're doing this and no one else has done it. And maybe because they're a mm -hmm. bioengineering whatever, they can do it. It's like, okay, that's a reason, I suppose. They're This is what they specialize in, so to speak, merging machines and, you know, biotics or biology. So, you know, like okay, okay, I wish that they leaned more into it instead of it just being a weird thing. Yeah, I agree. Um, they even, like, walk past hair. Like, there's just big hairs yeah. sticking out of it. And it's just like, all right. Um, and you start to, I think you start to gather that this is more so for just the the opportunity to be like, ain't that fucking weird? Look at that. Yeah, that, this is, that. yeah, it's weird. Uh, it's like, um, I I'll kept thinking that, that this is theme. clean scorn. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is on theme with the villain. We'll, we'll give it that credit as well, but it, it doesn't seem to serve a great functional purpose. Um, if we were to broach that, what would your argument be for it being on theme with villain? Um, well, that genetic engineering and bioengineering is, well, I guess on, maybe on theme isn't the right word, but it's in like keeping he, with the kind of genetic experiments that he's interested he in. He melds flesh to suit his purpose. I yeah. think, um, in a way that it, you know, what would have helped would with that is it. making it instead a almost completely flesh system being like half flesh, half tech. So it's like a monstrosity, kind of like those foot soldiers he has. That's yeah. in it. I mean, oh, like, like you talking about like aesthetically? Or... Yeah. Because uh, I yeah, feel like this, this is almost all flesh, and yeah. well, there's bone and well, the the inside looks really nice, and so I assume like the inside is the machine part, the outside is the flesh part, and um... that he would want this to look really nice and a place, a good work environment, and everything like that, because this is the face of you know the evils that's actually going on behind the scenes. Whereas he doesn't really care about the hell spawn because that's not for public eyes. That's for keeping mm -hmm. experiments in line and security, like creepy security yeah. on the planet. Well, that's going to be the Earth. Uh, defense force for counter Earth, is what he says, right? Yeah, yeah. that's it's definitely that's an awesome. outer face that he shows the world, which is much more, you know, it's this building essentially. <laughs> I I don't know. I I can believe he built this, is what I'm getting at. I was just going to say, like, yeah. I wouldn't call this place like at first glance something aesthetically pleasing. Uh, no, but I, no. I think I could also wave that Marvel away. Well, not, I, not wave it away, but I can, I can believe it based off of like in no, this yeah, world, I can believe there's it. so much weird stuff. It's just that, that would, it he, would he want that as opposed to hard tech? I'm not sure. Like his own ship is uh, yeah. completely hard tech, kind of. Um, but I think Orgo Corp is, this is kind of their deal, right? This is, this, this is on brand for them. In terms of, but like, because this place agree. is a technological marvel and it's very much on brand. Yeah, look what we what can do. I think what I need matter. to buy it yeah. is that uh, it ha if it the, the problem is stemming for me is how fucking useless this place is. Um, when I would want to, I'd want to see that it's not useless. Like the way that they've built it as reason. Yeah, it's like that because I, it's good at blah blah blah. I, for me, this is this is plot failings that are failing an otherwise good design of a building you know what i mean yeah no i get you that's kind, of, that's kind of what i try to push back on with like the quantum verse or the multiversal like effects when it's like you know I, this doesn't make any sense it's like yeah but people who made all of that did great work they just don't know what they're yeah. doing it for <laughs> and a lot of times like you know production designers concept artists they're doing really interesting stuff mm -hmm. even in these movies even in the mcu so, uh, Peter presses a button that matches the color of Gamora's suit with the intention of trying to talk to her, and he says, um, so you really don't remember anything? Which I thought was a weird way to start. I'm just assuming someone has explained to him how it worked, right? There is nothing for her to remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like Rocket would have, you know, walked him through it. Um, so it's just, it just feels weird that he's like, you don't remember anything? Like no, this literally she yeah. she went she didn't experience any of what that. Why did she remember? remember? Yeah, I remember everything that happened to me. If anything, the question should be like because what he should be wanting to know is like despite the fact you don't remember anything, like do you not have any sort of feelings towards me or like me at all? <laughs> like that's like deep down what he's probably wondering. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, he's, she says that person was some alternate future version of me, not me, which. Oh, yeah. Um, that's, that's, yeah, and he says, uh, you are everything to me, and I miss you so much, and if maybe you could open yourself up to it, and she says, I don't think so, Quinn. Which, um, before we move on, I thought that that is a way to slip in comedy kind of like 
some of the other examples where it's just so reasonable that she could say that. She barely mm -hmm. knows this guy. She's heard his name here and there. Will and Quinn are pretty close. Quinn, I think, is a much yeah. more common name. And so he, he has a pause and he's like, Quill. And so it's like sad, but you could also get a laugh in. I think that's, uh, I would probably I try and argue. I believe it. Yeah. I like it. Good stuff. Then we have some other jokes. Mm. So um, they cut in with basically, like, as he's trying to spill his heart out with, like, we can all hear you. And then Drax is like, it's embarrassing. Um, I guess we'll take it piece by piece. What do you think of that? Uh, uh, he said it's is, painful. Right? Something like that. I think so. I, can't I, I don't remember. think it's I don't think it's painful. Um, I, and I, I, I don't. I said I think, but I'm confident he actually said it's painful. Well, I I didn't think it was painful, so I'm thinking. He's talking is, about tracks, is yeah, he's talking yeah, about what I, tracks. I know, I'm I know, I'm not, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I'm, my bad, my bad. Words. So as to whether or not Drax would feel like it, I, I guess Drax would say that. Um, but for Mantis, what does Mantis say exactly? She just says, I "Peter, we can uh, all hear you." Basically. Yeah. We've been listening this whole time. Um, and Nebula's a lot more exasperated, which I like. Yeah, Nebula says, yeah, like, I thought you I, would stop. Yeah, that's the part That's the part that made me laugh, was when yeah. she said we were just like, we were hoping that you'd just stop, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Which but feels like, like a thing why? you might do. Like, you, if yeah. you walk in on someone embarrassingly talking out loud, you want to kind of, like, hope they just stop <laughs> instead of you announcing that you're here. Um... So, so, for me, um, I'm quite invested in those two having a serious conversation about all of that, and then it sort of ended, and I was like, okay. Uh, yeah, I was yeah, disappointed it, with that. We need to, this needs to be, like, picked up later, or there needs to be, like, this, I mean, like, maybe temporary closure on, like, we need to, or, like, maybe he says we'll talk about this later or something. Mm -hmm. I think, I want to say, like, yeah, you can go where, whichever way you want to, um, as a writer, I suppose, with this one. It's just, uh... Because, you know, I think I, I'm in agreement that everything everyone says in that moment is in character. It's just that whether or not you want them to speak or not is up to you still. Yeah. So, um, well, but... one thing I suggested during The Forge that I, that I would have preferred is that... Um, so they let the moment play out, fade out, and then there's some sort of indication from the others that... Sorry, my dog's barking. It's being annoying. Um there's, there's some sort of indication that they could hear him this whole time, but they didn't want, they don't, maybe they don't even say anything, but there's a look on their faces like, like they just had to deal with the awkwardness of that. Like whether, whether Quill even finds out the others can feel awkward about it. Maybe they go to the private line to say like, this is awkward or, you know, something like that. There could be workshops to be done. Um, there, there's, yeah. there's a joke there that <clears throat> mm -hmm. operates. You know, a in a way that, that doesn't feel like we're laughing at the expense of Quill's feelings in this moment, because or or maybe Manus says something along the lines of like she compliments how sweet it was and how heartfelt it was, and Drax is the person who who cuts that you know with his more like it was no, it was painful yeah. you know it was painful to listen to that that kind of thing. Um, so I I don't know there it's not a bad joke realizing that it was proper or, or, or public the whole time on the thing mm -hmm. it just we need to polish that stone um so in comes the next joke which is i'd say uh well i mean uh, let me post this first so you guys can understand this is the joke this is how it works they all, all have right. suits that are color coded with orange blue yellow red and green um, I don't know why I wrote one of them twice. Uh, and, and they've all got buttons on their wrists that match those colors with a, a black additionally is, is next to it as well. Now, Peter chooses the color of Gamora's suit, assuming that each color represents the direct line to each suit. But the joke is like, no, you idiot. If you wanted uh, the, the color you hit was all, blue is all. And then it's like, if you wanted um, blue is in her suit, you go for orange. And then they start labeling how all of them work. Yeah. And um, black is the orange, orange is blue, yellow is green, you know, that sort of thing. And um yeah. And then Drax is like, no, you idiot, yellow is yellow, green is red, red is green. And then she's like, Are you sure? And then tests it out and like yells and Peter's like, ah. 
And then um, he's like, how am I supposed to know that? And then Drax says, I thought it was intuitive. It is very intuitive. It's very intuitive. What do we think? Um, Dumb. It doesn't, the joke doesn't make sense that that would be the way it works, but I really, I laughed at it. I thought it was very funny, but it doesn't make sense that they, because it's not intuitive. Like the joke relies on it not being intuitive and not working as you might expect it. Um, so how would you deal with the retort that's the joke? You suck, McBain! That, that's kind of... <laughs> that's kind of where I was going. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it relies on it, it. It relies on itself in a weird kind of way, if that makes sense. Um, I like it's, it's funny to me, like that, that got me to laugh, but I like, I don't see how in this world they would actually do that. And then the joke is like, yeah, it, it's not intuitive. And he's saying it is. So it, it's kind of, Complicated in a way. Um, I thought um, it was crap. I'm sorry. Me too. Yeah. I, I, like, I liked Drax's response, but didn't like the setup or anything. Yeah, that that's sense. totally fair. Yeah. I think the second she started listening to him, I was like, Ugh. so the joke's going to be that none of it makes any sense at all. Like, yes. Okay. It's, yeah, from the instant they started it, you knew the road that we were traveling. I don't understand. I feel like there needs to be some sense of how it could be intuitive, not based on color, but based on number or the order of them or something. I think it actually could have been kind of cool if all of the, I don't know, shapes match a shape on their suits, but the colors were rolling like off that. something like that. Yeah. Yeah, like, so there's a there's an actual reason to it, but it's not what you'd expect. Um, yes. You're, you're going off of a different... You thought it was one system, but it was actually a different system, and you're like, yes. oh... Okay. That would help quite a bit. It's like an alien looking at money and thinking that the faces represent the amounts, not the symbols <laughs> in the corners. You know, it's like there's. Yeah. I see why you think that. That makes sense. But haha, haha. No, it isn't. Um, and I think that it slots in for me. Uh, I don't know if you guys would feel differently. Into there's a type of joke James Gunn will make every once in a while that I think just uh, it overstays its welcome a little bit. Um. Well, yeah, he's like, he's like a family was, uh, Face. Face, uh, I think, is the top uh, example. It's the number yeah. one. It's just, um, uh, he found that so funny, and I just don't get it. <laughs> I was like, all right, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a it's chuckle amusing. at first, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah well, you know, the, that's that. Uh, and they cut a hole in the thing, and it starts go doing an alert, but then they pop a device on it that uh, stops the alert. Which, um, funnily enough, compared to everything else, I'm like, yeah, I can buy that, that they have some kind of signal jammer that they can put into something to make it stop beeping. That, for me, like, just feels uh, yeah. fine. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, there's an alarm, and then they played off as it was a glitch or whatever, you know, yeah. pretty standard, seems it's like... It's just so it funny, though, it's like, you know? weird, uh, weird signals on the instruments uh, there. Um, is there any ships outside? It's like, yes, there's, like, eight. <laughs> like, oh, that's, that's interesting. Oh. Um, so they head in, and uh, Nebula's in. I think. Well, I think all of them are in. Drax is lost, and he gets stuck. Which uh, I, th I think w I was like, really, Nebula cut Why the didn't hole you too cut small. The hole. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was my first thought. It's the first thought that comes to mind. You know how big Drax is. You need to make a Drax-shaped hole. And it's just it's like, not a... like you're running out of time. You could have just taken the time to do it. And I actually, I would probably argue. If you said, like, could you see any of them making that mistake? It's like, yeah, all of them, except Nebula. Probably the only one that I would expect not to make that mistake. Um, Someone takes... might even ask, like, without even thinking, why are you making it so big? And then she's like, you know, and then, you know. She could, like, look at over Drax at Drax. Something. Yeah. Um... Oh, I had something written down, too, that I, uh, right before the scene that I wanted to bring up. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But it was about um, the gravity oh, boots. And why in particular, uh, it, it feels like to me they're suddenly focusing on, uh, in that scene, like gravity, like that's ever been a problem ever. Well, it, I, any, pl any planet they visit, it's always gravitationally perfect for them. Um, I, I think the way that they're, they're using them like they're like suction boots. Um, they're like the gravity boots and ratchet well, I think flying first. Is he saying you know, that so like, why would they need to draw attention to it when we need normal? Is, this is a space station rather than a planet though, right? Yeah, that's my thought. So like they they probably have simulated gravity, gravity inside, but yeah. not outside. 
my assumption. Um, but there also, was, it is. Yeah, I mean, they like press the, the button. I will say though, it, it is a flag a because it's the final payoff or the big payoff in this film is going to relate to gravity boots. So, like, mm. they want to keep reminding you that those things are a thing. <laughs> um. So we see Harcourt. Welcome back, the wonderful uh, Jennifer Holland. I believe is her name. Is that right? Sorry. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I'm just just gonna, I'll flag it equally with other people too. It's just funny because even James Gunn has had to like talk about it on Twitter. Just been like, yes, my girlfriend is in my projects. It's because she's, I put lots of people in all kinds of things, and that's fine, and leave me alone. Um, all right. Yeah. All right. I think um, it wouldn't be anywhere near uh, as distracting if she was a well known name before appearing in all these different places. Um, or if she was really, really, really good. Yeah, I was going to go that direction too, but yeah. <laughs> I don't think she's bad, but she's not so impressive that you're like, okay, I get it. Yeah. You know, as as opposed to, let's say, Sean Gunn, who I think is very, very good. I would agree yeah, with that. He's yeah, he's very good. I yeah. really like Sean so Gunn. The, uh, I wouldn't call it nepotism, but if someone were to call it nepotism, I'd be like, yeah, but he's really good, though. That's, so that seems to be the argument with nepotism every time, because this is the thing. I thought that with her when I saw her, and then next scene, I see Nathan Fillion pop up, and I'm like, ah, he's good friends with James Gunn. That's probably why. But Nathan Fillion's he's a fucking amazing a actor. Really good so. actor. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Um, I think that the reason why he got that role was because he worked with uh, James Gunn and Peacemaker, and he wanted to bring him back to do like another role. Mm -hmm. Michael Rooker, yeah, for uh, example. Uh, Michael Rooker, yeah. Yeah, if the nepotism just gets you in the door and you do a really amazing job and everyone's like, I'm so glad that you got this person in because they're amazing, no one complains about it. I think, um, I think all that's happened is she's just never made much of an impression except almost like, oh, it's you again. Yeah, yes. it's like, it's you, you know? And that's sort of where my thoughts begin and end. You know, all right. And it does mm -hmm. seem to me that James Gunn gets an, an inordinate amount of criticism for keeping the same actors project to project that so many filmmakers throughout history do this but for yeah, some reason people are more. singularly focused on him more. dude mike flanagan i don't understand he's recycling yeah. actors all the time all of them when tarantino, <laughs> when tarantino the yeah. actors, wes anderson um, <laughs> yep. yeah it, it's odd that people because I've, I've noticed it's there seems to be like a level of speculation of oh who's who's you know what of james gunn's friends are going to get cast in big dc roles it's like all right, let's calm down. All right, yeah, <laughs> it's all that big of a deal. He might, he might actually think that you know, it, it's it's fine if if they don't suck, if they're okay and up. It's, it's, Which I don't know. Whatever, whatever, you know? casting decisions, as far as I'm concerned, Jennifer yeah. Holland for uh, Superman. Like, look at the look at the cast for you know the Suicide <laughs> Squad. It's like that's a that's a good cast, you know. Yeah, Idris Elba, John Cena. I mean, Margot Robbie's a good actress. It's just that we can you know, even Harley Quinn is a character. we can strip away it's, what is nepotism truly like a criticism of, and it's like, well, it's a fast track that you didn't have to earn. That's what everyone hates about it. And it's like, well, yeah, I guess that that kind of makes it clear then. That's why people don't have an issue with people like Michael Rooker or Nathan Fillion because we because know they they've earned, earned the fuck out of it. Yeah, um, and they're good. And people like working with good. people they get along with. You're gonna have to spend twelve yeah. hours a day. For like yelling months. at each other, I think yeah. that's the reason why uh, James Gunn, like he, he seems like he's probably like very effective as a director in terms of keeping people happy, because everybody seems to like working with him. Oh yeah, that's the other thing that's happened, like losing Henry Cavill and keeping the girlfriend on. That's gonna just people are gonna reference that till the end of time. In terms right, of, like, right. I think it's gonna be yeah, as understandable as it is because of how prominent Henry Cavill's role was. I mean, mm -hmm. it's pretty well, I mean, clear it's why bad. that decision is yeah. made. Yeah, then, it, then, pretty clear why, why that, that decision, you know, instead of just some, you know, the, I think almost like a cameo where, sort of thing. That's yeah. the part where it gets trickier is because it then starts to feel like you're picking favorites. If you get some people to stay and some people to go, it's like, hmm, probably should be all or nothing, right? Um, It's probably asked... a really, it's probably a really weird situation. Oh sure, yeah. It's, yeah I, I don't of, envy. Yeah. I don't envy him in terms of having to figure out how to sort that shit out. Someone asked who works twelve hours a day. People on film sets do. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, people yeah. on yeah. incredibly work long, long hours. A lot, of, a lot of people, yeah. yeah, a lot of people do long. As hours. I understand it, isn't it like common for television productions? You know, like for network television, that's like six days on, one day off, six day, like for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, yeah, you'll have to. You get paid more if you do six in a row like that. You know, um. 
I was up, I was on a, I was a PA on a show for that ran for a few months and it was only five days a week with some six days if we really needed right, to right. get something done. And it was, for me, it was about like 70 hours a week. Yeah. People, people yeah. work like That's in creative lot. industries that I'm surprised that someone said that it's, it's just well known that in creative industries, people end up working crazy hours. I mean, look at all the talk about video game developers and like the insane amount of long-term crunch that happens mm -hmm. in a lot of these productions because when it's a creative job, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of factors that go into play there to facilitate that sort of arrangement. Well then, uh, she is the she is the head of security, I think, or at least she's operating like a security console, and uh, she detects some weird some weirds going on in the room that uh, they are entering, and so she contacts Nathan Villian, who she, does she refer to him as Master? I think mm -hmm. she does. It, it was throwing me off because I wasn't sure if it was like I was mishearing a name or if she was actually calling him Master, which it doesn't really matter. In any case, she contacts him and says something weird has been detected. And then she says to him, I'm, th I'm, I'm going to check the camera. I thought that was so fucking weird. Well, like, just something weird. Go look. <laughs> yeah, well, like, the know, first thing you do... Right away. Yeah, I feel like, <laughs> you know, room whatever is detecting a disturbance. Like, open up the camera. And it's like, no, no, you I'll know, call it, some guy to say that I'm detecting a disturbance and then I will open the camera. It's like, okay. Like, you have one job to look at the cameras, <laughs> yeah. see if anything's wrong, and then do something about it. And it's really <laughs> weird. Um, to then realize that they didn't, they only have one jamming device between the whole team. And the reason mm. that this is tense is because, uh, obviously, Drax is caught in the building walls where the jamming device currently is. So until he gets out of there, they can't pull it out and thus use it to jam the camera. It's like, you guys two. probably should have had two. <laughs> yeah. Problems for you. Um, in any case, there was a line. I like med packs. There was a line I liked with, uh, because it's, it's just a real thing that happens. I think uh, Nathan Fillion's like, um, oh yeah, have you checked out those new, like, whatever, whatever's got that brand new Fuselix core? <laughs> and then the guy goes, yeah. And he's like, well, I just made that up, so. And then he's like, yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. said something else. Just I thought like you said something else. That's such a good line. <laughs> that's such I a real, it. that's such a it's real. So yeah, it feels super genuine, super authentic. Uh, <laughs> just their faces. It's so, uh. <laughs> So that was good. they just get Drax in, they grab the jammer and they put it on the eye before, just before she checks it. And so she checks it and it looks clean. Like it's like jamming it so that it just displays like uh, the room is fine. Um, and then they like, oh shit, we have to get rid of our spacesuits before they come in and check. Because they've, uh... um, they've got their engineer garb, right? Which will pass them through basic like checks, I guess. But their spacesuits would be, if you saw them, you'd know that they're not friendly, I guess. Because they're not the... The old yeah, girl, you'd be like, one. why are you wearing space suits well, here when there was a potential puncture? And So, the question, why hmm. aren't they using the, like, vacuum sealed tech that they had in Guardians 2? There's a lot of stuff like here. A little, it's just a little, you know, I had to thing, trade them yeah. for the med packs. You would have done the same thing in their position. Which, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be, like, man, that, that shit, like, it's, it's like nanotech, you know? It's you like can the just Black Widow on. face mask stuff. Well, this crazy yeah. tech that gets in. Yeah, and you're like, wow. Well, yeah, and stuff. you have to this fucking mention every time. It's, it's especially frustrating when James Gunn's the one that fucking introduces it. It's like, what do you mean? You yeah. did it. Like, well, there's another, there's another piece of tech he introduced in Guardians 2 that is bizarrely absent and hugely useful. But remember, yeah, we'll get to well, that later. I mean, because you, you were talking about the spacesuits, right? Like the hockey puck so spacesuits? I'm talking about the, yeah, the little yeah. spacesuit that's like the size of, yeah, the size of a hockey puck. You can put it in your pocket and it's vacuum sealed. You if you have like that, you don't need to worry about disposing. In a very, in like a, hell, a, a hearty pocket of a, a hoodie. Like you could get Pretty a much. lot of them. Apparently. But no, they have to use these weird specific spacesuits and it doesn't make any sense. And then, of course, why are we highlighting this? It's like, well, because they could just fucking deactivate them, put them in their pocket and they're fine. Yeah. Because then, of what what happens almost jumping ahead is they put Mantis puts them in like a little it looks like a little uh like storage unit that she puts it in, but it's actually just shoots it out into space. Oh, someone just said where's Star Lord's helmet? What a great fucking question. Yeah, it's gone because unfortunately this film is also in keeping with the trend of making sure that the actors get more face time and actually like, proxy I proxy that you get rid of the helmet, the awesome cool Star Lord helmet. I'm really glad that you brought that up because there is something that I okay. So I like watching movies at a theater. Asterisk. Um, 
so when I get to the theater, on um, after I stop at Come and Go and grab my big bag of uh, whatever it is and stuff at my pants to get in, I get to the theater and I like to get there a little bit early before things start. And I need to stop. I need to stop doing that because it was almost 30 minutes from I, I, 630 was the viewing I went to. It was just shy of seven when the movie actually started. And I think there was like two and a half promos that Guardians had before this. It'd be like a commercial, but it had all the Guardian stuff in it. And one thing I noticed is that Peter Quill was absent in all of these because they didn't get the actor for it, right? You can get the voices and da 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 but he wasn't in any of these. But they did have him with... They had a guy in a cockpit for one of these promo commercials, and he had his helmet on because it covers up his face. So you don't actually <laughs> have to have Chris Pratt to you know be there and do it you just you just cover it up with a face and i noticed that and i'm like oh you didn't get him you're just like the other commercials you, that's not really them and that raccoon doesn't sound he doesn't sound like rocket he sounds close but it ain't, it ain't a real thing yeah mm -hmm. um and I, so but by the way because i saw someone mention this in chat and i think it's worth bringing up you that, that in the guardians holiday special their ship goes invisible yeah well <laughs> well, we didn't see that in the film. Nope. That would have yeah, helped. Would have helped a lot. That would have helped a lot, That's actually. Um, yeah, I totally forgot about that. They make their ship go invisible while they're like flying around, like uh, America. Jesus. <laughs> but on <sighs> on the point of the uh, on the point of the yeah, it's annoying that again we're like ditching the helmet because I think the helmet is awesome, but unfortunately well, mentioned, um, that doesn't matter. Stalin's helmet was destroyed in Volume 2, but came back in Avengers, so I think Gunn legitimately was planning to keep it destroyed, but decided to ignore its presence in Infinity War and Endgame. Can't do that. Um, yeah, but you can't, unfortunately. It's, it's unfortunate. really difficult to write out technology. If it's a one-off, if it's an experiment, if it's a magic amulet, if it's a ring to rule them all, then there's ways to get rid of and it. Also, of like, but, I mm. can just get a new one. That shit's useful. Yeah, like, we he, already know you can get a new one. Companies make it. They make more than one. Some for a little while in the vacuum of space, like, it's, because, I I mean, he, he ain't vacuum sealed, you know, like, with his, his shit, it's the same problem that the Mandos have, but, you know, that helmet is just useful, I mean, it protects you from, like, shrapnel, if there's any explosions or anything, it's probably got some, like, crazy it's utility. Way better than nothing. I want, some I want to mention, suit, you know? I, I don't classify, well, it's tough, but I don't think I can just, or exclusively classify these as plot issues, this is all character stuff like what the hell are they thinking the character would have those things yeah they should well, be the using character... their tools yeah, but they don't how exactly we got into this we, we get into this especially early on with mando stuff until our brains just accepted it as the hell we live in but characters using equipment equipment is it's a method of like a jetpack isn't just a jetpack it's a way to overcome obstacles that are the writing for the character to get through and if the character doesn't use these plot um, Plot-related um, objects, and it well, reflects when, on when the character. Characters, when characters make dumb decisions, right? What what are we to make of that? Like, is yes. it a plot problem or is it an imputation on character? Especially if we're meant to have any conception about a character making intelligent decisions or like yeah. even reasonable decisions. Like this spacesuits, it's just cumbersome. It's a problem. Like mm -hmm. this is this just makes things trickier. But we could use the equipment that we already have that is way more convenient, but we won't, and it facilitates bullshit. Um, and I was going to say, like, a, an easy way to sort of figure this out quickly would be they have a gun, you know, on their holster, and then it's like, in instance one, they just never grab it when they're in danger. They just never do. And it's just like, so that's just, the character's an idiot. The, the gun's right there. Versus instance two, where they do grab it, they do shoot, and it jams. It's like, oh, so that's the plot. That's like things outside their control. Unless, of course, yeah. they could unjam it, but that's, I guess I'm... Just talking about the fact that like they are not necessarily in control of something versus the thing they are in control of, and so it gets to be a problem. And the way you cancel these out, you have to start doing throwaway lines. But the problem is now we've got so many that it it would start to become like a joke. Like, why aren't we using well, this, 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 this? And it's like, well, because we don't have those anymore. You need throwaway lines in this instance for why they're not using like the arrow rigs that could get them around like a lot easier in space mm -hmm. than cumbersome spacesuits. And then you also need a throwaway line for why they're not using the nanotech spacesuit instead of a more cumbersome 
like old school spacesuit that only causes them problems because now they've lost them and they're they're screwed. Like they're yeah, stuck. The other alternative, of course, is creating problems that aren't solved by those older pieces of technology. So it doesn't matter. But yep. these are these are problems definitely solved by these older pieces of tech. Yeah. yeah. What is the in in the chat? It's it's like making motions in the chat. There's like in the bottom right. There's like a heart and it's like emojis. Like what? What I click on it and a little heart flies up. What the fuck is that? What does that do? What does that have to do with anything that we're talking about? It's distract. It's like moving. What is that? I don't know. I, I see now. No I guess idea. a lot of people are clicking it because I see a bunch I of see them. It too. Is that what it is? Everyone clicks on those and they just sort of sort of show up. How? It... So people when are saying was... it's on it's on mobile. So like I don't know what you're talking about. It's on desktop. I'm I'm looking. Yeah, at I'm it. on desktop. I'm looking at it. Right oh. Now. Okay. You click on them and they make little things fly around. What the fuck? All right. I guess I know what it is now. It's just weirdly distracting. Can I turn it off? Not that I don't appreciate people's. I mean, it. I guess it just is there, and that's my life now. All right. Carry on. It's just like weird, and it's like I see the things over there, and I'm like, what is this? Anyway, uh, it's weird to me that the Ravagers would have wanted to give them the facility, like, things to get them in, but they couldn't, they can get them fake engineering suits, but they can't get them the space suits, the thing that they seem to be known for, like the Orgone people. Yeah. Mm. So, I think it's, it's interesting to introduce to us their suits, these very specific and strange ones, and then to be like, well, you're gonna have to use these weird rainbow suits that, I don't know. <laughs> it's like okay. Uh, it which... was it all like. Do you think they went in after the fact to set up the color joke? Yeah, I think so. The, the only reason yeah. they have those is to do that joke, which to set up the color joke, mm. and also just for a visual. I would imagine of like, oh, look at these vibrant suits. Yep. Yeah, they're like little germs on the outside of the skin ship. So then uh, they, they know they're coming. They got to get rid of these suits, you're right? And they put them in what looks to just be a storage bin of some kind. Um, and Mantis says, like, well, well, we'll hide them in here, and opens it up. And I'm saying that on purpose, because we can get to that in a little bit. But yeah, uh, they they close it right as Nathan Fillion enters the room with his men, and they're like, what the fuck's going on here? And uh, Star Lord's like, what the hell, guys? What, are you kidding me? A satellite is burning through a hole in the wall, and you geniuses open the door with no precautionary procedures. And then he says, what procedure, bro? Which I thought was strange. Um, and then Mantis says, "Do you want us to read the manual for you too, bro?" Was this working for you guys? No. Mm, nah. No. Actually. What What happens afterward kind of works, but this, nah, nah. It this one isn't. Yeah, this one isn't working. Because this um, needs. Because the point here is that they're trying to be convincing. So having a joke to where it's awkward kind of undercuts the fact that they're trying to make this convincing. Yeah. yeah, the only one that I think lands for that, and it's because I would say it's in character, is uh, Drax says, Exactly, you idiots! And there's a pause that he yeah. goes, I'm angry too! Yeah, because like, that, <laughs> that's Drax, what he'd say. He's going yeah. with a, you know... Um, uh, I, I but then really... he says, um, can't yeah. you see these authentic mechanic uniforms we're wearing on our bodies that blend in with our skin tones some better than others? <laughs> Jesus. As much what as is, I think one could like, argue it's in character, I was like, surely that's too much. Like that's gonna that that seems like a little bit too far. I I don't like the idea that Drax suddenly isn't good at lying. I don't know if that is in keeping with him being literal minded. See, this is makes... I'm already so far along on this side. So I'm just like, yep, there he goes. There's funny Drax being retarded. That's that's what he does. That's him. Yeah, I don't like that. I like it when the joke is in keeping with him being very literal. Mahler, he is dumb. We're not there yet, right? <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> all right. That's fair enough. That's I don't want enough. to go there. That's not a place I, I want to go. Oh, I don't forget it. Um, why does Nebula need one of those suits? Um, I can't. Why well, she she struggles with uh vacuum of space? Yeah. Okay, because yeah, I can't well, remember if she can in, uh, exist Guardians in space two, or not. In Guardians 2, when uh, the ship got destroyed while she was tied up, she was starting to get, yeah. like, caked in frost. We do get a okay. reference for it in this yeah. film as well. All right, all right, gotcha. I didn't yeah, know. I don't, I don't like Drax not being any good at all at lying and being convincing, but I do like the way that uh, Quill handles it in response. He says, it's almost like if... 
if a character is so, I guess, simple in that sense, they're insanely good at lying because they don't like even really grasp that they're lying. And it's so matter of fact and just they just say it so flatly and, you know, directly as everything else that it comes across as like it comes across as if it's a really bold lie. Then like you're trying to, you know, bluff someone, but they're just so inadvertently good at delivering it in that way, then it would work really well. Like, you could get Drax to lie to people in a way that would be super convincing. That just happens to work with the way he talks and thinks. So, yeah, yeah, Stalwart says, uh, excuse me, he's the boss's nephew. Or well, excuse him. And he says, oh, I got one of those. This one. This one over here, he's great. He's going, he's going great. I love what he does. But this one. And he, like, stares at him. He looks like awkward. Everything he does drives me crazy. What do we think? I like the aliens. I like the alien. I, I, I thought this was funny. I like the aliens expression. And when he says, I, I thought you said something else. Like this was about their previous conversation. Yeah. I like um, that. Element that's kind of what I think that's what really kind of sold me. I liked it, you know, but um, but I think when the alien still is trying to defend himself like that, it, so, I think that was really I think that worked for me. It's a matter of I don't believe for a fucking second that they would pass uh, to these people, and if they were just to ask them any questions, they would have completely folded. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, can I see your ID so I can tell them who was uh, assigned to the maintenance? Well, and it's even worse. He's on something. fucking call with the security lady, who now knows he has entered the room, and she would see nothing. So yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it does yep. like. Right. As yeah. soon as he talks to him, it's like, hey, so was you there nothing insane? in there? No, there were several people in there. What are you talking about? Yeah, she oh, was saying nothing. Do you need a break? Well, You've so been working off. This is what I mean about, like, it's like cheating in writing. Do you know what he says when he's leaving? He says, all clear. So it's like, you see, from his POV, it is all clear. There's nothing to worry about. But from her POV, she'll be like, all clear. He means there's nothing wrong. When, of course, he would report, oh, one of our satellites fucked up and burned a hole in the wall, and we got five engineers in here trying to fix it. And then she'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's no one in the room. Yeah, no one yeah. in the room. All the engineers are at da 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 Like, what, what do you mean? So, yeah, uh, it's just disappointing. It's not clever at all. It's just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you have to, like, and with every moment this happens, it just makes the Orgone scope people look so fucking useless. Yeah, don't tell me how, don't build this up as being super dangerous and that it's going to be really difficult to break into the facility and that this is going to be a big deal and then have them act like this because then it's just sort of like, I don't, I don't believe you. Um, so once <laughs> they leave then, they, uh, you know, it's realized like, oh fuck, the space shoot suits are floating outside. And um, everyone sees that, recognizes it, and everyone's like, oh no. And then uh, Gamora says, ah. Oh, you put it in the contamination bin, it expels everything outside when you close the door. And I'm just sitting there like, bitch, you put yours in there too. Thanks, Captain Hindsight, yeah. Like, what the fuck? Like, everyone's mad at Mantis for this, but I was like, uh, you all put it in there. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. I, I don't even, like, it's so weird that, I don't know. <laughs> like, I just took Was the angle out. here, like, we, we didn't have a choice, we had to get rid of the spacesuits, so, like, there's no point assigning blame, like, they had to well, go in there. So that's yeah, actually all the, made the, the same mistake. I was about to say that's the second argument. The first argument is how could you pick on Mantis when all of you made the mistake? And secondly, what else could you have done? There's nothing else in the room. Like, yeah, yeah. either you caught yeah, with them or else. you expel them. That was it. Um, and I think it's all just to have another joke, which is um, uh, Drax says, uh, are we getting angry again? Like, Mantis, you idiot, or something like that. Or oh, you asshole, I think he says. Yeah. That's not... I don't like that oh, joke. And I, um, Nebula says, damn it, Mantis, why don't you ever think? And I was just like, Nebula, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> You're smart yeah. enough to understand that that's not applicable here at all. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't happy with those interactions either. Uh, Quill then reminds them all they need to save Rocket, which I always appreciate. Stuff. Um, oh, God. It's, it's funny because we are... I think you, you could say we're, we're into Act 2, so... You know, three hours and 20 minutes yeah. isn't so bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. But uh, I feel like the film gets more and more dense as we go. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, uh, Gamora's leading them, because of course she knows where she's going. And she says, me and Quill are going to get the card, the, the pass card thing. Bug and Doofus access the spaceport through the elevator so Tree can get us out of here. I hated this. You I was losing know my mind. their names. Not that. 
I'm, I'm not. I'm mostly fine. That's because <laughs> twenty. I'm just trying to. It's sometimes it's hard to like remember where we're picking up from. So she says, "You two have to go get the key card." Um, she and, and Quill are going to get the key card. She's going to send uh, Mantis and Drax to go down the elevator into the spaceport and prepare so that Groot can land the ship in there and pick them up. Um, is that just something they can do? It's so... Well, like, sorry. Don't you need to communicate a, that with was, the ship? Yeah, that's the, that's the I, development yeah. of the thought. The Where, where you'll end up is, eventually is realizing if, they need to go as a team everywhere and that Mantis is the most important member of their group at all times. You yes, can touch someone you can and be like, people to yeah, help forget you. the last two minutes. What they Stick should do the is go grab, uh, you know, um, Nathan Fillion's character. They should have had Mantis hold his hand or even be like, oh, there's someone on your face. Hold it and go like, um, you know, you, you are, thing, yeah. whatever Mantis has to say, you're in, completely in love with all of us or you'll, you respect us so much, you'll do everything we say, that, that sort of thing. And then just start infecting everyone on the ship. But the higher the rank, the better. I don't see how that's not the way you would just do this, and you would actually have full like, control over the entire station. Yeah, you, you, you're about to use it to essentially get in the front gate, so, I mean, I, abuse it. That shit ain't on cooldown. Are we sure Mantis is able to do this? Yeah, we see her do it in the film. Yeah. In, the, in this facility, even, just in way yep. less use instances. We'll see it in a moment. Yep, this is actually the next significant thing she does, so... Really annoying, because it, it, uh, what, what's the next challenge for Quill and Gamora? It's to convince someone to do something for them. Uh, I mean, from prior films, she puts Ego to sleep, the living planet. Well, it wouldn't matter anyway if it's established in the same film, if it, right? Like, we just highlight mm -hmm. as a flaw within the film anyway. But, and mm -hmm. also, she puts Thanos to sleep. I'm, I, I'm willing to uh, bet someone could be like, that sounds different than saying, like, you will do everything yeah, I say. God. Um, mm. there's a meaningful difference with those, it's just that we see her do it in this film, so it's just too late. Oh, it's over. <laughs> Doesn't matter, yeah. Oh, I like- it wasn't- maybe Isha, Efab should have written a director this movie to show James Gunn how it's done. It's like, oh, please don't get the impression uh, that that's all what we're um, trying to say. Yeah, that's- that's- that's kind of you, the sentiment, but, uh... <laughs> the, the, not even um, close, okay? We're, we're I, just, I do not know how to make a big old movie like this, I just like talking know about where scripts. To begin. If if they put us in charge of a movie, we'd have to be like, all right, we need to hire people to tell us how shit works around here because mm -hmm. I don't know anything about this process. I am just a guy who watches the final product. <laughs> all right, I don't know how to do any of the actual stuff. I don't know how to. I don't know how to how a camera works. Yeah, they're complicated creatures. Okay. Um. So yeah, we follow Drax and Mantis first. They head down and uh, they meet up with like a god, and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa I need to see your passes. And then uh, she says, uh, she grabs his hand and says, you are madly in love with him uh, being Drax. And, it, you know, I think it's fun. At least we get to see this in action once and it's something relatively useful. It just highlights how fucking stupid everyone is in terms of their approach here because they could have done so much more. But uh, the guy, the guy is like deliberately portrayed as this like beefy god who looks, you know, intimidating. And then he's just like, how are you doing today? What was your <laughs> name again? And I quite I liked... love that he asked him, like, what was your name again? Yeah, because <laughs> he doesn't in love even know him, it. He's like, oh, by the way. <laughs> and uh, Drax, I just, I just think he does an awesome delivery of Drax. Oh, yeah. The Destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, very shyly giving it away, because he's just, like, yeah. super awkward about it. But he's like, oh, it's such a lovely name. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it's, this it's is definitely fun. another example of James Gunn's comedy for when he's walking away, and he says, oh, my name is Bleedle Snort. Like, as he's, <laughs> just like yeah. of course it is. I'll be here when you get out. By the way, yeah. Um, well, there's one sh shot that happens here, and I was gonna. I'm bringing it up specifically to ask everyone here what it's supposed to mean. Mantis is walking past somebody, and they're eating the thing that they were eating at the beginning of the film when they all share like a. It's like a thing on a stick. Um, that she sees some guy eating it, and she looks sad, and then she moves on. What is up with that? Was the point something notice. like it's reminding her of better times? Because they were eating one in the in yeah. essentially the opening scene, but it was like dead and cooked, and this one's blue. So I don't know. I don't. I le I don't. I legit don't know what exactly this is supposed to mean. The only thing I've got is that it reminds her of when they were all together eating something, and it was chill, and she said, "All I got." Uh, yeah. That I don't know what else it would mean. If, that, I mean, if that's what it is, I don't hate it, but it is kind of strange. 
yeah, yeah, I was just I, trying to find I, if there was something more to it than that, or if, if I'm just maybe it's not anything at all. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Be right back. Um. Oh, it, was it the it was eating like a praying mantis? Maybe I'd have to check it. Maybe I that's it. I don't, know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um. So yeah. Uh. We we go back to the security station then, and um. Uh. Harcourt is watching them. And she says, wait, don't those two match the warning we were given? So, that's all we get, and so I assume the High Evolutionary warned, they gave them all, like, wanted posters for the Guardians, right? I guess. That's all I can assume is happening there, Makes which sense. kind of now introduces the problem of, why isn't this place on high alert for the specific information that they know that the Guardians want, and why isn't there a trap and an ambush set here? They know everything. What's going mm -hmm. on? Yep. I thought there would be, and was disappointed that there wasn't one. And to the point now where they're getting foiled because they're like, wait, that looks like the descriptions of the people that the High Evolutionary warned us about. It sounds, it's just so like, eh, okay. Yeah. And uh, they get caught because of that. Uh, the police start coming down on them. It's like, oh dear. Just... Um, so anyway, we're over to the uh, Quill and Gamora side of things, and they need to get info from a secretary, and Quill suggests that he, like, uses charisma on her, and uh, this this was where I started to lose it, in terms of what the fuck is going on with Gamora. Um, so Quill walks up and he's like, you know, I've seen you, I've seen you around, I've seen the way you look at things, and, and he's like, he's just doing a line, he's setting it up. And like halfway through it, Gamora just bumps in, aims a gun at her, and says like, "Where is the blah 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 blah?" And then he's like, "Whoa, what are you doing?" And then she says, uh, "Your plan was never gonna work." And I was just sitting there like, "Fucking, this isn't Gamora." Yeah. This isn't 2014 Gamora. This is this is some weird, angry, rage-worthy psycho Gamora, and I don't know why she's doing this. What? Why would she have thought that was a good idea? She gave him like five seconds. And, you this know, is that level of overcorrection that you were talking about. Like, yeah, I was really pleased that they didn't go the Loki route. Yeah, uh, and actually, you know, walk down the path just of the reset fact her into the way that Gamora, yeah. right? But it's just so far gone. Yeah, she, she's she's psychopathic. Uh, I I had no idea what the hell was going on, and she's like actively harming their plan, um, for like no reason. And then you just have him sort of trying to explain to her how she's she's behaving so differently from. Regular Gamora, and and I think the film wants you to be like, yeah, see, like he just doesn't understand that she's lived a different life now. And you're like, yeah, but we didn't see that life. We don't know what's going on here. She's just some new person. Um, sorry, I was uh, losing my position there. Because there's a couple of things that happen really quickly here that uh starts to make it all complicated. But, uh, one thing is that is she actively harming their plan? Because doesn't this work? And what? The movie tells us that what Chris so, Pratt was doing wasn't working. When you uh, when you go from trying to seduce slash charismatize, I don't know what word I'm looking for there, um, a person to get you information or at least give you access to something. Like if Star Lord had been like, "I've got a friend who's dying," um, and you know, I I know there's loads of red tape behind getting access to a particular piece of information, but if you you know, just trying that or even getting the next steps to it, like if she said, "You're gonna need." Um, a pass of blah blah blah, you're gonna need blah blah blah. But to shout at her and point a gun at her, like we don't know, it, it basically invites all the options of like silent alarms, or her locking up completely, or the like, uh, her now knowing that she can try and subvert you instead of work with you. It's just like, it increases all the it risks. risks. those things, oh for sure, yeah. Um, which would have been a viable option possibly, depending on what her answers would have been, but she didn't even wait for that. She was just like, nah, this no. is not gonna work, which... I don't even like I like I said I don't think it would match her morally but also just intelligently um because of course it's we do find out that it's strange to let him start down this particular road and then not let him find out whether it was even working or not yeah uh so um we find out oh wait we don't find it out yet they they collect the thing they get it um which I think at this point, because it's, it's like trying to format this correctly, because at first I was like, how the hell did they get that when the High Evolutionary knew? And it's like, well, to be fair, the thing they need isn't in it. And it's like, well, but sure, but like still, why? But it'll be a thing that they need to go to or will likely go to. Also, question, why isn't there just a tracker in there? Something. 
don't know. That'd be clever, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, um, so he says, this is not you, Gamora. You had a higher purpose to help people. That's why you left Thanos, and that's why you formed the Guardians. And then she says, I didn't form the Guardians, and I barely left Thanos. I thought it was really strange. It's like, first of all... Barely left him? Like, you left Thanos. Recently? <laughs> you definitely left Thanos. You didn't barely leave him. Was, uh... The only way I think you could salvage that, if she means to mean it in the sense of, I recently left him. Which is... Well, that's not even this... true. It's is it been... not? Then by... How many years has she been with the... Did they say that she's been the Ravagers now for two years? I mean, I guess it's... A, 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 I guess it's not like recently is a... Um, but, you know... It's, I'm not know. sure. Well, yeah, um, in any case, saying like, I didn't form the Guardians, it's like, yeah, but... Because it's so weird to, to be on Star-Lord's side, but uh, the movie isn't. If you know what I mean? Like, I'm with him. I'm like, yeah, you did those things. And then she's like, I didn't do those things. It's like, no, but... Those were just actions and events that were the results of your values. They're not, they're not things you had to do. They're not the same as um, what Gamora had to go through. They're not the same as what Loki had to go through. A lot of these events took place with her pushing for them. You know, you could argue that these events are what changed Star-Lord and Rocket more so to being more altruistic, but she uh, is the one that's trying to facilitate those events. And I just that's the miss, I think, that this film has on Gamora as a character. So, yeah, um, the Orgon, Orgon, the scope security comes down on everybody. They were all pretty much captured at this point. And we get an action scene starting up because uh, I think Mantis says she wants to run, but Drax says he wants Drax to fight. Drax says fight, yeah. So then uh, she does some flippy, flippy flips, and Mantis lands on someone and at first says, you're a kitty cat. And then they start going like, meow. Rah, rah. Then she jumps on someone and says, you want to dance. So he does. And then she jumps on the third person and says, you want to shoot with rage? And then they start spinning around, just firing their gun, and it starts hitting. Didn't she say people. you're like a violent psychopath or something like a that? Violent or rage. Violent, violent yeah. rage. Yeah. Can you uh, think of any issue with dumb. this? The third one is not like the others. <laughs> yeah, one of these <laughs> things is not like the other. It's not incapacitating one and having them do their own thing. This is Mantis. Like, oh, oh. shoot indiscriminately a great <laughs> deal around... All three of them it's, are absolutely it's idiotic. Um, I know they're funny, but why wouldn't she grab them and say, you love me and want to protect me? Is the idea here that she wants to, she doesn't want them to fight each other because she doesn't want to kill them? Clearly not with the third one. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying here, is that why would she, that third one is so, because if she did that to everyone, and there was this element of they're just security doing their job, and she doesn't want to hurt them, I'd be like, okay, I guess that's what I can pull from that kind of a suggestion. But the third one is so different that it's kind of confusing and weird. Like, what are, you, what are you trying to do here? All she has to do is just keep jumping, 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 and asking them to protect her and go after the others, and eventually she would win. As long as she doesn't get shot, obviously, but the, the idea is the more she infects, quote-unquote, the better her chances are. I think it, it, this might be a case of that problem people have where they don't want things to be repetitive. You know, like like in Doctor Strange 2, where it's like, oh, we can't have him using the same powers over and over yeah, again. We even can't though slice we another tentacle should. off. We already used yeah. that. Like I said, so, I, I understand the, what you gain from this. It's like, haha, that guy's like, acting like a cat. That guy's acting, he's just dancing. And then we have the visual yeah. of them spinning around, screaming and shooting while the guy's just dancing. It's like, it's all very funny, but you're damaging a your character by doing this. It's definitely not the third one, especially the other two. It's like I could understand her thinking that something like that takes them out of the fight in a way that's perfectly serviceable. I can yeah, understand her. Does. I can um, I can understand her not putting like not having the thought that oh you want to protect me at all costs. Like I can understand her that that would be the smartest thing to do. But I can understand her not coming up with that idea. But that you will go into a violent rage and start spraying in every direction with your gun. That's so unbelievably stupid. Uh, so let me come back to Gamora dealing with her issues with uh, Quill and Nebula. Nebula is here the whole time as well, by the way. Um, they, they, uh, they, they're um, surrounded by the Orgo people, and as they're arriving, um, I don't know why they put this in. It's so weird. She, uh, uh, Nebula shoots one, I think in the chest, so he's pretty much dead, and then you know Quill's like, whoa! And I think he's like, oh god, your plan is just to start killing people. Which again, I just don't think... I don't think that's Gamora, but whatever. This is new Gamora. Um, 
as they're like moving through the room, she takes hostage the uh, the secretary lady. Like, we'll blow her brains out if you come anywhere near us or attack us. And then she says, kill the one that looks like a carrot to show them we know business. Um, they already did kill one, just now. And also, there's... I, they, they, because they start, like, stunning people later. Because have they been, like, stunning people before this? Was that guy stunned, or...? I think she just shot him with a regular blaster shot. Um... In any case, well, it's the same gun she uses later to wound um, Harcourt, yeah. so I assume it's a kill gun, not a stun gun, but in any case, I just yeah. don't, like, yeah. it's a setup for a joke. It's the guy who looks like a carrot. Laugh my ass yeah. off. Um, I, I don't know, like, I get mildly amusing on a very surface level I just, with um, his expression. It's just, it, it's like, okay. They fucking confuse me, a lot of these jokes. When, when she's like, we gotta kill the one that looks like a carrot to show you mean business, I'm just sitting there like, there's a fucking dead guy on the floor, what do you mean? Already, like, and it's like, yeah, but it's a funny joke. It's like, just write it better. Yeah, yeah, like, make the joke like make sense. Like it, like I get it. The joke's like, it's fine, but I guess, but like, it, there needs to be. He needs to be the first to potentially get killed if that's the case, so that it makes yeah. sense. Um, so they get into an elevator. They're heading down, and Star Lord says, "We used to be in love. She was my girlfriend. She doesn't remember because it wasn't her. Because her dad threw her off a magic cliff, and she died. And then I lost my temper and nearly destroyed half the universe. And she came back out of the past. There she is. Everyone else who died in the past stayed dead, but not her. Why? Was it the magic cliff? I don't know. I'm not some freaking Infinity Stone scientist. Just some dumbass Earth dude who met a girl, fell in love, and that girl died, and then came back a total dick. Oh, thoughts? Um. Is this the first time we have Peter acknowledging that he stood in the way of essentially yes. them stopping the... Yeah, um, I feel like this is not um, an appropriate way to talk about that. It's, um, it's so interesting be a for little me to think more, about because uh... you are absolutely right. The amount of emotional weight that is in this speech when you really think about it that has not been dealt with or talked about, um, mm -hmm. this is part of the many things that make me think like, Man, Guardians 3 could have been so much more. Could have been, yeah. We, Because I don't recall Peter ever talking about the Thanos thing. Um, this seems to be his first time referencing it. Mm -hmm. And yes, I understand he's kind of like in this weird desperate situation talking to Gamora. But it's been years for you to kind of process all this. And it's the first we're seeing of it. And it doesn't quite feel fair you know, kind of to the audience to not get that sort of understanding and payoff. Uh, especially because it's weird that he... Like, it'd almost be better if he didn't, like, mention it so that we yeah. could assume that he'd gotten over it in some other way or there was still some closure that he needed to work through. I mean, it should have been a big element of the film, period. But I feel like this is... I mean, sometimes it's better to not shoot than to miss. Uh, yeah. Uh, what this scene feels like to me is a very meta comment from james gunn who was annoyed at everything everything they saddled him with yeah from endgame that's right. what it feels like the most and i am sympathetic to a degree but i don't think it excuses not acknowledging yeah, that's an explanation not an excuse i'm yeah. always so much more impressed when a writer can fix up and improve material they've been handed as opposed to mm -hmm. crying about it i understand yeah. i, I well, appreciate so like you know making fun of something that's bad i, I totally do but there's so much you can use in here, and instead he's like, this was this was all stupid and dumb. The fact that he said everyone else stayed dead, but she didn't, it's like, no, they're all back. In fact, she's the only one that wait, isn't back. Isn't, is, is, wait, isn't that what he's saying, though? The opposite? No, well, he said everyone else who died in the past stayed dead, but not her. Except they didn't. What I'm saying is she's Black the one that Widow. actually stayed dead, everyone else came back. Oh, I thought um, except he said what you said. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like that situation. I thought he said what you said. I guess I'm just misremembering it because that's what would have made more sense. I think also the impression I'm getting is that he's implying a frustration that she, Gamora didn't, like in, in terms of a writing way, Gamora is back when she shouldn't be. You killed her. Like that's his complaint. But the oh, reality is I don't was... think, because like Star-Lord I guess doesn't know about all the stuff with Vision but to be fair I don't even know if James Gunn knows all about the stuff with Vision the fucking makers of Doc Strange 2 clearly didn't remember the stuff with Vision so I thought what he's maybe I misheard it but what I thought he was saying was that 
everyone who died came back except for her. Like everyone who was snapped came back, but she doesn't come back. Um, I've I think that I hmm. so I've written it down as yeah. a quote, so I'd have to check the scene again if I've written it wrong. But he says everyone else who died in the past stayed dead, not her. That's the hmm. opposite of yeah. Everyone who died in the past. Hmm. Okay, now I'm just confused. I'm not. As Man. far as I'm concerned, he's he's lamenting the fact that she's come come back while everyone else got like. Almost, that sounds like a writing complaint to me. Like, that James Gunn is saying, like, everyone else, the characters are fucking dead. I've got to deal with someone who's come back who's not even here. Gotcha. The funny part, of course, um, being that Loki's back in his own TV show. Vision is back as of WandaVision. Uh, Black Widow's the only one that stayed dead, for real. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something that bothered me about the fact that he is, like, uh, the character is passively saying this so that Gamora is hearing it and I just don't understand why like he's essentially taking it out on her because like but, he does realize it's not the same character yeah but he's also very annoyed at her for like like messing up his plan earlier and for threatening to kill people because he really but this doesn't is why it's fucked people. as far as I'm concerned she shouldn't he's like he's like angry because she's doing shit she shouldn't be doing and I agree with him I don't know why she's yeah. doing this shit that's that's yeah who I'm are you that. yeah but like it's, I think James Gunn's trying to sell it to us as like, yeah, well, that's human nature, you know. Like she's not the same Gamora, and I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> true, but also not true. I mean, she's the old, she's whatever the old one would have become. Which is definitely not a fucking Ravager. Not, not an this. angry Ravager who wants to kill people. Not let's go around and kill people, yeah. Um, yeah, because it's weird. They uh, they open up the elevator, they go into the security room, and she shoots Harcourt in the leg, and she's like, ah. And then Quill's like, oh, what are you doing? And again, I'm just like, what is she doing? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, and so then things get weird. And uh, we kind of referenced this a, little, well, a few hours back, I assume. Uh, we got some music on, some fun music. I forget the track is playing at the time. And Drax is throwing people around. And it's like, hey, 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 because he's doing his signature, ha, 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 as he's like fighting. And then the music calms down, we go super slow-mo, Nathan Fillion is there with a big fucking sci-fi gun, blasts it, and then we get like a boom from the soundtrack as, as Drax flings across the room and slams into a wall, and he's uh, lying, you know, down in like a fucking weird flesh thing, Planter, I don't know. Yeah. And uh, you have a shot of Mantis looking terrified, and it's like... Am I, oh, again. am I alone in assuming at this point it's like, oh shit, they're gonna kill Drax. Here we go. I was uh when I when I was watching it, I was I was surprised and it was like, oh shit, like this early. Oh damn, that's uh that would be subversive, mm -hmm. unexpected, dramatic. These um, were the thoughts that I had at the time. <laughs> well, I shall continue with the presentation. Uh, we get some more bombs, like very serious stuff, and Mantis runs up to him and he says, run. Very, very stereotypically in storytelling, a signal that, like, I'm out, you've got to go. And then mm -hmm. she gets him up. They're trying to hobble away, and it's slow-mo still, and the choir starts cranking up, and Nathan Fillion's behind him again, aiming the shot, and boom. And, uh, again, still slow-mo. He slams to the ground. She's looking terrified. There's screaming in the background. And it, there's this shot where Drax, eyes closed, face flat on the floor, and I was just like, wow. Is he dead? Like, shit, man. I wasn't sure I'd feel about it as a, like, a storytelling decision at this point. But, I mean, it's worth just saying, no, he's fine. Yeah, like, he's okay. This will have no lasting impact on him, physically or psychologically. The assumption he's is they got back to the ship and he got a med pack and he's fine. I James guess, Gunn has yeah, a really unfortunate even, tendency to do that. <laughs> they do like the triumphant, yeah, we're the Guardians and we're leaving now. And I'm like, oh, I, we're, we're okay then. False alarm. False mm -hmm. alarm, everybody. We're okay. We're actually fine. And I assume James would be like, well, yeah, I had you for a moment there, didn't I? I'd just be like, you sure fucking yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, you, you did. You really did. You had yeah. me. And then you didn't. So let me tell you about a story <laughs> called The Boy Who Cried Wolf. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's very relevant because every time this shit happens, the subsequent time, I'm just going to be sitting there confused and then I just won't believe you. 
And uh, that's not good. I think that absolutely no. fucking annihilates stakes when I don't believe you when you show well, people so trouble. It might be worth stating very clearly, I would imagine, I know this was the case for Mullen and Rags, but I imagine it's the case for everybody here. There was expectation of, like, there was expectation of some, uh, I think some, some, some characters not, ma yeah. not making it to the end. Um, I, I, uh... And I, I don't think that those expectations were unfounded. I think that those expectations were, in some part, reinforced by uh, the way that this film was spoken about before it came out. Yeah, uh, like absolutely. And, and just and the and nature intention. of a trilogy of heroes coming to an end. Um, I Going into this, I was thinking uh, there, there are two big targets on some backs here. And yeah, I think, for yeah. me, for me, I think that the two big targets were on Rocket and Drax. Yep. I think those were yeah, the man. two who had the biggest targets. And so I went into this thinking, like, I'm kind of not expecting it, but sort of expecting it. I was I didn't think that everyone, you know, you know, yeah, we're avoiding spoilers. Like I guess we're sort of already at implied. It, well, so in, all but, that uh, all that needs to be implied at this point is it's, is y y you had me there. You really had orchestrated that entire scene and like edited it and you know with the music in a way to get me to feel a certain way, and then it's just like nah, nah, nope, gotcha, a slime. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I like if, like I, I feel this sort of Tarantino like nervousness in my bones, and I don't appreciate <laughs> you know these kinds of things happening. Um, but uh, okay, I guess we're carrying on, and everyone's all right. Okay, that's good. Well, yeah, what I didn't mention uh, too was in the middle of this scene with all the if, like production okay. elements I was talking about. Nebula is shot in the back. And she falls to the ground and spits up a bunch of blood and then puts her hands up to, like, surrender. Yeah, like she's surrendering, yeah. And it's yeah. like, genuinely speaking, if you'd ask me, what's the most hurt you've seen Nebula? I'd be like, I think it's there. I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, what? It's either here or, right, you know, before in the or, opening um, fight scene. When she was hit with a fucking rocket in the first movie, and then she gets up like a mangled corpse that's going... I was like, well, she's mostly fine there. When she's on the floor... Spitting up blood and pl say like, please stop. I'm like, oh shit, that's oh shit, like, yeah. Something real bad's happening, huh? You're communicating something to me where that I'm going to be comparing to other things that you've shown me in prior films. Well, like for instance, you know, like uh, in Infinity War, right, with Thanos when she's getting pulled apart. It's like yeah. that's another sort of point of reference for what does it look like when Nebula's yeah, that's like, more... really in trouble. That was like pain versus close to death. I would reference as yeah. that one. Well, when um, she's coughing up blood, you know, yeah, when I've never seen her cough up blood before, mm -hmm. and then and then it's just, oh no, she's fine. Like she's fine. It's, it's not even. Yeah. You don't have to do much. Like because when a character is shot in the back, and then we have a shot of them coughing and blood comes up, it's like, oh, what what does that mean? Oh, what are you telling me? They're seriously injured. That's right? what that means usually. Yeah. Yes. But apparently, so, uh, what it meant was not that. She's yeah. fine. She's fine. So, Jack is fine. They're fine. A couple things. I too d hate the fake outs. I think the fake outs are really lame. I also had the feeling watching this movie that there are certain characters that could die, uh, and that I, I wouldn't be shocked if they did. But maybe we want to save this for later. I don't feel like there's any problem in in uh, maybe thwarting those expectations. Um, we're probably going so to agree on the broad statement. We're not going to agree maybe on the specifics because I think this is flawed right now to bait that hard and to miscommunicate that hard to have like something completely different happen. Um, well, I, I'm not even talking yeah, about marketing. Yeah, I'm talking about within the movie. No, I, I, that's why I started with I agree that the fake okay. outs are lame as fuck. Like the fact we're like, uh, yeah, let's what? say, I think right, the problem is, so let's say theoretically, adding... let's say theoretically no one was to die in this movie. That is absolutely fine. As a possibility. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's fine um, they make if, it. if anything, to be clear, the notion that death is like the only or the most potent way to like you know get certain uh, emotional beats is almost like no, it's, you can no, not necessarily. There's mm -hmm. other options. There's I am very glad options. you guys said that because I have seen that argument quite a bit. I from I, I understand where that argument comes from, but like. I think that everybody can think of, like, stories where, you know, like, the characters don't need to die for it to be dramatic or weighty or, like, yeah. achieve can I... crazy payoff. Like, um, yeah. So fucking funny. In, uh, some people may like, take their little air airplane visits to, to India to watch this film. That's totally chill if you want to do that. It's absolutely fine. 
And uh, sometimes in those visits, you'll catch little things from the audience, you know, because you're in a cinema and that's what happens. And when Drax falls over, there is an actual voice you could hear on the recording that says, Oh, he's dead, bro. In <laughs> English? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, he's dead, bro. It's just like, <laughs> no, he's not, bud. He's fine. Yeah, I think what I what I hate most about let's let's focus on this particular case: the fact that they bait his death is not so much that he's in a really sticky situation. And you think he might die, and he doesn't. It's that there's no consequences. Nope. Yeah, it is he inconsequential. Was... But from a yes. filmmaking standpoint, the film is conveying at that moment: holy shit. Well, this would be like, a kind of a classic case of having your cake and eating it too, right? To put us into that emotional state, but to not have the consequences of it. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. this is a more subtle version, though, I guess, compared to like what we saw with everything that's happened after Endgame, with bringing mm -hmm. all of these characters back to life of a much more, uh, you know, close to literal sense of doing that, <laughs> or or like as 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 much as you can push in terms of oh that character did die, but now they're back and it's cool. This is, like, different to it. Oh, they were, you thought they were going to die. Ha, <laughs> gotcha. Anyway. I don't, even I don't even necessarily have a problem with the, the film treating it like, holy shit, is he going to die here? And if he's, like, severely injured for a next segment of the movie. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, but it's what, the, what happened with Rocket, right? Where it's like, oh, shit, you know? I think it was and then he's out of commission for the rest of the It'd film. It'd be pretty meaningful to have Rocket in his position and then to move Drax in there as well on, like, life support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be and a lot better. Maybe, you know, Peter's like, Jesus, like, what the hell? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah that, that, I would be fine like, with it if that's what they apart. went. You know? Yeah, I would, I would have been happy with that. But it is inconsequential. It was nothing. It was just to get that feeling out of you, but then move straight along. And I don't know, you watch it the second time around, you know? Like, how, how, does, that, how does that scene make you feel? Annoyed? <laughs> yes, that's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I'd say. So, uh, with that happening, Peter's like, oh shit, I've got to do something. So he says to the uh, uh, rat catcher, please uh, sign me into the system and tap me into them so that I can speak to them from my heart. And I know that if they hear what I have to say, that they'll understand my situation. And he convinces her, and so she does. And she says, okay, here's like the speaker or whatever. Say what you gotta say, your piece or your truth, whatever. She says something, and then he says, ah, I didn't need to speak to them. I just wanted to get into control of the suits. And he moves the thing away and then starts typing. And I was like, um, first of all, this is this is the lesser issue. I was just like, probably could have just threatened to kill her and she'd do that, I, I imagine. It's worked before, but I, I guess uh, it's interesting to see that he actually managed to get through to her that way. But uh, secondly, what she's done, apparently... He asked her to sign him in so that he could speak and they would hear him. What she's done is sign him in so that now he has full control over their suits. <laughs> it's like, okay, those are the same... I don't same... even know why there is full control over their suits. Like, in Really the weird. Like Secondly, he hits a button, they all go... And we play fun music, which, by the way, so soon after the big tragic moment, I was just like, alright, fine. I guess. Like I I that that was my signal. I was like, so everyone is fine then. Okay. That was weird. Yeah. Um That he, he, is a totally fair tonal complaint that I agree with. And that's uh, not just I'm not I'm not saying it's fair because I agree with it, but I think that's that's a case of like, oh, they wanted this dramatic beat and then the change in tone totally undermines it's like it's so obvious. Well the thing is I think James would tell you, he's like, Well no, that's me revealing to you that it isn't sad nothing sad is actually happening we're good we're fine we've made it because peter came up with something pretty clever yeah and i guess that just it mostly ties into the fact the the big problem being that it was inconsequential but yeah um that that change in tone just reveals how inconsequential it was which totally undermines the moment i guess yeah, the, i uh i the, the the idea that that's meant to be like you know in avengers when they start to lose the battle it's like i really didn't get that no i didn't get it all, no. from that i got i got the vibe of oh shit someone's like about to die um he sets it and he very smugly is like ah there you go my plan worked and gamora's like Ugh. and then they both leave the room uh, ratcatch is still in there yeah, she, she could just, just undo what he did, and then out. all of them exactly. go back to the same position. I was just like, "Fucking yeah. hell!" Yeah. Mm -hmm. This uh, this whole sequence, man. Well, that I was gonna say, <laughs> and then they leave. So that's about it. And yeah, if uh, god damn, yeah, like what? Is, there's really like a couple of lines here and there, and that's it. The rest of it's fucking terrible. This part's really shit. 
It's Fuck. it's piss. Yeah, it's total piss. <laughs> and I mean, I don't know, like there are some fun jokes, but that that's it's not enough. Yeah, no, I, and and to be honest with you, it's uh, once we find out what they gain from it, like yeah. fuck, dude. Yeah, once we find out what we <laughs> what we gain from it, it's like, oh shit, that was like actually we could have cut that completely. Yeah, really, if we if we wanted to make some like revisions to the script, you could just get rid of this completely. Um, which takes us to a scene. I imagine. Something that, that well, it got released separately. This one, mm, yeah. Uh, it's the four little critters having a chat with each other about how they yep, feel about really... the state of things. This scene, I really like it. Yeah, pretty popular one, I would say. Uh, it's uh, good. I think really it starts good. with the um, the new world will have sky and it'll be beautiful, and then they start talking about their names, and he's like, since you guys... Uh, yeah, I think Teefs, I'm, I'm giving them their names before they've even given them their names, but he says, uh, he says something like, since you guys are my closest friends, I thought you might be interested in knowing I've been thinking. Uh, I love that. that. Yeah. It's so yeah. funny. <laughs> it's, it's definitely like an almost like Winnie the Pooh kind of thing yeah. to say. <laughs> like, Piglet, <laughs> I want you to know I've been thinking. Um, and I she says... Pull the, pull the trigger, Piglet. Because we're <laughs> heading to the new world, we're going to need names... So she names herself Lila. Um, then uh, the walrus goes with Teefs. He says, although we do all have them, mine are the most prominent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like oh, it. I He's guess. funny. Um, yeah, well. uh, it's a small complaint, but where does Lila get her name from? Um... I, I mean, assume that a there is a nice sounding name, or maybe that's something for us to think about. Why would that be? Maybe, maybe that was like, maybe, you know, maybe that was some human that she knew. I assume that they are, when they're given speech and their new brains and stuff, or the brains are tinkered around with, they almost have like language injected into them uh, mm -hmm. so that they have like concepts and understandings of how the language is to some degree. Uh, instead of having to like figure it out from scratch, yeah, I suppose. I, I, I the other ones, it's obvious where they get it from. So I was just kind of curious about hers. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that, like, we just don't get the connection. What does? What does? Oh yeah, that's probably worthwhile. What, what does Lila mean? Lila means like lilac. Is that where it comes from? Let's or see. Lila is a feminine name that has Arabic, German, Persian, and Sanskrit origins. Plenty of meanings to... This is for baby names. Uh, come, uh, the, coming from the Arabic name Layla, this name translates to night and is sure to help baby embrace the beauty of the darkness. And, and it's from a, oh my God. It's, it's, from, it's from a name thing for kids. So I'm like, that's just smart. was just like, geez. Uh, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a girl's name of Arabic, Hindi, Persian origin, meaning night or play. Okay. Which has to do with the sky, but um sort of uh but um yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know. Um uh, the Persian bunny, word meaning possibly dark beauty. The bunny says is, me is lying on a floor, my name is Floor. Her English isn't as good as the rest of them, but you can definitely no. understand what she's saying. And, I like uh, that one too. It's funny to me. <laughs> Because it's kind of, it, it's funny because if you have no concept of such things, you might go, that actually does sound like it could be kind of a pretty name. Yeah, you don't know about <laughs> like social conventions and what people are normally named. Mm -hmm. um, like, floor, floor is, is like, well, I'm word. on the floor, so. Mm -hmm. I think well, someone I said forget... it's literally because their name is Lila in the comics. Like, oh, that could be it, yeah. I, I mean, sure, but like, I think the spirit of it was, what does it mean to her? Mm-hmm. No, of course. What they're saying is that, that that's going to be that why it was chosen, it. not necessarily for a meaning, unfortunately. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. I think she's the only one who doesn't explain why she names herself that. So, because um, everyone else explains why what their names are, why they chose them. But I don't yeah. think she explains why she chose that name. She no, seems she like doesn't. she's been thinking about it a long time because she, like, yeah, it's her idea to name them all. So it's not that I don't buy it. I just, I'd, I'd be curious to know. Yeah, this seems like they only like Lila does have comic book origins, but the other two do not appear to have okay. comic book origins. Her name is Lila Powers, 
and she's actually well she's from a planet called half world um so james Gunn's mixed it in so that she's from uh counter earth instead but yeah is she from counter earth i would assume they were all from um i i, 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 I actually have, they're yeah. all critics from earth i thought they may have been from earth yeah. there's an interest in earth like the fact that it's counter earth i think yeah. they're all from earth He's like Dr. Cortex with all of his critters in there. The well, we'll see, a, we'll see a label later on in the movie, and it says the place of origin. So. Dude, High Evolutionary is similar to Cortex. He gets a bunch of animals to do experiments on them. The difference is that Cortex wants them to be in his army, and he wants Crash to be the commander of his army. And High Evolutionary, High Evolutionary and Dr. Neo Cortex. <laughs> Partners in crime. So then Rocket says, Someday I'm going to make great machines and fly, and me and my friends are going to go flying together. Lila, Teeths, Floor, and me. Wait, you, you, missed, you missed a part of the line. I probably have. I don't have full quotes, unfortunately. Oh, damn. Because I, I, like I like the full quote. Because he says, Into the forever and beautiful sky. And I don't know why, but I really like that specific like way to describe uh, the world out there. Yeah, it's limitless possibilities. It's eternal, freedom. Eternal, it feels like a big appeal beautiful. to freedom. Yeah, yeah exactly. Possibility. Um, and then, adventure. yeah. And yeah, he says his name is Rocket. Yep, um, I, I, I really don't need much more support good. for that. <laughs> like, that's so yeah. good. It's great. Oh, it's incredible. great, yeah, it is. Well, I mean, maybe we're far out of a log to talk more about it, but I mean, it's, it's, uh, I just... My reveal is that that's probably my favorite scene, and I like all the animal scenes. It's my favorite scene as well. Um, um, when when Mahler and I were uh, we we talked very briefly uh, for uh, for just a little bit before I think this was like last, hours and hours ago uh, before I slept, and he asked what my favorite you know were there any scenes that I consider my favorite, and then he was like that aren't the animal scenes, and I was like ah oh, that makes it harder. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, they are, they are really well made, well written, like well executed and very important in terms of uh, this film. And they are the scenes that I think have the best tonal sort of balance um, out of all of them. They're like the most mm -hmm. s like sound on that front. Uh, and then of course, like I really like Rocket, so getting more stuff for Rocket I, that just makes me, you know, that like that's what I want. Yeah, the, the the highs that come from all the stuff with Rocket's origin are like they make they make the whole film worth it for me. Even though uh, the plot is well, and it's gonna get worse. But like this is the stuff that I that is totally makes the movie for me is incredible. Oh, I mean, if, if this wasn't in the movie, like if this, oh god, if, if it wasn't, wasn't in, the in the movie, movie holy shit, yeah. <laughs> I have to completely disagree. <laughs> do it. Okay. I, I really do enjoy the scenes, and I think they're really good. Like, this is fantastic stuff. Um, but I also hate the fact that this has to happen now in the third movie, the sixth appearance. I feel like it's, if it was going to happen, it should have happened some other, at some other moment in the chronology. And it, I understand what they're doing with it, uh, that... It's setting up, you know, how important friends are to Rocket, um, and that's a, a, the crux of the story: compassion and and friendship. James Gunn even said that himself. But all the same, like I, you have so many brilliant characters that have to have their finale now, and I wanted to see more about their relationship with each other. Um, and I like, I just didn't feel like I got that with this movie. Like I wanted to see more about. Quill and Rocket together, like they're best friends, and you don't really get that. Uh, and I just feel like this was—it feels so separated, all the same. Like even though you know it helps out the primary story. Um, it, um it I'm still actually bother me that it was even here. There's an irony here of like I think there's bloat to this film, but I wouldn't, re I wouldn't even cut a second of the animal stuff. I would have cut out the entirety of the all ghost scope thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, that I think go. I think yeah, my big disagreement. My, bis my big disagreement with you here is that I think the fact that the whole thrust of the narrative is Peter trying to save Rocket is like a, a nice way of developing their friendship and stuff like that. You know, I mean, it's it's very straightforward, but it's incredibly powerful. Something, stuff. 
Something I would say to actually bolster, well, to, to some extent, the the point that you brought up with uh, the absence of interaction between uh, Rocket and the team, at least so far in the film, something that's interesting to note is that I can't, I, I'm actually forgetting if I've said this like today or on the other, uh, like when I was on open bar. <laughs> it has been four hours, so maybe. But, um, but uh, it is actually kind of surprising Guardians 1, Rocket is interacting with the team a bunch. Guardians 2, he's separated from the team from a good portion of the movie. Infinity War, he's separated from the team for a good portion of the movie, hanging out with Thor. And Endgame is with the Avengers. It's actually been a while since uh, yeah. you've had Rocket like with the full team, like interacting. It's actually been kind of a while. <laughs> yeah, enough. though I, I think but, that, that's a bigger complaint I have about 2 than 3. Because the way uh, so, that it's separated yeah. in two is kind of stupid. And this I, one is much more meaningful. I like him and Yondu, though. Um, yeah, really I, like him and, I like him I, and Yondu I think, a bunch. I think all that this does, honestly, is just speak to how good Rocket is, that you could throw him with a whole bunch of different characters, yeah. and he's great yeah. with everybody. He's great with Yondu, he's great with Thor. Um, yeah, he, he's he great really with is. all of them, but I think if right I... Now, you know, Go ahead. You know, like where we're at in the MCU, Rocket's like top tier compared to everybody else. You know, oh, yeah. basically compared to all of the other characters. I haven't written my script for my review yet, so like I haven't fully articulated my argument on it. But like, it it it's a difficult thing for me to break down because like I really do love the scenes, but I just feel like it doesn't work for me in this movie because it's just because of the fact I know I'm not going to see these characters again. And I'm like, this is what you chose to do for the finale. And like, yes, I totally agree. Rocket is top tier character at this point. I love this character. It's really bolstered by it. So it's like, it's hard for me to suss out like where I would have put this in chronological order with their stuff. But I, I don't know. I just don't feel like it belongs here. I think the, the problem is that um, at this point, it was kind of something that I think a lot of people, myself included, wanted to actually know something about because we'd mm -hmm. been, it had been, it's something that's been set up as a threat in the first two films. We haven't gone anywhere with it yet. Or we, what we did in those first two films was like, what is, we, we're observing like the effects of his past. The fact that he's incredibly standoffish, like needlessly callous uh, sometimes, like doesn't really want to help or like be part, like it, it we we see the consequences of what happened to him and so it is it's i think it's worthwhile to see what did happen to him so that we get like a really full picture of this character which i think but you know this is what we're getting at this point in the film you know it's like damn we're getting like a full picture of who rocket is yeah I'm, the, I'm all for it yeah well well i was about to say something but i guess it's arguably a spoiler so uh <laughs> um i'm <laughs> I'm like, it's, this is a tough juggle because uh, I think those scenes do a great job of contextualizing how much we should hate the high evolutionary as well. He's the villain yep, of yep. this film, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, I seriously wonder if maybe we could tweak it all around so that we can try and get most of Rocket's stuff with flashbacks. Could we get Rocket's flashbacks and have Rocket in the story instead of in a coma? Like, probably, uh... right? I, think it's, um, I, mean, it's I would have right? been more satisfied with that route because they do like these aren't completely useless scenes at all. Like uh, I don't want to spoil anything, of course, uh, but you know they what they do with the uh, with the high evolutionary and everything. Like this is incredibly important, and these these scenes hit me. But all the same, I just still feel like they like this would have made a really cool disney plus special or something like you know to really flesh out his story this would have hit just just the same for me i think, it's um, uh, I think the context of him being near death um and thinking about these things is important i agree and um, also thinking about it like tying into high evolutionary as like the big bad he seems worthwhile to have as the big bad of a film yes and given that he is directly connected to Rocket, I think it would, like, if it was Rocket got hurt in, like, the holiday special or something, and that was setting up the groundwork for the High Evolutionary, I'm not sure that I would have preferred that as a as a route of, like, splitting the story up. Um, I think it's just a matter of, in terms of using time effectively, there's just shit that we could have gotten rid of that would have been able to give us more time for the other characters as well. Yeah, like, if we took out that, uh, the previous scene, uh, with the, with the MacGuffin chase, essentially... Um, yeah. mm -hmm. 
it, it, that would have freed up way more time to have the things that I think it's lacking, which is interaction with the group, with Rocket with the group. Oh, dude, I already think that we're in, like, it, just going, for, let's, if we were pretending to be watching this and commenting on it live, I'd be like, we're in a dire position right now for wasting character opportunities. Mm -hmm. like, uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. many big times for... we could have done, so many conversations, so many interactions, so much development, and we've been, so, some of it's cut off real quick, some of it's made fun of, and some of it's just non-existent. And it's not for a lack of time spent together. No, this um, film's two and a half hours long. It's just it's not, longer than uh, Guardians One. And think about what Guardians One achieves in two hours. Yeah, we're just not using that time. We're just not using that time well. And I think I my my stance on a lot of this plot stuff would certainly be a lot better if we got really great character stuff throughout it. Um, but when it's kind of a meh, in that regard, uh, it definitely, you know, it definitely doesn't help. Um, shall we continue? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's continue. Sure. So they hack into the, the device, whatever, and it's displaying a video of, I guess, how Rocket was created, or at least the big significant surgery he had done on him. And swear to God, I, I don't know if you guys will feel completely different lovely. this. You might, you might, but uh, in the cinema... When it was panning around people and it was showing Nebula, and I think she's actually like crying, I was like, "Fuck, that's brilliant!" Because of everything mm -hmm. she's been through. Yep. yep. Then she said, "It's worse than what Thanos did to me." Why? And say I that? cringed out of my oh, skeleton. Me too. Why do you need to tell me that it's? Why do we need to compare this to somebody else's suffering? Exactly. I honestly think that was uh, insecurity on behalf of like, does do, do the audience know why she's upset? Know? People know. Yeah. To yeah, it, I think that one's for the audience. This is, uh, this is a, we said this for the least observant watched, people. Yeah. If you haven't watched and don't remember the other films, tough. I just, oh, it's so sad because it's not even just that it's signaling what's happening here. It's that I don't even buy it. Um, we saw what Thanos no, it, did to you. I don't, I don't buy that it's actually worse. So why? Because now the thought in my head is like, well, actually, was it worse? Like, why am I thinking about that when it should just be? Yeah. I, it should just be that she's the most angry and upset about what you've unwittingly did. made this like a contest. Yes. Exactly. Well, which it could one, have been which one is fucking worse, great you know? because is she right? She just has so much fucking sympathy. She's been through the same thing, but now it's like, wow, that looks more painful than what I had. And you're like, what the? Also, oh. made me not like her as a character a little bit because I'm just like, well, look how Rocket handles things, and look how you're handling things. I'm not gonna go that far. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, I adored her tearing up, and then I was like, "Why the fuck did you speak? <laughs> Don't you ever do that again?" This is another. This is another self-inflicted wound. Just cut that line. Why would you? Why? Mm -hmm. Why would Give you? Give me some that? credit. I think, I, I think it's exactly what was said. It's oh shit. Maybe some people don't remember like what happened with Nebula. To which it's like, damn, you should remember. She's one of the better characters in the MCU. Like exactly. remember. Yep. Uh, so I mean, in terms of density, we're kind of with the best characters right now. I think. Um, I mean, it's the reason, yeah, yeah it's the reason why I'm most invest. I was invested in this film coming into it. <laughs> uh. So uh, she says a file was removed today. Biometrics match this man, and it highlights one of the subordinates that we've seen from the High Evolutionary. And I didn't mention it. I probably should have. He uh, he bumped into Star Lord directly. They were walking yeah. in a. a Hard already bumps into him, and then he goes, oh, I saw that man today. It was just like, oh. Well, because when the scene <laughs> happens, and it's just like, oh, hey, you're right, buddy. It's like, oh, for fuck, god damn it. I've seen enough movies, all right? Yeah. I know what you're doing. <laughs> He's important because people don't bump into each other in movies unless it's important. And yep. it seems like he's always with a high evolutionary. Um, not this time. He was just. But not this there. time. He's over but here. But it's very, very fortunate because it enables a lot to happen. <laughs> Because if you had we didn't have to do that, shit. let's look up the employee records. Da, da, da. Oh, it's this guy. Oh, he's got this job. I bet he's at this place. Let's go. Get him. Come um, on. They, uh, so they figure out he works for the High Evolutionary, and then uh, the description is he creates whole societies, conducting experiments outside of galactic law, corners of the universe, consider him God, the Zeronians, the Animan, and the Sovereign. And it's like, ah, oh, yeah, we know them. They didn't mention any of this in the second movie, though. <laughs> like, no. no, they didn't, because there was probably a much different plan. Yep. Much different. At that point. Um... 
I found that one. There's nothing to dig in there, but just he does it outside of galactic law. It's like that sounds interesting. But uh, there is a, there is a yeah, a wide galactic uh, yeah, essentially yeah. rules on you know ethics. Um, so then, uh, yeah, they say, if we find him, we can save Rocket. And then in the background, Mantis says, I have the High Evolutionary's coordinates. How did she get those? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I have Maybe no fucking clue. Yeah. It's so, like, hey. <laughs> like, sometimes I think James Gunn would be like, oh, come on. I'd be like, don't, don't come on me. Come on. <laughs> Just yeah, work a little come harder. On, come on. Um, but yeah, and then Gamora's like, it's a trap. And then, and then Stalin says, the trap isn't a trap. If you know the trap is trying to trap you, it's a face-off. Uh, this is something I was bringing up on Open Bar that I really don't like, and that I guess it's just, we're just fucked because this is it now. Um, the Guardian's storylines uh, in the first film felt like they're mostly reacting to situations, and that's why it's very ragtag and that the plans don't come together very well and that a lot of it is very, not necessarily luck-based, but... This is happening. Okay, we do this. That's falling apart. Fuck. Uh, uh, we do this. But as it's gone on, they've basically kept that as their formula, even when they have time to plan. And oh, so yeah. we never organized. just did the the orgoscope plan. Was fucking abysmal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was terrible. And now we're doing it again. And he's like, "It's not a trap because I know it's a trap." And it's just like, oh, uh, man. so like we need to address this. Like it's one thing if you say, "I know it's a trap," but because we know that, then we can, you here's know, we, we'll sort of yeah. know what to be expecting. So here's what we'll do, and da 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 da, da and it fades to black or whatever. Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, exactly. You can do that f movie thing of like where he starts explaining the plan, but we don't hear any of it, so it can still be a surprise. She says for us. it's a trap. He looks at her, smiles, and then we cut to a different scene. Easy. Cool. And it's or, or he, yeah, he <laughs> says like, "You bet it. You you bet it is a trap." Yes, it, mm -hmm. yes, it is. And we, we're gonna do the trap springing. They think that we're gonna get trapped, but, but it'll the be problem them, is, you like, see. you would also need to write all of that totally differently. <laughs> the way yes, that yes, yeah. You do well, everything because if it's a trap, it means you're expected, which means that things are known, which means other things should have been done. Um. So then, yeah, she says, "How can it be a face-off if he's like a thousand times more powerful than you?" Um, which is so true, and it just doesn't get addressed, and it fucking... It, it's funny, in the planning part, it's annoying. Just wait until we get to the execution. <laughs> so here's, uh, have we established at this point that the High Evolutionary has powers beyond that of a normal human being? Well, she just did. Well, she says that he's powerful, but have we seen him... Like, have we seen his power set? We yet? know... Uh, we've seen it, but they we haven't. We it. They haven't seen it, but she knows that he's powerful. Yeah, she's a thousand yes. times more powerful than you. Yeah, which could be hyperbole. But I, the reason I ask is because... Well, it's probably I, not exactly 1,000. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like no, but the, re the reason I ask is because I, I want to talk about the fact that they gave him certain superpowers. Because I actually, especially with how they're handled later, I almost wish they didn't give him superpowers at all. And that he was uh, essentially just a I scientist. Agree. I agree. I don't think his superpowers serve any real good purpose that we couldn't write around. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's he just this crazy, a guy. super influential scientist. scientist man who has a lot of power, a lot of influence, and he can use like technology and things like yeah, that. Yeah, can have he a lot of great unique can pay weapons for the best. and stuff. Yeah, but it is someone's kind of uh, brought it in as a reference. It's not even something I thought about. It's like his control over gravity is such that he has full control over Adam Warlock. Like that's pretty that's powerful. That's, That's wild. He's got really like powerful. syndrome, syndrome powers, you know. Yeah. Keep that in I'd mind. I really, I prefer he was just a guy. Oh, I that would have helped well. because, in general, I I do. There's quite a lot that I like about the High Evolutionary, um, and one of the things I like about it is that compared to some of the other villains in recent MCU stuff, or, in, or compared to some of the stakes in recent MCU projects, this is we're just trying to save our friend. And he's yeah. a guy doing his own dastardly things on his own little planet in his own little corner. He's not trying to take over the universe. He's not trying to destroy all the multiverses or or anything of that sort. And so the like you had a chance to subvert the recent trends and just have him be a guy. But I felt like there was some sort of thought they had that like, no, he's got to have superpowers because this is That's a superhero true. movie. Yeah. And that's lame. 
Mm-hmm. Being of lame, uh, Gamora says, just drop me off. And then they say, we don't have the time. And it's like, you have time to open a portal. <laughs> it's, you, why did you establish those fucking things? But also just... Get rid of them. Um, it doesn't even really make sense to me. I guess the Ravage has left. Like, uh-huh. But we know They're that's not, not true, by the way. They're just not around anymore. Yeah, we know that uh, at least one of them is still around, but yeah, whatever. Um, this is an excuse to make it so that she has to come with them, um, which is kind of annoying. I really wish you could have written it so that she, at this point, just make it so that you do what you do in third act, but now make it so that on that first, uh, the second act action adventure thing that she actually begins to care about them instead of taking as long as they did to, because by the end of this movie, she's almost back to normal Gamora. Almost, but then... Almost. And I just, it, we'll talk about that when we get there, but... Um, yeah, we'll get there. So, yeah, she says, drop me off with my people now. And he says, your people? They're not your people. I'm a damn Ravager. You aren't. I like this line because it points out a flaw in the writing. Therefore, I don't know if it's a good line in the script as is. <laughs> we live complex lives. We, we do really do, because <laughs> I agree with him. But mm. I'm not sure that he would be saying this in the world that they're trying to convince me is real, which is that she's decided to join the Ravages and has been with them for... And this is another problem. I have no idea how long it's actually been since Endgame. I think uh, it's been like... Endgame is 2023, and I think at this point we're up to like 2025 or 2026. So at this point, if she's been with the Ravages for that long, it doesn't really feel right saying they're not your people. But like, right. I, I guess... Like yeah. that's- well, I mean, I mean that is a hell of a lot less time than between like like Guardians one and two. That's in the span of the same year. And look at how mm-hmm. much of a bond they have. So yeah. Um, and he says, "My Gamora didn't find family with a group of criminals. She found it with us, people who care about you. I know that's who you still are." And lines like that, I'm just sitting here like, "What the fuck's going on?" It's like he knows, but he wrote it this way anyway. Mm. Gamora wouldn't find family with a group of criminals that's true, she wouldn't have stayed with the Guardians if they'd only done things for money yeah I just don't get it, it's like the script's are weird I, but it... you, you just wonder what what do you want me to think you know, like do I, do I agree with her or him or like what, what is it that you kind of well, and more confuses uh, you What's, what am I meant to make of decisions that are made at the end of the film with, with references like this in mind? Um, but, good question. Oh, and uh, for the record, I know that he would feel he has a greater connection to the Ravagers than she does. I'm not questioning that. That makes sense. It's just that to deny her connection to the Ravagers when she's been with them for as much as three years, it's like, it's just silly at that mm. point. That was about as long as she had spent with you when she died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so she says, "What?" Are you, well, she throws him into a series of computer screens and says, uh, what are you so afraid of in yourself that I need to be something for you? I don't give a shit about your Gamora. Life made me, me. Which, uh... This is, uh... What do you, wh- why don't you say what you, on that first? Feels like the writer shouting at me for thinking that something else should have happened here. And I'm like... I think... I think that that is like this is theme dialogue. That too. Like it's too uh, for the audience, too blunt. Wait, well, yeah, because it's, this is it's, gonna it's to sort of drag us right to what I think is the core theme of the film, but uh, but doing it in a way that's not very smooth. I don't well, so think. Not only is that true, it's just that when she says "life made me me," it's the she the argument here would be that she's lived a different life to Gamora before, and that's why she's ended up the way that she is, and she's happy with that because she is her. To which I would be like, "We didn't fucking see any of that shit, and why did that shit happen?" That doesn't even make sense. You know what I mean? Like it feels like an overcompensation, but simultaneously yeah, like, the statement so kind of things that's going to relate to what you just said. Yeah, not only the theme, but this is also part of what Star Lord's going to be going through, right? This this will lead into what uh, Drax is going to be saying to him soon from uh, advice from Mantis. Yeah. So I think with this, I think this all all the problems stem from the fact that Gamora probably shouldn't be with the Ravagers because. If we imagine a scenario, a hypothetical, in which it is in character for her to end up with the Ravagers, I feel like there's nothing wrong with this line. But because it's not in keeping, it doesn't work. I think I or agree, the... though it's still not exactly subtle with the... Uh, the. I suppose, because I'm talking a lot, you could talk about that if you want, either. 
bring your eyes. Well, I, I, I mean, it's a little, it's a little blunt, but I don't. Th- I, I think if her being with the Ravagers is in character, which it isn't, but if it was, then I don't think there's any problem with this line because um... I could under, I could understand her being upset at him not getting the fucking point already. You know, a better uh, place to put it and still end up this way is to put it with. Not like I was about to say space angels, but basically the good guy space renegade Nova people. Corps? I don't know. I think they're gone now. I don't think they exist anymore. So Sandar got that. Thanos fucked them up. But yeah, let's oh, just, okay. but let's just pretend there's a roving like a Guardians of the Galaxy type, but they're mercenaries. Uh, but they're <clears throat> much more known for being like very Robin Hoody or something like that. And uh, the idea can be it's like oh well that 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 was us, and she's like you're the. I know what you are. Like, I know the stories of the Guardians of the Galaxy. You fuckers do things for money. And you'd be like, no, 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 no. You you don't understand. Like, the, the, the thing that she's missing is to actually see them in action at this point, that she only running on information that she's heard about them or sees them picking. She could even say, like, you you pick the most lucrative battles. Which is a, what a fucking coincidence or something like that. She could be angry yeah. with them, which can create more of the sort of angry dialogue, but I would still make her, you know, make her the altruistic one, even in the Orgo scope like adventures where Quill is more willing to do something or or whoever is and she's the one that's like what the hell is wrong with you like you you guys are exactly the fucking people I expected you to be and so Star mm-hmm. be like you're wrong and then she can still give this speech and it would it's coming from the other direction you know she considers herself much more altruistic than them because she doesn't know them yeah. anymore I like that better yeah um but I'm assuming he chose Ravages because we're familiar with Ravages yeah, I guess that saves him having to introduce an entirely new faction. <laughs> um, yeah, and she goes to punch Quill, and um, she says, uh, you know, I think I think uh, Nebula grabs her arm and says, I'm not risking the Badger's life to make your life more convenient. And she, she mentions says, that she got upgrades from a rocket. That, and she says, I'm family, and then she says, so is he. Nice. Mm. I mm-hmm. like it. Good. <sighs> See, and then we get this. So now you're thinking, like, well, what's uh, what the fuck is Adam Warlock and his mum gonna do? They're kind of screwed over at this point, right? And you're like, well, yeah. I wonder where that's going. Welcome to a scene where we have a room where Nathan Fillion, Harcourt, Adam Warlock, his mum. And uh, captured man and pet alien doggo are. You might be thinking, "What the fuck? Why is this the beginning of a joke?" And it's like, "Yes." Um, <laughs> Nathan Fillion says, "We found him on the outskirts of the first shield, pirating supply ships." I just want to die. Okay. Um. Uh. Sure. That's where he was. Um. Doing stuff so that you could pick him up. The Ravagers yeah. fucking left, and he stayed to just try and, I guess, pirate supply ships, and then they grabbed him. It's fucking hell. Fun. Undone well, by his Ad, greed. This is very consequential. You know what I was thinking in the cinema was lame, and then something happens in the scene. We're about to get to it. I was like, ooh. It's consequenceless. Cool. And then I wanted to shoot myself in the face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then, to explain that, you have... We where did is... it, Patrick. We saved the scene. Yeah, all right. Uh, the, so uh, the mum is like, where's Gamora? And he says, you'll get nothing from me. Which is kind of cool. To say it. Uh, uh, like yeah, he's, he's yeah, loyal, to his, uh, loyal to his crew. He's, he, yeah. He's not going to give him up to save his skin. It, it may come across as Basically generic dialogue, and maybe it is, but it's still indicative of integrity, which is kind of neat. Yeah. Even if he... This guy's, fucking... a, guy's a bro. Yeah, because he could just be like, oh, shit, don't hit me. And, and if you let me go, I'll give you... He just said, no, you'll get nothing. And uh, Yeah. She says, show me... that, uh, Show him that we mean business. And so Adam goes, all right, and lasers him. And we hear, like, high-energy melting sounds and screams... And then he stops the laser, and he's basically just a skeleton at this point. Yep. Uh, I don't know your name, but you were a real one. <laughs> yeah, um, well, so first of all, what do you think of the joke? It made um, me laugh. I did that. not like the, I didn't like the joke, because I was already very quickly invested in this guy's well-being. Oh, I wasn't. But, um, um, the fact that I mean, for, I like these kinds of characters. I think a lot of these secondary characters who um, kind of seem uh, seem 
who are usually treated as super disposable um, and like they don't matter. But I like it when they have their moments. I like it when, you know, things either work out for them or they are recognized for, you know, something that they do. And so I like the idea that this guy is captured and everything, but he doesn't want to, uh, you know, give up his friends. Um, and, and I was and curious to see where bad. this might go. And then he just gets lasered like yeah. this, kind of, for, I mean, for a joke. And nobody cries and like, for him, you know? Nobody cries yeah, for it's this. Yeah, it's this element of like, oh, okay, I guess he's dead. We'll probably never hear about this guy ever again. I don't even know his name. No. Um, so We never will, and it will never be brought up to Adam Warlock Maybe ever. to like, help. Hey, remember that guy that you melted? Maybe to help people understand something like this. Uh, Rise, would you be going the direction of Rule, or is it something else? Um... We have not yet begun to approach Cruel. I know, I know, I know. Um, Sorry, but because um, what I was going to say is, but, like, say for example, the little pet dog. They were like, um, they kick it and shoot it, and it's dead. We would be like, fucking like, hell! Why? Yeah, it's like, why'd you do that? Like, um, you know, this is a movie. Like, that, what? What are you doing? That sort of experience doesn't really happen for people with like random merc. Um, even though that is just a guy, and he's he's trying to prevent information from a, a comrade sort of slip out. So it's like. You know, he's, and there he goes. He's incinerated for a joke. Um, it's an interesting thought. I, I'm just trying to sort of dig into where it might make people oh, feel something uh, different. Why, we talked about it, Multiverse of Madness. Why was it so annoying when there's that guy crawling around on the ground in pain and then he gets vaporized? Like vaporized, yeah. Vaporized, I'm like... vaporized, scorched from the face of the earth. Like, that's it for him. It's as, it's as though he never even existed. I never yeah, saw like, that bad. movie. Who Who vaporized him? Wanda. Wanda did, and it would oh, never yeah. get it would never get brought up again. It would never be like, "Hey, no. remember all those people that you killed?" Like, and that guy in particular who this you is... just erased from existence. This is one of the flaws with uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, Haldir and all those elves who died at Helm's Deep—they just disappear from the story, and there's no acknowledgement that they ever existed. Uh, and I think that is a problem within the uh, within the Lord of the Rings movies. Um, there so... needs to be recog when people die. When people do things, especially when it's heroic and they die like this, I don't like it treated as a joke. Uh, they can die, but it should be like acknowledged by people who would acknowledge it that it's you know a tragedy that you know that you know he you know he could have done something, but he didn't, and he helped us out. Uh, it's nice to get that kind of stuff. Um, someone mentioned, but he did steal stuff. Like so is Star Lord. So is all yeah. kinds of characters. We've got all kinds of characters, all kinds of uh, dubious and histories. And also remember, this is like the evil, this is the evil corporation that does horrible, or is at least in some part involved in horrible experiments on animals. So, yeah, it, it'll take more yeah, than like, him just being like, because he's trying is, to steal stuff. Like, that's not enough for me to just totally write him off. Is it? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think the movie thinks like, I mean, it's a dark joke. The joke isn't like, haha, that guy died. It's like, haha, this Adam Warlock guy is a fucking moron. Which, whether you like the joke or not, I don't feel like the joke is, I think part of what makes the joke funny is how kind of dark it is. You know, it's 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 in a way bolstered by how like holy shit, fucking that guy's fucking obliterated. I mean, I don't think I I don't I don't know if it. I mean, it would be nice, obviously, if if like the rabbit, if there was any sort of acknowledgement on the ravagers part of this guy. Well, there's here's something. What's the difference between? Is there a difference between this and Taserface getting laughed at before he got yeeted? Um, well, Taserface um, is like super morally bad from our POV, right? Yeah. Well, no, but that, that's the point I'm making, right? Like the the Taserface joke for his death is like, you know, remember me as Taserface, and then the woman laughs at him, and then he's like, oh man, and then he dies. It's like, oh well, his death was kind of a joke, right? And it's like, yeah, yeah. But he's you know asshole, right? So whatever. Whereas but, this then... guy is just like more of a. Like, I mean, he's a Ravager or whatever, but like the fact that he still wasn't, you know, wanting to rat out like his friends. Um, but the joke I, I, in the well, taser you know, face imagine, one is, ha ha, taser face died. He well, sucked because we didn't like. Maybe him this would be a way to change it. What happens if it was if it was uh, Drax that got captured, and then they were like, "Show him you mean business," and then he melted Drax, and it was played the exact same way. <laughs> that would be kind of a bold way of killing one of the one of the guardians. Well, that's what I mean, though, right? Yeah. So, but if it was Drax, it would just be like, "Holy shit! Really?" You know, like yeah. that would be, I think that would be the reaction. Yeah. 
No, I mean, yeah, like... It, See, people, people are laughing, but it's like, that's because it's absurd. <laughs> like, it's, it is it's absurd, but... Oh, the, I think that's the, the Cap's obvious... point. This, this is scaled down absurdity. Like, fucking yeah, hell, yeah, Adam yeah. just killed him. Um, the, it's the, the, not, the... ha-ha, he's dead, he deserved to die or anything. Of no, I did not, I, like, of course. Face face. Because one thing I was going to say is that the, the kind of issue we're highlighting is going to be dwarfed, and I mean fucking dwarfed, by something else that'll happen in this movie. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um... So it's with this is like foreshadowing. I, I'm more interested in exploring this <laughs> yeah, no, concept. Same. Like I'm, I'm not that attached to you know yeah, this guy. It's, yeah, it, no, it's I think like, it's interesting it's to talk like about. Yeah, of, yeah it, it it is the discussion regarding these kinds of characters and how much, you know, they often get just written off as red shirts and everything. But mm -hmm. like um, other people in the world, and I expect people around them to kind of react in a certain way and. You know, I, it's it's nice to see heroism, even in small ways, kind of be recognized. Um, it's very, it's it's really nice to see that. The problem is that he exists to serve another purpose, which is plot. So, you have unfortunately, the mum <laughs> the mum goes, "Oh, I told you to show him we mean business, not disintegrate him." And then Adam says, "What more business could we have shown him?" Um. And then she says, now we can't question him. And he says, question his friend. And she says, that's an animal. And he says, oh, he looks sad. I don't enjoy how that's making me feel. <laughs> um, it's well, stupid, you know, but, dis I, but it makes me laugh. <laughs> it's, I, uh, um, I think for me, what's, what's miscommunicating or not matching or crosswise something is um, there's only like, like, he's stupid. He's a fucking idiot. Right. But like, even his mum, like, somehow is just unable to, like, utilize it or remember that. And I'm just like, how remember, many times am I going to have to just deal with him being retarded and then I'm supposed to be like, yeah, well, he's retarded. And like, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, if... and I also think that it we would have been better served if he hadn't have, had explicitly said, like, I don't know how that makes me feel. But if he just, like, kind of looked sad at the critter... You know that kind of well, like almost right? almost give that character a little bit more credit, right? Like yeah, me, like he we try he and doesn't... build his character in a way that's a little bit more earnest rather than strictly to you know make jokes. Yeah, um, this you know kind of is because in a way it would make his I guess his naivety, his youth, his his kind of his simpleness because he's like a child. That would be why he feels this way, in a sense, that this is like, oh, it's a very basic kind of humanish level emotions on seeing that the animal be sad after you vaporized. And, and like him yeah. actually working on it in real time, like really working on it in real time, figuring out how these things make him feel in a way that's a little less overt. I think that would be beneficial, especially for this character when, you know, the longer the film goes on, the more you, you start to wonder, like, why are you here? That is a good question, yes. <laughs> um, something that someone just highlighted, and I just wanted to make mention of it. So, I don't know that... Has anyone here seen that Mitchell and Webb look? The sketch show? I know of it. I have not seen it. People in chat probably have. There's a... Evil Genius is a sketch they did a couple of times, and one of them, it just starts with two henchmen and an evil genius man, and he's like, it would appear Mr. Johnson has become a problem. I should appreciate it if you would deal with him. And then one of them's like, mm hmm, and begins to walk off. And then the other one goes, way, 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 way. And he's like, when you say deal with him, do you mean kill him? And then he just goes, he's become a nuisance. And, to, uh, you know, and then just keeps doing euphemisms. And then the, the sketch is him highlighting many times he's used euphemisms, but he's misunderstood what that means, and back and forth, back and forth. And then it even just does a couple of meta jokes. And I fucking love it. It's real good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when that's you told like... Jim and to go take out the trash with Adam, like Adam never came back, and that was uh, we're still kind of pretty sour about the you know, stuff like that. Yeah, but like we've just highlighted another time where they've done a thing that was either the same or, or better done in a parody, and it's like sometimes I wonder about that. I wonder how uh, tone can be affected by doing uh, stuff like that. Like how serious can a movie be taken when you've um, been delving so hard into jokes that you would actually more likely see in something that's trying to make fun of the genre that you're a part of, in a sense. It's, it's more so just a th thing to think about. I don't know. It's an interesting connection. Yeah, I, I think a parody sort of understands that it needs to understand what it, it is, what it is parodying. Parody-ing? Parody-ing? 
That's weird. Um, mm -hmm. So it, there needs to be like that. You know, like, oh, I need to know the thing so I can parody it better. And this is just like, uh, in a lot of parodies, they just stumble into being, or the things are parodying, or they just sort of stumble into being what they are accidentally. And that's what gets parodied. Now, um, the scene itself, I mentioned that I wanted to kill myself at some point, and that's because they announced, we've got no leads now. We just killed that guy. And at that point, I was like, oh, thank fuck. Like, this was just, they did it for a joke. It wasn't actually going to be plot relevant. Thank goodness. And then Gamora back on good old guardianship, the Bowie, um, she's trying to contact the Ravages because she wants to get picked up. And so you hear her message through the comms device on this man's skele body <laughs> because that tech, despite being kept on your like front torso area, that's where the primary part of the laser went, it is intact. It looked like it was on his waist, or unless I am remembering that wrong. It was like um, where your liver would be, if I remember correctly. That's where she uh, um, grabs it from. Okay, the liver's on. And I don't know if that's because it's slanted down or if it because it's gone up. But in any case, when he fired the, the laser, it was like a fucking Death Star into him. So, Very um, focused around the ridges. It's uh, it's really fucking annoying that that thing survived that and that it's picking up Gamora's message. And to make things even worse, she says on the thing, like, I need you guys to pick me up. And um, the fucking mum picks it up and goes, Salutations, can I help? And Gamora doesn't think that's strange at all. She just says, let me send my coordinates, can you pick me up? It's just like, fucking... There's no, like, authentication at all? Nothing for the Ravages? Alright. So that's how they're back in the plot. Because they wouldn't be otherwise. Oh! Ooh. You don't Very sound dumb. like... You don't sound like the guy. You sound like the literal opposite of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but just, like... Oh man, good thing he was out, what, scavenging ships? By himself? To get captured. And, to then and he kept his comm device on. All this to keep them in the story. Because otherwise, that would have just been a dead end for Adam Warlock and crew. I mean, unless they were actually any, like, had any sense in them at all, and they could probably guess where they'd want to go next. I feel like it's it's not actually all that unreasonable to piece together. You it's don't so the weird scene. because you could have had the high evolutionary be like, they're probably on their way here. Stupid Adam Warlock and Mum, you come here now. You're just on that. Something. Yeah. It's actually this is another thing that's actually quite is quite easy to fix, it seems, in mm -hmm. a way that isn't really stupid. Could have just had it. So the uh what's his name? Nathan Fillion, when he was spinning around with his gun. We show him press some buttons, and he fires it at the Bowie, and we're like, huh, I don't know what that was. And it turns out, later in that scene, he says, I attached a tracking beacon, here's the coordinates. They're your problem now. Yeah. That's it. That's all you need to do. I mean, also, the other thing you mentioned is that, like, if if he sent a bald guy with the, the cybernetic thing on his head, if he sent him to go delete certain information that they were there to get he could have like and but they did download that file even though it was missing things he could have like placed some sort of tracker in that i think you mentioned that earlier didn't you yep there like you a, go. a bomb a fucking gas thing like it could have been any anything they want or they could have just been there you know that was always an option that's kind of what i was hoping for originally but oh well so uh, Drax meets up with Star Lord and he says, Quill, and this is under uh, the pu pushing from Mantis, like the implication is that she's come up with this for Drax to say. He says, Quill, life is a pond, and you've spent your entire life jumping from woman to woman as if they are lily pads upon this great pond. Perhaps what you need to do is to learn to swim. Thoughts? The, if someone told me this, right, then I would think that the implication is that I am using women to avoid living life, either to its fullest, or that I'm running away from something, or I'm trying to stay away from other things in life that are more important, uh, that I need to experience, or something along those lines. I uh, think this has the exact same issue as what we were talking about in that earlier scene, and now I'm starting to wonder if James is misunderstanding his own fucking characters. 
Um, mm. The problem for What's Quill what? is not that he uses women to lo not like live life. It's that he's trying to get over losing the love of his life. Mm. Do you yeah. think that this is a uh, a polka dot man situation? <laughs> I kind of do because now we're, we're we're close to developing like an actual thesis statement on Quill's problem, which is not at all his problem. He doesn't. No. He, he doesn't react this way whenever he's between women. He's doing this because he loved Gamora. Yeah. So the idea that it's like, you need to learn to live without women. It's like, no, you need to, to learn to move on to without Gamora. To move on. Yeah. Exactly. Not, like, come on. This, this is what I mean. Like, I, when, I, when I heard him say, I was like, no, that's not the problem. <laughs> like, what? Uh, it was kind of awkward to listen to, because uh, you could tell that Quill, Drax, Mantis, and the fucking film believe this is accurate. Well, yeah, because I was about to say, what would you say to somebody who said, no, that's just Mantis's perspective, and she's wrong, obviously. No. <laughs> I mean, if someone told me this, yeah, it's like, I'm not, like, no, I just, if they, th like, it almost makes me think that we're trying to revert back to to Star-Lord from Guardians 1, where yeah, he just, been like, there for a while. likes to be with we ha we just like to be with chicks. It's like no, no, no. I just like fucking bitches, you know. Like I, in in if, if that's what the context is sort of implying here, and not because because I don't know which way because they got Gamora wrong. Is he misremembering? Is he mixing up an old Peter with a current Peter, writing wise? Because some people are like, wait, Peter's like a womanizer, and it's like, so when we first meet him, he's got a girl in his ship that he's forgotten about. The implication being, he likes, he's like a bit of a player, which is totally fine, mm -hmm. fun, totally but it's an aspect yeah. that's uh, brought up by Gamora when she first starts getting closer to him as being like, that's your, that's your reputation. You just, you flirt I mean, and you end up with the, loads of women. I'm not one of those women. We have the blacklight joke. Yep, yep. Um, yeah. But then, of course, <laughs> the implication is that like he actually falls for Gamora and she falls for him, and that they have like a a much more significant and substantive relationship than what he'd been having before. And then, after I all these years... I everything that happened in Infinity War. Yeah. Um, and then after all these years, he loses her. And so now he's yep. hyper-depressed, and he's drained. Like, if he... If, he wouldn't be doing that if he was just going woman to woman. No, he cares about Gamora, like, yeah. deeply. And that's, to, to be very, like... that's, that's the source of his struggle, is that he can't, he can't accept what's happened and move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I just did not polka work dot for me. Man, maybe, maybe it's, it's polka dot man. Who knows? A little bit. Um. Yeah, and he says, "I didn't know you. I didn't think you knew how to make an analogy." Um. He says a couple things. One of them is, "Um, yesterday I made a poop shaped like a fish. Even my butt is capable of making an analogy." <laughs> the joke <Right>. is, <laughs> the obvious joke is, Drax, you put the anal in analogy. I don't think it's like um some of these are just me being like right. Yeah, I didn't. The first one was actually story. like was what was the first one green? Some about green. He said Your like eye... Gamora is like a leaf because her face is green or something. Which is yeah, I that's think that's technically an analogy. <laughs> it's just not like a good or helpful one, <laughs> but it is an analogy. Um. Before we cut away from the good old Guardians, uh, we have an emergency situation for Rocket, and they kind of stabilize him, but what uh, Gamora says is, fluid is in his lungs now, he's dying, and he doesn't have long. I want to keep that, the old skulls, for later. Um, then we get another flashback scene, and um, I think different people have different reactions to this, but um, I found it quite compelling when... The High Evolutionary drags Rocket out, and he's basically losing his mind, shouting at him, and he says... Uh, he's talking about how everything works, how he's built everything, and how they get to where they are. And then he can't figure out how Rocket managed to, like, without um, any, any kind of thing that he's reading from. It's all from his own head, how he managed to solve the problem. And uh, Rocket's not giving him answers he, he wants, then he says, he, like, shouts, I made you, how did you know? Like, this recognition that despite being Rocket's god, that Rocket is doing things he doesn't understand he, and has gone beyond he, him. Yeah, he struggles with, like, the idea that anybody could be, you know, in any way, shape, or form more competent than him. Um, <clears throat> so I thought that was fun. I think it's great. But it's also, like, you know, now partially, like, it, it feeds into this sort of new motivation that we start to see more in the present-day story. 
Uh, so yeah, he says, um, you know, uh, we're going to the new world, and he says, we. How could you be a part of a perfect species? You're simply a medley of mistakes we can learn from to apply to the creatures that truly matter. Batch 89 was never meant for the new world, P3. You could figure out all of this and how it works, but you couldn't figure out that? Um, mainly just add. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Him being a, it's him being a dick uh, to lower uh, yeah. these, to these, you know, what he sees as a lower life form that it's just, yeah, this is just... Uh, not a life even worth any level of respect. It's not perfect. It's flawed. It's just one step on the road. Uh, and he takes some level of pleasure in having dominance over things. Especially in response to... Uh, he's kind of um, overcompensating for the fact that Rocket actually solved a problem he couldn't solve. And mm -hmm. so he's taking quite a bit of joy in degrade, like being degrading to him. Yeah, as much you're not really that smart. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So we arrive like at it. we arrive at Counter Earth. Someone in chat said crispy critters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> um, they arrive at Counter Earth, and there's a there's a Statue of Liberty, but it's the High Evolutionary, and they end up landing in like suburbia America, uh, like I I'm guess it's like seventies, eighties, nineties. Relative, I don't really know exactly what you're opinion on, but yeah, it looks like 70s, early 70s, mid 70s, maybe. Um, I say that as though, like, I say it descriptively, but now I would like to repeat that with a question mark. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, what is why? going on? Why? Why? Is it, why? Why? why, why? 70s America. Because I, I think the idea is that then that was the last time he was at Earth, and so that's what he thinks. That's what he is remembers. It, do we... I think my mind goes to that being um, the reason that, like, the their ability to think creatively isn't quite there, so they just sort of um, end up recreating things that have already um, happened or aesthetics that have already happened. Uh, I think they're, yeah, they're unable to like innovate. Is that what I think that may be what the movie could be trying to do? I don't know how they know that that's what's there to emulate. Um, I, I wonder think, if that's uh, been programmed because, into them. But I think that's like one explanation for it. I think the real one is it's an aesthetic that James Gunn likes, and that's yeah, why it's like I mean, we're trying to create the he really likes society. the 70s. We he like really, the... really like the 70s. Yeah, yeah but it, I mean, doesn't it? Doesn't it make sense if the, if this is when the high evolutionary was has been to Earth, as he mentions? How old like, are we meant to believe that he is? He looks like well, he's in his forties. Is he human? Yeah, that's that would be my follow up question. Does he? Has I, he I, no, I think he I makes think. it. He makes it. Well, he's definitely not from Earth. So he has said yeah. that he has a particular fondness for Earth culture. Yeah, no, I so, I get that. I, yeah, I get I get that. that something that he finds particularly pleasant in his perfect new world everything is orderly it could be that he's fully aware of all of his history and culture but that he likes this era i think that's a reasonable that's explanation possibility. yeah so strange <laughs> but like, uh fine. yeah I don't, it is very strange but man boy it is a. Uh, why did i say man boy um but <laughs> so at least uh, 300 years right that's what people say in the chat that he's at least been doing the experiments for 300 years yeah okay so I, he just Sorry. likes it um he's a big old, probably old, easy to get guy. real wait, sets wait, wait, of those wait. things too that doesn't mean that he like because he's been doing these sort of like utopian experiments but that doesn't mean he like couldn't have gone to earth in the 70s Oh, well, I mean, we know that he has been to Earth, so, like, yeah, that's viable. But that was when he did it. Uh, I'm just suggesting that he doesn't even need to... He could have gone all kinds of times, and he just has a fucking favorability with well, not, uh, this era. And so thus... I don't even... I'm trying to figure out how this works. So you make the creatures. Is he dressing them up and putting them in... Or did they develop or that, what that way? Doing? I think I mean, that's they're, they're sentient, so... I think the idea is that he's like engineered all of this, all the architecture, all the attire, all that sort of stuff. That's the vibe I get. He's very much like 
top down control. One of the things I was really hoping isn't the case, and I'm assuming we're all on board with it not being the case, is that he threw them all onto the planet and they just developed into this. No, definitely not. Because that would be pretty cringe. That would be cringe. I I don't think there's any reason to believe that. Like it, the only reason that I could come up with was what I mentioned before about the inability to innovate, and that he programmed with them with a certain thing, but they're not able to sort of break from what he put into them or come I up think really with true. anything new. But that's that's all I got. All right. Um, so uh, it's time to consider what's happening here. Uh, we find this out soon, but we can talk about it because we know about it. The ship for the High Evolutionary, his his enormous ship thing, it's very close to where they land. In fact, they fucking fly right past it theoretically because it would be impossible for them not to have seen it. And uh, they want to know where to find the High Evolutionary's like personal scientist person. And they eventually just get directed to go there. Like we'll get into all the specifics in a second, but just it just seems kind of like adding busy work instead of just having them go to the ship. But again, so much stuff happens here that you need to unravel. The High Evolutionary wants all of them dead except Rocket. They land, and they know they've landed. There's no way that like the High Evolutionary you misses can't that not shit. No. Um and nothing again, is done. Maybe they have security like uh Org <laughs> Corp or so, Org. Yeah. so I mean, you know. Um, nothing's done to to kill them, to steal from them, disable them, just nothing at all. Their plan is, wait until they arrive and ask to see us and deliver rocket to us. But, then, when they arrive, send Warpig to go and pick him up in their ship. Uh, I, just... I feel like we have the resources to do a little bit better than that, sir. This is pathetic. I don't understand what the fuck is happening. And my big criticisms of High Evolutionary throughout this film is all in the form of him executing his weird-ass plans. It sucks because I really love the performance and I quite like the motivation. But mm -hmm. those things... Um, I was about to say those things are easy. What I mean is the acting is separate from the script, so it's like not... His acting doesn't make me compliment the script. Um... And a motivation, it's not hard to come up with a motivation, it's hard to execute how it would manifest, especially writing someone who's passionate and let's not, you know, Min's Wiz, he's not stupid. He's supposed to be a smart character. Yeah, he's supposed to be very smart. So, like, this is just baffling to me. I don't know what the fuck is happening right now, but that's, like, the summary. Now we can go through it in pieces because it's just, there's so much. Um, if he just, literally, if he just went to the ship himself, he would win. Yeah, probably. It'd be, yeah. uh, they'd be. They'd be they made him too OP, so yeah, he probably could. And there is also an element of he, the, the way that Adam and him might, you know, like what might happen as an, as a, as a, like a byproduct of that fight. You know, we could still get certain payoffs set up, but, uh, we'll get to that later. So, uh, they land and, they're surrounded by the creatures of Counter Earth that are all like humanoid versions of. I mean, they look like a human, but with really strong makeup that resembles any animal of uh, your choosing around the Earth. Um, and uh, no, the, so, this is a question I had: If Star Lord does have translator microbes or whatever injected, um, shouldn't either he be able to understand them, or they be able to understand him? I think what you're meant to assume is that since this is a weird planet that the High Evolutionary has built in his own backyard kind of thing, that this language isn't part of the intergalactic language. Which makes sense. You know, and then I was just dictionary. like, is it not then fucking lucky as hell that uh, they do decide to help? Because they I got... mean, if they didn't help, yeah, then, then what? I guess we'd have to get aggressive. It's weird because... Because I don't know if they need a lot of help from them. Because I feel like where you would go is the big giant yeah. red. Yeah, pyramid. Yep. <laughs> that's you, where you, you would go. You could have just had it that that was on the file. You know, it's like it belongs to him, and he works in this store. That's all on all of his chain code or whatever the fuck is attached to it. You mm -hmm. didn't have to do all the shit with that. And 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 man, it takes doesn't it's not the quickest scene. No, it takes a while. But I mean, that was clearly one that they wanted to have just the yeah. interaction with the people on that planet. Uh, and I'm yeah. guessing that the logic is, well, now you, you'll feel more for them when, you know, an event happens later. Like, they yeah. worked, yeah, they put in a decent amount of work to humanize uh, these people, which, you know, makes mm -hmm. sense because they're, 
you know, people. They live in houses and they have yeah. jobs and cars and family photographs and they offer beverages to guests and, you know, they're sad to see their car being <laughs> lent <lended, laughs> <lented, laughs> out. Literally one of the best jokes in the movie. But <laughs> I, uh... Someone's mentioned yeah. it and uh, I'll jump ahead a little bit but with two extra references that confuse me. One, Mantis does say their language isn't in the translator. So it's like, okay, cool. But the reason why I'm going to bring that in at the same time as something else, Drax talks to them in their language. Yeah, see that. Yeah, and I mean, this. Are, uh -huh. I think it's there. Right. Is it the same is, language? I think it's a problem either way. But is it the same language that the 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 children that we'll see later are speaking as the ones on the planet? Is that the same one? The, uh, I don't know. I guess I don't. I don't well, yeah, do the but like do all the the animal people and the the blue hair people on this ship? Do they speak the same language? Well, I guess it wouldn't change anything, right? Because. Uh, it's the, still a problem that yeah. Drax yeah. knows the language, but it's not in the translator. Yeah, I don't I just I just don't get how the that hell works. out of me. I don't know how this stuff happens. Um so sofa joke, what do you guys think? I like um, it. The sofa no, joke that one is... uh, that one really outstanding welcome for me. Yeah, uh, I liked uh, it the me. first time he said to like if they condensed that joke into like a fourth of how long it was, I would get it. Drax's utility-based lack of social etiquette. Um, if they if they took that and they squeezed it down, I would like it a lot. But I feel like it it went on for too long. Like Drax really wants to lounge this badly on the couch. Yeah, that's the part. Oh, that okay. Really um, when it's like yeah. I see you when he's trying to lie down again, I didn't care for that. But you just keep making the joke. That's, just, that's it for me. It's just like. And you're going back to it again, huh? All right. Yeah, keep like digging in that gold mine, I guess. One of the things I liked about the, the 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 core idea of the joke, too long as it may be, is that this isn't one of the jokes that stems from Drax just being stupid. You know, he's just like, you know, the part where he's like, why would it be oblong if you're not meant to lay on it? You know what I mean? Like he's being very like, obviously I can see that this thing could serve that function. I don't understand why I, I'm not allowed to lay on it. Like that works. Unlike some of Drax's jokes where it's just like, oh, you're just kind of stupid now. Yeah, I think okay. if it were yeah, like, one joke, well crafted or well refined, I should say, then it'd be cool. But I think, is there like full payoffs for this joke? Yeah, it's got condensed one payoff, one back and forth, and maybe if you want to stretch it, a glance from Peter over to Drax as he starts to lean down and he straightens back up, and that's it. We're done. The joke is there. It's finished. We can move on with. Uh, we can move on with things. There's a couple. Because I like the idea yeah. of the joke. It just goes on for too long. There's a. I think I don't know if there's four payoffs. I think two or three of them worked for me. Um. I like I like I like the way he delivers the line like I have a hard time believing it doesn't serve more than one purpose or something along those lines. I thought that was pretty funny. So to try and translate to them what Star Lord needs, he first shows them a hologram of Rocket that's very clearly illustrating that someone's in trouble. And then to try and tell them who he wants to see, he draws one of the most fucking gnarly stick men ever. <laughs> um I get that it's like this is exact same problem again. So one, you I know you you had a screen with the guy's face on it. You can't project that here. You had or you had Nebula project r rocket. That's what I'm saying. They yeah. they, they projected so... rocket. So why can't they project that face? And then secondly, they do this joke with Stalos done the the stick man, and then they have Mantis and Drax both go like, oh wow, that's amazing. Oh, I can have that on my fridge. And Stalos like, oh yeah, thank you. I'm just like. You trying to convince me Stalo doesn't realize his stick man drawing is shit? That's like, I feel like that's a joke that one of them could say. Like, one of them thinks it's really good or something. Or they're, like, like if, well, if that... we need to have a joke about the way that this, the, the, the shit he's drawing looks. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's not even, I'm fine with this. Sarcastically saying, like, that looks just like him. And, and Star-Lord doesn't know that she's being sarcastic and he's proud of his drawing. And maybe Drax just snarks or something, but it's something really quick. But I don't know. I just I don't buy that Star Lord is a man who doesn't realize that that's a fucking shitty stick drawing. I just don't get it. It's like the other thing I found confusing about it is that when Drax says, "Can I put it on my fridge?" It's like Drax doesn't do sarcasm. So is he being serious? Does he actually legitimately love it? Uh, I assume. I assume yeah. That's I assume what him I and took from it. it was good. That, 
Yeah, they both think it's really good. It's an odd joke. I don't quite... There is a joke in there. It just needs to be discovered and mapped out and then mined for its resources. Uh, I just don't feel like in its current form it really... And like it was like it was like one of those huh, kinds of jokes, and I feel like we could do better than huh, in this multi gajillion dollar you know Marvel production. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I would want to. Then we get the car joke. The car uh, joke uh, is le is legit. Oh well, the the car joke, the dad's expression is literally like one of the best jokes in the whole movie. Um, <laughs> the fact it it actually it has that perfect level of subtle enough and relatability uh that i really really like um i enjoy jokes that aren't that they don't feel the need to be super blatant mm -hmm. um i really like the idea that the dad has an attachment to the car and he has like car payments and we're just <laughs> giving it to these aliens to fuck around with because the wife says so and he feels like he's just well it's what the missus wants and the, <laughs> he just i, I really really life. I really, really like. It this makes you quite a endearing, doesn't it, Rags? It really does. I really the super relatability and earnestness of that Batman's expression was really, really awesome. Um, boy, I sure hope things work out okay for everyone involved in this scene and on the street. Uh, we then cut over to... Oh, well, I guess, yeah, for plot-wise, he drew that stick man and they pointed to the big building and now they're going there, which, again, like, could have just gone straight there, but we yeah. had all of that to do that. It's just like, all right, all right, James, you do you, buddy. Um, we cut it's... over... Go, Go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say, I there's a, there's a way that this could have been written where there's some value in going to the random civilians first, maybe some sort of piece of information that they couldn't just get otherwise you know, that would assist them. Because otherwise it's just like, well, obviously he's in that building. Of course he is. And they just end up going there anyway. It's uh, And then it's another dumb excuse to split up the group. Yeah. I hate that. I hate it because it causes a number of problems. Oh, uh, yeah, I should probably say, uh, so Quill and Nebula are driving off to go to the big building. Right. Oh, and wait, Groot, no, sorry. Wait, we, we've already skipped we gotta, over another great joke. We skipped joke. over a great oh, scene. We oh, that's, skipped that's up actually what I meant by later. the car joke, by the way. Oh, oh well, no, no, no. There's more to the car joke than what Rags has already pointed out. Yeah, there. I did. No, I know. They're about, to, they're about to get in the car, and then, uh, you know, it's like the music is ramping up, and Nebula tries to open the door, and she can't do it. <laughs> and then it's because There's... she doesn't know how the, she doesn't know how it works. Like it's the so analog. And yeah, that I like the idea that it's so analog that uh, the idea it's like I love the detail of he, him saying push the button and she pushes the circular keyhole like expecting oh. it to be a button and then oh. clarifies not of the pushing the button underneath the handle because by the way I, I think one of the things that makes this joke work a lot is because for a lot of people who watch this they have never had a car where there was like a button that you had to press so that it would open it so that you could then pull the car open. Like that's not a thing that they make anymore. Mm. Um, I mean, well, what, I wonder well, how many people remember, uh, do you guys remember when they used to make cars that would have like the buttons uh, on the outside to put a code in to open the door? They had like five or six buttons on them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a Buick or something. <laughs> yeah, things like that. So it's like one of those, I think that would be relatable for a lot of audience members who are really young who just, legitimately never encountered a card like that or 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 knew about it what i um, like about the joke is that the the way that the line is delivered like by both of them is like so authentic like the part where because when he says like it looks like you're pushing the keyhole and then she says what and then he's just like there's a button under the handle <laughs> like <laughs> press that button. in and then, and then and then it's she, like okay now what <laughs> it's just like she does it and expects door. something to happen <laughs> And then there's that pause, and oh my god, yeah. I laughed okay, so fucking what? hard when he yeah. said, now open the fucking door. It's great. I'm like, oh shit, that's right, I'm this is PG-13, sure uh, we get an F-bomb, don't get we? One. And Marvel we get don't an typically, <laughs> well, Marvel typically do none. Yeah, uh, so... Marvel don't have character swear, that yeah, might even be the first time. That I might really actually be the first liked time. It, it is uh, the first yeah, time, I, I, I love that joke. 
I it's actually, really I really, really like it. it it's, it's like funny. a. And then, oh, and then, and then, of course, the part where she opens the door, gets it, and says, "That is a stupid design." <laughs> and your instructions were very unclear. <laughs> just were... like over... she's just it's really her, it's upset. His fault, it's how yeah. it goes. Everyone's been in those scenarios uh, where both it's of so them feel pretty justified it. because he's yeah. just like she doesn't understand exactly how it works. So she's doing what she can with the information given, and he understands it perfectly. Because he, these cars are actually familiar with him in terms of he's been in them. He's just not driven them because they're reflective of where he was plucked from, which is yeah, the eighties, right? They'd be around, yeah. But you know, it's like they're around now. So wish they you know, used you... the f bomb elsewhere. No, I love it there because it's so I love it's it so out unexpected. No it's, it's, gonna so, it's it so relatable. That's what I have an I have an aunt, right? Well, I have more, more than one, but one in particular. The only time I've ever heard her say the F-bomb was literally when she was wanting someone else in the family to just pick a spot in the parking lot and park. And she said, and, and I'll use a fake name, I was like, like, Chelsea, just park the fucking car. <laughs> and I've never, ever heard her use like foul language ever in my life. So to get the Blade Runner style single F-bomb from her was a magical moment that I'll never forget. Um, and so it made this joke super relatable that just this frustration of open the fucking door. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's great. It's uh, so I, I do I like know. that this is such an inconsequential moment that it happens in too, I think. Yeah. Yes, I like it too. I think that makes it better than like having it be super dramatic. I think it makes because it oh God, special. Yeah. It, it kind of helps to assuage its usage um, in that you if you want to get upset that the F-bomb's in it, too bad you're laughing. Uh, they're, you're being <laughs> surrounded by laughter because our, our, I think that was the biggest laugh that the uh, theater I was in uh, got in the uh, in the show. I think it was um, um, maybe the hardest I laughed. It was just so perfectly timed and positioned. I've seen people say uh, uh, they have an F bomb in this. Well, I'm not showing my kids it, and I'm just they're like, Aww. your kids have heard that word. Trust your me. Your kids yeah. have. If you don't talk to your kids about the F bomb, who will? <laughs> it's like drugs. What? Yeah. Somebody somebody says the word once, so now it's like, well, not watching that it's, movie. I gotta be honest. I, I feel like I'm from a very different culture because I can't associate at all. Like the idea that it's like there's one f bomb, therefore it's like it'll it'll destroy my children's ears. I'm like, okay. The first time I said it in front of my parents, I had no idea it was a swear word. I just I had just heard some other kids using it, and so then mm -hmm. I used it, and then I had to hold soap in my mouth for a while. Um. <laughs> So I learned not to say that around them. Very bad. Uh, yeah, but it uh, they, it was it was there. Yeah, soap is not pleasant. It, it it it's not actually really the taste. It's the avoidance of the taste because you have to hold your mouth in such a way that it's just on your teeth and your lips, and you don't want it to get on your tongue because it soap don't taste no good. Uh, so yeah, that's how I learned. Um, um and, and, and someone just highlighted like if there was a reason to keep your kids from seeing this movie, it wouldn't be the f bomb. No. <laughs> yes, it wouldn't be the F bomb. Yeah, it, it would, would be, be the horrific, scary be imagery horrific. that will give them exactly. nightmares. Exactly. It will be the nightmare creatures. I was going to say it would be the plot, but you know that works as well. However, um, it does actually like you know I say kid that can range quite significantly. Oh, sure. So. I mean, if we're talking like a five-year-old, then but I mean, if we're talking like I don't know, like ten or eleven, like they've heard it by that point, presumably. Oh, it starts to get. I mean, we're from a generation where we got a fucking tidal wave of it when we went online for gaming. We we're like, what is oh, this? Yeah, man. <laughs> That's right, I yeah. finally. Oh, those Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 lobbies, yep. Halo 2 yep. and 3. Halo yeah. 3 was, um, yeah. Like, and... just the internet in general was truly. It was. It, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was a time to be alive. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, though, um, one of the reasons that I also like this little scene is that we do get a setup. Uh, and that is when Peter gives Groot his guns. Mm. That's true. It is a setup. <laughs> you are correct, it is a setup. Uh, is that is the setup. split. We have Gamora, Peter, and Groot in the car heading to the High Evolutionary ship. And he uh, says... Nebula. Oh, sorry, yeah, Nebula. Uh, Gamora is in the ship, chilling out. She doesn't want any part of this. And they tell Drax to stay to... Does he give a reason? I can't remember. I know what Mantis says, but does does Peter say an actual reason, or does he just say stay? Well, in any case, he stays, and Mantis is the one to look after. He says, like, Mantis, look out, uh, look out for Drax. 
this is all very, very, very arbitrary. Um, but the one argument I think that really matters, and Mantis brings it up, is, well, who's protecting Rocket? Like, yeah, because Nebula... Sorry, Gamora. I don't know why I'm fucking switching in my head. Gamora isn't exactly Team Guardians right now, so her being in the ship isn't exactly, like, reliable as protection for Rocket. Um, so, they start driving, and um, they spot an octopus man dealing drugs with cockroach people. And uh, I think they finally see... He looks, see... like, really deformed and kind of visually fucked up, because all the animals creepy, that yeah. we've seen... Yeah, the animals that we've seen just far are, like... Animals that are just hominids, essentially. They're like, I mean, I mean, they're like furries, you know. Uh, someone's got to say it. Uh, they're just in, like animal people. And Chastity they look like normal. That Drax needs to guard Rocket, that's really important. I'm kind of hoping he didn't say that. Because it's going to make it so much worse. But uh, I can't yeah, remember, I'd have to check. If that is what uh, style, I know that Mantis says it anyway, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure the primary reason for them to stay is to protect Rocket. Just, just putting it out of it there. As general protection kinds of concepts going on. <sighs> um, and um, let me see. Was there anything else that um, I, I had to uh, to get up and use the loo? Uh, do we talk about how Drax hits the kid in the face with a ball? Right. Yeah, we kind of skipped that. Um, I don't know. What's, like, what do you think? I don't know. That just seems like you wouldn't like. Drax, you wouldn't do that, would you, to a kid, right? Like as so, a like as a father figure that you want to see yourself as or something. That seems strange that you do that. Like, you know, you completely you agreed. The one bit of slack I would give is maybe he would accidentally, you know, throw it too fast. But the second it injures a kid, you'd be like, Oh shit, no 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 no, I'm so sorry. Like he recognizes what it means to hurt a child. He's not that fucking retarded. It's just, it's just more of these, like, little pinpricks. It's not even a pinprick, really. That's kind of damage. Um, that really annoy me. Because it's like, isn't it funny that he fucking hit that kid? And you're like... I mean, uh, for the shock value, kind of. But that's different. That's not what we're... Like, it's... That's like a jackass joke uh, or something. Um, or a Freddy got fingered kind of thing. It just doesn't seem like he'd do that. And like it's I not said, recognized. If I was to give it that he accidentally throws it too hard or whatever, but like I need the follow up of him being like, oh, oh sure, I'm so sorry. Like, uh, like, you know, and trying to solve the problem. Instead, I think he just sort of like stands there like, ooh. Because we've all had like moments growing up where like a kid bumps into a table or gets hurt and an adult will go like, oh, <laughs> but as they'll do it, as they're rushing hmm. to the kid to like hold him and everything, but there is that like base level of like it's funny the kid bumped into a table or whatever. Um, but they're always they're they're there to make sure that you know the kid's okay. Those things in tandem make it, you know, like believable. Um, yeah. Then we meet at the front of the at the front of the ship. That's where uh, Star Lord Groot and Nebula are. Is is Warpig and other guy who are a type of. I guess, um, security. Elspon, they're called later, I think. Right. Uh, they are horrifying. These are, these are creatures from, like, Doom. They are these horrific cybernetic thought, yeah. genetic experiments, uh, that, uh, look like they're from a video game to be destroyed. They're like, like, from, like from Quake. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the word that the, uh, the bat woman or the bat mom kept saying when she was pointing towards the ship? It sounded like Mojo. I couldn't make out what she was saying, but when she was trying to direct them, and uh, it sounded like Mojo, and like there's a character in the uh, Marvel cinema, or the Marvel comic book universe that looks a lot like these guys, and his name is Mojo. Hmm. Um, he's a really fucked up looking creature. Um, but the the first thought that came to mind was Doom, and then I remembered there was this like wacky guy in the comic books. He was originally an X-Men villain, and his name was Mojo. So I didn't know if that was like James Gunn trying to sneak something in. Maybe. Anyway, they super scary. And, uh, they are like legitimately very scary. We uh, have... Well, I look at them and think about like the suffering that must have been involved to create those things, you know? Which is good yeah, in terms of high evolution. I hope stuff. that... Yeah, yeah. It's it's not like um, I don't believe that they could be made. I assume he'd try to get use out of all of the the creatures and stuff uh, for his purposes. But it's like, dang, it felt it feels a little bit like a tonal shift. Like, oh, they're just out here and they talk kind of normal, which in a way 
makes them more terrifying. Some yeah, of the designs, I... though, seem a little strange. And I think there's always going to be distant experimental reasons you might be able to come up with in terms of really creating hypotheticals. But, like, for example, they seem very exposed. And um, that same sort of approach seems reflected in the um, the, the Critter Friends that uh, Rocket has. Like, some of the... like. Uh, take for example, like Lila's arms. They seem very. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to figure out what word I'm gunning for, but um, they all, they're always they very like unsettling. Fragile, when I see them. almost. Yeah, because of how well it's because they look. You can clearly tell the originals have been cut away, and that they've been replaced with something that is very, very unesthetically pleasing and mechanical. They're very, they're very thin. The fingers are like flat pieces of metal. Mm. They function. Um, and in a way, they are more functional because of their length, and it allows her to like stand up as she, you know, walks upright. It makes sense that she has longer limbs there, but it's just this this cruel utility to it. Um, and uh, yeah, it for instance, you could do that to a creature, and it wouldn't seem cruel if you made it like, oh, it looks organic. It's very well proportioned. It is, you know, it has like five fingers, four fingers, and they're maybe webbed a little bit because if you know, the creature wants to swim, it can do that. Um, like there, there's like the kind version of that. This is like the this is like the quake version of it, mm. where we're just just sticking arms on things. Lap dash. Kind of. Uh, it or has maybe just even, enough um, thought into it to seem cruel. Maybe even like leftover tech that they. And if they can just mix it with one of their lower level animals to see if they can make something, test something. Because um, even, you know, Floor, for example, that's super creepy. <laughs> the, it's funny because it reminds everybody of Toy Story 1. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. it does. There's also a fun little thing that I like the War Pigs voiced by Judy Greer. It's kind of a funny disconnect between the appearance mm -hmm. and the voice. I think I'm that's going. one of the reasons that makes it so like creepier is that it sounds yeah. like a like kind of like a person very uh, who doesn't seem to yeah, yeah like it doesn't understand it it's not fitting it's this incongruity with what I would expect it to sound like and how just normal it sounds um which just in a weird way makes it very scary <laughs> so uh Star Lord as Rags said, as a setup, passed his guns over to good old Groot, and so they scan him, and they're like, good, you don't have weapons, you can come in. Nebula, you can't come in, because you are a weapon. Groot can come in. <laughs> so stupid. And it's bad enough that Groot can come in when he's a living weapon, but they don't even scan him. I guess they're mm. like, well, he wouldn't be hiding anything. It's like, why? Why would you think that? Not clever. And I know no. that it's supposed to come across as like, oh, that's a really cool thing. Like, no, it's not. Sorry. Ah. Drawing a lot of attention to some, like, you're drawing attention to the problem in a way that, like, if he just said, like, oh, he's a, he's expecting you, come with us. You know what I mean? That would be way better, honestly. Skip the scan. You might yep. wonder later, why didn't they scan them or something? But it would it'd be better. I told you to take the wizard staff. That's a it's different just a movie. simple walking stick. <laughs> I like that meme where <laughs> where they walk up to the they walk up to the the castle, uh, and he's like, "You wouldn't deprive a wizard of his old walking stick, would you?" And everyone's like, "Gandalf, we can all clearly see it's an AK forty seven. And it's just like, you know. <sighs> um, yeah. Um, it's it, it just we kind of been over, it, but just the high evolutionaries plan here is insane but we'll just go along with it i suppose um now we're about to get to the the flashback it's it's that one uh rocket's sent back to his cage and he basically tells them all we're, we're all gonna get killed in the morning i'm gonna get us out he starts assembling something from all the little bits and bobs he's been saving over the presumably years i'm not sure how long it's been um and he says just down that hole there's ships i know i can pilot one of them if i can just get to it uh, so they're all relatively on board. He fixes it up, opens the door, opens up Lila's door. They seem pretty happy about all of this. Then we hear a gunshot sound. Bang. Uh-oh. Uh, it's very clear Lila's been shot. Pulls over, 
And her last word is sky. Um, it's pretty sad. Damn. Very yeah. sad. Yeah, it's uh, what the fuck movie? Heartbreaking. Oof. Um, some of the it, it, it's like it's you gotta be so careful with scenes like these to make sure you like you know nail anything that could uh breach anything. But it's just like this perfect amount of horrifying and tragic when you have um, Law the uh the bunny with the sort of spider legs. Like I said earlier, her English isn't quite perfect. Um, after Lila's shot, she just keeps repeating over and over again, Rocket Teeth's floor go now. Rocket Teeth's floor go now. And it's just like, Oof. sad as hell. Yeah, man. Because uh, obviously she's just panicking, uh, and she doesn't want the rest of them to die. It's just like, ooh. The thing I think that combines the tragedy, of course, isn't just the people that are... I say people, you understand what I'm saying? They're clearly good, and uh, they're also kind of come across as very, very much like children. Mm, yeah. Um, but they're not treated that way, of course, because uh, high evolutionary doesn't give a shit. Yeah, it's like their situation is one of pure, uh, pure tragedy. And uh, Rocket has a bit of a, a, a moment. I don't know how I can possibly explain how it's just uh, it's pretty fucking hard to watch in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah just a, a, a completely, um, a, just a, a, a scream of emotional agony. I, um, uh, it's probably that, worth mentioning that is is this Bradley Cooper's voice by this point? I was actually I was going to ask the same question. I'm yes, assuming it I is. Think so. Yeah, uh, I, I I think it's very much worth mentioning that his voice acting's fucking incredible in this movie. Yep, I mean he's always been so good. fucking brilliant as well. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's it's interesting because Bradley Cooper rarely does press for these movies. I think whether he just, just fuck it, I don't feel like doing it, or whether he's committed to like disappearing into the role, I think there's something to be said for just how incredible he is. I never thought about it that way, but that's interesting. It's a, I don't know, I don't know what it is exactly, but I, I could believe that that's a deliberate choice for that reason. Uh, so the High Evolutionary starts making fun of him, which is fucking cruel. Yeah. And Rocket gets incredibly angry, as you would, and jumps up onto him and starts scratching at his face pretty hard and pretty fast. Um, trying not to be mean to a scene that's very, very good, but he's a raccoon. Uh, a human being that's, uh, or something that approximates close to a human being. If it's if it's an animal scratching your face, you are getting that thing off. Uh, yeah, I wonder if uh, there is this element of him being so like surprised or like the like the shock that any one of his creations would do this at all to him, or if it's a, a result of the like whatever the rest of the physical cybernetics are. I just I don't know, but yeah, that was I, my thought that it, he's clearly not just a raccoon, right? In terms of strength and physical prowess. I don't think we've ever been shown him to, like, be so weighty or strengthy that people can't just pick him up. Uh, weighty, no. I'm, I'm wondering what's going on with his, his like, the arms, because they're not, like, normal raccoon Oh, arms, wait, wait, so... maybe you're not understanding mm -hmm. me. The High Evolutionary doesn't do anything with his arms. Does they he... Just, they just lay down, like, while he's getting scratched. Oh, up. yeah, that needs... Yeah, that's a, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember what his arms were doing, but if yeah, he should have been like punching at him or something, and you know, yeah, or trying to yeah, like put it over his face or something, yeah, because that's what you know you do typically. Um, but before that, he had called. He said he expected that uh, Rocket might have done this, and so he's called in backup. Um, and so as Rocket's sort of disabled him, he hasn't killed him. Uh, his gun has dropped, and so those men arrive. Rocket picks up the gun and starts shooting at them. He does hit all of them eventually, but they've fired some shots, and those shots have happened to go into uh, teeth and floor. Yes. Um, Oof. Yeah. Perhaps a little tiny bit contrived, but I still really like it. Um, yeah, I think... And By the way, I, this is only just because I wanted this movie to be just everything that I wanted, so bear that in mind. But, like, with a scene like that, it's, like, it's hitting great. 
Um, I'm trying to think of how I would maybe change and tweak it to being that uh, he he's on top of all of this, the high evolutionary. Like he's been he's hoping he's going to escape to maybe complete a test of some kind, maybe even to the point of getting all four of them to a ship. But then the ship itself is like you know deliberately sabotaged, and uh, he reveals all this to Rocket, and then like just activates the kill switches on all of them except Rocket. And then he's like, you're going to be, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then probably from that, try and construct some kind of escape scene so that he was all in control of all of it. Because this is very, um, it seems very almost uh, out of the high evolutionary's control. Like, is he lying when he said he expected it? Because he came down alone with, a, like, a pistol. Doesn't seem like he's prepared for this, even calling in his own men, you know? Maybe he, like, he expected for uh, Rocket to try some shenanigans but maybe not exactly either succeed and get out of the cage or, you know, uh, or, or to leap on him and attack him. Because uh, I know, again, not trying to shoot on the scene, but like I didn't buy it when Rocket ran and to a ship and activated it and flew off. There's so many reasons why that just shouldn't even be remotely possible. Why? Yeah. Um... But first of all, he has to get lucky as fuck to avoid all security and gunfire. I can believe on by that he's dodging several, but all of them. It's like, all right. Okay, so my the it's still clear that he wants him alive, right? Are we going with the... no, no. They have all those shots that are landing everywhere around him. He barely is able to escape. Yeah, I was, I, I'd say that's plot armor, not like they deliberately avoid. That's I don't fair. think they're trying what? to shoot in a way that convinces Rocket that they're trying to shoot him. Yeah. So if yeah, I think the problem for me would be that they're shooting at him at all because he still wants him alive i don't think we'd know that i don't know if the, he would have been able to communicate that to anybody in his state that or if that was true. even known right, by random right. security in the hangar no that's that's fair you're right because he's still kind of incapacitated on the ground gotcha yeah no it is incredibly lucky i don't un i don't know is it impossible to your mind i mean it's not Wait, it's like possible. it doesn't break it doesn't he, break any laws of logic. Oh, well, so we're going but... one by one. So first, he's just incredibly lucky that none of those shots hit him. Then there's mm -hmm. um, access to the ship. He just runs in. It's like, imagine there was a lock and key at, or some yeah, kind of scanner or anything. It's like, it. Well, he just jumps right in. And it's ready to go fueled up and not in any way having to have some kind of security check or disablement. It's like, all right, that, that, I guess he's just super lucky on that too. Then there's nothing, nothing to shoot him down, apparently. It's like, okay. And there's no way to remote control and bring back that ship. And then there's no way to track it. I doubt it. Especially the tracking, I think, yeah. I just I think all that. of those things are happening all at once, and it's because we're rushing. We're trying to get that scene complete. Rocket gets out, and he escapes, and that's that's before he reaches the Guardian someday, before he even reaches Guru. Like, I get it, I get it, I get it. But he really skipped over a hell of a lot of things there that, you know. Would have made it a little easier to swallow how he gets away, yeah. Hell, I would have considered he... Shoots those guys, uh, they're, they're dead, and then we see him slowly walk off maybe to the left. That's the end of the flashback. We don't actually see how he escaped, but we know he did. That could work. Yeah, or if yeah. we cut some of the really, really stupid parts of the movie, we could have that extra scene <laughs> talked about, like an, yeah, another flashback, yeah. For like the more, um, like if he's loose on the ship, being stealthy, you know, over a longer period of time, that could, but uh, yeah, but I think actually you're right if him just walking off and we don't see how it happens is probably better because this is the pinnacle of the drama as far as the flashbacks are concerned. So I feel like this is the right one to end Well, if on. I was to fight against my own argument, part of what they want when they exit him is him looking at the sky in a ship as he leaves. Yeah. Do they want that? Uh, and it, I get yeah, it. it's very effective, but it is a little... If, yeah, he ran to the, was... if he ran to the ship and there wasn't gunfire... You know, if there weren't people shooting at him. If because, he was sneaking you know, around, there were alarms yeah. going off, and he was he was slinking around. Maybe he's a stowaway on some other ship, that, and that's how he gets so the world. him walking uh, off to the side, I can believe that. I can believe he yeah, stowed away. I can, yeah, I can believe that, too. Um, if you're going to show something, we yeah. can show something better than what we were shown. I agree. That's actually probably the solution. Well, um, I'd say it's it's definitely a better solution that they've got maybe transports coming in and out all the time, and he just jumps on one, and then he's just staring out the window. You, know, you yeah. can have your payoff at the same time then. Yes, all right. Um, I was just going to mention, Movie Cynic, did you want to maybe take this opportunity to uh, jump on out at your preference, of yeah. course? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I really appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, you bet. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry, I couldn't contribute as much. Um, you guys are just the best. So I'll be listening, though. Aw, shucks. <laughs> oh, All righty. Yeah. Maybe well, before we'll, uh, you go, <laughs> uh, why don't you person. tell people where they can find you and what you're up to? I just released a Peter Pan and Wendy review, um, along with two almost long man level reviews uh, encapsulating phase four in its entirety. And I will be doing a review of Guardians coming up soon. Will, uh, will have today's conversations affected in any way? I'm going to try not to have these conversations affected. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Honestly, I pretty much have summarized, you know, what I think too, which is uh, partially why uh, it minimizes my contributions. Because I'm like, man, you guys are just saying what I was thinking. Damn. Oh well, hey, we talk a lot. We've already had yeah, all yeah, of yeah, the opinions that are even possible. So, <laughs> oh, but thank you so much for having me on, you guys. I really appreciate well, it. Of course, yeah, thanks, thanks for joining for coming us. On, dude. Um, and yeah, easy to find you, the movie cynic on YouTube, and uh, yes, he's covered. Plenty of topics you guys in chat would be interested in, don't you worry. Um, yeah, right, thank you so much, care, sir. Guys. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Yes, it is. Bye. 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 And with that, we go to another moment of this film pissing me off. Can you believe it? Especially after that scene. I know, I know. Yeah, I yeah. It. yeah, I know. It's, it's, yeah you know, know which one specifically, the thing? How, it's, it's arguably a small thing, but it's also kind of a big thing. Um... Drax has decided he's leaving. It's almost like I want to talk about that already, but it's like, why don't we just talk about the thing first? So there's some guy on a motorbike just driving, just doing his daily, just going down the road, just doing his thing. Fucking, he might be going at like 30 miles per hour. Drax puts out his arm and just fucking wrecks him off the bike. This took me by surprise so hard in the cinema. I was like, what? Yeah, I was almost like, is this supposed to be some hooligan? Some, like, person? Yeah, is he a bad nature? guy? Is this just, uh, this just a guy <laughs> using the road for its intended purpose? Yeah. Why did he do that? That's not Why? Drax. No. Why would you just fuck up some random guy and these people have been nothing but nice to you? So weird. Because it's like, Why? isn't it funny? And it's like, what the fuck is wrong with I mean, you? No, <laughs> you're being an asshole. It's not it wasn't funny. funny. Not really. It's, it, it, the funny factor will obviously be ruined for me in the fact that that guy was just some guy doing his daily thing. What's wrong with you? Um, if it were, like we just said, some evil character trying to get away or something, it's like, that's totally normal. Those kinds of funny uh, physical gags. But yeah, I mean, that's just some guy. If they had him steal it or something, I don't if know. If it was just like... there at the curb, you know, it's still, you're stealing someone's motorcycle, but still, you wouldn't have to, like, probably kill that guy. <laughs> I, Someone just yeah, highlight as well. Like the guy doesn't get back him. up. He's just laying there. No. Yeah, he's just <laughs> he's laying not... there. I think he's just had his ass beat, and he's just like, I don't think he's dead, but like, fuck it, Opal. Well, yeah. it doesn't matter, does it, Rags? It does. Hand out, you know, in front of you while you're driving at you know a reasonable speed, like he could be seriously injured. Yeah, I, I assume he's so, just yeah. seriously injured, and people should be running to help him. Um. So Drax says, I have a bad feeling. And then Mantis says, Peter told you to stay here. He said, he should know. I don't do anything people tell me. And she says, we have to protect Rocket. And he says, so hop on and we'll ride to the ship. And she looks like, That's hmm. not an answer. Well, it gets worse than that, for me, if you think about it. She's like, okay, I guess if we ride to the ship. Then she gets on and he just rides off into the distant other direction of the ship. And she's like, Drax! Why if don't only... you just jump off with your crazy powers that you have to, like, jump around I and I think do there's crazy a better shit. option. Why doesn't or she just manipulate him to go back? Yeah. To, uh, go back. It's actually fucking infuriating that she feels the need to blame Rax when she reaches Nebula, when she had all the chances in the Options. world to stop him. Yeah, but she just didn't really feel like it, and now Rocket is on his own. It doesn't with, make sense. Like... This isn't the a joke. The that you don't really trust. Yeah, this is and no joke. They need die. He Rocket could die needs at them. any moment. Yeah, but he's just there on his own with this Gamora who's not invested in any of this. It's so close and to Drax. Death. People Drax himself doesn't trust this Gamora, so there's that too. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and people are this, saying like on you this could... planet that's potentially very hostile. Even though all of the people you've encountered are friendly, you know yeah. that this is like the 
high evolutionaries planet. Yeah, so I don't know if this is some him? weird like. Oh, it's funny. Like they're all like cultists or something, or creepy, or they can get like mind controlled to do something at a whim. Uh, so, so it would like be. It is fair to mention at this point in the film. It's like, well, didn't she say you can't manipulate friends' feelings like that? Uh, she did. Yeah, in, yeah, order yeah. Save, yeah. in order she to save. In order to save. Well, so wait, wait, wait. So first yeah. of all, in, you'd argue it's well worth it if it's to save Rocket's life, of course. But secondly, mm -hmm. she doesn't believe the kind, that. Yeah, it doesn't. The kind of manipulation is important too. Um. Yes, it is horrible writing to get them separated. But I was going to say, what's really fucked up is that if she was to, like, touch his head and give him a command that would get him back to protecting Rocket, it might sound like this. Drax, you care about Rocket. And he'd be like, oh, there you go. That'll set him back. And it's like, why would you have to tell him that? He yeah. already cares about Rocket, for fuck's sake. And then, yeah, um, it's bad enough on Drax's part, but now it's, like, double bad because fucking Mantis can stop him, but she won't. And these are the kinds of things where it's because of their abilities that they can, like, end up in serious trouble because the plot, like, issues in terms of just... Like, I would love to be with James Gunn when he was writing that moment and be like, why wouldn't Mantis just control him? Just to see what he'd say. If he would just be like, ugh, I don't know. She, just, she doesn't think about it at that point. Or something. Because, like, what would it be? What would he think? Would he just, like... No way he forgets Mantis's power, right? I don't, I mean, you I don't think he forgot. No. I mean, how that's like her thing, her big thing, her thing that she yeah. can do. It's like her power. Like, oh, Superman can fly. I just forgot. It was like the first conversation that you had with her was and, about her abilities. And then you're like, because you guys already mentioned, right? Uh, Drax considers Gamora dead to him. Doesn't trust the new one. But what is current Gamora's goal to leave? And she's the only one in the ship. She could just abandon you all. Exactly. This and could... I mean, a different version of this movie has her deciding not to leave when she has a chance, but I'm just too confused about what's going on here to know if that's even a anything. And then, the final question, why didn't they just get the ship? Can neither, like, no, can neither Drax, Mantis, and we know Gamora can't for some reason pilot the ship. I assume it's they can, but I don't think I've ever seen them Peter do it. And so. Rocket, maybe. Well, because it seems like Peter and Rocket are they are uh, they're the pilots. I guess so. Because of that, but yeah, that's the, that's the way you could explain it. I just would have thought at this point, with this many years, that it might have been worth. A them nebula a... can fly, so maybe they should have left Nebula and then taken like Drax or something well, or Mantis. When you broaden it out quite a bit and you see this whole scene, it's just like, man, James's goals of putting characters in particular places are so funky, like, and how he gets it to happen is so weird. Uh, yeah, I mean, I totally yeah. agree. It's, uh, it's, yep, not great. He's the high evolutionary for plot. Huh. So, um, I think uh, the high evolutionary then tell yeah because they walk into the room and he we had that flashback the the big one and then uh we cut back and peter's like you guy with thing on his head you have the thing we want and then high evolutionary explains that um after what happened oh shit chat's saying they pilot in the holiday special oh yeah that's right drax and mantis fly to uh they Fuck. fly to the earth welp <laughs> Oh, the oh, holiday special right. introducing all of these new uh, I love the idea of the visualization of the holiday special coming up from behind and stabbing this film in the back. <laughs> like, a little like, bit. I mean, holiday the specials. The invisibility, things. they can fly, that's right. Mm. Well. Because you can't even use the justification that like, oh, we don't want to fly this ship over there because we want to protect Rocket. Like, it's it's so obvious. They haven't hidden it at all. Rocket's just there it's in, the in the middle, middle of, of the suburb. Well, we're highlighting all these potential issues, and if none of them actually came to any kind of realization, it'd be somewhat like of a flaw. But like, we actually see this come into play because of how fucking stupid all the guardians are. So annoying. Because um, basically, High Evolutionary explains he's got his new gravity powers, uh, especially after things that happened. And um, then we have one of his subordinates, the the lady, say she says Warpig now, and then Nebula sees Warpig launch and head over to their ship. And I was just thinking to myself, like, so High Evolutionary's plan literally was, as soon as they arrive, no matter how many there are, I'm just gonna go tell Warpig to go kidnap the, the rocket raccoon. And and he's like, but but what if Drax was still there? What if Mantis was still there? 
What if Nebula was there? How does this work? They can kill Warpig. Yeah, I mean, he'll try his hardest, but, like, I don't think he wins that fight. And, and, he's, and you're like, like he why doesn't he send more people? Can, yeah. Why isn't he going? He's unstoppable. Well, yeah, I mean, he's crazy powerful. He should and just go. right down the road. It's so, like, what's going on? <laughs> like, you have an army. And they've got a ship, man. Like, if Warpig, like, they've shot him with that, he'd be fucking dead as well. Yeah. Um, and the High Evolutionary says, your people had a wonderful spirit, or had have wonderful spirit, uh, some of the finest art and literature, a fabulous place, if not for the ignorance and bigotry. Oof. Hit me in my heart there. So true. <laughs> um, yeah, and he says, it inspired me to create the Counter-Earth, all of the good and none of the bad. And uh, something I kind of enjoyed, I guess, is he, as he was saying this, uh, Star Lord is like, I don't care. I don't need another speech from a whack job talking about how he needs to conquer the universe. Um, because something to do with like daddy issues. Because uh, his, his mother didn't love him or something yeah, yeah. like that. And then he says, I'm not trying to conquer it. I'm trying to perfect it. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, right? Because like Star Lord's line is indicative of a frustration that we as the audience might have because they are all blending into each other and then this is almost like a good line for the conversation but also a meta line of like no i'm different i am different i'm mm -hmm. just trying to do that that thing we'll yeah. say i i really like the way chris pratt plays this scene uh that's i think he's great he's, in the whole movie he's, he's gone now but uh <laughs> the, the movie cynic he saw he thought he phoned it in and i just couldn't oh shit more. did he yeah he said that in the beginning Oh, I missed he that. He did say that in the beginning. I thought Chris totally Pratt was great in this though. film. I thought he was really good. Yeah, he's very good. Um, well, yeah, get mm -hmm. fucked, movie cynic. Now that you're <laughs> yeah, <that's you. laughs> uh, I thought it was lame how much Gamora sucks with uh, against Warpig. I was thinking that if you're going to make Gamora go on this punished arc with the Ravages, it would be cool that if she was like a better fighter than our Gamora. Maybe more ruthless. Alrighty. But she just yeah, gets, if we're gonna do that. The only reason she survives, quote unquote, Warpig is she just lucks the fuck out, which we're about to get to. Um. So, uh, the, the Starlord highlights uh, how is the world perfect when you've got an octopus selling drugs to people with cockroach heads, and then he's like, "Well, it's not. That's why I'm going to raise it." Which, uh, I don't know, man. I think this is around about the time of the film where High Evolutionary just completely falls off for me. Um, there's a lot of other stuff that's going to happen soon, but... What? He's going to destroy the entire planet and civilization because uh, things didn't quite work out. It just, it, it just goes too far for me. Because there seems to be some... Yeah, like, you're, like, completely start from scratch? Because honestly... Is there nothing like, to it... study here? At all. Yeah, like now. surely do like over there things seem to be working out really well. So you're gonna destroy the entire thing. How much money and time is it gonna take? You know, I remember you have um, a whole planet to work with here. Remember, he said he's gonna be at one point. He, he's looking for that part of uh, Rocket's thinking that he wants to put into his new batch, or whatever. It's just like, why can't you put that into, so to speak? Because that's apparently how it works into the the people on Counter Earth. Yeah, put it in the water supply or something. Well, he doesn't know what it is. Like, he doesn't know. He has to study rockets. That's why he wants him back. He needs but his to plan him. is to study rockets, so he wouldn't raise the planet in preparation. And I was about to that. say, his plan is to he's explicit. He wants to put rockets trait into the new species of people, and that's refer referring to all the kids, isn't it? Well, I think the... I, I mean... Either way, whether he gets rocket or not, he this is something he's been doing for a while, is the implication, right? That he's like trying new things and that doesn't work out, and so he raises it and starts over again. So I feel like that. So I don't know if I'm being misunderstood. What I'm saying is, mechanically, he's going to take Rocket's trait from his brain and put it into this brand new set of people, and that's going to give them what they're missing. He's also got a huge planet's worth of people where he's saying that they're not perfect. Why not? If you're going to be able to do it with them, have the experiment run of putting that trait from Rocket into Counter-Earth as well. I guess it does depend on whether it's something he can just add in to what he's already made or whether he needs to start from scratch. I'm not really sure because we don't really know what that X factor is. My theory Maybe. is that this is all bullshit and they're just going to have an action scene built off him blowing up a whole planet. Yeah. 
Well, I don't, I don't understand what's not in character for it's him. It's a complete, about... absolute insane waste of resources and research. I mean, blowing up a whole planet, like absolutely does insane. He, not to mention, how okay. do you, how do you does hide he... this? The whole point is that you're doing this under the eye of like galactic ethics. Like you're, you're gonna blow up a planet. Like no, it, we're they're gonna find out. Did he blow up the planet? I can't remember. Or did he? He blew up all of the surface of the planet. Yeah. So that will be noticed. It's not. Uh, I mean, it is space, but like I don't know, like what it looks like in this universe. I'm strictly appealing to are. how ineffective. No, this I, is I know. What, I know what you're saying. It's like he says that he can like put the traits of Rocket into the new people. Why can't he try that for the old people, like on Counter Earth? Why can't he do that? That's a good question. Why doesn't I'm, he give it a shot? I'm not sure. Yeah, and well, this like, thing. Well, I think the idea. idea Whatever argument one would come up with, it's still worth the experiment, is it not? Yeah, you oh, have yeah. a whole it's world to tinker life. around with and mess around with and use to mm -hmm. plan and try new things. And just like I said, the resources required to do all this stuff, like, you've, like, this is nuts. He Planets does have limited resources. Any kind of yeah, well, he doesn't, he thing, doesn't, he already, up the he believes the people on the. He believes the people, like, the new people are already imperfect anyway. That's why he wants Rocket's brain. Hmm. So, That's like, it doesn't Wait, really say address that. anything. Well, some say of the chat said, oh, well, he doesn't like, you know, imperfection sickens him. It's like, yeah, he believes the new people are imperfect. That's why he wants Rocket's brain. Yeah, it's a bit of a Just jump like forward, but he says people are imperfect. the kids he's currently got are really impressive biologically, but that they have rote memorization. They don't have, like, creative thinking like Rocket does. And so if he's willing to put Rocket's fleams into them instead of just ditching them, then I don't see why it matches at all that he's willing to destroy this entire civilization instead of experimenting with them in any way. No, I think that's fair. You're right. Um, I... <sighs> yeah, because... Yeah, I... there's a couple of things. One, I don't understand how he has the near infinite resources to do all this. And that's not really made clear. Like, how does he, how does he finance his whole operation? Is a good question, especially if he's gonna, like, like firebomb the entire planet every time he wants to start over. It looks like it he's was detonating it, charges that have set like deep within the surface of the planet. Like I say, deep, yeah, like, like maybe like it's subterranean minefield. Yeah, we're about like, to get. Yeah. To, uh... The, the implication of... is clearly is clearly that he has done this several times before. It is pretty horribly inefficient, for sure. Yeah, um, you think you'd put something, yeah, you know, like a, put something in the atmosphere. So I don't know, but yeah, that. yeah, that would be way more efficient, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, explosions are uh, better for action scenes. That's, That's so true. true. The war pig collects up rocket for the second time. This is after Gamora said, "Hey, drop the raccoon," and this time. Warpig says, I have P3 and I'm on the way. That line being delivered to the High Evolutionary is what activates the destruction of the planet. Like, I'm not saying that in the sense of the line specifically. I'm saying it's what makes them believe now is the time to leave. Uh, it, it, he basically thinks, I have Rocket, I have won. And it's like, okay, Except... Warpig just said they're on the way. Yeah, he's not on your ship. That you're gonna use. Oh yeah, the off. timing of that's awful. So, like, absolutely nuts. Yeah, he's uh, he's screwed. Like he can't get on the ship in time. That's no way. so funny. Well, the, and also the, the funniest part as well is the Adam Warlock, a man who is infinitely more fucking powerful than Warpig, gets completely fucked by the explosions. The yep. Warpig heading back to the ship likely would have been fucking Why killed anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Along with Rocket and the Along brain vaporized. <laughs> yeah. So uh, fuck, you're that so just right. destroys yeah, everything. God. That's awful. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, why would they do that? And as if it's not bad enough, Gamora is about to die because she's battling Warpig, and Adam Warlock saves her by accident. Like he's coming in to fuck them up and get Rocket himself. It just happens to time up perfectly. Uh, yep. I hate that shit. It's so annoying. <laughs> What is he even doing in this movie? I don't know. Um, so, <laughs> uh, the, the Star Lord and Groot, they're like, "Oh shit, this this is all kicking off now." All right, it's time. Let's kill them all. And then the High Evolutionary is like, ha, 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 and just slams them into the ground with his gravity powers, as you'd expect. It's like, "Yep, okay." So, yeah, sounds like that as an audience do. member, I'm sitting there like, "So, what could possibly happen now?" Like, I just don't understand how they can possibly get out of this. Well, 
Welcome to the power of changing scenes. Ooh, that sounds fun. Because we, uh, we go back to Adam, Warlock, and he's mostly talking to his pet, being like, chill out, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, Warpig is like, dude, we're on the same team. What are you doing? And he says to Warpig, I need the credit, chum, to save my civilization. Be a good, creepy thing and back off. And I was just thinking to myself, like, how insane is this? If they never hired Adam Warlock to do anything, they may have just won. Yeah. And 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 you, you think like, well, that's kind of like an irony, isn't it? It's kind of an interest. And it's like, you know, I don't find it interesting at all. <laughs> I just find this annoying. Like, it, 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 Warpig has direct communication with them. Imagine Warpig was like, Adam is stopping me from collecting Rocket. <laughs> That would fuck him. Yeah. It would just completely mm -hmm. fuck him. And that's all Warpig Destroy needed to do. Everything. Instead, Warpig decides to attack Adam. I guess Warpig doesn't know who he is. Yeah. Because, yeah, he's he gets just fucking wrecked. As as we <laughs> what would it even <laughs> look like, though, if Warpig's like, yeah, I got Rocket, and then Adam shows up with Rocket? <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah. um, what the fuck happened? Warpig said he had him. <laughs> Did you kill him? You know, did you do that just because you wanted to, like, curry favor? Well, I suppose the funny thing is, Free, that wouldn't even have been able to happen, because if he had Rocket, and then he flew to his mum, he would have exploded, Rocket's dead. Yeah, yep, and that's it, the High Evolutionary's plans are all over, it's done. Because he detonated the planet. <laughs> and so, maybe someone's my asking, boy. maybe someone's asking right now, well, where is Rocket? Rocket has been disconnected from his life support, with apparently lung filling with liquid, and running around with with uh, Gamora. She's just running with him like he's a rag doll. I when I saw that, I was like, you can't fucking convince me that he's near death, needs life support, and you can just pull him off it, and he's gonna make it. I just don't buy from around like a rag doll. Mm. Yeah. I just don't. I can't deal with it. It's so yeah, annoying. He's not that. He's not that. He's just not that resilient. He's a little raccoon guy. It, the last we heard of it was he was on death's door. Ne Nebula was like, he's nearly dead. His lungs are filling with liquid. Like, you can't, be I can't believe this. <laughs> it's like, no. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the planet starts to absolutely just blow apart. And there's this moment, uh, anybody who's able to see the movie in whatever format, when this is listened to in future, when you see Gamora heading up to the ship, she stops because literally about two meters away from her, to her right, are, is a man and a woman. And she looks at them, and they just explode. They get annihilated. It looks like a bomb goes off beneath them. And there's this shot where, like, shit tons of fire, smoke, and debris all blast into Gamora's direction. She lifts up her arm and then puts it back down and starts walking up the ship. And I was like, what the f like, she should have just gotten, like, annihilated, but she's totally fine. Loads of explosions go off near this ship, by the way, and it does nothing. It's just fortunate. Fucking annoying. Um, but yeah, Adam believes, like, oh shit, my mom's probably in trouble, and he tries to get to it, but he is late. Blows up. And I don't yeah, know about you guys. The mom in it explodes. But I was like, sweet. This will give him the motivation to switch sides. This should be fun. The obvious set up for what is going to happen with his character because how could you possibly even think anything else would be done this is such a clear and direct and obvious way for him to turn against the high evolutionary and get his revenge and help the guardians and save rocket and do all that stuff this is clearly the setup so how else could it possibly go uh, Nebula contacts Gamora to say that she should just get out, save Rocket, get out, get it, get out into the atmosphere, sort of well, out of the atmosphere, get get into orbit, basically. Um, and so Gamora tries, but we realize quite quickly that Gamora does not know how to fly the ship, which I find very fucking strange. You think she'd have a decent grasp of being able to pilot things? I bet a lot of people would in this world. Um, I, I get that, like, even if you know how to pilot X, it doesn't mean you know how to pilot Y. Like, I know, but I just don't buy that Gamora doesn't know how to basically pilot this thing. Yeah, I don't like, expect her to do to anything pretty. amazing. Just, I expect yeah, her to be able to go up. You don't have to look pretty. Just go up. Like, if you can go forwards, you can get to Peter. Do that, but, like, in an upwardly direction. So, yeah, uh, I, I didn't buy that at all. And, well, keep that in mind. We're circling all the way around. Lots of things happen at the same time here. Uh, Nebula and... No, sorry. Nebula is like, where the fuck is Drax and Mantis? And then they, they're behind her on the bike. Like, what the fuck? 
And uh, Mantis blames Drax, like I said. It's kind of annoying, but you know what? We talked about it. It's okay. We can keep moving. We did talk about it. We can move on. They do not ask Gamora to pick them up. They just ask Gamora to leave. I thought that was really odd, considering they're basically on Death's door as well. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like there's so much weird shit going on really quick. Yeah. Everyone's making really yeah. fucking weird decisions. Uh, and so I set it up. I said, how are, how are uh, Quill and, and Groot, how are they going to get out of this situation? What are they going to do? We cut back, and, um, well, the High Evolutionary is no longer using gravity on them, so they continue their plan. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, just... I know that, like, there's worse things that have happened, but that one, I think, stuck out to me the most in the whole film. I just couldn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't deal with it. I was like can't tell me that your way to write yourself out of the situation is to just say he didn't stopped that's that's just that's lame like he used his powers and then he just stopped using them like that's so pathetic you gave up why did you give him the power what's wrong with you you <laughs> yeah just give him like some tools or have them like have the staff do stuff and he tells people to they like he doesn't have any power himself he has to tell people what to do he has lackeys it's um it's done in a way as well that like maybe there was a scene that explains it because Quill says now kill them all as if something yeah, has like... happened but nothing has happened. And yeah, Groot wants to make that. Groot pulls out a grenade and tosses it and then pulls out loads of guns, gives Quill his guns and they all start shooting and the grenade goes off in such a way that it drops debris in between them and the high evolutionary. He's blocked off from them. Wow. That's um that's so the convenient. thing that happened. Wow. Not sure a grenade would do that, but I guess it could, but uh boy. It's just, it's not it's it's not even just the fact that the grenade did it that way. It's that they throw it on the left side of the room and in the right side of the room all the debris comes down. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh I thought that Star Lord and Peter shooting together was really cool. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Star Lord and Peter shooting together was really cool. I think uh, you that's, mean that's... Gamora and Peter. Yeah, what are we, I'm what's sorry. happening right now? I was already now? just right. thinking about how <laughs> um yeah, Groot and Star Lord. I'm getting a little bit tired, I'm sorry. But um the the the, the, well, the reason I say that sentence is to highlight that I've got nothing to praise it for um at yeah, all. Yeah, just I like it. It's just yeah, cool it to neat. see. That's all I've yeah. got. Look neat. Uh, and he actually says, he, when he says, I am Groot, when shooting them this time, they get the animation right. That's right. They actually have the, like, lip sync actually be correct instead of in the first film where he actually s screams, like, I am, like, Groot or something. And then they just have it be Groot. Just they didn't want it yeah. to. <laughs> it just doesn't look right. So, uh,. But we've only got Scientist Man left, who in his little head thing, he's got that passcode they need for, for Rocket. And so Star Lord's aiming his gun at him, and he's like, no, please don't do it, no, don't kill me. And he puts the gun down, he's like, oh, thank you. He goes, a little bit premature, and then runs at him and tackles him, and they go out of the building. Like, uh, uh, it's like huh. a shit. Let's just say they are like several miles up in the air. Oh, yeah, and, they're, they're and up. They're I, talked, falling. I, talked, <laughs> I talked about this on Open Bar. But I'd gotten so frazzled at this point that I was like, of course Peter jumps out of a building. Why not? There's no, yeah, I mean, I... he's, 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 uh, he's Star-Lord with his either his boots, his rocket boots, or the <laughs> arrow rigs from Guardians 2. No, nope, none of that. <laughs> it's so he funny. He has neither. He has neither. Uh, but like, the, what I've highlighted isn't even that. I was highlighted that he could literally take a gun and shoot himself in the head at this point, and I'd be like, he'll be fine. He's gonna figure it out. He's Peter. He knows how to figure that out. He'll be fine. Um, and of course he does figure it out and he is fine. Because uh, there's this fucking awkward ass shot. So Groot's gonna jump in on after him, grab him, about? and create um, like a like a series of vines, wings. leaves, and things. Yeah, to make wings. Um, but the thing before it happens is uh, we see the High Evolutionary has finally cleared all the debris. So he has a clear view and he sees Groot notice him, look at the window, start running, jump, and Lana, and then he just goes. And then that's it. Yeah, it's it's done in such a way that I was it's, like, it's framed in a way where like expecting... he's gonna grab him. You'll, he'll yeah. grab him before he jumps out. Like we yeah. we have like a couple of seconds of the shot of Groot running towards to jump out. He's like, oh yeah, he'll grab him. But no, he just lets him jump out. <laughs> Which um, if he grabbed Groot, the whole like that's it's over. 
Like, he died. <laughs> I don't over. know if this was being set up in a way that we were, like, it's a fake-out, a subtle fake-out, because it seems like it was created as a subtle fake-out. That's what I think when I, when I see that, is that we were, we, we were expecting the High Evolutionary to, like, grab him and pull him back in the ship, but he, he doesn't. So... So, all Someone right. in chat said, why would he grab Groot? Well, why would the High Evolutionary grab Groot? Because he wants him dead. Yeah. That's why wouldn't why. he? Would he just let him go after he's Surely, caused this? I, don't, I, I refuse yeah, to accept plus, at this point hostage. that after everything has fucking happened, the High Evolutionary is just going to be like, well, if you escape, that's cool. What we get is the High Evolutionary saying, huh, those idiots. They jump in, like, it's that's, that's a great survival we plan. Peter has done this with Groot before. It doesn't matter. If High Evolutionary grabs Groot, it's over. He loses nothing. He's, he's lo he, it's, it's over for Peter. He's dead. And, and plus, so was the I mean, other guy. The whole movie he has, ends. Yep. He has to expect Peter's going to live because he didn't just jump out of a window to die. Like, well, it's, I, I it's don't it's even really think there's a plan, obviously. The, whole th the film ends here if he grabs Groot. Peter dies. The other guy dies. Rocket's dead. As someone's just highlighted, how isn't Groot one of the most fascinating life forms to the High Evolutionary ever? Yep. There's that like too. incredibly resilient tree man. It was like he thought he would, they were going to die. He's incredibly fucking stupid if he thinks that at this point. Why? Why he thinks that Groot's jumping out to die? Yes. I guess they're, they're just <laughs> to be fair, to free, they, the they are referencing. <laughs> They're referencing the film at that point. The High Evolutionary says, that's an interesting survival plan to jump into an exploding planet. I, the, yeah. the reason that pissed me off is so I was like, strategy. Well, first of all, <laughs> they have a ship and friends operating yeah. it. So yeah. why do you assume they're just dead now? What's wrong with you? Why is he so stupid? And then, of course, no all the way. tech that exists in this world that we've just mentioned. Yes, Peter doesn't have it on him right now, but the fucking High Evolutionary didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I assume on this guy very deliberately jumped out of the window with one of my guys. Like, there was a purpose to that. No, they just wanted to die. They had no plan. <laughs> I just saw them pull off a, uh, like a, like a trap where they had all the guns and everything. Was their plan to just shoot everyone for a bit and jump out the window? Like, I can't, <laughs> like, what? what are, it's so what? No, interesting to me, too, be, because he captures the others later. He captures them. Yep. Why the fuck isn't he capturing Groot? Like, what does, what does he stand to, to, to gain from letting Groot jump out? What does he gain from that? I don't know. I'm not. I'm, I'm <laughs> they no want it out of the Marvel universe. <laughs> they try. Well, they got it. Not yet. Well, no, Peter doesn't have it. No, he doesn't. Uh, he isn't out. Uh, all right. Let's just I, I, but but I, I worth emphasizing more. He doesn't have the arrow ring. Why? Why does Why? he have it? It just it lets you fly. Just, like always have that. You, you can, can fly with it. Everybody can fly. So you always have it with you. Um, Maybe he thought Groot had another gun on him he might use to shoot him. Can't shoot him if you lock him down with gravity. Uh, he can't do anything. That's what they did at first. And then they just stopped doing it for no reason. So anyway. Uh, they slam down, you know, it softens the landing and they slam that guy down as like a, almost like a pillow for them to bash into the floor. And then they start cutting out his um his thing from his head to get the info, and it just so happens that completely luckily, unrelated to all of this, Gamora crash lands right yeah. in front of them. What are the odds? Man, Very that low. Is, that is helpful. <laughs> she was told to get out of the whole planet, and she ended up right next to Star Lord. It's like, oh, oh Man, that's if not if she if she do. didn't end up right next to him, he'd be dead and Groot. The uh, film's over again. The whole place would have fucking exploded by the time she makes a trip back from orbit. So yeah, yeah. they're so fucking lucky. And then it gets even worse. Uh, he says, and "He could have used his communicator too. This is this didn't have to be a coincidence. He could have just been like, yep, uh, true. We come pick us up." To be honest with you, I don't know why they the did any of this this way. You could have had Gamora pick all of them up. Every one of them. No, but, no, but the, you need the team separated so that they're in the spaceship for the third act. I don't even think you need that. <laughs> you no, just... I mean, you don't need that, but if that's what you want, then that's... that's yeah. How, that's why that's happened. <sighs> so, um... Yeah, uh... The, 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 so, you have to think about this, like, they do this really fucking fast and annoyed the hell out of me, so... 
You have, first you see Gamora, uh, Drax, and Mantis. They just jump onto his ship as it's rising. You can't see any access point. They're just jumping onto it. And then they, they hook on to right at the end this, this platform that does indeed have a door that can get them in. I was just like, wow, that was real fucking lucky. And you haven't coordinated at all with Nebula. Like I said, is Gamora to pick you up? That just seems like the obvious choice, but it's fine. So there's a console, and uh, Nebula starts, like, hacking into it, which is actually fine with me. I, um, I give Nebula quite a bit of beneficial, like, like writing purposes. She can hack into mostly everything. She seems yeah. to be that kind of sophisticated. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, but... Her hacking doesn't work. So it's like, oh, shit. And they, uh -oh. start, uh, they start heading up to the point where they can't breathe. They're struggling to breathe. And so Drax tries hitting the door again and again and again and then it breaks open and then and then not only does it break open it like completely comes off of its hinges or its slide or whatever like the it yeah. falls inwards um like he just p pushed through one of them last doors starship. designed for space and he can punch it open Dumb. why didn't you just have it to where the she only gets the doors to open a little bit, and he reaches his hands in there, and he pulls it open, and he saves them with great. his strength. Just do that. He saves them with his strength. Would have been cool. Yeah. And he's struggling really hard, and Mantis is like, "You can do this, Drax. You can do this." And so they all kind of have like a part to play in some degree. That'd be a thing. Instead, he just knocks down the door. I was really surprised they did it that way. I was like, oh, that's, yeah. that doesn't make any sense. I wasn't expecting that, because right. it's absurd. <laughs> yeah. No one would have imagined that's how it would have happened. So we see that, and then we cut back. You got Star-Lord piloting with Gamora in the ship as well, and they've made it to orbit. And then Gamora says, what kind of monster slaughters a civilization? And Star-Lord says, where are Mantis and Drax? Gamora says, I don't know. And then they go to Rocket. This infuriates um, me for many, 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 no, many reasons. The, the, what, what should happen there was, oh, fuck, they're dead. I'm not sure where to begin with this. So um, what would have happened is they had the device, uh, Star-Lord and Groot then made their way into the ship. They would have realized pretty quickly, because Gamora would have told them she's alone. He's like, Why, what the fuck's going on? He would have said, I don't know. I don't know. And he's like, where's Drax? Where's Mantis? Because he'd be like, they're not here. So then Star-Lord would be like, so, Drax and Mantis are somewhere on this planet, it's exploding, we have a ship, we gotta find them. Because that's, yeah. that's literally how Guardians of the Galaxy fucking works. We've had this payoff before, where a whole planet is getting destroyed and they all need to make sure they all get out. What you do mm -hmm. then, is you have him activate the little thing, and you go, holy shit, Nebula, Drax, Mantis, I'll come save you. Where are you guys? Because I care about you. And then they say, don't you worry, we're safe. We're actually on his ship. Maybe we can get in, and maybe we can sabotage him from inside, or something. I don't know. Get out of there, Quill. Then he'd be like, you betcha, friendos. I'm glad you're safe. <laughs> sure would be distraught if anything happened to you. But no, he apparently didn't ask about them until they're in fucking orbit. And then he says, where are they? Where where do those guys go? And then she's like, I don't know. He's like, all right, then move it on. All right, those goo <laughs> those goofy goobers, they're probably off doing something. You know them. I'm sure they're fine on this exploding planet. That fucking drove me nuts. That that's that's some serious damage to Star Lord right there. It that's not at all what he too. would do. That was madness. Oof. And then of course there's the fact shit. that the whole fucking planet got exploded. So <laughs> that's gonna. <laughs> That's Why don't you go ahead, Rex? In, that's going to be a bit of a stickler in my mind for a while. Um, I walked out of the theater with that sort of looming over the entirety of sort of the experience that we spent. We spent a pretty decent chunk of ch uh, chunk of time with these people and humanizing them, and they were friendly and they helped, and they were like. They, we had the joke about the car and the dad, and we have all. We specifically had all these scenes of them looking at like photographs where everyone's a bat, and they went to the house and they got beverages for them, and they live in towns and they showed the kid, and then there was that one scene where the two of them were hugging on the lawn and they just got exploded. I don't know what the fuck are you. What are we doing? Like, but and then you just that's the tragedy, you just, Rags. You I, see, I, I you feel like them it's, and then they got blown up. I mean, it this, certainly this ain't like, like Alderaan. 
You know, they're saying some older on where you don't get to see the happy people. I'm just so like, you just didn't have to do that, and you did. You know? Yeah, but the high um, evolutionary is really bad, Rags. I thought the whole point would be them trying to save the planet as this is no, all going that, on. No, that lost cause. Lost cause. It's over for them, all right? All the, the little girl with the ball and the girl and the woman who fell and scraped her knee um, and the bats that they went into their house and they talked and had a language and they're just all dead. Horrible they're just all dead. Well, they all and died. The entire world is exploding around them. That entire civilization, everything that they created and built, all of is their all hopes just and dreams up in just flames, destroyed. Like them, and it's just moving past <laughs> it really quickly. And so that really bothers me that they decided to do that in this, and there doesn't seem to be any, you know, like acknowledgement of it other than yeah, the planet exploded. That's not good. Well, I mean, it was a big set piece, all right. Yeah. Um, well, um, you know, uh, I'm gonna push back a little bit. I think my big problem with it is the fact that blowing up the planet doesn't actually make sense. But hypothetically, if it made sense for his plan to actually blow the planet up, I think the fact that it blows up is sort of unironically what's adding to like the horror of the situation. Like, I don't understand. We already know that he's super evil, and he, like, the idea that we already know oh, he's done well, this before. Something We've already I would learned say that. Is it, like, emphasizing the tragedy of the situation i think requires more of a you know perspective of the people who were dying here you know if we had it, i feel like if, i feel like if that happened you would just say it's more cruel if um we, if we, i if we had it so that nebula uh fucking hell gamora did pick them all up and then as they're about to lift off um i don't mind which character does it i think they'd all care so someone says, "What about what about them? What about the people?" And they're like, the, "You know, there's there's maybe someone in the distance, and there's an explosion. It just takes them out, and they realize like even the ground they're on is starting to slip. It's like we've got to go. We have to go. We have to get out of here." And then they lift off, and in the distance they can just see fire engulfing the whole planet, and they're just staring and watching it, and they like in complete disbelief, and it's like silent. I would be mostly okay. Yeah, More if it was treated for what it was, yeah. that would go a long way. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Instead I got the impression well, that you appreciating the gravity of the situation, all. right? It would be Wait, like yeah, if well, we I had think... a film that was set on Earth and Earth got blown up, and like the Avengers were more concerned with like their own shit than the fact that Earth got blown up. You know? They barely seem to notice. It's insane. Yeah, like they're people. I know that they're like funny animal people, like but they're you met people. them. And you yeah. talk to them and communicate it, and they helped you, and they were being just nice, and they care about their children's well-being. And we just, like, discarded them for an action scene? And as uh, uh, Rags, you kind of implied, but I think is seriously a thing, is, like, there's this assumption that's just, like, we can't, we can't save them. It's like, oh... I mean, do you want to try and save maybe a couple people at least? I need, I need something Give else from shot. you Guardians. I need something more because, than that. Boy, yeah. we gave a lot of shits about all the fuckers in cages on the ship. Man, we, oh, we really, really cared about them. We, we, it was a big deal that we saved them. And it's good that you did, don't get me wrong, but boy, I mean... The, we, attempt, <laughs> the attempt to save the people on the planet, as futile as it may have actually ended up being, would have been really helpful. Well, it's, I it's, think it really would have helped. It's a, standard, um, it's a standard thing in movies, right? Where you have the hero try to save somebody and they fail, but they still try it anyway. Like, yeah. even if it's a little thing. Or even just, like, a reaction to realizing that somebody's died. And it's like it those little things that go a long way. It would have fueled the third act payoff of, like, this time we leave no one behind. Yeah, exactly. But um, it is fucking actually bizarre that uh it's barely acknowledged and they're not that sad about it it's more so a like what a dick that he did that and it's like <laughs> yeah what yeah. a real uh, yeah that's a norm mcdonald well, what he, a real that jerk he, that he blew up the whole planet so uh well, yeah he could have, well by the way he could have just left him and gone somewhere he could have just left could have just but, left him but you know nah <sighs> uh yeah so pretty uh pretty terrible Pretty terrible.
like I said, I thought when the move when it started to happen with the movie that that w- that we would be on the planet and on the ship and we would be like trying to prevent this calamity from happening. It's like you know Nova Corps and everything, right? It's like we got to save the planet. That's a big deal. There's a lot of people on it, and they're fighting really hard. And it's you know a lot of people you know fight and die to save the the world and everything. Um, so you know that was in a Guardians movie, but like I I don't know. Like what the deal is here? What what were you thinking? Um, next we next we got a scene. We got quite a scene next. It's um, is it the uh, one? It's Nebula, Drax, and Mantis. Oh, uh oh. So here we go. It begins with uh Nebula being very upset, as she fucking should be. She uh, with Drax is like, ha. Huh. You're lucky I was able to knock down that door with mine. She says, Rocket and Gamora are probably dead because of you. And he says, I didn't know. Which is not even close to true. I mean, yeah, it's not. Like, <laughs> that should be on his mind. And, and it's not, uh, I, dare I say it, it's not what Drax would say uh, at this point. Well, uh, yeah. He did know. Well, he mean, knows I, he knew. He would say something like, to... I didn't think it would be, like, I didn't think it would, that would happen. Like, I mean, obviously you didn't think that the planet would explode, but, like, you knew that some bad shit could happen. Yeah, like, and that's that when, possible. I think when you're writing it, you'd maybe try and construct him a rationalization, but it's Drax. I think he would just be like, I know. Yeah. I, fu- I fucked up. But, well, because this, this is a good instance of highlighting, like, Nebula here, like, her, she, she's got, like, the right priorities at the moment of realizing, like, what's happened. Like, she fully understands the gravity of the situation, at least from her perspective. Yeah. So, um, you know, Nebula but, is okay at the moment. Like I said, I can't even buy him saying, like, I don't know, I didn't blah, blah, blah. It's just like, you motherfucker, you were told, and you just left, and it's not even clear why. You just did it. And and we all know why. It's because the script forced you to. You wouldn't have done it. Yeah, It's fucking annoying. So she says, oh, you didn't know? When are you going to stop using the excuse of being some big dumb clown for contributing nothing and for the rest of us having to carry the slack? And uh, I'll be honest with you, in cinema, I was like, I, I like kind of picked up I was like, this is interesting. Okay. Yeah, it keeps my mind off the genocide. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, she she bringing up the fact that Drax, as much as um, we enjoy him as an audience member, it's gotten to the point where it should have bled into their actual work that he is a clown. And that's all he fucking does is be a clown. And now it's actually manifested in a way that could have killed several people that they care about. But now is the time. It's like, okay, good. And she pushes him when she does that. And then Mantis, who I want to praise... I, is her name Pom Clementine? Pom... It's, I don't, I'm going to probably I, I butcher her name. Know. I thought her acting was fucking excellent in this scene. Very good. Yes. Yes. She says, totally don't great. push him. You don't have the right to push him. And uh, Nebula says, you, you're no better. The only thing we can count on you for is when someone shows weakness, you'll be right there to support it. And again, I was like, fuck, man. I'm enjoying this. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah. As all this stuff is coming out, the, the, the three of them, huh? And then Mantis says, I don't care. Uh, I know you need to find fault in everyone else to make yourself feel okay, so find it in me. And I was like, whoa, another good one. Mm. <laughs> By the way, I wanted this throughout the fucking film. Yep. Like, really is, character-based uh, stuff. This is a window into what could have been throughout the whole movie. And she says, oh, go to hell, Nat. And then she says, you don't have the right to push him. It's not his fault. He's stupid. And uh, uh, Gamora says he's a liability. And then Mantis says, he makes us laugh and he loves us. How is that a liability? I quite love as a line. I really yeah. like that as a line. Um, and it's just, it's, it's an acknowledgement that that's why he's there at this point. It's really not to do with his strength. It's that they really like him. Um, which is a form, in a sense, of acknowledgement and repair of the damage that's been done to him over time as a character. Yeah. Some extent, and it's yeah. just you know, and in terms it's... of character, right? Pointing to Nebula as a very utility-focused person. Did like, I say Gamora again. I'm sorry. You I, it's it's fine. Um, <laughs> okay. There's also sense. this element of this film did give him a lot of credit in terms of his ability to fight and be resilient. So there is also that too. He's mm-hmm. not just guy with knives who isn't. Like I feel like we're back to a almost like Guardians of the uh, Galaxy one kind of he will fuck shit up kind of guy so that's, yeah that and helps a lot i know that like i said if if we were in control of it i think we would want to start writing him having like less always stupid some stuff that's not stupid things to say maybe. his yeah the comedy comes more from him and his ability to like gauge social you know his level of social awareness in terms of being in those kinds of situations not that he's yeah. stupid he just doesn't quite 
he he just he's like he's like he's from someone who's a different culture um and he is useful he can do things and in combat he is extremely powerful and strong and resilient um and fearless yeah um so when she says uh how oh, is that a liability all you care about is intelligence and competence and he says I'm not sure i appreciate this defense which i actually thought was a really strong line because mm -hmm. what was just said by mantis is all you care about is intelligence and competence the implication being he has not he got intelligence yeah. and competence and yeah. so he's like yeah i don't super appreciate that and then she because, says and that's and that's a funny line but yeah. it, it totally fits with something he'd actually say and maybe met mantis would say in the moment so it's like that's the kind of line that yeah that's that's incidentally funny. Uh, and then she says, he has sadness, but he's the only one of you who doesn't hate himself. I don't care if he's stupid. Again, I was like, ah, oh, it's another good line, because I mm. feel like that is applicable to all of them, except him. He's the only one that's yeah. kind of got no issues in that department. Yeah. Um, Groot probably doesn't either, is... though. <laughs> yeah, I, guess, I guess not no, Groot. Groot's, you know, we don't know Groot's what's going doing on. All right. so. He's doing okay. Yeah, he's a Groot, Groot's doing okay. So then he says... Uh, you think I'm stupid? And it's, it really feels like the film's getting pretty damn serious. It's like, yeah, I guess this is it. Yeah, the realization that she is... really does believe you're a stupid person, which sucks to hear from a friend. And she says yes, and walks up to him, says forget. And he says, ha! You're lucky I was able to open that door with my incredible strength. And that's it. Damn. Oh, oh, oh boy. Uh, this is like dab, um, dab, dab. oh geez. it's really bad Ooh. oh this hit my soul so bad oh, this <laughs> is, we're in depths of despair we had maybe one of the best little exchanges in the movie maybe between the guardians of all time and they purposefully decided it wasn't an accident. They wrote the script, the actors acted it, it went through post, and they put it into a finalized product that was distributed into theaters across the world. They completely and totally undid it. You know what? Once a fucking get we've got as a fix, literally just chop out that bit. And I yep. actually love the ending of that scene, being that he acknowledges that they all think he's fucking stupid. And then he goes, Ha! You're lucky I was able to open that door with my straight. Like he's being like, "All right, let's move on. We're moving on. We're just moving on." Yeah, I still I have, don't like the idea that they I just. Have, um, I still don't like the idea that they just concluded that, that they. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm saying stupid, we could but, even try and mend yes. it by cutting a line out, just a line. Yep. But uh, yep. yeah, no, not the ending. I was fucking looking for with that, and that's it. That never gets brought up ever again. Nope, because mm. why would it? Because it never happened for Drax. That ex but that experience and that, that growth. she could make that choice. It's so yeah, fucked I mean, up. No, you don't do get we, to know that. Look, do we have to go through the layers of why this? Do we is just a, talk about how fucked that Do it. Thing? Go through all the layers. Hmm. All right, let's start with the perpetrator of this horrific crime uh, against humanity, uh, Mantis. And storytelling. So. First off, we have the callback to the original time uh, earlier in the movie where she said, no, we don't do that sort of things to friends. Um, it's one thing to do little things like a, like a little, oh, remember you make you fell in love with that napkin or whatever it was? Like, yeah, that, that's a joke, and he knows about it, and he knows that it is what it is. That's compartmentalized into being a little fun thing that they did. Uh, we can talk about that later. But there is a huge difference between that and essentially erasing someone's memories. Because when you do that, like a, a person is their memories, essentially. Um, their experiences are kind of who they are. To wipe someone's memory is essentially to kill a person and to, and, and to put a blank slate in their place. Um, and that's a very, very serious thing. Um, memories are very, um, they're very core to who you are as an agent. And so to take that away is to, like, destroy a part of someone's, you know, destroy a part of who they are in the same way that you, you like, cutting off someone's leg, in a sense. Have you, um, um, but arguably worse. Of the four of us here, has, have we seen Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind? Rags, you have, right? Yeah, no, that's I the, um, that. I have. Uh, that's the Jim Carrey? Yeah, oh, we watched it together, didn't we? I think. We did. It was a long um, time ago. I but... love that movie, and it's specifically for the very uh, things it's talking wait, about. Wait, did you not hear me? I haven't seen it. I didn't say anything. 
Uh, he I, just said I, he loves I, that movie. I was, wor- I was worried that you were about to ramp up it's, to a spoiler because you didn't. Fringy said was fair. Fringy, Fringy said was fair. Just being cautious. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil yeah. it. I wouldn't spoil it to people in chat. It's one of the best okay. movies. It's up there. Yes. Oh, yeah. um, All right. Well, it regards memory and uh, it, the points it makes about it are fucking beautiful. And if you need to understand why this is such an upsetting scene, go watch that movie first, <laughs> and then you can have maybe an easier understanding of it. I don't know. Um, it's. So it, it's not just to collectively right. choose for somebody else, like what that what they get to like actually believe and know about themselves. Like when you say it in front of them, yeah, you're like not... oh shit, that was a little bit too far. Get rid of that. Remember, like the episode of Rick and Morty with Morty's mind blowers. Like that was fucked. That was the point of like yeah, though, no, just like completely manipulating and screwing with Morty's mind to remove in- instances, of, like as much as just Rick getting embarrassed. Because he said you shouldn't take things for granted, and he decided to delete that memory. It's like you, you can't be doing that to other people. The abusive. It isn't just the the ethics of destroying someone's personhood. There is the lingering element of um, the fact that yeah, there's obviously like the the property element of this isn't your thing to take away. Uh, that's mine. My memories belong to me. They they are mine. Uh, even if our memories obviously over time will not align. Uh, perfectly, because our memories, you know, work different, but that, that's still mine. My version of what happened is, is still my own. It's in my head. Um, and then there's also the more existential dread that comes along yeah. with you are working alongside someone that you know has the ability to erase memories in such a way that you will never know that the memory was erased. So, you it is, it is you whim. are operating, yeah, you are operating on a trust system that this person is not going to do that to you and has not done that to you in the past. But it is has. purely based off of trust. Yep. Nebula in the future could tell Drax that she did that. I'm I, I, sorry. That's dire. Like, and that's if, catastrophic. Like, imagine someone came to you and said, yeah, your, uh, your, your guy there, your, your friend of many years that you uh, go on all these adventures with. Turns out, I just want to let you know this, um, they, they told me not to tell, but I'm, I'm doing it. Uh, there was like a whole four hour period that you don't remember because she erased your memory. And we had a big conversation about like what she thinks about you and what I think about you and all that sort of thing. And like that would freak me the fuck out um, because you wouldn't know if that was the only time because obviously you can't remember. You can't remember the thing that was stolen from you. Um, and that was not hers to steal. That's Drax's mind. Which is something she made clear at a point yeah. in this movie. That but I guess we're fucking forgetting that. About it. So, uh, There's something the, the... extra baffling about the fact that she acknowledges that it's wrong earlier in the movie only to do it. And that the yep. movie... Seems it, it. I think the most troubling part, ethically, is that the movie seems to think. Well, actually, in this case, it probably was the right thing. I think to do. so. It's fucking no, I it actually wasn't. Think so. No, it wasn't. It, was it, it looks like um, the movie is in is, favor of this move, which sucks. This it is a uh, this is a yeah. character assassination. Is what this is called. Yep, Mantis did not Mantis. leave this movie unscathed. Oof. She is. Uh, she is no longer. Uh, she's no. She she has dropped many tears in our tier list. For characters oh One dude this kind of is... shit really fucks with me like like what a piece of shit you are <laughs> like to do something like that to somebody and just be like yeah well i know better like i know what's because best for him it reduces drax down purely... to a fucking like action figure he's not a person anymore yeah, yeah. It, oh yeah he's for stupid and he makes us laugh and any time that he gets upset about the things that i might have said to him just whoop, god I'll erase his fucking yeah. memory so so he, just he took it pretty well guy. too honestly he, he did take it fairly well that was that was the opportunity yeah. you have him talk about how he's like listen like i know like i like i know but maybe i've gone a bit too far in some places like i understand i just it could be the first time ever that he actually says something from the heart very genuine and very intelligent emotionally it could be acknowledging the fact that he often is trying to have fun because this world is harsh and he just you know sometimes it goes too far something along those lines just anything he um, acknowledges that he knows and he just doesn't like to think about it or like he knew like he, he knows that his wife didn't marry him for his intellect or like there's a part of him that recognizes it but you know it, you know he kind of deals with it in his own sort of way i mean i it would be like 
I, I don't know. Just the... never take things for granted. That's true. Never take things for granted, including like your own capacity to remember your oh, life. Plus, oh, and plus, um, I almost called her Gamora too. Nebula should be fucking terrified now. Oh yeah. yes, she doesn't respond yeah. to me either. Nebula is like, oh, you know what? Fuck, this could be. You know what? Do I you got just do this. An is this a thing you do? I think it's worse, Rags. I got, I got a little inkling of this. I'd have to rewatch it many times to decide. Yeah, but I got a, I got an inkling. This might have happened before. I wonder with how quickly and defensively and reflexively yeah. she did it. Ne I Nebula doesn't even seem to care. Like it's something it, they yeah, do with it, Drax it, all the it's time. Drax is mind blowers. Is what it's this is. It's, There's going to be an episode me, of the Guardians of the Galaxy it where Drax to no end. Drax is all actually like he's just their little toy. Yeah, he's, he's a person. There him, he's, he's there to person. make them laugh and to he's break open doors. He's part of the team. He's and part of the he, team. Yeah, if he starts to get uppity, you know, emotionally or anything, then we just tap him and he goes back to being a good boy. So we, we, we shout at him and let him know we think he's stupid and useless, and then we erase it so that he doesn't have the damage from it emotionally. But we get to have the yeah. satisfaction of having said it to him. It's, yeah, we get, like to, we, bottle, that's we get to layer. unbottle our feelings. We get yeah. to do that. But That's another layer to... that, like, in addition to everything else, she does it after saying, yes, I do think you're stupid. Not mm. before. Which would be, not, not that either is good, but you know what I'm saying, right? It's like, ugh. I, I, I want to I wanna say that, like, there are a lot of things about the character work in this movie that uh, the movie successfully fooled me into thinking was actually better than it actually is. But this was not one of them. This is the one in the theater. That I was like, holy oh, fuck. Yeah, can't this believe is the you one did that. that. You holy can't shit. fool me. Well, so no, I, they fooled me on Gamora. I was like, oh, that's what Gamora's like now. Sure. But, you know, on closer inspection, not really. But this one, holy crap. I want some extra bad news. Um, that flight I took to India. Check out the movie, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. When you're uh, just enjoying that moment, because uh, it's so good and fun and everything, the the audience are laughing. Wait, really? Because no one was laughing in the theater for that yep. moment for me. If you pop over to India, people, people, laughed, people laughed think... at that one. Yeah, people laughed at that one. But I was fucking really depressed hearing kind of that shit. About Holy it. shit! When yeah, uh, I, that's I, like I could... even worse in the sense that well, at least Drax isn't a real person, but these are people who just watch this terribly abusive thing happen, and it's funny. It's... I'm like, no. I, I think I think that it's just a matter of like sit down and think about what's happening. You know, like if you just mm -hmm. oh yeah, fun fun like uh, you know like mind trickery, haha. <laughs> but like. I, dude, wasn't it? I, I know everybody hates the film, Dark Phoenix. That was like a big plot point that like Charles had fucked up because he'd locked up the memories of uh, Jean from her childhood. Like that was well, considered that... a bad thing that she had done. That he had done. Yeah, they they have like... the same beats in X Men Three as well. They talk about how he yeah, fucked with their mind. Where they judge him for that harshly, yeah. as they should, because it's not that's not his right. Well, and it's such great so, drama and, and, and because in most cases, he's actually making a choice that he believes like. Will save lives. Yeah, like save, he's save his really life and the, and the world. There's exactly. a reason ethically for him to and do it. Still, like, it is... and still, it's like, dude, you know, like even then, it's like, is that your choice to make? Like, do you have the right to make those kinds of calls? Like, even those films, those bad films, like <laughs> acknowledge, <laughs> they got acknowledge that, part, that right? as like yeah. an important, uh, as an important uh, plot point. As you can tell, this annoyed us. This yep. is yeah. this is like the. I don't think I've ever seen a more efficient way to ruin a really wonderful scene so quickly. Uh, it's dramatic, isn't it? Yeah. It from, is. From right to, oh god. It's, it's just this a... sharp turn off a bridge into the fucking abyss. <laughs> <laughs> off you go. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's like running into a brick wall because jumping off a cliff would take too long. Like the, the fact that That's it just fair, yeah. oof, happens, it's really, it really bugs me. What's um, wrong, dude? Like, yeah, this is like the, the one two punch of all the people dying on the planet, and then this is like those happen like right after each other, and I'm like, God damn, fuck. Um mm -hmm. oof. So Mantis. Oh man. <sighs> yeah. And yeah, Mantis is destroyed, unfortunately. And with um, Nebula, as far it's as... like, hmm, you know, you shouldn't be passively accepting this, I would say. Yeah. Nebula is definitely we got issues here. But I think there's issues for all of them at this point. There's all been there's yeah. been chips at their intelligence, like all of them. Um, mm -hmm. Gamora's out, and Mantis is out. Uh, yep. The um at the beginning, I was I was telling Molly this uh, when we talked briefly before uh, it was last night, and I said, 
I, I, I really question the creative decision to keep Rocket essentially out of this film for a huge chunk of it. And now I'm like, man, they just put you in, they just like froze you in they carbonite. They insulated him. They insulated yeah. him. Yeah. From, you're, uh, you're in a little, uh, you're in a little, in a little sleep island. pod. Yeah. It's nice they just safe from the insanity. put you in stasis for a bit. <laughs> so, like, wow. I saw just highlighted, to be fair, real Gamora is safe and dead in Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> kind of yeah real gamora is a great character and she, it's the same as what happened with well it was what happened with black widow until black widow the film yeah where it's like oh you're nice and safe you know not being in this universe anymore but it's like we can always go back <laughs> we can always we can and always by the way, add like, new history it's not a small amount of damage on drax the whole like you know abandoning rocket and uh Beating up that guy for example, no, that, like, and not that, caring. That's a that's pretty bad. Uh, and then of course it's hard to even get a read on who he is when it's like, what does he even remember about his life Ugh. at this point? How many versions I, I of forget. him never got the chance to be? It was either metal or meme yesterday said that like, is that the reason he's stupid now? Because they keep wiping his memory oh my so God. much. Totally. Every time he learns something, <laughs> well, they, like, they, oh, blame yeah, him. they blame him for that as well. Like, yeah, you're stupid. Nothing to do with me though. Do we need to take out the trash? Oh, fuck, well, it's, I'll just make Drax think that Dude, it's he forgot. forgot. Mor it's Morty's mind blows, but except they don't realize it's bad. Jeez. It's, oh, wow. damn. We can move on to a good and scene And all now. for one, <laughs> one joke, for one yeah, little joke. Yeah, for a joke. Insane. Yeah. So, yeah, yes, I hope we, we got your laughs out of it. A, uh, we do get to move on to a great scene and just sort of, you know... Uh, get past that. So they're uh, panicking over getting the passcode in and to obviously activate the med kit to save Rocket, but he's having a moment in the the other verse in the Heavenlands. Yep. He's uh, he's having that moment in movie stories where they do the thing of you're, you're near death and you're in a white room and you're talking to someone. They do that a lot in movies. I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if it'll happen in real life to us someday. Any of us, you know, we're on, we're on that in the white room talking to Morgan Freeman or something, I'll see, right? I'll see, I like a, it. <laughs> I see a Drax who's, like, wearing a lab coat, and he's, <laughs> he's like, a, a, a very intelligent, and he's like, yeah, I, I was the Drax that never got mind-wiped by Mantis, that fucking whore. So, yeah, I get to be, you know, happy and smart, and I'm actually very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Drax. Would you, and he'd be like, would you like to ascend into the stratosphere? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. Would you like me to unlock all the memories she stole from you? You're like, oh my god. Um, so yeah, uh, he sees Lila, and he's like, uh... Well, she says friend, and he says, uh, and again, performance-wise, I'm not gonna be able to sell it unless you watch the scene itself. He says, I'm sorry I let you die. I got you killed. I got everyone killed. Like, oh. Because, um, oh, I don't... Uh, this is a compliment, of course, that I think this all meshes quite well in with Guardians 1 and 2. There's no sense of, like, oh, yes. this is all made up. I can, bu I can buy that this is what James Gunn had on his mind when he was uh, constructing Rocket and... His... And if he, if he didn't have it on his mind, he laid down all of the groundwork he needed to make this the case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Set up the idea that there's a tragic backstory and something that he deeply regrets. Um, and why and he pushes can... people away, you know? Why yeah. Why is he uh, so difficult to form friendships? Why does he care so much, so, so deeply invested in Groot, you know, for instance? Mm -hmm. It's like, it all, it all makes sense. It's all really good. Like, good writing. Great performance. Um... Yeah, she says, uh, you were right, the sky is beautiful and it is forever. She says, can I come? She says, yes, but not yet. Still have a purpose here. Now, this is all intercut with uh, them struggling to, you know, get the code in and stuff. It's a very uh, well, dramatic this is, scene. Uh, this is some good it's just weird. I... acting here as well. Yeah, this is incredible Chris Pratt acting. Um, and one thing that I think is... I was really, I you know, I was really with uh, Raccoon. I really thought he was great character. Uh, thought he, I was hoping he'd make it out of this unscathed. But when he decided that he didn't want to be resuscitated because of all the ra Raccoon racism in the world, it that's was a, a little. That's not even something they'll get. That's not out yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, fucking <laughs> never. Uh, hmm, that's a that's a reference to the future, everyone. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so, what what I would say is that um. I'm not sure. I think, I think I prefer in the scene 
like in the scene where he's there with Lila, that there's a little bit more emphasis placed on the friends that he has who are, you know, still alive and uh, and need to get back to them to know what's happened and make sure they're okay. I feel like I'd want a little bit more of that in that scene. Just to emphasize, like in the sense of, oh, you know, your work's not done yet. It's like, because you got, you know, you got new friends that need help. Like, you can help them. You know, you have the capacity to help them and you should. Like, just because, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think I yes. would have liked it if there was a but little bit more on that. Do you think that's not the subtext of that you still have a purpose? Well, uh, well I mean, I know that's what I'll it read, means. But... I'll just read out what, what is said and then you can go from there. So, okay. She, sure. says, she says, you still have a purpose. He says, a purpose for what? They made us for nothing. Just stupid experiments to be thrown away. And she says, there are the hands that made us, and then there are the hands that guide the, those hands. Um, she says, this story has been yours all along. You just didn't know it. Um, so, that, that's, this, this is actually a bit of a tangent from that point, but now that that's on my mind, that line, this story was yours all along, like, as a meta line, Look, all right, I, I like Rocket a hell of a lot. Guardians 1 and 2, Peter is the main character of those films. Yeah. I was saying um, I really enjoy about this movie that it isn't the Peter Quill show. I do, well, that's what I, because I, I, I want focus, but, but like to say that it was his story all along, it's like, it wasn't, and that's fine. That's okay, but it wasn't. Like, Peter yeah, is the main character. I agree, yeah. he's, he's got yes. the most poignant, like, payoffs in Guardians 1 and 2. Though, though, Rocket's got some pretty poignant ones in those ones as well. Yeah. But, like, uh, I, mean, I don't think anyone was under any illusions. It, it, the opening scene for Guardians 1 is how he gets kidnapped, right? And then the ending yep. scene is him opening the gift from his mum, right? Yep. And then so, the like, opening scene for Guardians 2 is the flashback to Ego and his mum. Like, yeah. you know, and then I that's all about Ego and the middle line at all, really. I, I, I felt like it was more her trying to convince him that, like, that he's that he has that there's a story for him that he's not I, just I, a pointless go ahead um i feel like you'd say something different than that so i was actually um, going to make a just, complaint about how that line doesn't really feel right other than meta yeah because because um, th th this was your story all along doesn't feel like an apt response to i have no story no it you're, feels th the story was yours all along it's like well, what do you mean i don't think i have one right you know what i mean like it's kind of a it, it feels like it's not quite the uh, the right response. The uh, the idea, if someone said this is your story, this was your story all along, it feels like it has selfish undertones. Um, this is a, your story all along, uh, which means I don't, I don't know if I'd go that. I don't know if I'd go that. Far. Well, that's what I'm saying. Let's. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Undertones. Um, I think that there is this idea that you can that can be read as like this is your story. Um, there is, and, and maybe it's because I'm operating under, there's another Disney product where, um, in the, in the final episode, episode eight of this show, there is a character who does actually have virtually the only sort of character growth and change that exists, but he gives up his ability or his chance to do a heroic thing or to act heroically to someone else so that that person can do it. And he says, this isn't my story. Essentially, this is your story. Um, yeah, this has always been your story. Um, and that, in, in it just, uh, it, it really doesn't sit well with me. Um, I know it's a different thing, but that's kind of what I'm, it's, just, it's another Disney show. And I'm just like, hmm, this line is, I don't, in Guardians I don't... 1, the opening scene, the part where Star-Lord tells Rocket not to touch his present, and the part where he finally opens it are all tacked on, they are Ooh. essential. That's like the- no. What? Like the whole- They're like foundational. What are you even... talking about, man? I... You're crazy. I... <laughs> <laughs> can't talk about Guardians 1, we haven't got enough time. No, uh, we so... can't, we don't have enough time. So, um, what he says is, he, like, he's he's- He's like, I've got no purpose. Why can't I just be with you guys? There's nothing for me to go back to, sort of thing. So the response that this story has been yours all along, uh, it really doesn't line up to me at all. I don't see what she's trying to tell him in the context of those two and the life that they shared together and the life he has now. In the the only thing I could think of, if I was to try and defend it, is like, it. Th this was your story. It wasn't like the high evolutionaries, like you're not defined by the high evolutionary. That's so, like the best that I could imagine. I, I think that's kind of what I'm trying to get at is I want a line 
that's different to this uh, that this could mean what he was going for, but I, I don't, I don't sure. get quite as strongly with this. So if she did say yeah. like you're not defined by what made you or something like that, or your purpose isn't drawn from your creator or your something that relates to his journey that's a little bit more than your this has been your story all along, I really don't get what she's saying. And if she was to explain it to me, I'd probably be like, oh, why did you say that? Yeah. Why didn't you say well, something? Yeah, something along the lines of you know that, or like just tell him he already knows. Something that the way... one of the reasons why I think it's a meta line as well is because of the ending. That's that's partially what informs me believing it's a meta line too. What happens yeah. right at the end? Sorry, I interrupt you. Go ahead. No, I agree with you. I I think what I'm doing in my head when I'm interpreting the line in a way that is more fitting is just like writing a line that I would prefer instead. So I think you're right. No, I, I mean, yeah. It, it's kind of a, it's, it's, at oh, best, wait. it's clunky. So I guess there's an element of, uh, so does any of this get changed or do new interpretations get added to the pool of possibilities with a context of this is essentially his subconscious talking to himself? I was operating on that assumption the whole time. Uh, okay. Well, so, yeah. I, I don't believe he's got a connection to heaven and he's speaking to it directly. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess the problem, I don't know how it works in the Marvel Universe, because you've got the oh, Ancestral Plane. I guess you're right, plane. there's like fucking you've got, 17 uh, whatever, heavens. Moon Knight went to kind of like the afterlife as well in his <laughs> show. Um, there's like, there's there's a few different configurations, and of course Valhalla, Valhalla. Right? that's a place too. There's like there's several like afterlife. Cyborg so Otter is in Valhalla with <laughs> the maybe, like, I don't know, maybe right? that's what it means. I, I like, don't know, you're... like that might actually be like what's going yeah. on. <laughs> Like I, I think, think that like souls are exist in the Marvel universe. Yes, so they do. Does it go someplace, or is it like one. the flame when a candle goes out? Like what? Well, what happens just, you know, here? I will say one? whether or not, like, like, if they actually came out and confirmed this was a brief connection to heaven where he spoke to her directly, I would. I think I have still the same commentary both ways. Sure, yeah, but like, essentially it it can, it can work both ways, and sort of there's obviously ambiguity there on purpose. Didn't die in battle. She totally did. She just didn't know it was happening. <laughs> it counts. Um, uh, dying in during an escape is like uh, it's it's like dying in battle, kind of. They were in a fight for their lives. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you uh, you know, what what starts to happen is that he's uh, he's actually reached the end of his ability to stay alive before the passcode thing has been uploaded. So he's gonna have to die, and uh. Uh, Gamora starts saying he's gone, gone, and then Star Lord's like, "I am not letting him go," and starts doing CPR. Now, this to me uh, felt just like they've done this payoff in movies like ten quadrillion times, and um, there are times where I think it can work better than others. Um, as much as I hundred percent appreciate the acting here, this one just doesn't line up to me. The idea that the fucking high-tech machines are telling you that he's done so, but you applying bouts of pressure to his heart to restart it is what's gonna get him going. Like, don't you have, I don't know, mechanical shit for that? Wait, so, question. Is it made clear... I know this all happens rather quickly and they're cutting back and forth, but is it made clear that him doing the chest compressions is actually what brings him back? I figured it was. What else would it be? What else could it be? Well, the other thing unless would it, be... Unless it is just Rocket's will to live, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, that's sort of the other hmm. side of it, because she says, but not yet, right? And so, I mean, if we assume this is all his subconscious, that's him. I suppose the problem, the difficulty there is that you they have a hard and fast mechanical rule with the uh, the, the kill switch and the code. That it's like is is like his willpower enough to overpower something that has been throughout this whole film, just like this hard fundamental like mechanic that works in this very specific way. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I'm not sure. Thematically, it works. I don't know about mechanically. Mm. Anyway, he lives. Yep. Yay! And there's oh, a, yeah. I quite like the little hug. Nice. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's really nice. Though um, I will say, I think uh, by this point, I was because while the scene was playing out, I was wondering if they were actually potentially going to kill Rocket as uh, like a. I, I think at this point, I was like, "Look, all right, you you did you did the thing with uh 
with um Drax, all right? But what if what if you were really subversive and the whole quest was about trying to save Rocket and then you failed? Like, wouldn't that be crazy? Well, that's the thing. At this point. Um, they even... I, I mean, I'm trying not to be a downer here, but, like, they kind of did it again. They said he was dead. And then it's like, no, he's not. And he's alive. Which, um... Well, the thing is that if they hadn't tried to do it with Drax earlier, um... That I think that they would have had more of an ability to do it this time, you know? Like another sort of fake out. Um... But, yeah, I get what you mean. I don't know if this is a really comparable fake out. It's honestly. not as bad as the Drax no, this, one, but it's, this one's, it's still this one's way better. This is one that they do in films a lot, a lot of stories. Yeah, the, yeah. The, no, you have to. I'm South Park parodied it, right? You <laughs> have and, to uh, live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With Kyle, you know, you gotta. <laughs> no, come on, Kyle. <laughs> He's specifically doing resuscitation, like again, you know, like the compressions. Yeah. And you often get them doing <laughs> it's like trope. They'll do the compare, but they're like insane, like fucking they punching them. They start punching, you know? Yeah. Well, well dude, I mean, Carpenter pretty sure does. <laughs> like, that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah, well, and in defense of it, you actually like do need to ago. do really hard chest compressions. That's like, true. Real but... CPR is kind of hard to watch. But hey, like, man, they say, they say on the chest. if you break a rib, if you bust a sternum, man, it's better than being dead. Yep. Mm. Um. So something happens, and uh, I feel this is just sneaks in there, and it I don't know if you guys can consider this bad or not, but we'll see. So, uh, you have Rocket saying, where's Nebula? And of course, he's saying it because he can see that she's trying to contact them. He sees it on like a little notification thing, so he's like... He's basically just saying, where is she that she's contacting us? Why isn't she here? Quill interprets him as just asking where she is in general. And because of everything that's happened, Quill says, she's... Uh, he's preparing to say she's dead. <laughs> I can't fucking believe that you're telling me that Peter Quill has come to terms with the fact that Nebula, Drax, and Mantis are all fucking dead. Yeah, yeah that's, un that's, that's unreal. Just, yeah, that's just something that happened. Like, <laughs> they that's try unreal. to skip past it because they go like, oh, yeah. they're fine. It's like, oh, great. But it's like, you thought they were dead? You actually thought that? Really? Hmm. You took that pretty fucking well. Like <laughs> yeah, you did. You did take that pretty well. You're, uh, wow, you are more. Uh, yeah, wow. Did not like that. Did not appreciate that. Quill, Didn't what are you like doing, it. buddy? And the reason why was because James Gunn knew that they were all fine. So, yeah. you know, why would you? Why would you have him? You know, freak it out or anything? They're fine. And he has to like. Kind of Activate something to let Nebula contact him, which makes no fucking sense at all. Why isn't she just on Why the comms? It be an open line, yeah. They always have yeah, it that, that they're just on. Sense. Yeah. And it's funny because that would fix the fucking problem. You just have her say, Quill, I'm fine. Get out of there. I, I just don't get it. Why'd you create this? Cre like, the amount of times this film has shot itself in the foot. Yeah. yeah. And easily yeah. avoidable. Yeah. Um, uh, and then this, this is what I mean, it's just fucking yanking me in every direction, and then they do a thing where they're all talking on the thing, and then, and then Rocket says the important thing is that we're all okay, and that's the first thing they've heard from him, since he's back up, and, like, they all, like, pause, uh, obviously Mantis, yeah. uh, Nebula, and Brax, and I was just like, ah, oh, that's, that's nailed. Good. That's a, that's a good, yeah, that's a good moment. So anyway, they get captured. <laughs> Wait, before we before we continue, because the, the the more I think about it, is part of the problem with this movie more so the the jarring shift, uh, like less so the jarring shift in tones, and rather than the jarring shift in quality, is that more? Um, from I'm more... completely honest with you, I feel like this jarring shift we're talking about is like. Two 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 three two 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 three two nine two three two three two nine two three 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 two two. Well, that's two. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Right? But like, that so, like overall the doesn't of... make me say like, "Oh, we got a bit of a back and forth." I'm like, "No, this is a disaster." <laughs> okay, <laughs> you you know hear what I'm saying? I'm talking about yeah, like you know the rock. <laughs> Sorry, like the rocket stuff. His backstory, you know, that's a decent bit of the film, and we've most for the most part said it's really good. I don't know how much I was... When you say decent bit of the film, what percentage are you thinking about? It's... 
I don't actually, I don't know the number. I only saw it once. I haven't looked at well, it. Well, I'm, not, I'm not trying to corner you. What I'm trying to say time. is that it's small. Okay. Do you understand what I'm actually asking? Because it's because I'm I'm well aware that quite a bit of it is piss. I'm asking <laughs> if you think the the problem is less so a shift in tone than a shift in quality between some of the highs and the lows. Um, I think a lot of the shift in tones might be almost like a result of the some of the decisions they make plot wise. It's kind of difficult. Yeah, to that's say, what I'm saying. Because you know, like our discussion on um the mantis thing that fucking annihilator a lot of people were laughing at that and that makes me think like do i categorize that then as also like a tonal fuck up like because it's supposed i was treating it as a really sad and meaningful scene and i'm supposed to be laughing apparently i don't even know yet i still don't, i'd love to know what james uh gun thinks i should be feeling at that point because yeah, i would that, i wouldn't describe that as a failure of the tone i'd describe that as a failure of i never would have known writing. i never would have known that was supposed to be funny unless i uh saw the scene with people laughing at it um, you real no, that was obviously meant. To I be never no, it's, uh, genuinely, I never would have known it was supposed to be funny. Uh, Me neither. Okay, okay, because like I definitely thought that that would be in the Marvel, like in the Marvel humor world, I read that as a joke. I just think it sucks, and then it's terrible in terms of character. I thought um, that what we're going for is it's better for Drax not to know because he'll be a happier man for it, and isn't that guess, kind yeah. of like a the sad, reason why, sad reality? The reason why I read it as a joke is because of him going, ah, like doing his typical Drax like laugh, where you know, to be uh, funny. I saw that as them being like, "Look, there's the Drax you know, and how do we get there? We erase the the pressures, the harsher stuff, and it's like, isn't that?" <laughs> yeah. Like a, yeah. it's like a sad reality of a happier scenario, which I fucking no, hate. And, and that's the thing, right? Because if that were seen, if that was in Act One, and Nebula was like shocked as fucked in the scene, and then you know we have her tell, you know, basically we just develop it. And <laughs> I need to skip to the end of this. What I'm trying to say is that it's an arc for Mantis to realize what she's doing is fucking horrible. Um. Yeah. You know, we, if we'd done it that better. way, that'd have been something. But the problem is, yeah. that if the film doesn't even seem to recognize how bad it is, you can't do that. Yeah. So yeah. Um. To come back to your question, then, Cab, you're just like trying to figure out if my tonal complaints are more so informed by just dips and rises in quality. Yes, that's the question. Because James Gunn doing certain things in an incompetent way are, are giving me uh, feelings of like. You re when I should be experiencing comedy, and that can register then as a tonal complaint instead of a writing quality complaint. Is that what we are? Um, that's what I'm asking you. Um, because I guess what I'm circling back to is that uh, there are there are some really high highs. They're few and far between. The more we go through it, for sure. But I think the jarring shift, because because what we just demonstrated is that we go from oh, this is actually a really good scene, and this is actually one of the worst scenes I've ever seen. You know. <laughs> And that whiplash, I feel like, is much more of a... Because I, I, I don't buy the tonal complaints being the central issue, is I guess what I'm saying. I don't think I would label that as a central issue. Um, if I did, I'd change my mind. Um, the central issue is bad writing. Well, yeah. I was, I was going to yes. say, but maybe I should be more specific than that. Like, is it character? Is it plot? Is it will? Is it tone? Is it blah, 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 blah? And it's like, um, for me... Like, world-building errors, I can wash away if the characters are amazing. If the characters are fucked, I was, I was like, so I may as well just skip to the end and say, yeah, character issues are my main problem with this film. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I've come around to most so far. We're not done, but being more of a problem than I was initially convinced of after watching it the first time. I think yeah, that... Cause... Go ahead. Figuring out the consequences of these, like, plot issues on character is kind of tricky, or at least it can be tricky. Mm -hmm. It kind of, it's like, it's almost like you got to try and run through it all, like, in order to sort of see how they, like, stack yeah. up. You um, got to think about it, because of the way the movie is paced and how it does sort of try to do really dark things and then really funny things. It's It's hard to... What I'm it's saying is the film is pretty go. successful at fooling people, myself included. I, I think that I think that people remember the big emotional payoffs, like those scenes. Yeah. But the work that goes into doing it is like that's I, I think that that's uh, more easily lost, both in terms of when it's really good and when it's bad. Um, that because yes. you always remember the big important payoffs, but like the groundwork, how you got there, is so important.
Indeed. Well then, let us continue. We're uh, at the third act now, right? Pretty much. Yep. So, like I said, he captures Nebula, Drax, and Mantis, and he contacts Quill to say, uh, he says something I can't remember, but the important thing is, Quill does say in, res uh, in response to him, you sick son of a bitch, you killed all those people. And it's like, thank you. Yep. It's, um, it's, that that's it. The, that's it now, but that's, that's still... That's the end. Yeah. That's yep. the that's, end of the yeah. acknowledgement, but it's something. 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 Um, and then he says, uh, you know, Nebula, Drax, Mantis, they're all going to die unless you bring me what is mine. Uh, being Rocket. So that's going to set us up the the stakes, I guess. Uh, then we cut over to Kraglin, because Quill's contacted him for help. And uh, the scene ends with another, you know, the bad dog joke. Uh, you guys find that one to be fun? I think that one also kind of, I don't know, that, that ran for a while. Um, I didn't mind it. I like that. I didn't mind it, yeah. Didn't mind it. I thought it was. I thought it was fine. Um, didn't mind it. It was all right. Uh, I guess it's appropriate for like a dog to want that, you know, recognition, you know, from <laughs> yeah. him. But uh, I, I was really, yeah, it was, yeah, it's all right. It's fine. I was just like, mm. yeah. sort of. It was just happening. I was like, yeah, can't complain. I guess uh, could have been better. I suppose. So, with uh, good old High Revolutionary, he's talking about how his um, his new batch all have incredible abilities, but they're all, they're not, like, uh, authentic. They have rote memorization, and in hundreds of years of our creations, only one has known true invention. Putrid in every other way, but he had that. Talking about Rocket. Because he needs that trait transferred to the new specimens before they move to the new colony. The goal, I suppose, the next attempt. Mm. Um, and then we cut over to good old Nebula, Drax, and Mantis, who have been put in a cell together next to the cells with all of these new uh, specimens. Really strange place to store those guys. Um, yes. Don't know why. In any case... Especially um, when we realize what's around this cage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then Nebula says, You! We need you to tell all the other children to stay away from the starboard walls now. Which is just so fucking absurd. Uh, Drinker's complaint for this movie was the Nebula is too angry. I disagree with him. I thought that she's very reasonably angry in a lot of scenes, but this one I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Why is she shouting at children? What's what's the goal? And you might be like, well, maybe Nebula doesn't understand how to get children to do what you want. I just like, eh, I don't buy it. I just I, I just think this is kind of silly. It's over the top. And it's to set up Drax. That's clearly what's happening. It's like, look how ineffective she is with children. If only someone here were good with children. Drax, you're a father. You were a father. And that's okay, that's we're except, remembering. That, except that they make the contrast to over the top. You know, Nebula. 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 Is, like, Nebula. <laughs> Nebula. She is awful with kids, not just not good. You know what I mean? It's it, it gets cartoonish. It's like you can totally yeah. have it be like really cold, and it'll still work. Mm -hmm. You don't have yeah, to make her exactly. shout at them. <laughs> exactly. Like, okay. Um, and it's it's annoying because I kind of like how Drax talks to him. It's fun. I think he's yeah. I I like this uh, moment. He makes monkey uh, noises. <laughs> I like his ability to you know be able to get along with kids uh, and his enjoyment in that role. You know, being paternal. You know, that kind of sense. I I do like that. Comedy is fucking all over the place. Because for me, when he said, uh, I had a little girl like you and she liked it when I make monkey noises and he starts making like robot noises or beep, beep, boop, boop stuff. And so I was already, I was kind of enjoying it because I was like, that could yeah. be because monkeys in his world make that noise. It could be that he has no idea what a monkey actually is. And he's just, you know, could be any kinds of reason. I'm liking this. But then it cuts to like Mantis and she's like, how is that a monkey? And then it cuts to Good Morning and she's like, beats me. I was like, how about how about you guys be quiet? You just shut the fuck up. Be doing his little monkey robot dance, especially after you stole his memories. All right, like yeah, you can let him do this and have this moment. All right, but I also like think it's just, it's a, it feels like an insecurity again. It's like, isn't it funny that he's making noises that aren't that of a monkey? It's like I yeah, got that. I got it. I get it. Come like, on, James. Uh, the most you ever need is those two to look at each other and be like, yeah, what the fuck? Exactly. We'll get it. I get it. I 
That's a little you know, I, I, most people know what a monkey like what a monkey <laughs> sounds like, and then it doesn't sound like a robot. Okay, most people, most people know that, unless it's a robotic monkey, I guess. So, um, you know how they just decided they'd just fucking arrive at the orgoscope? They just arrive at his ship. They're just there. They're like, hey, um. Yeah, yo. You hope up? they don't have any things that can like disable the ship, capture the ship, surround the ship. Wait, like... we do we skip over the fact that he can speak their language. I know we talked about that earlier because that was in that scene, right? Oh uh, well, yeah. Yeah, the dude what, what, thing. Is there anything else you want to say about it? All right. Well, I mean, yeah. It's, I guess it just bears repeating. He can speak whatever language they can speak, even though as they're, they're meant to be like a new civilization, right? A new species. Like yeah, new, I, don't, I don't get it. New, like well, a new it, type of tension. It's even game. weirder because it's signposted by Mantis in that scene that the translator doesn't work for their language. Yeah. And yet he knows what it is, even though it's presumably never existed before. I the, Are they trying to imply he learned the language real quick? Or <laughs> like, I don't know why, why, why does Rocket speak English, but they don't? Or the, uh, the, the people on uh, Counter Earth? Yes. <laughs> I got oh, well. nothing for that one. I don't know. I think it was just so that we could hold off on this payout, or hold off on this payoff for a little bit longer, and then it can happen. And I think that's it. Mm. Um, and it's then... Another one that doesn't feel necessary, because I feel like you could, like, if they spoke English, Nebula could still try to convince them of something, but they're scared of her. Yeah, and, and then the, Drax can still exactly. It's not just because yeah. he speaks the language; it's because he actually knows what to say, which I think yeah. would make it a little bit more meaningful instead of just his noises are better. It's like yeah. in uh, Aliens when they first find Newt, and it the soldiers is like are that. like, "Listen, little girl, you gotta tell us exactly what happened." <laughs> um, so uh, they arrive, and High Evolutionary is like, "Haha, I'm probably gonna win," and then suddenly. The big skull of nowhere is appearing from a jump point, and it's like crashing through multiple jump points. It's so big, it can't even fit through one normally. I thought that was a fun visual, I guess. Yeah, it's a fun visual, it's just that big, mm -hmm. you know? It just goes through the jump point and kind of, it's just... And I guess they're know, like, I, I like right it. between two jump points, because they, they came out of one as well. Um, I'm willing to believe there must be jump points fucking everywhere, I'm guessing. I'm not sure how they work they exactly. They all over the place. I just prefer them to... I, like light speed, but never say that to me. Never. Just do the jump. Uh, points. Oh, like even though Captain Marvel had the jump points anyway. Yep, she had them. <laughs> You're just used. They to... were in it. That's what Ronan used to get there. But then yep. they go at light speed, which is much slower. Uh, those jump points. Um. So yeah, uh, something I realized at this point, I probably should mention it earlier. Gamora's told nobody that Adam Warlock is in the ship. Remember him? <laughs> Why? Everyone? Yeah. Remember him? Why? He's in this movie. Oh, that guy who tried to kill, like, you guys. Who, the reason that was, put Rocket yeah. into this situation? Yeah, that, he's, no. he's just in the ship. Correct me if I'm wrong. She knows nothing about Adam Warlock other than he burst into the place, he, like, got in the way of her fight with Warpig and killed it, and then was looking for Rocket, ran out, and then ran back in. That's her context for him in total? Right? I think? Unless they told her about it. I think that's what she knows. Maybe they did. I'm in that sure case, why, why did she, like... Do you understand how much this is? There's this, this so much information that's not properly understood as to who knows what. She puts him downstairs and covers him in, like, stuff to keep him in prison, basically. So she knows that he's hostile, but she also doesn't tell anyone about it. But she keeps him alive and in the ship. Yeah, that's a little what bit... What the uh, fuck is going on? I, Why is this not important? Internet. You should be rushing to tell everyone, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, that guy, he's here, gold man's here. Genuinely feels like James Gunn was like, well, we gotta get him into the final act as well, so what if we have it that, like, he's he's incapacitated but on the ship, so Gamora takes pity and so she puts him in there, but, but she'll she'll wrap him up real good. So that it's like an attempt to stop him from like trying to kill him when they wake up. It's like, but James, if she knows that, then she's gonna have to ward the fucking shipmates. I'm surprised that there they didn't just like notice. It took a lot of time to do. Yeah, with that, whether you could be yelling or something. Where's that critter? Oh, it's by Adam. I, I feel like if they walked through the rooms and they're just like, the fucking Adam Warlock is here, and she's just like, yeah, I um, yeah. 
There he is. What would they do if they'd known? They'd probably throw him out in space, right? He'd probably like, probably. what the hell's going on? Well, they got Nebula to I chop would. into his head this time. <laughs> Tell Mantis Shoot, to fuck around head. with him. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but the only purpose for that is to bring him into the third act. That is the fucking exclusive Yeah, for all of his amazing payoffs, That's it. we need to have him here. Uh, logistics are hard when writing a story sometimes. Sometimes you sometimes. just gotta fuck it and just do whatever you want. Yeah, they're here now. Or if you're James Gunn, just the whole time. You just gotta fuck it and do whatever just... you want. So, um, High Evolutionary panics, and he sends out, like, a thousand of, say they were called Hell or something? Right? Hellspawn? Hell Hell Is that what they call them? Something like um, that. Sends them out into the, the ships from Rocket, uh, Starlord, and Groot, and Nowhere. I thought it was really fucking interesting that they actively are trying to kill Rocket, uh, to the point where they smash through the... I was about to say windscreen, blast shield, whatever it is, the front of what it's called on a spaceship, I guess. Uh, the space screen. They smash right through it and almost kill him. They punch him right in the face, but he just avoids it. First of all, like, no decompression. That does eventually happen. But um, just, just so odd that they've not been given the command to not kill the fucking raccoon. Isn't that, like, the whole goal? Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, yeah, I no, think that so. is the Farther whole goal. He that wants to get Rocket's brain. Abundantly clear. This has been the whole goal for like 14 years, or God even knows how long. Um. Oh, so, uh, he then says, "How open... old is Rocket?" Sorry, I'm just curious. No clue. Do we know that. I don't know. Like, like when the backstory stuff happened. I do too. I'm really well, sorry, as know. I understand it, regular old raccoons don't live very long. Um, well, he's got all sorts so we have to presume that he is not yeah that's what I mean we have to presume yeah. he's not a regular raccoon in which case we have no real point of yeah. reference on that and we have, we have reason to believe that his lifespan would be geared to be whatever um, the high evolutionary would want it to be in a perfect world um, even if the, I, which potentially means eternal life I don't know um, yeah no clue I've got, I've got no clue he could he could live for another 50 years, and I would be like, well, I, you know, genetics, you know, this experiment, yeah. it's to express purpose of, you know, being perfect in that guy's like, eyes. The longer ago this happened, the more stupid it makes the high evolutionary that he still hasn't looked for or found Rocket. He's famous. He's a I just famous Rocket. You can hire him. You can be like, hey, I got a job <laughs> for you right in this little room. And he comes in and you go, ha ha, gotcha. Put on a I fake mustache a... and glasses, and you're like, ah, gotcha. I had a thought there. Um, it, I don't think it's been really acknowledged very well at all that, like, Rocket was alone with none of the Guardians for a long time. You mean... Like a whole life, before Guardians 1. Oh, right, yeah. No, uh, no I mean, uh, Endgame, that five-year period. Yeah, that's, not, that's never really been properly dealt with either, is it? Rocket was... And Nebula, both of them had a long time without the Guardians. Do you know... That was actually something I was thinking about that made me like the fact that he said, "Where's Nebula?" when he woke up, because my impression mm, he's the was first person he'd think yeah of, that he had a really tight connection together. with it. But no, it's just because he saw his fucking name on the wall. Yeah. Oh. Yep. But we. Okay. Yeah. Dude, and then, well, uh, well, I wonder if the high evolutionary's plans got disrupted by half of the. I wonder if he I wonder if any <laughs> of the people in the stories post Endgame were affected by Endgame. <laughs> it doesn't out, seem nope. like it. Because uh, what what would have happened if I don't know like Adam Warlock or uh, uh, the other lady, you know, in the Sovereign, if they had any impact because of the snap, if that like changed anything in terms of their lives, um, or you know the the Ravagers, what, how were they impacted by the snap? How do the Ravagers feel about the fact that Gamora, dude, Gamora has a bad reputation in the first Guardians? Remember, as soon yep. as she gets in prison, everybody yep. wants to kill her. Are the Ravagers all chill though? Do they know what happened on Earth or what like her involvement was? Would that even matter to them? This fucking series. This is what too I mean. I feel like I remember even... more about the history of this universe that I don't like anymore. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, not even James Gunn can keep this Jenga tower like straight anymore. It's all crumbling. He can't even take like the continuity of one, two, three, let alone the whole MCU. Yep. I mean, how do you even do it? Like you need that's that's such a task. It's hard, but there are writers that have done it, and I'm sorry, they're better writers, okay? <laughs> you don't have to be sorry, it's okay. 
Um, so next, a really dumb thing happens. The oh boy. high evolutionary says, open the pit. Now he's referring to the room that Drax, Mantis, and Nebula are in. He's going to open up the door that separates them from the pit below them. And you might be thinking, like, aren't they his bargaining chips? And that's exactly what his subordinate says. Our bargaining power will be gone. That's not addressed. He just opens it anyway. Literally no response. That's it. Well, no, we need the big action scene, It's actually right? infuriating to me. That's his greatest bargaining chip. All he has to do is say, Star-Lord, since you're not listening to me and you're not handing over Rocket, look at your friend here. It's called, it's called Mantis and Gunshot. Well, not anymore. Now, if you don't do exactly as I say, Drax will be killed next. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Hey, capturing, having people be captured is a really big deal. I know I, it's treated extremely flippantly by shows and everything, but having someone captured and essentially you are at the mercy of someone else and they could use you for negotiations, that's, uh, that's really, it should be very, very impactful on the story. I actually should don't be. understand it at all, and I think it's actually just incredible laziness on the part of James Gunn again. He needs them to meet up with the Guardians at some point. How do they do it? Well, they could break through a wall with giant monsters, and it's like, where would they get what? And it's like, the monsters, they're gonna eat them, they'll make them their friends or whatever. Well, I don't even... This goes well beyond working backwards. Like, I don't even know what you're saying. Why would he drop them into the pit and not tell anyone? He's literally just executing them, but in a really inefficient way. Yep. Yeah, like there's a cage that's next to the kids, and then the cage lifts up, and there's the, the monsters we'll see. And like, what's going on here? Oh, weird. And does does he just not know that Mantis can basically have mind control powers? Does he just not know this? I don't think he does. Because I feel like it should have come up after the Orgo scope sequence. Does that mean Mantis could have touched one of the kids and told them to do to keep away from the from the to do stuff and <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah she could have done that oh that's funny oh, well. <laughs> oh all right well fair enough yeah, well. i'm annoyed at this movie. <sighs> so um yeah that that happens and it's it's just whatever so they land in the in the pit and it's one of those creatures from the beginning of guardians of the galaxy 2 but there's three of them oh uh, which is three really bad is more this time and that's and then, scary yeah, three is more than one, so yeah, it's J.J. Abrams. But I, uh, so something happens here. Um, I clocked it, and a friend of mine has also seen this. This is the first thing he wanted to mention to me. So they fire at Nebula. She's like, whoa, and they fire their rainbow vomit out of here. We saw that in Guardians 2. Then the next shot is an image on a hologram of the spaceship that belongs to the High Evolutionary and it is exploding in several portions of it. And then yep. it shows the subordinate say, my god, or good god, or something. And then it cuts back to Drax, Nebula, and uh, Mantis running around away from those creatures while there's explosions, fire, and now a big hole in the ship. So, from that, I can only conclude that the creatures in the pit just blew several holes open in the ship. Oh, I, uh, I, I guess I, I don't know because it, it seems like what else would have. He seriously just fucking ripped apart his own ship from inside by trying to feed his only bargaining chips to three giant space aliens that he keeps there for some reason. Who have the ability to destroy the ship oh, if they use their attack. It is one of the most... Like, I actively pushed that away from my brain. I was like, there's no way that's what just happened. That's not what just happened. But once the friend asked me, is that what happened? Or was the editing fucked? I was like, oh shit. And I checked it and I was like, oh shit, that's what happened. That's um, Well, that's, that's very, dire. Very, very, very bad. Holy shit. Um... Real fucking weird. It happens quick, and uh, I think it's supposed to be the reason the subordinate betrays him. What, because he destroyed his own ship? I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, you Why? Why would he do any of these things? They're all so stupid. Why? It's so oh, unfair no. because he's such a good actor, and it's such a good motive. Why did you ruin it? Making yeah. him super retarded. Yeah, that's his real superpower. 
Um, yeah, and then we see uh, it's not just rockets. It's um, it's also Star Lord and Gamora's ship. They're flying. Adam Warlock flies in through the front of it, and there's no decompression again. I don't really understand what's happening anymore. I feel like they've given up on the concept of decompression. You guys noticed about that because I uh, I was looking out for little like um, you know like an energy field so it can be like see that's there, but I couldn't see anything. And it's People reaching in from why can the why can the hellspawn survive space? Um, I, I don't I know. Have no I, idea. I just I guess I just chalk that up to their cyborgs or something. They're crazy their... cybernetic space critters. They don't need to breathe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I I'm I guess I'm fine with it. I mean, they're, they they clearly like fly out of the ship and. Attack another ship in a massive horde, I think what's getting so to me I assume is, they're designed for it. Like, if they were strictly robots, I'd be totally fine with it. But the fact that they speak slash breathe makes me think, you know, wait a minute. Um, and the fact that they'd be, they'd be, uh, temperature would fuck them up. You know, high and low. So, yeah. It just, I'm not I, sure I buy it. Vacuum, they, they can, look, alright, shut up. All right, it's fine. It's fine. It it really isn't that high on the list. It's okay. We'll just move that one off. Um, so then Rocket's covered in them, and it's a moment of like, shit, is this it? You're gonna die? And then they play the Guardian's theme as he fucking rams his ship into the big ship to drag all of them off. And I was and also help help me out here. I was very. It looked like they shattered the glass in parts. That's what I've been saying this whole time. Hello. Sorry, I'm tired as well. <laughs> what, I right? said, what I said, Look. there's no decompression. That's why I'm getting angry at. They keep smashing everything, but there's no decompression. Look, all right. Everybody has a Biden moment every now and then, okay? Okay, well, I agree. I, 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 I was annoyed. I don't like it when a ship's fucking hull is breached and there's just no recognition of that. It's like, hello, come on. Yeah, Man. like, that's just ridiculous. Annoying as hell. Um, and yeah, I don't like as well that he's surrounded by these things, and he manages to get them all off by dragging his ship at different parts of the big ship, and that they're like, dun, 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 dun. I was just like, nah, yeah, I don't buy this as a good the move. Theme, did they use the theme any uh, any other time in this film? I'm gonna be honest with you, yeah, that's they did the only it. one I quite fully remember, that's other the only than one like, I remember, which the is big the scene bizarre. where they bring him back to life, they play that theme. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And okay. it's very emotional. I... It's very effective. I like it. Was it like a different version of it? Was it it's like the a same different... melody, but yeah, that's it's, it's right, a, okay, right. It's the yeah. same melody, different orchestration. Right. I can't, I, I can't think of any instance where it was like the big, you know, Guardians theme, like when they use a power stone or something. Which I like that theme, so I, I like to hear more of it. Uh, maybe towards the very end, but I don't remember. Maybe. Uh, I, again, because everything's just fucked right now. Adam did crash into this ship. And then, like, five minutes later in the timeline, we cut back to them. Star-Lord is pressing a bunch of shit to activate self-destruct, and then he looks back, and Adam's just standing in the back of the ship going, Ah! What the fuck is going on? He wants to kill them. No, Notice that we haven't, like, done anything with Adam yet. Like well, that, that obvious, of course, we're going to do something wanna, with him. It just hasn't. I think it needs to be bared, bared in mind because this is where I, I don't know what Cap's going to have to say about this one, right? Because it's a bit strange. But his mum's died. He's still furious. He's got to save his civilization by getting Rocket. He's clearly there to collect him. He's burst in. He's screaming. And then she says, Come a step closer, and this weird thing gets it. And then he goes, Now let's not be rash. It's like. I was just like, what the fuck? Um, I got the impression distinctly that he was he was going hyper rage mode. But it's like, no, he's still in kind that, of no, not. In hyper rage mode, and that would be channeled towards, of course, the high evolution. Like I said, that That would have been like what I still, wanted, but he was still well, going after the Guardians. That's what we all fucking yeah. thought would happen. His mom gets killed by the high evolutionary exploderating the planet, and then he gets with the Guardians, and he working a, a, alongside or parallel with them to kill the high evolutionary, and he's part of the thing that they need, and... Yeah. Now, with his mom gone, he needs emotional support or something because he's mentally, you know, pretty young. And, I mean, geez, what if fucking Drax ended up being like a father figure to him? That's something cool. that would have been interesting. That would have been cool. But, fuck me, I only thought that right now off the top of my head. I didn't have, like, a script and gajillions of dollars. But, like, it, it just baffles my mind how that it's obvious what they were going to do with him. 
right? Like we all know it. I know it. You knew it. We all know it. And then they just didn't do it. They didn't do really anything. That not only did they not do something, I felt like they didn't finish not doing anything. <laughs> um, so Mantis using her Mantis powers convinces all three of the enormous monsters to work with them. Yeah. They could have just and, been uh, eaten, but that happened. Well, instead. no, but they only want to eat batteries, all right? Yeah, that shit's yeah, just, just a just... fucking retcon as far as I'm concerned. Why did they just did growl together? I mean, he jumped into their mouth, but, like, he, he didn't spit them out. Like, ew, you don't have battery. Well, not only that, but, like, what, the high evolutionary is just keeping battery-eating monsters to feed yeah, people like, to? What does that even mean? I eat batteries. Like, You're telling me <laughs> that he usually feeds people down there, and what they do is, like, they fall, and then they go blah, 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 and run around until they get eaten, instead of if they just <laughs> cowered, they'd be fine. Like, if they just went, I'm chill. They don't want to be eaten. Yeah. They'd be fine. They just went limp, played dead. <laughs> or is that all they do is they exhaust them by making them run it's... around so much that they <laughs> die in exhaustion? <laughs> <laughs> it's the kind of right at this point where, as I said before, if Starlo put a gun to his head and fired and the bullet went right through and you saw everything blood splattered, he'd be like, no, 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 no. No. And then the scene just continues and he's fine. And it's like, we've given up. There's just never any attempt to make anything make any sense anymore. Nothing works the way you expect it to. Everyone's gonna be fucking fine. Let's just keep going. That's that's like the only vibe I was getting at this point. There's no consequence for anything. Yeah. Um. So then we see Kraglin is uh, dealing with nowhere getting like almost annihilated by all of these uh, spooky monsters, and um, he has a pair. <clears throat> you know which one I'm referring to? Does anyone want to summarize it and comment? Yeah, so um, I think when Mahler asked me the aforementioned um, question about what's your favorite moment or what's like a moment that strikes you as being your favorite, not counting the flashback scenes, I think I said that the one that comes to my mind first is the Kraglin payoff with the arrow um, and seeing uh, in seeing Yondu there. I really, really, really liked it. Um, and I'm very happy that Kraglin got this heroic kill the monsters payoff and was using the arrow really efficiently like Yondu's doing. I think that means a lot to him as a character, what very little we get of him. Uh, it's First of all, it's really nice to see y Yondu again, even in that capacity, in his voice, because uh, I really, really like Yondu. And uh, it, was, it was good that he got that heroic payoff moment. I was, I really, really liked it. Um, and I even the... I call it simple yeah. but effective. Yes, yeah. I knew oh, exactly. There was. I didn't expect to see Yondu. I, no, I, ex I, I didn't. I expect to see him there. Um, but I really liked seeing him. And there was this. Like I knew. And, and the same thing with uh, Laika. Uh, that is her name, right? Who now? Uh, the dog. Oh, I don't know the dog's name. Uh, or am I thinking Cosmo? Oh, I thought. I thought you. Yeah. Based the actual... off of. Yeah, the like actual a... dog was like, uh, um, so I guess that's why I was thinking about it. But um, yeah, Cosmo. So the the payoff with him um, and Cosmo coming in to help him with at the, at the last moment and the good dog thing, saw it coming 20,000 miles away and extremely satisfied when it happened. <laughs> um, yeah, it's still effective. I mean, like if you if like if I can tell it's coming and it's really good when it gets here, like so's fucking Christmas. Like you know, like I, I don't, you know, it's it's okay. That's fine. So yeah, I um, I think it's a nice really, bit really of oxygen for a moment. It is. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's oxygen in this movie because I'm running out of it. Uh. And that's that. Back to the other scenes now, Rags. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what? We had our we had our little oasis moment. We saw Yondu and we saw Kraglin and he was kicking ass and we saw the dog and the things are great. Why now we can go back? It's true. Someone in chat said Grace Randolph thought the Cosmo bad dog joke was sexist because of the dog's relationship with Kraglin. What do the you relationship mean? Relationship is that <laughs> they're like. Buddies? No, come on, no. What? What does that even mean? That's, that's yeah. just that's, that's just true. dumb enough to be true. I was about to say that sounds I, like I a Grace Randolph thing. I don't, I, I don't. No way, though. Like what? Grace doesn't nah, operate the same plane that we. Do. I know. Even though, I know, though I know, she still, is a female did dog. Act, did you say that? Still a woman who's seeking the validation from a male character, and I didn't really like that. 
True. Right. I, I can't explain Grace, but I would never lie to you. I would never lie. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Austin. Uh, yeah, I actually. Yeah, and it's so absurd. But like after watching what she said in the Mario <laughs> review, like oh, anything's else. possible. I believe it. After, I after, believe the, it. Uh, after the Suicide Squad review, anything's possible, isn't it? One hundred fucking percent. I believe. If you said it about anyone else, you know. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Um... So, we cut to the good old command center for bad guys, and his, his subordinates like, Sire, we must retreat, the ship is going down. And this one really funny happens. The primary, like, controller person, I think she's like a rat person, she says, uh, the spaceport has intruders, and uh, it just cuts to high evolutionary, and he goes, see if one of them is P-13. Like, the ship is on fire, there's armies of people I... destroying you. Everybody's telling you the ship's about to explode, that we need to get out of here. They're like, the spaceport has intruders. And he says, see if one of them is rocket. <laughs> like, sure, there, why not? I'm, yeah, we'll get to a little bit of relief from that point that you're mentioning that I was happy to see. But um, it's something that I wish we saw more in Medio, much more. But yeah, they're, they're, this is the point where I'm like, oh, you're, you're like getting really, you're, you're like turning into a different He's like insane now. now. Yeah, he's, like, kind of insane. Um, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she says, You must stop for God's sake. And he says, There is no God. That's why I, I that stepped in. Oh, that's so cringe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I'm really, trying to think of that's... how I would tweak that. You almost want to have him getting enraged at the mention of a God, but you don't want to make it that obvious, do you? He might have like mentioned it before in a sense of like there isn't destiny, there isn't fate, there isn't uh you know there's no gods or there's no which anything doesn't like work that. In this universe, by the way. Which doesn't work in this universe, but maybe he means God in a different context or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> um, <laughs> then something really uh, stupid happens. Yeah, it's just it's really cringe. They all pull guns on him when he has the control of gravity. It's like, if I you're gonna like... kill him, if you're gonna betray him, you kill him. You don't actually you do the whole... You straight away. Yeah, Are you, you trying to keep him, him, like, hostage? Are you I trying don't... to tell him to <laughs> put his arms down? What are you trying to do? Like, I... I really like that they do this, and I hate how they do it. Exactly. It's, um, they all, the camera's panning around. They're all slowly lifting up their guns. It's going... Like, they're all charging up, ready to shoot. It's like, do you guys forget his powers? He's just gonna slam you all into the ground. Um, but he does he something else. Whole, he he annihilates the whole bridge. He nukes he, he uses his he uses his ultimate move. It's charged up now, and he uses it to destroy his own bridge, uh, including <laughs> and all of his own workers. Yeah, all the workers who are gonna betray him. But most importantly, the cyborg like pilot of the ship who opens the doors and things. It's um. Once he's killed them all and destroyed his own command center because the High Evolutionary is a fucking genius, he says to his, like, remaining crew, get me P3 and kill the rest. And I was just like, can you finally do it yourself? You're, like, the best one for this. And you and keep sending thousands of people to die. They just had to set him up to where he's not powerful. He just has a bunch of people who does what he tells them to do. And he has a lot of money and resources at his disposal, but he's not, like, a super-powered villain himself. If he went down to the dock, he would slam them all into the ground, pop the heads of all the ones that he doesn't care about, grab Rocket, and be done. But he never does it. Um, so anyway, next scene is the big creatures smash through a wall and the whole Guardians team team up. But then those creatures disappear for a little bit. It's really strange. Also, High Evolutionary disappears now for a while. He's nowhere to be mm. found in the story. He's just gone. Big because ship. He's got to get around to places, you know? If he was to appear at any point, he would destroy the plotline. Because anyone who fights him would get fucking wrecked if they were fighting him 1v1. Even, to be honest with you, all of them at once. But we'll save yeah, maybe. it later. It's tough to... Yeah. If he gets the ambush on anybody, he's got him. But... Yeah, because he can stun lock him. Yeah. Uh, and he, we've seen him do it with many people at once. And he's got an ultimate move where he can just vaporize people. Also that. So. Um, something else happens that I don't like. 
The Guardians are figuring out what their plan is. Since they're all together, they've rescued them. That's it. We did it. And uh, then a lot of them say, like, you know, wait, 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 we can't go. We've got to save the children. There's people here. There's still life forms. Blah, 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 blah. And then Gamora says, if we want to live, we have to leave now. And I was just like, why the fuck did you have it so that everyone says we got to save the people except Gamora? It, when Gamora in, again, from 2014, where she was plucked from, was the most motivated to try and save that. lives. It's so rude. What you, what you do is you have them all suggest it, and then she's like, it's leads rude. them or something. You push forward with it. You don't have her say, nah, it's only innocent children. <laughs> the fuck are we doing, you know? What have children done for me? <laughs> what have they I done mean, for recently. me recently? Um... Yeah, and then Rocket says, I'm done running, and, uh... Yay! But yeah, and, and they, yep. they do their big and action this... scene. I was about to say, uh, yeah, this is... Yeah, this is the thing. I mean, this is the action it's, thing. It's a cool, like, it's, it's a, a cool one-take sort of action a, scene. Yeah, it's quite mm. a spectacle. Um, I think it needs to be tightened up here and there, uh, but I really enjoyed watching it. It was nice to see um, things flying around, people using powers, guns, swords. Bit of combo um, up here and there. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I really liked watching it. I just it could have been it, it could have been great if they uh, had changed some things up. But I I really enjoyed you know for what it was I enjoyed it. I thought it was neat that they had that one take style to it. Very much felt like the last Guardians scene. Like yeah. this was yeah. yeah. It felt like, in a in a way, celebratory of just the the Guardians hey, kicking ass. Hey, the team together. doing it one last time, you know. Yep. And so, uh, then they come up with a plan. You have uh, Nebula and Rocket go into the command center to see if they can pilot uh, the ship to help them get the people out, and then they'll have everyone else work to get the life forms out. And they specifically say save all the higher life forms, so we're going to be getting all the people. We're not going to be getting any animals. Um. And then, uh, as they're getting people out, um, Adam Warlock appears, he yells, and then he falls over. And, uh, seriously, at this point, I was just like, what a shame, man. Why is he- why- why- why is he in this film when you didn't know what to do with him? I don't understand why it was so hard to build him a proper storyline. that hard. No. I don't uh, know, it's like, he wasn't interested. It's, uh, such a shame. Um, but- yep. Groot sees that, and what's crazy is if Adam had energy and power there, he would have killed Groot. Luckily for him, he didn't, and so Groot grabs him and saves him. Uh, what did you guys think of the joke where Mantis is opening cages and she discovers the hideous monster thing and screams at him, and then he says, Oh, thank you, and then she says, Oh, I, I was screaming at something behind you. Um, like yeah, may you know, maybe he's used to it. And he knows it's nothing personal, uh, <laughs> but he's he's keeping chipper and cheery, and he's just uh, happy to be out of a cage. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's a fucking abomination, isn't it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's such a. Um... It's like that's the, that gives kids nightmares, man. <laughs> it's it's a, you. Everyone understands the joke perfectly. It's absolutely fucking horrifying, and yet it's like thank you and leaves, and yeah. it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I, like, I like that joke. Yeah, yeah, it, it's kind of the perfect amount of just absolutely insane. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's not—he doesn't seem like he's in pain, and he's walking around. That's the thing. Is, as long as free. he is okay and happy, and he's getting out of there, that's okay with me. Yeah, if he was like, yeah. "Oh God, fucking kill me!" Ah. Yeah, yeah like, I'm like, "Oh my <laughs> Jesus Christ!" Now I'm really not. Oh. And I, I do like Mantis trying to save it. Like, I wasn't screaming at you; I was screaming at the thing behind you. <laughs> why right. is uh, I mean like why is he well, in the cage? Well, she would have just made though? him forget anyway, Cap. Why, why is he in the cage with all the like the kids? <laughs> I wish I could forget. Yeah. Um. So then Star Lord's running around and he bumps into three people who work for the High Evolutionary and he says, "Kill me if you want, but then good luck getting out of here." I don't understand that at all. He's so fucking lucky. Every other person he's bumped into doesn't hesitate to shoot at him. But these three fuckers just don't. It's like, okay. If they killed him, they could still leave. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I don't... It, that made no sense to me, even the, like from the moment he said it. I think the purpose of the line is to convince us that all the remaining staff are now working with the Guardians to get over, all the kids out. It's just, really, it's just so fucking like, lazy and clunky. That's not how you accomplish that. That line doesn't no, fit. No, it's not even close. 
Um, so what do we think about the locking the ships together to prevent compression with Cosmo? Um, don't know about that. Um, that scientifically speaking, that. if that's even a fucking utterance that I could make with a movie like this, but... But also, uh, goddamn, like, Cosmo must be immensely powerful if uh, she can, like, move this massive structure and retain it in its place like that. Holy I assume shit. we've got Nowhere that's also moving forward, uh, and Cosmo is just, like, the, uh, the, the extra ceiling, ceiling the around cracks. that hole. Yeah, that's how mm. I saw it, because it does deform around the hole right. uh, in the ship, but she is there to make sure that it like stays together and is kind of tight. But so in that case... Later on when she, uh, when she can't do it anymore, it does start to drift pretty dramatically. I'd have to... Because I, I, I remember what you're talking about. Manus has to give her the, you know, you can do it, you can do it. Um, yeah. So I, I'd have to look and see again to exactly how it starts to come apart. But yeah, based on what I saw there, I'd, I'd know for sure. Or not. Big thing or that really pissed me idea. off is that I kind of enjoy if you make it so that Cosmo's real trying her ass off to make this work. I'm like, okay, at least I can appreciate that you, you, you're making it seem like it's real fucking tough. Why does it everybody be... take a million years to move across the threshold? They, they literally start saying, one at a time, one at a time. It's like, no, you're like, all sprinting uh, across. Uh, go. Um, we are, we are jumping. Yeah. This you're is like 2012, it. man. We're, we need to go. Um, do you think, do you think it would have been better if Craglin was there with her? Well, he had to pilot the, uh... Oh, yeah, that's that, right, yeah. That I guess, big I guess he... role I wanted to give him, you know? Yeah, yeah I was gonna say, it, it makes yeah, sense for his yeah, captain yeah, yeah. doing that stuff, yeah. Um, so then, uh, Adam Warlock wakes up and he says, Why are you doing this? I tried to kill you. And, uh, says, I am Groot, which is translated into, Everyone deserves a second chance. Uh, you didn't earn that. I, I mean, <laughs> what can you say to that? You're just like, okay. Cool. All right. Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's heroic or something. Um, what's going to happen with this guy? What's what are we doing? Just it just no. feels like it's it, you pulled it from the book of lines. It's like, what can you say? It's like, say it's definitely from the book. Chance. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you're it could work if, as Rags has suggested over and over and over again, that he was actually fighting on their side now, but there's still a moment like where they think about, you know what I mean? Like, um, or like when they agree to team up or something like that, there's a way they could make that work if he's like fighting on their side now. Yeah, and you can, and now you have him as a character who can do something if you need something done that requires, you know, being able to fly fast or blast through a wall or something. Now, mm -hmm. now that he's on your side, we've got, you've got that that you can pull. But now he's and just he's, sort of around, I guess, and helping, sort of. He will, I guess. So, yeah. And he's proven that he actually, you know, can earn a second chance. <laughs> um, and he? Well, no, has I'm he? saying in, in the hypothetical version. Oh, yeah, in the hypothetical, yeah. Not in like, this one, because he hasn't. Yeah, in this one, yeah. He just sort of like, we're trusting you to not destroy everyone, okay? Exactly. Uh, no one even, like, suggests that he goes get revenge. No, if you're right. It's, it's, it's like, like dropped. No one... He's he exactly. is a character with, like, one thing, and that thing is dropped. It's just like, it's the mum. That's, like, the thing he cares about. And then she dies, and then you're like, well... Okay. It feels like there's, yeah, there's different scenes that they filmed. Plot. There must be. There must be something that got lost when they edited it. I don't know. So the ship's falling apart. Like I said, Cosmo's uh, trying to keep it together. All the, the people are getting moved across. They're desperate. Everyone's like screaming and all this shit. I don't think it's appropriate to have Rocket seen now. Uh, I like the scene quite a bit, but it just doesn't line up to me that we we're this desperate, and he's now gonna have a very slow walk to the cages. Look at them. Look at the raccoons. Take care of yeah. them. So you get them up. Then look around. See what animals are there. And then you know, do. I was just like, this needed to happen. It's before. too much of a rush. Yeah, there there needs to be. This needs to happen before we've got like everything falling apart. Yeah. Uh, there's too much of a rush going on plot wise. Um, as, as as good as it is to see that, and as, as great as it is, this is not the time that it needed to happen. This needed to be sooner. Um, then the High Evolutionary attacks. Here he is. He's like, Wah! he's really angry. And he's like, I'm going to get you. And, uh, the, honestly, the first thought I had was like, where the 
fuck have you been, man? It's been ages. Everything's been falling apart. Where have you been doing? And I wonder if he, like, just went to toilet or something? Because, like, where else could he be? What could he be doing? He's put on pause. He's not allowed to inter interact with the plot. He's got to stay away until we're ready for him. Um, but they start having their fight. He's he's dragging Rocket around, hitting him into walls, doing all kinds of things. And uh, he has him up at the ceiling, and he's shouting all kinds of mean things at him, like, you're an abomination, you're nothing more than a step on my path. How dare you think you're more than that? And then Rocket manages to move his arm just enough to activate his gravity boots, which I think is already too much. He shouldn't be able to move. When yeah, uh, he's got you in the gravity mode, and also, but, of course, the uh, as you said, the whole like, I he should be really fucked up right now. Oh yeah, they even have him yeah. go in like he throws him onto something electrical, and Rocket's like blah blah blah, blah and it's just like, oh yeah. that, that's another one of those writer can choose whatever that just did. Did that kill him? Did that do nothing? Was it somewhere in between? Electricity, man, it's really useful to just. Mm. It could just be pain. It could be like you're stunned for a bit. It could kill you. It could just. uh Give you memory loss? I don't know. It's it's the it's the grab bag of injuries. Um. So, what would what do you think physics wise should happen when you've got a man who can control a person via manipulating gravity, and he's got them pressed against a wall, and then they activate their own gravity boots? Ah, uh, probably, um, probably nothing. Because I don't think there's enough... I don't think the suction power of those gravity boots are enough to overpower the firmness of how the high evolutionary's gravity is holding him in place. If anything, it might make him slide along the wall or whatever until his feet make contact with the surface that's below him so, from his perspective. I actually... It's funny, I kind of agree. I think number one most likely scenario, nothing happens. Because it's just his gravity control overpowers your booties. I'm sorry, they just do. His his power is insane. Second yeah, most likely... Yeah, these things don't want to be super powerful, just enough to keep you on the surface. Because you have to still be able to... You know, they give you some... Essentially, they, they simulate <clears throat> the effects of gravity on with your feet. Second most likely, they attach to the ceiling that Rocket's right next to. Right? And they awkwardly bend his legs a bit back. But they would... That I don't know how else, you know, they just attach. Okay. Third, most likely, that thing you were saying about like the slidey around thing, like they've got some influence, but they're not quite connecting to the power. Fourth, most likely, I suppose they attach to the ground below, depends. but that that's probably going to break how they his work. ankles. Uh, yeah, maybe it depends on how. Yeah, it, I would imagine if you use them, like it, it notice it knows what your orientation is, and it try and it tries to contact the most appropriate surface beneath you um mm -hmm. which would like and if he started to slide down as the force of the you know, gravity is like like that wouldn't be too bad if he started sliding and he made contact or he turns it on nothing happens and the moment the high evolutionary lets go of his gravity all of a sudden rocket moves down and that maybe like catches him off guard and gives rocket an opening yeah, like, he's activated them, and then he goes to throw him to another place, and expects him to have moved, and then he's like, wait, what? And then looks back, and it's already too late, because Rocket's got the shot on him now. Like, uh, Yeah, like it's it's a startling little, like, not not a teleport, but similar in its effects. He just starts, starts to quickly move in a direction. Well, instead, he activates them, and it clamps down into the floor in front of him, and then, uh, he says... Because he's, he's shitting at him, saying is the fucking P19, I forget the, the code name. And then he lands and says, my name is Rocket. Rocket Raccoon. Then shoots him. And I was just thinking to myself, so like, happy. man, that was a lot of time you spent talking there that he could have done something to you. That's yeah, true. sure it was, with uh, his powers and stuff. Have you ever considered that him saying I'm Rocket <laughs> Raccoon is really great? <laughs> a little it really me. is, though. Uh, I... Yeah. I Considering how vehemently he rejects, like, anybody calling him, you know, like a raccoon or any number of things, to just fully embrace uh, that as part of his identity is really cool. I really, really like it. Yeah. Um, so he nice, does that, great and then that the Guardians appear suddenly, and they all beat the fuck out of the High Evolutionary. He doesn't stand a chance. I feel like this would have worked better if Rocket had him all to himself. I'd be inclined to uh, agree, and, like, even when, you know, when they're all attacking him, I was just like, nuke him, nuke him, do the nuke. 
He doesn't yeah, we need to see like his gauntlet being broken or his little something, something, you know, some element of he can be depowered if something breaks or whatever. But I was expecting for Rocket and him to have a mono a mono kind of fight. Rocket cleverly engineers something with he uses the intelligence and creativity that the high evolutionary wants so much as a way to defeat the high evolutionary. How incredibly poetic is that? Yeah, and because uh, the, as far as it went, was remember those boots that we set up? There you go. Yep. And you're like, okay. Yeah. I don't even think it would work that way, but sure, there it goes. Would have been, yeah, cool. Because Crockett has a very, 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 very deep personal interest in, uh, you know, fucking this guy up. Mm -hmm. uh, no, killing him, quite frankly. Oh, uh, yes. And um, so... Yeah, but, I mean, it's fine that all the Guardians are there. They're his new family. They're his team. So, you know, the you took one family away from me. This is the new one. They're going to kick your butt. That's something, you know? I will say but that. I, 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 I can't... <laughs> aping the downer, but I can't envision it. Like, where's Rocket? And then all of the main characters decide to go and look for him and all up. end up in yeah. that room. Like, nah. Yeah, the most yeah. you'd have Actually, is one of them going to look for him. And honestly, I was feeling kind of like before this that Rocket would perish in his fight with the High Evolutionary. Um, he would there there'd be some setup where he saves the day, but like he has to sacrifice himself to do it. Something I was really expecting for that kind of thing to be set up in this moment. Uh, which is like it's fine that it doesn't happen. That was just what I was thinking would you know would likely be the case. Um. Yeah, uh, uh, he gets he gets beaten the fuck out, and Gamora rips his face off. Cause he's got a little face mask on after what Rocket fucked him up with, and it's quite gruesome uh, when they show the face itself. Yeah, it is. It is quite gruesome. Yeah. And says, "I just wanted to make things perfect." Rocket says, "You didn't want to make things perfect. You just hated things the way they are." Um, perfectly fine as a counter to him, I guess. But uh, this I it's... really like it. A little bit confusing for me. I was hoping maybe someone could explain this. He says, uh, Drax in the background, he's just like, kill him. Then Rocket aims the gun, but then stops. He says, why? And he says, because I'm a freaking guardian of the galaxy. Dumb. Just fucking kill Dumb. him. I don't kill understand him. at all. I would, I would have expected a subversive, like... You know, like, oh, is he gonna? You'll spare him, right? He's just like, no, of course I'm not gonna fucking spare him. Are you serious? Like, I, yeah. we I kill people like, all, all like the whatever. time. We're talking about like the Deadpool thing where Colossus is just like, you know, the way the world sees us, and then White just shoots the guy in the head, just it's, unceremoniously. It's just like, what are they yeah. going for with with <laughs> I'm a Guardian of the Galaxy? What does that mean? At that um, point? I think they're talking about the thing that uh, I think Cap mentioned earlier, right? Where it's like that lame thing where you can just kill all the faceless goons, but like when the actual villain who orchestrated everything, but like what kind of mercy is it? The ship is blowing up. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. He's dead. It's really lame. lame. Yeah, we assume he lays there with his face off and he gets <laughs> exploded or whatever. Yeah. Um, the only thing about it that I that I don't mind and there's a way to tweak it for me is that I can understand Rocket having some hesitancy about being the one to kill him himself. I can I can understand that to a degree. It, it could have been interesting if he decides not to and he walks away and then Drax kills him or something. You know, or if he, he walks he, away with the recognition that he will die when this thing blows up. That possibly as well. Either one. I, the implication I, I got was that we're the guardians of the galaxy. We don't execute people when they're down or something. I'd be like, what? <laughs> we don't kill bad guys. Um, yes, you do kill bad guys. Yeah. You totally yes, you do. You do it all the time. <laughs> and this is the most bad of the guys. He's real bad. You don't want to. You don't even want to risk bad. him escaping. Not at all. Remember the genocide earlier? Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, like, that's the thing. You know, that was like that was crazy. What he did there. And I mean, dude, he's finished anyway, you know? Like, what? Yeah, and I'm not sure... I'm not sure, yeah, what they were going for with that. It was odd. It'd be... I wouldn't like it either, but it'd be one thing if they took him with him to, like, bring him to justice, whatever that means. But they don't even do that. Well, no, it's like, let's spare him and leave him here to blow up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's, yeah. it's Batman Begins, you know? <laughs> like, I don't have to save you. I mean, dude, like, 
<laughs> you are making a choice here, alright? Little mm. bit. Um, and then all the animals are saved, because of course they are. Well, I mean, yeah, but but hey, look, all right, it's uh, uh, they all very conveniently they, stampede in the right direction. Yeah, they're so all just yeah, they cooperating. Yeah, you know? they they all know that they need to run away from the, the like <laughs> exactly where they need to. Go. the The reality is that it might have been a a tougher. I think I was talking to Muller about this, like the tougher scene of he can't save all of them, so he saves the raccoons. You know, like there's just a recognition that you can't save everybody, but obviously. That's you a know. tough or, or, payoff. Or if it was because just that raccoon, means he's a you know? racist. Well, well, the the <laughs> other Jesus. alternative is if it's just the raccoons, all the other animals have escaped, and it's just the little raccoons. Yeah, their cage, all the other cages them. are like broken or opened or whatever, and yeah. they, they didn't quite get out. Yeah, yeah it's like the um, ship is actually falling apart around him, and he has to be like pulled away from doing well, you it know what? or something. It'd be pretty useful if maybe they had like an alliance with some ravages, maybe with some portal technology. Yeah, not... oh. portal no. technology. It's, it's bad enough not... without that Ravager to die. Because you could be like, why can't they contact fucking Doc Strange? They're friends with him now. Yeah, give him a call. Say, hey, buddy, you busy with you? Could really use your, your incredible, there, amazing you technology. And in exchange, he, we'll give you some amazing medical technology. <laughs> like and fix if, your if hands. he's not available, you know, a doc, like, you're a doctor. You'd like that. <laughs> Wong is our Sorcerer Supreme now, so you give him a call, see if he's available. Yeah, well, I was just gonna say, he's like, could court. you wrap one of those medical kits around Doctor Strange's heads? Fix him? I assume so. <laughs> Dude, could you Come imagine, on. right? They're introducing the idea of the tech to Doctor Strange, and he's like, oh, interesting. I actually, uh, and uh, they know about his wound or whatever, and they just pop it on and go, beep, psh, there you go. And he's like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. They're just like, hey, isn't that great? And he's just like, you don't even die. You can do surgery again. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's like, right. okay. I'm going to go be a surgeon. So, um, oh, we're at that point. Damn. No, oh. no. No, no, no. We're at some... So, yep. everyone has made it and everything is fine except Quill. Oh, he said Quinn. Quill drops his Zoon. As he and goes he's run after it. Runs back to get it and then he falls through the floor. And because of the ship's separating, he is now very far away. And he's going to have to jump and through the vacuum of space. Error rig. He has no, gonna... none of the thousands of pieces of fucking tech throughout this goddamn series that would have saved his ass. Um, and so he jumps through and gives himself a bit of a boost with a pipe he was holding. It's kind of a cool thing that he does in terms of just like, oh yeah, I guess so. And then and then some debris gets in his way, and he gets stopped halfway in between. It would, but it would it with a pipe? I don't know if it would work. I just thought it was cool. I don't. It, it's cool, but I don't think it would work. That's like if you. That's like if you got a, like a, like a sailboat, and you put a big fan. On the deck and pointed it towards the sail. Like that, that wouldn't work. Because if he's if he's attached to the if he's holding on to the pipe, then the for then the forward force of the um of the of the, the, the the pipe's expulsion would then be canceled out by the energy hitting him. Or I don't know. Maybe I'd have to see it again. Too tired have to. I'll I'll buy it for now. I'll buy it for now. But I'd I'd, yeah. I'd have to see it again to make sure. He hits pieces of debris and gets stuck, and then they show Mantis and Groot, like, crying and screaming because they know he's gonna die. And I was just like, you're not fucking serious. You're telling me that the reason why Peter is gonna die is because he ran back for his Zoon, when I can the imagine obvious, him starting the to run The obvious payoff is, yeah, that he thinks about running for it, but then realizes he doesn't need it. He lets it you know? go. He lets also, it go. He fully grails that shit, and he lets it go. He yeah. doesn't need it anymore. The music. Because he's got his friends. Every... Yeah, he's already put the music <laughs> inside of them. Yes. It was yes. right there, James. Happened, it actually, was right yes, there. Was... Obviously. And, it... it's... <laughs> and it's the Zune. It's not the tapes from his no, mom. It's the... Well, the Zune is from uh is from Yondu, I think. So that would be my. Is it from best... Yondu specifically? Yeah, Kraglin gave it to him, okay. and he said it's got like three hundred songs, and that was really <laughs> impressive. Like, so I understand that as an element, but it seems so obvious that the point is that he's he's past that of like the item itself, right? It's like the music itself and what it represents, or his friends, 
that he would run back for the music player and then die in space because of it. Like, what What happened? That feels like a total regression, you know? It feels like we've gone backward, especially if the arc of this film is him learning to let go, that he nearly dies because he couldn't let go, well, and then has I'm to not, get bailed I'm not out, on you know? his arc being letting go at all, really. I feel like I think that's what Gamora. we're meant to believe it is, though. But, but it's thing. not, like, he doesn't just let go of Rocket, you know? <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> he, <laughs> yeah, let true. go of Gamora, essentially. He's learning to let go of things because, you know, it. sometimes, you know, what you have, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's really just Gamora. Who, I don't, it's not, it doesn't, the... it's not a big overarching theme for him, in my opinion. I don't know. Oh, well, well, let's put it this way. Even if, even if we didn't, you know, think it was a big overarching theme, I just don't buy that he would actually die for this, this no, player. Like that yeah. just doesn't seem like where we're at with him. That was like a decision that he made in the first film, right? That was, you know, to some extent reckless of you all have to wait while I go get the music player. Yeah. And then the fact that you destroyed it, you know, the original Walkman as well. And and accepting things you know, for how they it. are is definitely an idea in this film instead of trying Absolutely. to like fix everything. Yeah. I think that uh <laughs> that, that that would have worked perfectly with that. The the reality is the Zoom's fucking gone. Go. That's what you have yep. to like. It's perfect in microcosm, but someone else because we've talked about this a couple of times. But I actually think it could have been a darker direction, maybe a mistake, maybe not to completely redo the script and have it be that uh, that's a lesson in the form of Rocket actually dying in the end. The uh, they, they all their attempts to prevent the realities from setting in that Rocket has died uh, causes like immense damage. Maybe an additional character death. You know, you could do it that way, or you could do other mm. forms of damage. Um. But that it's a harsh lesson to learn that, like, just because you can't deal with the fact that something horrible has happened, it can end up making way worse things happen, like in conjunction or whatever. There's uh, there's space for all this stuff here, but like, I don't know, man. Like after I see the film, it's like they clearly had no fucking intention of killing Rocket or, well, we're... no, <laughs> no. So I mean, people well, maybe but, but look, maybe, it looks like, like Peter. He's he's yeah. I was gonna say, is this Peter dead? That is like well. More... Obviously, we've everything. been over all the forms of technology that would have been able to save him if he had them. Um, I don't know yep. if Craglin's if arrow helmet. would have worked. Um, well, if he grabbed it. Well, I don't know if whistling maybe, would you know, apply. Like, I'm Mary Poppins, you know? Like, do that. Yeah. Just get it. Well, so that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Sound, it's like, yeah. you got that. You've got... I, something I didn't like, I was thinking about was, yeah, Groot's vines should be able to get him. And then they show him yep. trying. And for some reason, in this moment, Groot's only capable of growing them incredibly slowly. Uh, you see them they passing. Freeze in no, the they, so he starts it up, and they're going boom, 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 boom. They pass the threshold, boom, 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 and then they go frosty, and then they break off. Remember in Guardians One, where he can like fire them, he yeah. can go like and like straight out. If he did that, that'd be enough because Peter just needs to grab one and pull. That was his old body, not his new hulking. His new slow. Well, body. <laughs> remember, Rags, the body that I, I think you're getting confused. Like. Remember, he, this is a different Groot to the original Groot, as I understand he it. Grew entirely from the yeah. He's a his... different person. He is a different Groot. The Groot from Guardians is dead, and this okay. is you know Groot two. I, I think never knew how Groot two worked. Yeah. Um. Obviously. Uh, yeah, the... I just don't know if the if, if the seed like carried on his consciousness or something. I'm not sure. So. It's just. I don't buy any of it, and I find it all really annoying, and they're baiting fucking Peter's death now. You've done it enough. Can... Stop. Yeah, we're doing more bait deaths, and, like, what a weird time for this to just sort of happen for bait, too. Uh, especially when now everybody who we thought was actually gonna die is, like, safe. Like, totally safe. Well, so, isn't it crazy <laughs> that on my, like, the people most likely to die list, it was like Rocket and Drax were number ones, and then Peter was actually one of the suggestions I floated that could be possible and edgy. All three of them got fucking baited in this, and then they were fine. Yep. They were totally fine. Even Nebula got kind of baited. Yeah. I know, yeah. Well, and to be fair, we haven't mentioned them, but there's two times in this film where Mantis is dropped into a place and falls on her neck, and they make a neck snap sound. Yeah, yeah that's true, they do. Bizarre. That was just weird. It's just supposed to be funny. You're supposed that. to go, ho, 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 When most people, when they hear that and somebody landing really awkwardly on their neck, they immediately think, oh, shit. Yeah, she's uh -oh. dead. Because that's what happens when you hear that noise. I know what that noise is. That's no good. It's funny. Someone's like, what? It's like, it's as I said it is. That's what happens. Watch it's the movie. Weird, that's what happens. Like, like Pratt fall sort of thing. Yeah. Um, 
so anyway, Peter's pretty much about to die. There's no hope for him. And then, uh, and then Adam Warlock shows up. And, Wait, um, did you mention the face bloat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, his, his face bloat. I assume you want blooded. me to mention it because it's a bit of a, like, what am I supposed to be feeling about this? I feel all... like I'm, I'm feeling well, annoyed that he didn't get a new helmet. Well, there's that, but I also feel like I don't know enough about the science, and I am very tired. But if his face <laughs> is already bloated to that degree, I feel like he's done. But I think I don't he's know. Thought... being half of like half. Uh... Well, but that I don't know that that counts for anything anymore. Used. He lost that power. Remember that was like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's um, the thing about dead, it. Yeah. I kind of have a regret about Guardians too. Is they made it explicit. It's like once you kill me, you don't get any of those powers anymore. Like, yep. oh, but um, um okay. <laughs> well, and and, and uh, as for what was said, right? I thought because he gets saved, it's, we've already kind of implied it, right? But like, uh, I thought they were going to apply med kits to him, like as soon as he got in, but they didn't even do that. No, nah, he, he's 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 chill. He's okay. He's just fine. That's... He just recovers. And it's like okay. This is the only reason I can like they try to make Adam Warlock like relevant to the story. Yeah, Adam saves him after doing a reference to Creation of Man, the painting, right? Yeah, where yeah, it's what's like up with that? Adam. I don't Why? know. Why I don't know. Do that? Not, I, I don't know what that is. That's clearly supposed to be funny, uh, but but I'm just sitting there like, oh, fuck it, L. What's what are we? Dude, what's hurry up. no like, meaning every to second, it? Every second, every yeah, second counts, I, man. I don't know it's, what this is. It doesn't what it mean is. anything in relation to the story. Like, there's no thematic significance to referencing that really famous iconic image it's just like ha that's a thing don't you recognize that isn't that funny no no <laughs> it's not it's... funny mm. i don't i don't get it um because his name is adam but isn't he the wrong one in the image a little bit maybe it's supposed to that's on purpose you didn't get it you're right that I didn't get it. <laughs> I That's didn't get true. it. Either. I'm sure that'll be in a video essay. Oh but, God! Well, yeah, three coming, is genius, they? actually. Oh yeah, no, I think video essays will uh, they'll be clamoring for this one. I think. So, uh, they're all fine. They made it, and then Gamora is says uh, before she leaves that I bet we were fun, because you wouldn't believe it, like you wouldn't believe, yeah. Mm -hmm. So she's uh, off with yeah. the Ravages. Um. And true well, family. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's time to basically that they announce that the, they've all got they got things they need to talk about. Peter says he's been running ever since uh, he watched his mum die on Earth, and he's finally gonna go back, which for some reason means he's leaving the Guardians. Don't really quite understand I... that, since he can visit Earth whenever he wants for as, even a week, and he'd still be a Guardian. I don't. Mm. So I, I really don't understand what's happening there. Mantis says she needs to go because she's always done what Ego wanted, and now she's been doing anything the Guardians wanted, and so now it's time to discover something for herself. Which, again, I thought she was here because she wanted to be here. <laughs> Same. So I, I that found one that one annoying, too. Sense to me. Um, Nebula and Drax want to build a society for the children to live in? Like, okay. All right. Well, uh, I guess it's worth mentioning that's what Nebula says. Initially, Drax wants to go with Mantis. Go with Mantis. Because mm. they have a very... Because he doesn't know that she's... Um, a he doesn't know how abusive she is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then uh, it's it's Nebula that convince. Well, first of all, uh, Mantis is like, no, I need to go on my own. And Nebula's like, no, Drax, you can stay here. And do you have the exact line? He says, you weren't born to be a destroyer. You were born to be a dad. So... There's a sense in which I kind of like that he's <sighs> because he doesn't get revenge, right? I wish the film addressed it, but it didn't. So as a no. consolation prize, I mean, the revenge was for the loss of his family, that he gets something like adopted children of his own to take care of. And the fact that we've seen him be good with kids is something that mm -hmm. I kind of like. Yeah, this idea that he couldn't save his kids from something evil, but he saved the kids from these kids from something evil. Um, and he can be the dad to them that he couldn't be to his own daughter. That's yeah, something. like I like that as a core idea. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's just all the stuff that happens along the way, and I feel like the paternal stuff did, did it even exist in Guardians 2? 
Well, I, I forget. Mentioned, of course, the the loss of his daughter and stuff, but you know, um, we're well, we're almost at the point of figuring out what the fuck is going on here because he's like, Rocket, you will be the leader of the Guardians, and that team is now Craglin, Cosmo, Adam Warlock, Groot, and Little Girl. And that is the fate, let's say, of, of the Guardians as it stood. They are now separated, and it feels so fucking arbitrary. Uh, yeah. There, yeah, it feels like think... there's a there's a tension between James Gunn wanting to break them apart and put an end to all of it, while, the, while Marvel's like, no, 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 you can't put a permanent end to it, you need to set up a new team. So there's this weird, like, split... Like the dichotomy or like a dissonance between those two ends that are all combined into this one scene, and it's such it an feels... arbitrary, strange mess. I don't, I don't know what informed this, and I'm not sure that I would even come to the conclusion that it was like, yeah, it was obviously like studio meddling. I'm not sure. I feel like the film is pretty non-committal in terms of like being a definitive, conclusive ending um for this team i don't feel like this is a really conclusive ending everybody is off available to be pulled in for future projects and the, yeah. yeah no one's said, like, dead he's yeah. gone why is not awesome like the reasoning isn't isn't great um it feels like it came out of nowhere it i did does. not i didn't the think they'd leave. I didn't think they'd split. Well, I didn't think, yeah, I didn't get anything from this film that indicated this is all leading to them splitting up because I don't need each other anymore. Finally, like, we're together again. <laughs> like, we want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, I want to go to the planet. What? Tell them to come with you. I don't, like, this thing, there's so much about this. Like, I would say that the Drax one, at least, it has something. It's like, okay, but, like, would Drax, Drax actually, would but... he want to not... Because I know Dave Batista but, doesn't want to do it anymore, and that's partially yeah, that's, what's informing my perspective on this. Is not with, it's like what would Drax want with, as a character? Uh, it's like it's bleeding in from him. But d would Drax be okay with like, yeah, I'm just gonna help this society? Or it's like, does he just want to quit Guardians now? Is it, uh... But surely, well, this, I mean, this is where they live. This is where they spend a lot of their time. Yeah. So that that was actually yeah. something I was gonna bring up. As and like nowhere a... moves. They can take yeah. home with them. That's true. Yeah. It's a mobile like, home in We're space. pretending like for Peter to go to Earth, it would be some grand adventure that takes ages. It's like, you could port over there. It's you not hard. You could do it hard. in an afternoon. It, yeah, you like, could, why you could take a sabbatical from the Guardians. You don't need to, you and know. Like, you don't need to quit. Yeah. <laughs> and like, what, a what? sabbatical, that's actually a really good way of putting it. Because if he wants to spend a decent amount of time with his grandpa, you know, live out. Like, the, like, spend his time with his grandpa until he eventually dies or something like that. Like, you don't have to commit to permanently quitting. <laughs> mm. It's actually bizarre, and then the Mantis one is the worst of all of them. That's that's her brother, and she's like, "Well, I'm gonna go find my own adventures now." It's like, "I'm sorry, what? What? What?" I thought that you really valued this. Like, you so feel manipulated into like doing other people's bidding, huh? <laughs> I guess I just, I just find it strange <laughs> that that that's, uh, yeah. like I'm gonna go off and do my own thing because like this isn't enough. She, but I, I, I would. I think that's better There's than no what she says. She one. says, "I yeah. did whatever yeah. Ego wanted, and then I did whatever the Guardians wanted." It's like, no, fuck you. You're here. Why are you ruining the character? Yeah. Yeah. You're here, oh, but this is the right thing to do. For, well, it, it's You're pretty funny. Right? I, I did whatever. I did whatever the Guardians wanted. Wasn't it her idea to go to Earth to get Kevin Bacon to set up the whole uh, party for Christmas? That was her idea. She's fucking. She gets to do what she she's wants. She's editing part of the people's team. memories. She gets to make decisions. Also, that yeah. How can you that, argue? There was also like, the fact that she controls other people <laughs> and deletes their memories. I have to go now. My own planet needs me. <laughs> God, it's such a... It's like the scene comes out of nowhere to say, like, by the way, this is it for Guardians. You're like, oh yeah, shit, I forgot. This is the yeah, end this of is, the Guardians. This is meant to be the end, but not really, because everybody is... Even even uh, the actors who have said that they don't want to do anymore, it's like, well, you're not dead. You could always come back, you know. Yeah. Everybody, everybody is it's conveniently placed to do like you. I like <laughs> it. Just seems so arbitrary. And I did not get the sense at all throughout the film that we were ramping up to the Guardians splitting up as a team. No. Or, or at the very no. least, that was a possibility. 
in you know like in the conclusion of this film being like the end of the guardians as a team but the longer this film went on the less that seemed like a possibility yeah yeah because it's all about coming together to work together at the end it just made the mm -hmm. most sense to me that you'd have a couple of them die and they realize like it's the end of an era and the, the like losing parts of the family means that like they're gonna now need to reset refigure out everything that Things aren't the way they were, but try to make it like some level of a positive angle. But having none of them die and none of them be ha having some because like they treat the the Peter realization as though he's actually having to go to a different galaxy or some shit. It's like no, it's just next door. It's the equivalent of that in this world. What go do you mean? Earth. You could have just gone go. to Earth for a whole like I said. It's like when Ant Man says like, if the Avengers need me, I'm just a call away. And it's like, isn't that the Guardian situation? Isn't that how it works? Well, remember in Avengers uh, Endgame, they had the direct line of communication with Rocket. Oh yeah, I just don't get it. Uh... Mm. Um... Which I guess at least that kind of bolsters the idea that Rocket could be the leader since he was sort of like in charge of whatever you know him and Nebula were doing probably while they were out doing stuff some time independent as a lead but i i don't know if i'm like fully sold on that as him being the leader of the team i always felt it was peter um peter, well peter is the leader but the idea that the next best choice was rocket it's like the next best choice was probably gamora but she's out of the picture um is mantis a better leader than rocket uh no mm -hmm. probably not I, I well rocket and yet you. mantis Mantis, uh, not Mantis, Nebula will be a better leader of uh, nowhere. Oh, like well, she's Nebula... really cut out for that, you know? <laughs> Nebula, uh, the thing about it, it's, it's almost not even worth speculating because he clearly just didn't, he didn't think about this himself. He's just moved right along. It, I, I wouldn't even be surprised at this point if um, he was told he's not allowed to kill anybody and that they have to. Um, they they have to be in positions that are more so like you you, you can talk about how separated it is from maybe their goals, like Mantis for example. But I have to imagine they they actually told him she needs to be separated off because we're going to be moving her into a, some some other show or something, and and because like it, he just didn't try at all with her. He just said like ah uh, she's just going. And it's like mm. what the, what the fuck did they tell you to make you do that? I don't know. I don't know. Rocket and Peter always argue over who's the captain. Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, just running through that list, it would have to be Rocket. <laughs> I there's nobody else. There's nobody else who could be the leader at this point. Well, I, that I was guess never, that was never in doubt. I, I, I'm saying that it was clearly Peter, though. Even though they would argue. Oh, Peter! Peter was always the leader. I guess the thing is, is what does it mean to say that Rocket is the leader of a team that at that point we don't even know what it looks like. Because as I was watching that scene, all I thought is, so it's just Rocket and Groot. Le you know, the leader of Rocket and Groot, but then they have Kraglin and, and uh, Adam Warlock in there to, like, Cosmo. make up the team. And Cosmo. And Little Gil. So, and that one chick? And, yeah. That one girl? He does something. We'll find out next time. Sure, well, because be... I, I mean, I'm not going to find out. I'm done. But... I will. <laughs> well, I mean, who, I mean, who knows if there are going to be more Guardians films? But like the Guardians and a lot of these characters are going to. I mean, we're skipping ahead a bit, but Star Lord's coming back. Um, like, yeah, definitively. Well, if you want, if we we can, we're nearly done. If we just round it out, um, Drax is crying when Mantis leaves. Kind of sad. Um, mm. the more if only he knew. I know, right? Gamora is super happy to be back with the Ravagers, who seem to be super happy she's back, and it's so fucking weird that they didn't help her out at all in this whole fucking thing. Um, they're her family. They're her people. I don't buy it. Never will. That's fine. You do you. You, Gamora. Uh, Adam Warlock's sort of just sitting around and smiling. I, there's not much else you can do with him, I guess, because he's not really got a connection to any other character. <laughs> um, and then everyone is like sort of howling and yelling in a happy way and dancing and it's I don't know, it just for me it didn't sit right I was just like, yes, everything everything was happily ever after, everyone's so fucking happy oh, how great everything is, it's just like whatever. <laughs> it's a mixed bag because there were like aspects of it that I like, the fact that Drax dances, that's like a payoff, because you don't mm. dance he even talked about it before and he's actually dancing, and like Nebula smiling is kind of like, oh shit like, you don't see that. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you don't see that ever. Just, 
Um, and then Rocket being super happy, it's like, but at the same time, it's like, but the foundation upon which all of this is built, oh my god. Exactly. Yeah, it worked for me in the moment, it doesn't work for me anymore. It's just in the moment it worked, but yeah. Most of the movie now. <laughs> well, so that's that's it for my notes. So I'm, uh, we're at oh, the point and then of... post credit scene, uh, yeah, Star-Lord, the legendary Star-Lord will return, because this is Marvel. <laughs> this is Marvel and nothing ever ends. Fuck off is exactly how I felt. Well, so where, where are we at? Well, so first question now. I was going to have was, um, does anybody, because I'd already gone through all of these, obviously, because I fucking wrote and detailed a lot of them and actually had to grab some of the, some of these can sneak by so quickly, you know? They, they sure did. Um, so I was just going to ask for all of you, in your estimation from the beginning of the stream to now, how is, how is the film done? It's oh, uh, way worse than I thought it uh, originally was. I didn't think that um, uh, generally I start off uh, uh, with is this above or below a five and I was like well it's not above a five that's for sure um, what do, you know then it's just a matter of like okay what you know how far down do things go um, I said at the beginning during my opening blurb I really just sort of like to say I had the feeling I kind of knew that it was gonna it was gonna go down in my estimation because like whenever I watch a film and I get that sense of, like, discontent. And I already know what some of the problems are, like, floating around in my head yep. in terms of plotting. Like, when I have that feeling, so rarely does it turn out, it's like, oh, no, actually, it's like, it gets way better when you start to delve oh, into yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Like, like, um, like, talking about Puss in Boots 2 with, uh, with Metal and Meme, like, that, that, that's a film that, better. like, improves when you run through it and you get all of the little details and things like that. Here, but it's I like, it from that conflicted it's, in you know, I... like, well, no, I left with that, like, really happy. And so, yeah. like, the more that you talk about it, the more you realize here, I already knew that, like, the plot was probably going to be a mess. My concern is, how much does it impugn character? But, like, damn, you know? Like, <laughs> like we're, just, we're not in a good place for this film. I've soured on it heavily. And now I'm depressed. <laughs> um, I, uh... You know, I, I really, I, I think... What I feel like is that the movie fooled me that, you know, into the, into thinking it was because I, I knew when I was watching it, that the plot was going to be shit. The more I thought about it, that felt pretty obvious, but I think in terms of character writing and stuff like that, it, it convinced me it was all right. And then the more I thought about it, I'm like, you know what, actually shit sucks in a lot of ways. Uh, I, I think... still really like Rocket's origin story. Mm. That's the best stuff of the movie, but I'm at the point now where I think that's basically all I liked, except for some of the jokes. And there's a few, yeah, a few little things here and there that I like, but uh, I mean, and uh, now yeah. I'd never intend to watch it ever again. Before, I would have been like, yeah, I'd give that a rewatch, but now nah, I don't give a shit. I quite I like Guardians One and Two. Uh, I do films. too. Happy Likewise, to it yeah, whenever. I don't want to rewatch this. I'm very. I will not rewatch this one. Uh, if I do, <laughs> it'll just be a specific clip that I want to see, maybe about this or that. But it will definitely. If you give not me the, the compilation movie. of the rocket scenes, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, just, yeah, it's just the rocket movie. Then sure, maybe. But like, it's disappointing. Like that's it is. Disappointing. I like Guardians one and two. I like them a lot. They're the stronger entries in this world. And this was like it. This was it in terms of basically investment, like in uh in the characters of the MCU at this point. Like these guys were the only ones left. Um, bar there was a, immediately um, coming out of the movie. I thought it was because I don't like two all that much. I think it has a lot of problems, but all those problems are dwarfed in this one <laughs> or by this. Who has one. plot problems as well? One is the yeah. tightest of the three. Like, I think one, two, three. Oh, in terms of one is I the think... best. It's not even close as far as I'm concerned. I think I think it's kind of close between one and two. I, I think know. the two is weaker than the first film. It's got it's more plot problems, I think. Um, no, not even I think. It does have more plot problems. But I think that, like, the gap between one and two is way smaller than the gap between two and three. I feel that way now for sure, yeah. Like, yeah. It's it's not a good movie. Uh, Guardians Three is not no. a good movie. How did um out of curiosity, Metal and Meme feel about it? Uh, they definitely liked it less than I did when we talked about it. There, we went through a lot of the same plot problems. Um, 
I don't, it's been like this conversation was so long and so was that one <laughs> yeah. i'm fuzzy on what we even said at this point so, that one was six no, hours yeah. long this one's like <laughs> eight and a half eight. yeah yeah so i don't remember anymore but <laughs> something, something i would say is that um the the takeaway that we had from the suicide squad is plot catastrophe character inex or, like inexplicably really sound in the face of that yeah, we were um, even shocked about how much there was barely any bleed from the plot into the characters. Like, bad plotting can often fuck up characters, but the, there's a bit of a separation in the Suicide Squad. As well as just, gosh darn it, I really liked a lot of the arcs in that film, and I loved some of the characters. Same. Same. Like, uh, the the payoff with uh, Rick Flag, like, that is that's some great shit. Solid. And, and Peacemaker as well, and then uh, Bloodsport. The arc that he gets thrown on, Rat Catcher. Like, that's got a really great... Uh, it, it, it's just that the uh, the quality of the plotting in terms of these James Gunn-like superhero projects is, like, declined. Um, but character was the thing that saved them. And in this case, it's... Yeah. It's, yeah, it does what it does. doomed him. Like, uh, Rocket, yes. But everybody else, there's, like... There's problems. Varying there's degrees ones. of destruction. Varying degrees, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what are we thinking in terms of a number Fuck. <laughs> between two and three for me so yeah. here's the thing i had that typed out ready to click but uh yeah i that that's where my number was i'm not just to say i'm not going with the crowd here that I, i'm oh. thinking at about a two <laughs> and it it legitimately pains me to say it um I'm I don't know how much three. because this is a two that has some gold in them there hills um but uh well maybe it helps i think our benchmark for the highest rating out of all of the phase four or five projects by uh no way home was shang chi at like a three <laughs> do you think this is worse than shang chi yes probably you reckon? destroys too many things oh, that fuck, have, yeah, i don't <laughs> think i don't think shang chi does any kind of damage like the fuck the this well but like shang chi was okay you know like he, he yeah right. he makes he's very boring <laughs> and generic throughout the movie it, how much is it worth that rocket is really good um, the if the if i mean that... we made it up to a two because <laughs> oh, like i know it's oh, like oh, here's the oh, thing like we have Mantis is destroyed, Peter's concern for the lives of his, you know, people, uh, Nebula's weirdness with the mind control thing, the plot is absolutely in shambles, the world building, don't even get me started. Um, I mean, like, we've got Rocket, I guess, I mean, Drax is kind of, like, not good either, not as bad as the others. Kraglin makes it out, Cosmo, so that's, like, three. I guess that's that's kind of that's I think that's what I'm struggling with is that when I compare it to a lot of the other Marvel films that we've had, there's like nothing really like that's the the best that you get is eh. Whereas here, the best that you get is like oh that's some let's look like some really good shit. The highs um, are higher, but the lows are lower than some of them. Well, it, maybe maybe the thing that's worth emphasizing is that the reason why the lows can be lower is because these are characters that were good and had a lot that was working for them coming into this film and yes. drops a ball. How much ruining, is that worth? Yeah, ruining Shang Chi. Like, who fucking cares, right? Like, it's bad. It's right. still bad, but you know, there's this element. I'm of, telling like, you, though, I'm pretty sure he makes it through that whole film fine. He's like, yeah, Shang -Chi just, you know, makes as an it example, fine, it, but you, you made a new thing and ruined it. So, um, right, compared to you had a whole bunch of material that was great and it was all fitting into the potential for like an excellent finale. And, it's, and I don't get it's, how it happened. How did this happen? I don't know how this one happened. He said he worked on it for a year, the script. Um, was he working on jokes for a year or was that the focus well, here? I, I mean, I wonder if it is a matter of uh, when he made one and two, those were the only things he was working on. When he made this, this was probably while Peacemaker was happening. Um, and obviously post-production and editing like side, this was but but there were no reshoots as I understand it. Like this is this is it. Like this is the film um that it was always meant to be. And there probably wasn't I don't know how much studio interference there would have been on this, you know? How much was how much was Marvel telling him what he could and couldn't do when they knew that this was the end for him making Marvel films and when they probably have the knowledge that making a Guardians film without James Gunn that might be challenging his identity is too baked into Guardians compared to everything else that they have well yeah they might not do any solo ones but they can obviously put them in other bigger stuff yeah 
that's Avengers. it. They throw them into other films. Um, I think I'm. A, I, I think I'm at a three. Yeah, I'm. I'm at a three. Yeah, I can too. see it. I can see it going either way. Um, um, it's tough the, to. It's tough to measure up all of these things because there's a lot of stuff to kind of like weigh. Two out of ten Guardians movie wrapped around a six out of ten Rocket movie. See, the thing is, is with Rocket, it's kind of complicated because I think that the high evolutionary starts to sort of collapse towards the end, and he's like a big part of that story. Like, you look at him in the earlier portion of the film, I think he's really strong, and then the longer it goes on, as we were talking about, the more he starts to just sort of descend into madness. That's kind of what I'm getting. Like, the basic intelligence of everybody in this film is kind of terrible. And the yeah, reason why think... Rocket escapes is because he's mostly not in the film. Yeah, he's in a like, coma, he's... so he can't be like... <laughs> It's uh, I'm very glad in hindsight. Uh, I think when Mahler said originally that like his uh, the high evolutionary's motivation is strong, but like every plan he enacts is retarded. So it's yeah, like, like the idea behind the high evolutionary is really cool to me. The idea yeah. of a guy who like just fundamentally does not like nature as it operates, where things play out as they do, and you know, like whatever whatever being sort of arise from that, we can recognize the value in in that, and that's that's like enough that he feels the need that he needs to control it and that he and that whatever notion he even has of perfect is like well that's you that's the thing you made up and who are you you know are you perfect yeah. like why who why do you think that you can like there's a lot of great ideas there and i feel like we got some of that and we didn't get everything that we could out of it um yeah this film especially when it comes to like him fighting against them in the main uh, yeah. current timeline I think, you know, in the backstory, he, he's pretty solid. If I could mention again, I went into this film so ready to love it. It was like, yeah, oh, I, yeah, I think that was very, that should have been very apparent to everybody. This was the one that we were, this was the one that we had some expectations for. In the lead up, when we saw like the clip of the conversation between Rocket, Lila, Teefs, and uh, Floor, um, like that, that got us, uh, that, that got, got us, us so more hyped. optimistic. I got us yeah. more optimistic of like, oh, damn, like, that's great. Oh, sweet. We're going to get an awesome finale. I really, 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 really wanted this to be great. So regarding that super chat I just came in, guys, enjoy the hell out of it. Enjoy oh, yeah, it. I enjoyed a lot of it. I was balling. It. Yeah, it. I, this worked for me in a lot I, of ways. A lot of the comedy totally, worked for me. A lot I of the totally emotions worked. I totally understand why people would enjoy it. I totally understand, like, why people would... This, this film has got, like, a lot of moments in it that are, like, emotionally... I think that's something that's worth emphasizing. Like, even with all of these problems, I don't think that this film is nearly as cynical as, like, the rest of these Marvel films that we've been getting for yeah, the last few years. I can years. agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. This is a work of incompetence, not, like, spitefulness. Worked. No, yeah, I think everybody honest. cared. I think everybody cared when they were making this. It's just that some of these decisions were, like, baffling. I don't even know if I'd say misguided. They're just confu they're baffling to me, some of these choices. Yeah. yeah. And like it's some of these of missed opportunities when they seem so obvious, you know? Um, yeah. 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 Uh, um, so. I'm going to wallow for a little bit. What happens now? Yeah, that's fair. What enough, happens now is that I'm done with the MCU forever. That's what's done. That's what happens now. It's, um, it's real um, fucking it's sad. Totally it's totally done for me. I mean, I was ready to check out even even if I walked away thinking this was really good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like that, would, that would have like, been ending on plan. a high note. I the mean, plan and was I did to end things on a high note and leave. Yeah. And I did, you know, I did really enjoy it in the moment, but it just I feel like the the film is like if I'm a raccoon and I'm holding cotton candy and I try to wash it in the water to clean my food and it just disappears. <laughs> that's that's what that's what it feels like right now. Yeah. It's a metaphor. Anal G. Simple. Anal G. Hey, you remembered my joke. Oh, your joke. I well, I said it. I don't, I'm probably not the first person to think of it, but I did say it earlier. You oh, did. I'm not denying that, Rex. But I would have heard that one like fucking a decade ago. Oh well, you know what? If I, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Get fucking first wrecked. time you hear it, it's new. How you doing, chat? <laughs> How's everyone feeling? It just feels a little weird. It's like eight you hours of just well ripping this check. fucking movie apart, uh, but trying to celebrate <sighs> what we could as we went. I guess, uh, again, worth emphasizing, rooting for this film. 
like yeah, really was yeah. really rooting for this film really because this was this like to... this was uh i think we went to entered into this one this is like the end right of marvel this is like it for films you know storytelling yeah <sighs> really was well at least we got two good <laughs> guardians movies we did I can remember them as they one. were, not as they ended up being, with there's, a couple exceptions. There's a bit of a sense with this that, because we haven't really talked about whether or not it is... Because, like, it, it was seen as the sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which is like it's it's getting portaled from Phase 3, not Phase 4 and 5, you know what I mean? Like, it's like this secret mm -hmm. hatch where it's coming from a place of quality, so it's going to be different. But like this film is different from the it, other. It's definitely oh, different. But different. holy fuck, I never expected to score this low. Are you kidding me? No, I never no, expected I a movie like this. I figured. Uh, I figured that the Suicide Squad was going to be like you know that's low. that's like James Gunn at his worst is still great characters. And now it's just I shudder to think about if the like the DC EU might be like just as bad as always. Um, I it don't could. know what I think about it. A different kind of bad, but it could it be just might as be. bad. It could I don't know what a, I think. He could pop out a masterpiece at any moment. Who knows? He could. Yeah, he it's could. Possible. Yeah, I suppose he could. Um, I really like Slither and Super, but I haven't seen them in a long time. Oh, here's a question. What do you guys think of the box office potential for this? Uh, I, um, I, I think it'll be pretty uh, high. I don't know. I think, uh, well, I think it will be. I I guess my I wonder if it's going to make as much money as the other two, which is about seven hundred eight hundred million. Um, I could see it doing that. I don't know if it'll do better than that. Um, I think the environment that it's in is going to. It, it is hurt. It's already. I, it's hurt yeah, by it's an angry It's hurt by it. Phase Four. Phase Four's done immense damage to the reputation of Marvel. Uh, clearly, yeah. so that's but, the question. Does it do as well as the other ones? Part of me wonders if. Like definitely, it could it could damage it. Uh, but I wonder if people will have the perception as we hoped it would have that it would be different. That it'd be like, yeah, the rest of Marvel has not been good recently, but ah, this could be the good one. So I'll go check that out. Question and is the what general, yeah, and the, what is the? I mean, what are the general? What's I the think general the general consensus? reaction is going to be positive. That would be my guess. I think so. Also, yeah. I've seen yeah. intense positivity for this film so far. Yeah, it ends very like. In a normy way, upbeat. Um, it's got a safe ending. It has a lot of laughs along the way. It's got it's got it moves at a breakneck pace. Stuff's always happening. Always lots of banter between characters. It's got an interesting villain. It's got those you know re, you know it, you're you're refreshed um, by the you know flashback sequences scattered throughout. I think that yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this is quite beloved by people. Maybe that drop-off I'd be curious about, and then word of mouth, uh, which seems strong right now, but who knows if it'll change. What I'm really curious about is if it, you know, remains considered really good, or uh, if that changes with time. I, you think know, it, I think it will change with time. What's funny is that um, the thing that we were hearing from, like, critics in a couple of, like, early reviews was film is, like, too dark, too dreary, and lots of lots of cruelty and violence and stuff. It's just, it's just not even close to my issues with no, it. I, it's the <laughs> no, no. Honestly, that's some of my favorite uh, stuff. <laughs> well, I'd say that it's just it wasn't as uh, it wasn't as weighty in that regard as it could have been, and, and what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. I was ex like, and, and I guess it's you know, recently for the first time watching No Country for Old Men, it's like you know, you compare that to this in terms of how gloomy and dreary you yeah. know a film can gotcha. get. Fucking good movie. I love that movie. It's amazing. Um, well, that's that, I suppose. Is there anything else you guys yeah. want to say about Guardians of the Galaxy 3? No. 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 That chapter closed. Yep, and now it's just always gonna be, you know, quality MCU films going forward, eh? Yeah, man. Are we excited about the future of this this world? No. 
No. <laughs> Definitely not. Emphatically not. I can't wait to see Adam Warlock more. Mm. I guess. I'm legitimately done. <laughs> I, I, I'm not doing it anymore. I can't. Is the only time you do it if you were invited to talk about the one streams? <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, if I hear from you guys that one of the next ones is actually surprisingly good, that's probably all that would convince me. <laughs> well, I have to wait. Maybe the one. marbles will blow us away. You know, maybe it'll maybe any, maybe it'll be great. Possible. Beetle. No, it's DC. That's DC. That's that one's right. gonna right. flop Fucking so hell. hard. <laughs> the blue beetle's gonna absolutely flop. It's Dude, like Shazam! Tank. It's probably gonna be like a Shazam situation it's again. It probably is. It's gonna fucking tank. The and Flash. I'm... That's what next, though. That's that's yeah. Uh, that'll that's be a, a month away from now. That'll be a weird be one for us. Yeah, I don't see how that one could be good, but like, <laughs> like that one, there's, there's a morbid fascination curiosity. I have. Oh about yeah, that one. I'm super fascinated. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> That what's that, gonna look like. I'm looking forward to that shit show. It's gonna be weird. Um, <laughs> capital O opinions. Why don't you tell people what you're up to these days and where they can find you? You can find me at the channel, which is also called Capital O Opinions, on the YouTube. Uh, I am spending most of my time working on some EFAT movies, which will come <gasps> out later this year, and they're gonna be very funny. Yay. So stay tuned for that. Also, more devs is also coming. I'm not making any promises anymore, but it's on the way. I have to. We have to explain quantum mechanics in this episode, so it's taking some time to make sure that we actually get it right. Oh god, that's gonna be in fun. A way that makes sense because the show doesn't understand quantum mechanics, but we have to understand it to explain how <laughs> it doesn't. So. <laughs> It's going to be fun. <laughs> He's going to like a full university course just to rip into this TV show. That's how it feels to me. Uh, I'm trying to keep it uh, contained <laughs> so it doesn't sprawl into this like an hour long lecture in the middle of the video. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. That will be on the horizon. Well, um, and thank you, obviously, for hanging out with us for that full near nine hours talking about this little kids movie. <laughs> for babies for babies Old baby movie. face babies <laughs> uh, uh frame rags is anything you guys wanted to talk about no nah, i'm hungry i'm tired <laughs> um, i'm tired yeah mando uh season three episode eight efap tv i'm currently working on it uh hopefully it'll be done soon and uh, I... I mean that's what i'm just be doing after this so <laughs> you know i am working away at projects uh, mm. Perhaps someday I will tell you more than that precious, precious chat slash uh, channel. But for now, that's it from us. That's, uh, God, yeah. It's a longer one than usual for a film breakdown. I still don't think it leaks yep. out how long I think we knew that going in. Yeah, there's just so much to talk about. And there's so much history for this uh, mm. movie, in a way. But, um, hope you had lots of fun, everybody. I know that oh, we nice. did. We Thank sure you. did. So much for the uh, friendly company, kind donations of which uh, we're just regularly releasing them every Wednesday now. Um, hoping to, we're, we're not fully caught up yet, but we will be again, don't worry. And as was mentioned, Mando is on the way, as well as eventually possibly Gotham Knights. Um, and um, next week is a good chance it won't be an EFAP episode, it'll be a Gartic phone episode because. Somehow, we're still two episodes ahead of the fucking anniversary time. Gotta figure this out, move things around, but, um... Yeah, it's been a while since we've played a little video game, so... Perhaps that shall be fun. In any case, you all sleep well now. We'll do whatever it is you want to do, you know? I'm not, I'm not your parent, okay? Even then, you might be old I enough that that wouldn't even matter. Do whatever I'm you your want. parent, go to sleep. <gasps> Alright, well, you heard him. Off you pop, everybody. Good night now. Goodbye, everyone. Toodle Bye. Bye. Here we go. Good night. Night.